Chapter 301 Restless Earthlings In the luxurious conference room of the Earth Federation headquarters, when the Wangi space battleship was mentioned, the atmosphere on the scene changed instantly, and there was a sense of tension. Yu Lian looked at Tang Yushan, Harris, Wanaigua and others opposite him, but his heart was like a mirror. It was absolutely impossible to spit out the food in his mouth, let alone if he really stupidly took the Wandi. The space battleship is returned to the Earth Federation. When the time comes, the Earth Federation will definitely use force against the Empire. The temptation of two living planets in the Centauri galaxy is enough to make the Earth Federation desperate. Of course, the Earth Federation definitely does not have the guts now. The Wandi space battleship is in the hands of the Empire, and coupled with the Empire's powerful technology. Even if the Empire only has a population of more than 10 million, the Earth Federation will definitely not dare to attack the Empire. The USS Pacific Space Battleship was originally a space battleship built by the Fuyun Group entrusted by our Earth Federation. Its ownership belongs to our Earth Federation. You are so shameless and say that it is your own space battleship. Harris looked very angry. As a senior official of the Earth Federation, he knew very well how powerful and terrifying the Wangi space battleship was. And naturally, he also knew the importance of this space battleship. At this time, his handsome face looked a little distorted, and his eyes were flashing with anger. If there was the Wangi space battleship, the Earth Federation might have conquered the Lorne Empire in the Canis Major Galaxy. It seems that today is not a good time to sit down and chat together. Let's chat some other time. Yu Liang smiled slightly and spoke without speculation. When it came to the issue of the Wangi space battleship, neither party would give in even verbally, because this space battleship was really too important. The first meeting between the two parties broke up unhappily and did not achieve any substantive results. However, in any case, the Earth Federation still received Yu Liang and others as ambassadors, and even arranged food, accommodation and transportation. Proper. Although the first meeting ended, the information about the Centauri Galaxy announced by Yu Liang and others quickly spread throughout the Earth. Welcome to CNTV! This station has the latest news from the Earth Federation headquarters. The ambassador of the Yin Huang Technology Empire, who arrived on Earth recently announced the basic galaxy of the Centaur Galaxy. The Centaur Galaxy has two stars and two living planets, namely Yin Huang Star and Jiuzhou Star. Yin Huang Star has a land area of 170 million square kilometers, and Jiuzhou Star has a land area of 2.4 billion square kilometers. It is 16 times the Earth's land area. The ecological environment of the two living planets is very good, especially the Kyushu planet, which has a vast area of primitive tropical rainforest as large as the Americas, and is very rich in products. Soon, reports similar to this appeared in the form of headlines in the news media, the internet, virtual worlds, etc. in various countries on the earth, and were accompanied by videos, pictures, and texts, very comprehensively informing the entire earth. It shows the prosperity of two living planets in the alien galaxy Centauri galaxy. The Kyushu star actually has a land area of 2.4 billion square kilometers, which is 16 times that of the Earth. It is so vast. Even if we all move there, we can live very easily. The Yin Wang Empire only has a thousand with tens of thousands of people occupying such a vast land. We should ask them to give up Kyushu star to our Earth Federation. You have a good idea. The predecessor of the Yin Wang Empire is the Fuyun Group. Its technology is more advanced than our Earth Federation. What's more, they also stole the USS Pacific Space Battleship. We can't defeat them. Damn it. The people of the Yin Wang Empire are a bunch of thieves. They stole our space battleship USS Pacific, and now they still occupy two living planets. It's really abominable. Yes. What a beautiful planet with life. Look at the giant trees in the original tropical rainforest of Kyushu. It's incredible. There are such huge trees. I really want to travel to the Centauri Galaxy and see Kyushu. The beautiful scenery above. Go to the Yin Wang Star to see the brand new Yin Wang Empire and the original Orc Empire. As the news spread, the entire Earth began to become restless. Originally, the failure of the expedition to Canis Major was a wake-up call for the people on Earth. The enthusiasm for interstellar expansion and interstellar colonization has faded a lot over the years. But when the two living planets in the Centaur Galaxy when the news spread, Everyone began to imagine the infinite wealth on the other side of the stars, and imagined themselves to be Columbus in the star field and the universe era. In an ancient manner in Western Europe, descendants of colonists from the Great Navigation Age gathered together. 
all heads of state from the major powers in the Western world were present. Even the Queen of England was personally present, even though the Queen of England did not seem to have any real power. She was the Queen of England is the head of state of dozens of countries, such as the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, Singapore, etc. These countries that were once independent from British colonies, and their influence is still very huge. Gentlemen and ladies, I think you have all read the news about the Centauri Galaxy many times. There are two living planets, with a combined land area of nearly 2.6 billion square kilometers, more than 17 times the Earth's land area. I think everyone has I can't sit still anymore. And so do I. As the host of the gathering, Harris was the first to stand up. Our ancestors fought bravely, braved the wind and waves of the sea, and traveled all over the world. That's why we have everything we have now. We occupy the most fertile, fertile and vast land on the earth. We enjoy the blessings of our ancestors. Eam, we should also lay down a world for our descendants. Look above our heads. There are countless stars on the other side. And there are countless living planets waiting for us. With Harris's words, the atmosphere at the scene became high and exciting. The descendants of these colonists were full of adventurous spirit in their bones. And the huge temptation stimulated them. At the Imperial Palace of Takumi, all the influential figures in Takumi have knelt down in front of the emperor. Maybe the emperor has no real power. But here in Takumi, even if you are the prime minister with all the power, you still have to listen to the emperor. Of. Gentlemen, Fuyun Group only has more than 10 million people and is able to occupy two living planets in the Centauri Galaxy, covering nearly 2.6 billion square kilometers of land, which is more than 17 times the entire Earth's land area. Our Yamato nation can no longer limit our sights to the Earth. We must look at the entire universe, seize any opportunity, and strive to create our own starry sky in the universe. The emperor's voice was not loud and did not seem majestic enough. But everyone present bowed their heads and said yes. This country has been ambitious since ancient times. Although they have joined the Earth Federation, they have never given up on expanding their territory. Land, wanting to own a vast land, was also deeply stimulated this time. In the center of the Chinese imperial capital, a large courtyard house. Luxury cars arrived one after another, and people in suits and leather shoes quickly entered the courtyard, including Zhang Xianzu, Qian Jin, Xiao Guangming, Zhou Wenhong, etc. China's top wealthy people showed up one after another. These people are representatives of China's space technology and virtual world fields. And they are also the main members of the Yin Wang Society. Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu. Yu Liang, dressed in a suit, walked in, and everyone hurried up and shouted, Hello everyone. Long time no see. Yu Liang greeted everyone with a smile on his face. I call brothers here today. Firstly, we haven't been together for a long time since Brother Fu left. Secondly, we welcome Ambassador Yu Liang Yu back to Earth. Thirdly, we celebrate the founding of the Yin Huang Empire. Fourthly, and the most important thing is that I hope we can cooperate together and make a fortune together in the future. As the host of the party, Zhang Xianzu waited until all the invited people had arrived, then stood up and said, Without the care of the Fuyin group these years, life has not been easy for these people in the Yen Wang society. They are the main people in China who oppose joining the Earth Federation. On the one hand, they have to face the suppression of domestic officials. And on the other hand, they have to compete with international capital forces. Many people's companies have gone bankrupt and their lives are not as good as before. This time, Yu Liang's arrival has given them a life-saving straw. Normally, he rushed over in a hurry. Li Fu established the Yin Wang Empire in the Centaur Galaxy, occupying the entire Centaur Galaxy, owning two living planets and up to 2.6 billion square kilometers of land. Just think about it, and you will know how much wealth and business opportunities there are. Not to mention, you can make a lot of money just from simple trade between two galaxies. What's more, the Yin Wang Empire has mastered advanced technology. If we can continue to purchase spaceships, and so on, from the Yin Wang Empire, everyone can continue to live an enjoyable life in the space field. Everyone looked at Yu Lian with expectation in their eyes. Ahem, I actually have two things to do when I return to Earth this time. The first thing is to establish diplomatic relations with the Earth Federation. And the second thing is to come to Earth to attract immigrants. The most important thing is to hope that everyone you can join our Yin Wang Empire and immigrate to our Yin Wang Empire. Of course, it doesn't matter if you don't want to immigrate to our empire. Regarding business cooperation and exchanges, 
Our empire will still give priority to taking care of our descendants of the Yin Huang and our members of the Yin Huang society. Yu Liang stood up with a smile and spoke slowly. The members of the Yin Huang society have a very strong influence in China. The many technology companies under their control have too many outstanding talents. These people are what the empire wants to attract most. Very good! Hearing Yu Liang's affirmative reply, everyone present laughed excitedly. Chapter 302 Empire Exhibition The whole earth is restless. What people talk about most every day is about the Centaur Galaxy, interstellar colonization, and expansion of the universe. The vast land, endless wealth, blood and passion. Even old men in their 70s or 80s are being destroyed, infected by this growing agitation. However, before this restless mood could calm down, another piece of news came out. Starting from April 23, 2041, a one-month special exhibition of the Centaur Galaxy in Wang Empire exhibition would be held in the Imperial Capital. Show everyone on the planet the technological products from the Yin Wang Empire a few light years away, and the local products from the two living planets. As soon as the news was released, even though the ticket price for this exhibition was as high as 100,000 Earth dollars, all the tickets were sold out in less than five minutes on the first day they were released, which lasted for a month. As many as 100,000 tickets every day were all sold out in just five minutes. So that countless people couldn't help but cursed and demanded that the exhibition be postponed and open to ordinary people. In the end, after discussions with Yu Liang and others, the organizer decided to postpone it for another month. And ticket purchases for the next month of postponement will be subject to a lottery. And the ticket price will only be charged a symbolic 100 earth coins. And at the same time, corresponding in the virtual world the open virtual exhibition was completely free. Which calmed everyone down. On April 23rd, the People's Square, the core of the imperial capital of China, had long been surrounded by the police. High protective boards isolated the place. Originally, the People's Square was a very important place. Under normal circumstances, it was the center of the People's Square. Only important domestic events can be used alone. However, with the efforts of the Yin Wang Society, it was finally successfully rented to the People's Square to hold the exhibition. Such a huge square was needed because there were too many things on display this time. There are all kinds of high-tech products from the Yin Wang Empire, as well as various rare animals from the Yin Wang and Kyushu stars, as well as plants, fruits, medicinal materials, etc. from the two planets. In short, there are all kinds of things. In this way, of course, the most important thing is to show the Chinese people a new and powerful empire composed of descendants of Yin and Huang. The huge people's square is already crowded with people. Reporters from news media from all over the world are waiting at the major entrances and exits. Only a few news media are allowed to enter. Most people can only stay outside and pass through. Take a peek at the world inside and wait for the people to be interviewed. Lu Yuan was wearing very ordinary clothes, holding the ticket in his hand, looking at the long queue in front of him, and waiting very patiently. As a trendsetter in the space age, Lu Yuan is a famous asteroid miner on Earth. At the beginning, it relied on helping large companies mine asteroids to obtain original funds. And coupled with the policy of grasping the Chinese side, it soon had its own interstellar mining company, with more than 10 Dumbo spaceships in its hands. Making trips every year he collected asteroids from the asteroid belt and quickly became a super rich man like countless rich people in China's space field. After many rounds of inspections, Lu Yuan finally entered the square. This huge square, which was originally huge enough to accommodate millions of people, is now separated into huge areas, with many products on display in each area. The Yin Wang Empire Exhibition Area, the Empire Technology Product Exhibition Area, the Yin Wang Star Product Exhibition Area, and the Jiuzhou Star Product Exhibition Area all have indicator signs pointing to different areas. Let's go see the Yin Wang Empire first and understand the situation of the Yin Wang Empire. Yu Liang said that he wants to attract immigrants. But he also needs to see whether the Yin Wang Empire is worth immigrants. The Empire. The Empire. Will it be a step back in history? Lu Yuan thought in his mind as he walked towards the Yin Wang Empire exhibition area. The exhibition content here is relatively simple. It introduces the political system of the Yin Wang Science and Technology Empire in detail and introduces some basic domestic situations of the Yin Wang Empire. The key points are it is a detailed introduction to the Empire's immigration system. The Empire welcomes the descendants of Yin and Huang to immigrate to the Centaur Galaxy. We will provide you with free houses to live in, neatly planned villas, free medical services, and free education. 
all immigrants accepted by us will enjoy the same benefits that citizens of the Yen and Huang Empire can enjoy. That's right. The Yen Huang Empire has a vast territory. With a current population of just over 10 million, we welcome more descendants of the Yen Huang Empire to join our family. And together, we will create a sky in the starry sky for the descendants of the Yen Huang Empire. Lu Yuan read it carefully and carefully. Especially the political system, immigration system, etc. of the Yen Huang Empire. Because Lu Yuan had long hated the Earth Federation. Because the establishment of the Earth Federation seriously violated many aspects of China's space science and technology field. People's interests. Now that they saw the establishment of the Yen Huang Empire and the absorption of immigrants, their eyes suddenly brightened. It turns out it's not a feudal empire. And the immigration conditions are quite good. Well, maybe joining the Yen Huang Empire would be a good choice. Lu Yuan nodded and looked at the people around him. Most of them were Chinese. At this time, everyone's eyes were shining. And they were obviously very moved. Let's take a look at the technological products of the Yen Huang Empire. Before Lu Yuan actually entered the technology product area, he could already feel the lively atmosphere here. There were people everywhere. People in suits and leather shoes. And people of all colors. Their eyes were shining as they looked at each and every one of them from the Yin Huang Empire. Technology Products Everyone, the small private anti-gravity spacecraft you are seeing now is powered by anti-gravity technology. It can take off and land vertically. With a speed of up to Mach 30, it can fly around the equator of the Earth in just one lap. It doesn't take an hour. If you have it, you can travel around the entire Earth in one hour. And the most important thing is that it can also fly into space. More than a dozen oval flying saucer-shaped spaceships, which were only about the size of cars, were quietly suspended in the air. Next to them, a beautiful woman began to introduce this epic-making technological product to those present. Everyone onlookers had their eyes wide open. Like, I wish I could have such an advanced private anti-gravity spacecraft right away. Everyone, this is the Dumbo and Dumbo spaceships produced by our Yen Wang Empire. Many people must be familiar with them. What I want to introduce to you today is this Somersault Cloud spacecraft, which uses anti-gravity power. The biggest advantage of this technology spacecraft is that it can mine hundreds of millions of tons of asteroids at one time. Lu Yuan continued shopping, and there were also a lot of people gathered at another booth. At this time, someone at the booth gave a detailed introduction to the locations of several spaceship models. Somersault Cloud spaceship? I didn't expect that the Yin Wang Empire would come up with it. It was something that even money could not buy before. Lu Yuan was naturally very familiar with these spaceships, especially as an interstellar miner. He was immediately attracted to them and learned about them in detail. TSK! TSK! This price is too expensive! It seems that if I don't join the N1 Empire, buying a somersault cloud spaceship will bankrupt me. Half an hour later, Lu Yuan walked out and couldn't help but shake his head. The Yen Wang Empire was quite evil. If he didn't need earth coins, he could just barter or buy them with the currency of the Yen Wang Empire. The price was extremely expensive. Private anti-gravity spacecraft. Somersault cloud spacecraft. Large and small Dumbo series spaceships. Super large plasma engines. Etc. A series of technological products have made the people on earth deeply feel the power of imperial technology. And at the same time, they are extremely jealous. Because these everything is something that is much needed today on this side of the planet. After walking around for more than two hours, Lu Yuan finally finished visiting the technology product display area and gained a deeper understanding of the technological strength of the Yen Wang Empire. The technology on the Earth side was far behind the Empire. Even though the Empire only had more than 10 million people. Soon, Lu Yuan came to the product exhibition area of Jiuzhou Star. The main exhibitions here in Jiuzhou Star were some strange animals. Delicious fruits from alien planets. Exotic flowers and herbs. Natural medicinal materials. Etc. Everyone come here to taste and take a look at the pure natural fruits from Jiuzhou Star. Looking for the sound. Lu Yuan looked over and was shocked to see several basketball court-sized booths filled with all kinds of fruits. Including large bunches of grapes. This is the size of these grapes. As big as a watermelon. Someone was sucking the juice from these grapes with a straw. Looking like they were enjoying themselves. There are also watermelon-like things as big as a table. Various fruits have a big word highlighted. Many of them look similar to certain fruits on the earth. But they are magnified many times. There are many people at this time. Next to me. I tasted fruits from other planets for free. And everyone was full of praise and thumbs up. 
Due to its unique geographical environment, Kyushu Star is always illuminated by stellar light. Therefore, the sugar content of the fruits on Kyushu Star is very high. All fruits are very sweet and are larger than those on Kyushu Star. Currently, it has been counted and found that there are nearly 100,000 excellent fruit varieties for consumption, including more than 3,400 high-quality fruit varieties with high yield, good taste, and wide range of uses. The huge monitor on the side is constantly playing, introducing various information in detail, and people can also use a virtual machine to directly download the information and go back to study it carefully. You should be able to make a lot of money just by selling fruits on Earth. Lu Yuan took a bite of the delicious fruit from Jiuzhou Star and was instantly conquered by this naturally grown, ripe, and delicious fruit. He couldn't help but squint his eyes. It was so delicious that some foodies next to him even couldn't bear it. I couldn't help but hold a watermelon-sized fruit similar to Longan and devour it, even when my stomach couldn't hold it anymore. I still looked at other fruits reluctantly. Chapter 303 Formal Establishment of Diplomatic Relations On the huge exhibition stand, Fruits of various sizes and weird shapes were placed together. Some fruits could vaguely see the prototype of certain fruits on this side of the earth. But there were many kinds of fruits that had never been seen before. For example, there is a kind of white and tender fruit that looks like a baby. If you don't look confidently, you will really think it is a baby. Some fruits are very rare and are placed alone and separated by glass. No touching is allowed. Not even willing to let people taste it. It looks so precious. Those who are able to come here to visit on the first day, and those who are willing to pay expensive tickets to come in, are all rich or noble on earth. They have not eaten any kind of fruit, and have tasted all kinds of delicacies from mountains and seas. But after tasting the fruits on the Jiojo Star, they were all full of praise and asked when the fruits from the Jiojo Star would be sold here on earth. Kyushu Star, Lu Yuan thought softly, his mind filled with daydreams about this distant planet, its vast land area, vast primeval tropical rainforests, towering giant trees, and never darkness. Maybe immigration empire is a good choice. Lu Yuan thought as he walked towards the exhibition area of Yin Huang Star. Although Yin Huang Star cannot be compared with Jiuzhou Star, Yin Huang Star is also a top-level life planet that is no less than the Earth. It has all kinds of rare fruits, exotic flowers and plants, indispensable. There are also many strange animals from Yin Huang Star on display. There are not too many types of animals. And there are only one or two of each animal. They are just for display. And the animals chosen are the more representative ones from Yin Wang Star. The giant-eared beast is an animal domesticated by the orcs of Yin Wang Star. It is mainly cultivated as meat. Originally, the orcs were inexperienced and did not know how to castrate the giant-eared beast. So the taste was quite unpleasant. But of course, it is natural here in the Yin Wang Empire. It was known that these animals used for meat should be castrated. So the giant-eared beast was also the main source of meat for the people of the Yin Wang Empire. The giant-eared beast is named because it has a pair of giant ears, like cattail fans. It is about the same size as a cow on the earth. It has a gentle personality, sweet meat, and a fast reproduction rate. It is an omnivorous animal with a wide range of food sources. It is very good. Feeding. There is a monitor next to each animal that introduces the animal in detail. Of course. Few people who come to visit will learn about these in detail. Everyone just comes to see the animals from alien planets for a novelty. The most popular one is obviously not this giant or beast, but a beast named Cassie. Cassie is a transliteration of the orc language, and it means devil in the orc language. This beast named Casito is a bit like a saber-toothed tiger. It has very sharp teeth. It is several times larger than a tiger. When it opens its huge bloody mouth, it can easily kill a cow. On Yin Wang Star. Here, among the indigenous orcs, the person who can kill this Kasi beast alone is definitely a warrior respected by the entire orc empire. Lu Yuan watched casually. He was only curious about these beasts from another planet, but nothing else. Soon, after walking through the beast area, we came to the rather special ocean exhibition area. The things displayed in this ocean exhibition area are even more dazzling. On any living planet, the most prosperous place for life is definitely in the ocean between the oceans. There are many more animals in the world than on land. However, the things brought back to the earth this time have all been made into specimens. It is impossible to say that a lot of sea water brought animals to the earth. Oh my god! There are such huge sea clams and such huge pearls. Just at the door, Lu Yuan was shocked by a huge sea clam at the door. 
This huge sea clam was more than 2 meters long and 1 meter wide. The huge sea clam had opened up and could easily hold a sea clam. Two adults. In the middle of the sea clam. A blue pearl the size of a football shines charmingly. Lu Yuan believed that this blue pearl was definitely real. But such a huge blue pearl had never been heard of on earth. Let alone seen with his own eyes. Everyone around this huge sea clam and pearl could not help but be shocked by such a huge sea clam and blue pearl. Some people dressed as ladies even covered their mouths. Deeply impressed by the blue pearl. It attracts people around me and wants to buy it. However, the shock has just begun. There are too many marine products from the Yin Wang and Jojo planets. And the products brought to the earth are really only a very small part. A giant red coral like a hill. This kind of red coral has been mined for a long time on this side of the earth. Only a few of the oceans still survive. But here on Xian Yellow Star and Jojo Star, you can see it everywhere. There is even a huge freshwater lake on the vast land of Kyushu Star. This huge freshwater lake is very large. Comparable to the Mediterranean Sea. Forming a unique environment similar to the freshwater ocean. In this environment, a unique freshwater ocean life circle was born. Including a very precious purple coral. Huge pearls. Precious corals. Giant crabs as big as a table. Conks as big as a room. Too many. Too many species show the beautiful world of alien planets to the people on Earth. I really can't help but want to go to Yin Wang Star and Jiuzhou Star to see for myself now. After visiting the place from beginning to end, Lu Yuan couldn't help but sigh for a long time. Like Lu Yuan, everyone who has finished the visit wants to travel to another planet, see its beautiful scenery, taste its delicacies, and experience unprecedented travel. The huge exhibition area is full of people every day. Of course, it is difficult for ordinary people to see it in person. They can only experience the beautiful scenery of the alien planet through TV programs and the virtual world. A specially open exhibition area in the virtual world. Because there were so many visitors that the servers did not know how many more servers were opened. But it still could not satisfy people's curiosity. It was very popular. And the huge traffic caused paralysis of the virtual world. Two living planets are two brand new worlds. Each world is infinitely yearning. I really want to travel to the Yin Wang Empire in the Centaur Galaxy and have a good experience. A foodie's paradise. A traveler's dream. And an explorer's temple. I heard that the Yin Huang Empire sent people back to Earth this time to discuss the introduction of immigrants to our Earth. I think everyone will have the opportunity to go to the Yin Huang Empire to experience it for themselves in the future. I heard that the Yin Huang Empire implemented an imperial system and an emperor. This is definitely a historical setback. You should study it carefully. In fact, the Yin Huang Empire implemented a system of separation of powers. A properly modernized system. And the citizens of the Yin Huang Empire implemented the policy of free housing, free medical care, and free compulsory education. Compared with any other country on earth. The welfare of the country must be good. Whether it is the virtual world, the internet, or everyone's after dinner time. Various topics about the Yin Huang Empire. Jiuzhou Star and Yin Wang Star are the hottest topics. It seems that if you know some information, you will be out of touch with the times. Unable to integrate into the collective environment. Everyone is discussing. There is no doubt that this exhibition will give the entire Earth people a heart of motivation for the great voyages of the interstellar era. From the decision makers in the temples to the ordinary people. It is the first time for everyone to truly feeling the charm of the interstellar colonial era. The brand new world. Huge living planets. Countless wealth. And countless new species have deeply stimulated the entire Earth. And everyone is like taking a dose of stimulants. Soon, the Earth Federation once again took the initiative to find Yu Liang and started negotiations again. The Earth Federation knows very well that without the advanced technology and equipment of the Yin Wang Empire, it will be difficult for the people of Earth to expand and colonize the interstellar space. It also knows that the main reason for the Yin Wang Empire to come here is to absorb immigrants from the Earth. Both sides need each other. And naturally there is the possibility of cooperation. Putting aside the previous grievances, the negotiations between the two parties progressed very quickly. It was soon established that the Yin Wang Empire and the Earth Federation would establish formal diplomatic relations, send ambassadors to each other, and cooperate with each other in economic, technological, and other aspects. Sometimes I have to say that it's really amazing. The first people on Earth to establish diplomatic relations with an alien civilization was actually a civilization established by people on Earth. So much so that the news media on Earth couldn't help but use words that were absolutely unimaginable. No one can guess the words to describe it. 
The establishment of diplomatic relations between the Yin Huang Empire and the Earth Federation is not establishing diplomatic relations with a certain country on the Earth, but establishing diplomatic concern with the entire Earth Federation. Therefore, its status is higher than that of other countries on the Earth, and it is on an equal footing with the entire Earth. Of the Earth Federation promised to open immigration to the Yin Huang Empire and allow the Yin Huang Empire to recruit immigrants on the Earth. In exchange, the Yin Huang Empire promised to export large plasma engines, anti-gravity spacecrafts, laser cannons, and other advanced technological equipment and weapons to the Earth Federation, etc. Of course, the Earth Federation hopes to introduce the advanced technology of the Yin Huang Empire, but Yu Liang and others know very well that this technology cannot be sold. It is better to rely on selling products and slowly using the scissor gap. Compared with the Earth Federation, the Empire has no other advantages except technology and technology. If it dares to sell even this, maybe the Earth Federation will be ambitious to annex the Empire. And then it will be it is impossible to sell your skills when you are making wedding dresses for others. Chapter 304 We Don't Want Everyone In the Chinese Imperial Capital of Earth, a very large building was bought by the Yin Huang Empire as the Yin Huang Empire's embassy to the Earth Federation. And Yu Liang naturally became the Yin Huang Empire's first ambassador to the Earth Federation. After urgent renovation, inspection, reinforcement, installation of defense and security systems. The embassy was soon open to the outside world and officially began to accept guests. Liu Yuan couldn't help but frown when he saw the long queue that had formed at the entrance of the Yin Huang Empire embassy. It was only 8 o'clock now. He thought he had arrived early. But he didn't know that there was a queue at the entrance of the embassy. There was a long queue. And countless people came to the embassy with the intention of looking for business opportunities, looking for cooperation and immigrating to other planets. The same goes for Liu Yuan. He came here to look for business opportunities. The more than 10 spaceships of the interstellar mining company in his hands are almost ready for retirement. He must buy new spaceships for mining asteroids. Otherwise, he will the company can directly declare bankruptcy. In addition, he wanted to know about the procedures and conditions related to immigrating to the Yin Huang Empire. With the opening of the embassy, the Yin Huang Empire has officially begun to accept immigration applications. Liu Yuan looked at the people around him carefully. He could see that these people were all so-called successful people. Most of them were well-dressed. Many of them were even big shots that could often be seen on TV news. But at this time, they were not allowed to do anything. Instead of padding the long queue, prepare to go to the embassy to look for opportunities. The exhibitions of the Yin Huang Empire allowed countless people on Earth to see countless business opportunities, including interstellar trade, interstellar freight, interstellar tourism etc., which all contain countless wealth, not to mention the spaceships, engines, and anti-gravity spacecrafts from the Yin Huang Empire technological products are also urgently needed here on Earth, especially for people in the space technology industry. Because there are too many people, the embassy's reception capacity is limited. So if you want to seek cooperation or want to immigrate to the empire, please go to the official website of the Virtual World Empire to make a preliminary application. After the application is approved, we will notify you separately. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause you. At this time, someone at the embassy took a loudspeaker and started talking to everyone over and over again. Obviously, the embassy was also panicked. At the beginning, there were already so many people, and the embassy did not accept the reception at all. Don't come. Soon, after hearing the sound, many people in the long queue began to leave. Most of them were people from outside China. Many people who did not understand Chinese also left quickly after being translated by others. Since it can also be handled in the virtual world, there is no need to wait in line and suffer here. However, there were still some people who did not leave and continued to line up. Their faces were clearly Chinese. Liu Yuan looked over and saw that many of them were members of the Yin Huang society. Liu Yuan also continued to queue up and wait for the reception. At the same time, he used a virtual machine to connect to the virtual world in his mind. Preparing to apply in the virtual world first. A virtual world. A world exclusive to immigrants from the Yin Wang Empire. Liu Yuan's figure flashed out. This virtual world is specially used for immigration applications. It can be seen that there are many, many windows. There are people talking in each window. And the people receiving them all have the same faces. Obviously they are all system NPCs. Not real people receiving them. Well, that's right. If there are real people to receive us, the whole embassy won't be enough. Liu Yuan looked at the endless window and nodded. 
The immigration policy of the Yan Wang Empire was so good that countless people wanted to immigrate to the Yan Wang Empire. They also had shared houses, free medical care, and free education. In addition, there are so many people who want to immigrate there due to the beautiful sights and scenery on other planets. Liu Yuan walked to an empty window. Before Liu Yuan could say a word, two foreigners quickly appeared on the left and right. One was a blonde and blue-eyed Western European, and the other was an African as black as charcoal. After everyone saw it, they smiled at each other and began to get busy. Hello! I would like to know some information about immigrating to the Yin Wang Empire. Okay. Our Yin Wang Empire is now vigorously introducing immigrants and welcomes compatriots from Earth to join our empire. Please fill out this form and application. If the conditions are passed, we will notify you separately. A mechanical voice spoke from the beautiful NPC at the window. At the same time, a form and application form were handed over, and Liu Yuan read them carefully. The form contains nothing more than your name, age, ethnicity, education, languages spoken, family members, etc. On the application form, you need to write down the reasons for applying to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. Liu Yuan thought about it, and rows of information appeared on the form. This is the advantage of doing things in the virtual world. His thoughts control everything very quickly. In a few minutes, Liu Yuan filled in all the information. He plans to take his wife and children all to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. As for his parents, they are old, so it is better to stay here on Earth. Mr. Liu, you are a member of the Yin Wang Society. You have directly passed the preliminary application. Please go to the embassy for an interview. The beautiful NPC looked at the form submitted by Liu Yuan and immediately smiled and said, Okay. Liu Yuan smiled slightly and was about to leave this virtual world when a voice of dissatisfaction came from the side. Shit! What the H? How are you doing in the Yin Wang Empire? Why don't the NPCs you receive speak English? Why don't they translate into Chinese when they speak Chinese? And why are the things on this form all in Chinese characters and not in English? You are racist. I want to the Federation will respond to you. De Lao He next to him complained very dissatisfiedly because he found that he could not understand what this beautiful NPC said. Originally, this virtual world can realize language translation. As long as there are languages in the data, it can be translated into any language. But obviously in this chat world, there are special settings made by the Yin Wang Empire, and language translation cannot be performed. I'm sorry. Sir, please speak Chinese. I don't understand what you are saying. The beautiful NPC at his window repeated this sentence over and over again. It was obvious that she couldn't understand English and had special settings for, okay. After complaining to no avail, Lao He left this virtual world and went directly to the Yin Wang Empire Embassy to complain. You can't even speak Chinese, but you still want to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. Isn't it a little too natural? Seeing this scene, Liu Yuan shook his head slightly. He knew very well that the Yin Wang Empire was a brand new country composed of descendants of Yin Wang. Chinese was the only official language. The application conditions for casual immigration did not say that one must master Chinese. But it was meaningless. This is necessary. On the other side, in the real world, here at the Yin Wang Empire Embassy, Yu Lian was drinking tea and looking at the bustling Chinese imperial capital. He was in a good mood. Everything Li Fu had told him had been completed. As long as he gathers the first batch of immigrants, he can return to the empire. Brother Liang, this is the data we just collected from the virtual world. As of now, we have received a total of 50 million immigration applications, of which more than 30 million are from China. Yu Liang's secretary Zhang Lu came over with a piece of data. Today is the first day that immigration applications are open. This data can clearly reflect the interest of the descendants of Yin and Huang in China to immigrate to the empire. If there are too few, the empire wants to it will take a long time to attract enough immigrants. Well, there are quite a lot of people. Yu Liang took the data and looked at it carefully. The number of immigration applications, education level, male to female ratio, etc. are all very important factors. It seems that we should set the conditions first. Otherwise, everyone will apply to emigrate to our empire. After all, the conditions offered by our empire are really good. Looking and looking, Yu Lian frowned. Because the data clearly showed a major problem. People who applied for the immigration empire were generally not of high quality. Not to mention anything else. Just the level of education. People with a bachelor's degree or above account for less than 20%. Brother Liang, this is an official letter just sent from the Earth Federation. 
Many people say that our empire has implemented a racial discrimination policy in terms of immigration policy. After hearing Yu Liang's words, Zhang Lu handed over another document. This document was an official letter sent from the Earth Federation. Because we all use Chinese when applying for immigration, and all of them are rejected as long as they are not descendants of Yin and Huang. So many people are very dissatisfied. Our official website has received countless complaints. It is estimated that they have also reported to the Earth Federation. The Earth Federation will respond here. So the Earth Federation will send us a letter. What's going on with us? Humph. What's so good about this? Tell them that our Yin Wang Empire is not just for cats and dogs. We can't even speak Chinese, and yet we have the nerve to come and apply for immigration. Yu Liang snorted coldly and didn't take it seriously at all. Although some things were not mentioned openly, they secretly implemented the OK rule. For example, in accepting immigration applications, the first one is to be able to apply it skillfully. Chinese. Secondly, they must be descendants of the Yin Wang people. Those who are not the descendants of the Yin Wang people are not wanted. Of course, they are the descendants of the Yin Wang people, but they are naturally not wanted by banana people who are already yellow skinned and white hearted. These two conditions are the most basic conditions. These two conditions need to be met first and then filtered. Of course, these two conditions are not stated in the immigration policy of the Yin Huang Empire's embassy in the Earth Federation. Because Yu Liang knew from the beginning that once it was written out, it would definitely cause dissatisfaction on the Earth Federation. Now the Earth Federation is established after that. The Earth took racial discrimination very seriously. Otherwise the Earth Federation would not have sent a formal letter to the embassy on this matter. Chapter 305 Resolutely Not Rubbish As time goes by, the favoritism of the Chinese people in the Yin Huang Empire Embassy has gradually been known to the entire Earth. This favoritism is nothing to do. After all, the Yin Huang Empire itself was founded by the descendants of Yin Huang. But it just did its too obvious. As far as accepting immigrants is concerned, the Empire has done a very good job. As long as they are not descendants of Yin and Huang, they cannot even pass the initial virtual world application. As a result, Many earthlings who fantasize about living a corrupt life in the empire are instantly I feel hopeless because I can't even speak Chinese. Even if some people can speak Chinese, they still can't pass the test. They have an aura inside and outside that no one except the descendants of Yin and Huang can enter. The label of racial discrimination was quickly put on the head of the Yin Huang Empire. Here on earth, there is more and more emphasis on racial equality. All things, units, etc. require the participation of people of all races, so that it cannot be called discrimination. Habitually he also put this kind of thinking on the Yin Wang Empire. In addition, another important reason is to discuss various commercial cooperation with the Yin Wang Empire. The Yin Wang Empire only cooperates with the descendants of the Yin Wang Empire. Selling high-tech products such as spaceships, plasma engines, etc. And also conducting in terms of trade, etc. We only cooperate with people from China. People from other countries around the world went to the Yin Huang Empire to cooperate. And without exception, they were all rejected. This made countless people unable to accept it. Are you establishing diplomatic relations with the Earth Federation? Or are you establishing diplomatic relations with China alone? There is no one else involved in everything. Things. Especially when it comes to the issue of eating cakes. The interests are very exciting. The Yin Huang Empire did an amazing job and did not leave any chance for others. The Chinese side actually laugh secretly because they use their toes. Everyone knows that as long as we maintain contact with the Yin Wang Empire, there will be endless cakes to eat in the future. Soon, with the help of thoughtful people, thousands of people demonstrated in the Imperial Capital, surrounded the Imperial Embassy in the Earth Federation, and protested against the Yin Wang Empire. The immigration policy of the Yin Wang Empire is suspected of racial discrimination and requires that every race be treated equally. Oppose racial discrimination and open immigration. Equality of opportunity. Open and fair treatment of every race and country. The marching crowd chanted slogans and blocked the embassy's door. The crowd was surrounded by water. If you look closely, it was so dark that the imperial police, who received the notice, had to build a high blast wall to protect the embassy. Safety. Although they chanted very loud slogans, fully expressing their inner dissatisfaction, the reporters from the news media who heard about it also fully reported on it and expressed their support for their just behavior. However, Yin Wang there was no response from the Imperial Embassy at all, as if it had nothing to do with him at all. After several days of demonstrations without any response from the Imperial Embassy, these people began to quit 
and began to use shoes, clothes, eggs and other objects to throw at the embassy to express their inner feelings. Dissatisfaction. Snort. In the embassy, Yu Liang was very dissatisfied when he saw the demonstration crowd that had not dispersed for several days. But he had no intention of changing at all. Brother Liang, this is not the way to go. They come here every day to make trouble, which seriously affects the normal work of our embassy. Originally, we still have about a month to organize the first batch of immigrants to return to the empire. If if this continues, I'm afraid it will take a lot of time. If they storm the embassy, should we use force? John looked worried downstairs. The riot police below were working very hard to maintain the safety of the embassy and prevent the angry marchers from rushing into the embassy. However, these police officers could not fight back when they were beaten or scolded. And it was very frustrating to fight back. As time goes by, as more and more people join the parade, they may break through the defenses and enter the imperial embassy. Although the embassy is on earth, it still belongs to the territory of our empire. If someone rushes in, Use force immediately. The dignity of the empire cannot be violated. Yu Liang frowned and thought carefully for a while. Then opened his eyes and said coldly with a cold light. I see. Jean Lu nodded. Then left and went down to make relevant preparations. I hope it doesn't get too serious. Yu Liang looked at the crowded crowd below and could see that all of them were foreigners. And there were many people who had nothing to do. And looked like they were just hanging around and acting like little hooligans. Tang Yuchan still has the nerve to find me. At this time, in Yu Liang's mind, the assistant in the virtual world gently reminded him. As soon as his mind changed, he immediately entered a chat world in the virtual world. In this chat world, not only Tang Yuchan was present, but also Harris, Tang Aigua, and other high-level officials of the Earth Federation were present. There were also many heads of state from the Earth's countries who came together, and the formation was huge. Ambassador Yu, Mr. President, Yu Liang and Tang Yunshan greeted each other. Mr. Ambassador, we are looking for you this time to hope that your empire can cancel relevant policies that are racially discriminatory. Racial discrimination is a very serious problem here on our planet. Tang Yunshan didn't speak, but Harris spoke first. He was expressionless and spoke righteously. Oh, really? There is no racial discrimination in our Yin Wang empire at all. So I don't know the seriousness of this. How serious is it? Yu Liang smiled softly, not caring at all. You are serious enough that it may affect the normal diplomatic relations between us. Harris's face turned blue and red for a while, then returned to normal, and then spoke softly. Really? If that's the case? It doesn't matter. Both of us can end diplomatic relations. Yu Liang smiled and said nonchalantly, If it were not for the purpose of attracting descendants of Yin and Huang to immigrate to the Empire, the Empire would not bother to establish diplomatic relations with the Earth Federation. Mr. Ambassador, that's not what Harris meant. Seeing that the atmosphere had become tense, Tang Yunshan smiled softly and pretended to be a white face. Actually, we hope that your Empire can give due consideration to accepting immigrants from other races and countries. After all, your Empire occupies two living planets, has a vast territory, is sparsely populated, and is a powerful Empire that is both a member of human civilization. We should help each other, accept more immigrants, and contribute to the development, reproduction, and growth of human civilization. First of all, our empire and the Earth Federation are not the same thing. You have your laws and rules, and our empire has our empire's laws and rules. On the issue of immigration, our empire has its own principles and norms, and they will never change for anyone, any bit. Secondly, Regarding the development of human civilization, our empire is too small and weak to dare to claim to contribute to this. As for the vast land of our empire, we have worked hard with our own blood and sweat. As for how to use it, that is up to us. My own business. Finally, what I want to say is that anyone who offends our strong men will be punished no matter how far away they are. The embassy is the territory of our empire. If it is attacked, we will regard it as a violation of our empire. We reserve the right to use force. After hearing this, Yu Liang said with a slight smile, the meaning in his words was very clear. The laws of the Earth Federation have no control over the Empire, and the Empire will not be a bitch who contributes to the development and reproduction of mankind. In the end, the Empire was not afraid of any danger. After listening to Yu Liang's words, everyone at the scene frowned for a moment. They were really unwilling to give in. For a moment, 
There was nothing they could do against Yu Liang. And this was all he said. Everyone, please leave now. I have something to discuss with Mr. Ambassador alone. Tang Yunshan thought about it for a long time and slowly gave instructions to the people around him. At this point, Yu Liang would not hesitate to sever diplomatic relations with the Earth Federation and would not change anything. There would be no point in continuing to talk. Use. Soon, everyone disappeared from the chat world one after another, leaving only Yu Liang and Tang Yunshan. There is really no possibility of change? It will be difficult for me to do this if you do this. No. The reason why we chose to leave the Earth in the first place was because we didn't want to take them with us. Now it is naturally even more impossible to open immigration to them. Yu Liang shook his head very firmly. If this is the case, normal exchanges between our Earth Federation and your empire may not be possible. Even I cannot withstand the pressure of racial discrimination. Tang Yunshan frowned. Racial discrimination is a big problem in today's Earth Federation. If you slap the label of racial discrimination on your face, you will immediately become a street rat that everyone calls for beating. Now the Earth Federation pays too much attention to the so-called racial discrimination. Many things that were originally simple have become countless times more complicated, and they need to be handled with great caution. Whether you can withstand the pressure or not is your business. As for things like racial discrimination, please don't apply it to our empire. If you really want to end our relationship, that's fine. Anyway, our empire's immigration policy is absolutely nothing will change. Yu Liang smiled and didn't care at all. He was joking. The empire would rather slowly increase its population than introduce garbage immigrants. The current situation in Western Europe is enough for people to see the true face of these people. Mud can't support the wall. The empire, but there is no extra energy or wealth to squander on these people. You? You have two living planets and a vast land of 2.6 billion square kilometers. Now the Earth's environment has become increasingly worse and it is overwhelmed. We are all human beings. Why can't we help? Tang Yushan said with some hatred that iron cannot become steel. No matter how much land and resources we have, they still belong to the descendants of Yen and Huang. Chapter 306 The First Batch of Immigrants Lu Yuan seemed very excited after passing the interview. He walked out of the embassy happily and returned home. Honey! Ha ha! I passed the interview. We can immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire on the 12th of next month. In the back garden of a beautiful villa, Lu Yuan happily shared the good news with his wife by Tingting. Alas! Do we really have to give up everything on this side of the earth and immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire? It's just that Bai Tingting is obviously different from Lu Yuan. She is very satisfied with her current life. Her husband is a famous rich man and a trendsetter in the interstellar mining industry. If she gives up everything on the earth to develop in the Yin Wang Empire, it means nothing. Start from scratch. She has long been accustomed to the life of a noblewoman now and enjoys it happily every day. She doesn't understand why Li Yuan must immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. Life here in the Earth Federation is also very good. Didn't we discuss it before? Although we can live very well in the Earth Federation with our current wealth. What about the future? We always have to think about our future generations. I hope that future generations can live in a prosperous country. And more importantly, in a world full of hope and future. Seeing by Tingting's hesitant eyes, Lu Yuan sighed softly and said, Having said that, no one knows what will happen here in the Yin Wang Empire. Otherwise, we should stop immigrating first and wait and see after other immigrants have passed. Bai Tingting is still hesitant. On the one hand, she has a superior life here on the earth. And on the other hand, her husband's persistence makes her feel very embarrassed. No, the empire will not send out second invitations to people. Nor will they accept second applications. There is only one chance. If you seize it, you will seize it. If you don't say anything, you will miss it completely. I will not give up. If you don't want to go to the Empire, I won't force you. But I will definitely take the children there. Li Yuan knew Li Fu very well. And naturally he also knew the Empire style of doing things. This was how Fu Yun Group used to be. And Fu Yun Group has always been like this when selling things and doing business. Okay then. Should we discuss it with our parents, and who should pass on our wealth here on Earth? Bai Tingting nodded with difficulty. She was also someone who had gone through thick and thin with Lu Yuan. Although she enjoyed her current life, she was still a woman who put her husband, children and family first. If her husband insisted, she could only listen to her husband. What's more? In fact, she also yearns for a new life in the Yin Wang Empire. She knew very well that although her family had gotten rid of financial troubles over the years, 
Lu Yuan was not happy. She knew that her husband actually still wanted to live a life of wandering among the stars and wandering in the universe. Now this such a comfortable life will only slowly wear away his will. Why did Lu Yuan choose to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire in a hurry? Because Lu Yuan's heart is filled with the desire for interstellar and cosmic exploration. Instead of living like a decadent aristocrat in his luxurious manner. And all of this can only be realized in the Yin Wang Empire. Because the technology of the Yin Wang Empire is much more powerful than that of the Earth Federation. And its desire for expansion of the interstellar and universe is even stronger. Soon, the news that Lu Yuan was immigrating to the Yin Wang Empire spread among his relatives and friends. Especially when Lu Yuan began to transfer his property. The people around him couldn't sit still. Lu Yuan, I didn't want to say it at first. But you still have to think twice about this. The wealth here on Earth is so huge. Once it is abandoned, it will be even more difficult to build such a huge family fortune in the future. Well, we still don't know what the Yin Wang Empire is like. So think twice before you act. Lu Yuan's father said sincerely that everything nowadays is hard one, and it would be too childish to give up easily. Yes, my child, please think more carefully. In fact, we can all live a good life whether we immigrate or not. If you want to realize your dreams, you don't necessarily have to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. Those who apply to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire now are poor people who are not doing well in the country. So they want to go to the Yin Wang Empire and covet the welfare benefits of the Yin Wang Empire. We are different. Lu Yuan's mother was more realistic and gave her earnest persuasion. Relatives and friends around him all persuaded Lu Yuan to give up this idea. Many members of the Yin Wang society who had applied to immigrate to the empire like Lu Yuan had given up. Only a few people, like Lu Yuan, insisted on immigrating to the Yin Wang Empire. Mom and Dad, maybe life is pretty good now, but this is not the life I want. I am unhappy every day now, like a canary in captivity. What I yearn for is it's an adventurous life among the stars and the universe. This little family fortune on the Earth side seems huge, but it is nothing compared to Li Fu's Fuyun group. He can give up everything on the Earth side and go to another planet to build a kingdom in his heart. Pursue your dreams. This is the real life. If he had enjoyed it, Li Fu would have been carefree. But he still worked very hard and fought for his dream. I dream that one day I will be able to travel across the interstellar universe and leave my name in the magnificent era. Instead of living a superior life here on Earth and eventually being slowly buried in the dust. Lu Yuan also explained to his parents very patiently. The environment here in the Yin Wang Empire is relatively better and it is more conducive to the growth of children. You don't have to worry about life in the future, and you can better pursue your dreams. Lu Yuan's determination was made, and no matter how hard the people around him tried to persuade him, it was useless. What's more, when Lu Yuan spoke out with his dream, the voice of opposition became even smaller. A person's life should not just be about eating, sleeping, and playing. He should always do something meaningful. Soon, Lu Yuan quickly and resolutely transferred his property to his parents' name. And the company was transferred to his brother Lu Jin's name. It could be said that he was fighting against the odds. On March 12, 2041, Lu Yuan and Bai Tingting came to the embassy with their three children and several boxes. They didn't bring anything. Just some clothes. It was very simple. At this time, here at the embassy, anti-gravity spacecraft are constantly traveling back and forth between the ground and space transporting waves of immigrants to the Kyushu spacecraft in space. By now, Lu Yuan said softly, and stepped onto the spaceship without hesitation. Soon, the small anti-gravity spacecraft cut through the sky, and arrived in space in a few minutes. Arriving at the spaceport, Lu Yuan under the guidance, we quickly entered the Kyushu spacecraft. Brother Liang, the original plan was to have 100,000 people this time, but many people temporarily backed out. So now there are less than 70,000 people in the Jojo spacecraft. Zhang Lu reported to Yu Liang the situation of the immigrants. His face a little ugly. Unexpectedly, many immigrants suddenly changed their minds. It doesn't matter. They will regret today's change of heart in the future. After I go back, you will be fully responsible for the affairs of the embassy. The most important job is to attract immigrants. Yu Liang nodded. This time, he was also returning to the empire. He was a scientist not a diplomat. So a lot of work had already been handed over. So he still had to give some instructions before leaving. Don't worry. I will take care of it. John Lu nodded solemnly. The task of ambassador to the Earth Federation is not easy. 
especially the most important immigration work. The Kyushu spaceship slowly left the spaceport. Everyone on the spacecraft couldn't help but start to look at the Earth in the void. After this trip, they didn't know when they would be able to return to the Earth and take a look at this beautiful view of Azure. Lu Yuan was also holding his little son and daughter, looking at the Earth getting further and further out of the window. He was filled with emotions and his thoughts were racing. This time, it was different from thinking that he was going to the asteroid belt to mine asteroids, but that he was actually going to the asteroid belt immediately. The Earth traveled to the Centauri galaxy for 0.3 light years away and has taken root there ever since. The Kyushu spacecraft equipped with an anti-gravity system was very fast, easily reaching a speed of several hundred kilometers per second. The Earth in the field of vision became smaller and smaller and finally became blurry, finally completely disappeared into the void. The Empire's technology is so advanced. The speed of this anti-gravity spaceship is so fast. If there were such a spaceship, mining asteroids would be very simple and easy. TSK. TSK. There is gravity on this spaceship. This must be a new technology. I don't know how many technologies are still unknown in the Empire. Soon, Lu Yuan began to devote himself wholeheartedly to his new life. The journey was long, and he habitually began to study the spaceship he was riding on. After studying it, he discovered how extraordinary this spaceship was. And he was amazed again and again. Immigrants are organized into family units and are assigned to rooms. At the same time, there are many public areas on the spacecraft, such as canteens, libraries, gyms, etc. This trip is very long and takes several months. It takes time to reach the Centaur Galaxy, so there is no shortage of various living facilities on the spacecraft. Although the space is relatively small, Life is quite comfortable, with dreams and longing for the Empire. The Kyushu spaceship the immigrants boarded gradually disappeared into the dark void of the universe, heading towards the country of their dreams. Chapter 307 Towering Tree In the vast primitive tropics of Kyushu star in the Centaur Galaxy, anti-gravity spaceships descended from the sky. Their speed slowed down from fast to slow, and finally slowly suspended in the air. In the spacecraft, the immigrants from the Earth widened their eyes at this time looking at the dense, huge, and endless virgin tropical rainforest under their feet. The tropical rainforest is very dense, with countless birds rising and falling here. The tops of the trees in the dense rainforest are filled with all kinds of fruits that have never been seen before. But none of these surprised the immigrants. What really surprised everyone was the huge tree above their heads. This huge tree, which is thousands of meters high and has a trunk diameter of several hundred meters, is like a pillar supporting the sky. Generally, the huge tree crown blocks the sky and the sun, covering an area of more than 10 kilometers. The spaceship that everyone is riding in is insignificant compared to this huge tree, and can even be parked directly on a flat branch of this giant tree. The huge giant tree is a complete ecological circle. The primitive indigenous people on the Kyushu planet are constantly running on the giant tree, looking very vigilantly at the spaceship suspended in the void. And there are beasts hunting on the giant tree. And even more. Various birds build nests in giant trees. It's unbelievable. There are actually such huge trees. It's really unbelievable. Lu Yuan, like the people around him, was staring at this huge tree in stunned silence. When the Empire was promoting it, he thought that the Empire had brought some water. But after coming here to see it in person, he it feels like there are absolutely no words to describe such a huge tree. Lu Yuan and others arrived at the Centauri Galaxy because they had to pass by Jiozhou Star before heading to Yinwang Star. Li Fu and others specially arranged a program for these immigrants to come to Jiozhou Star to watch and tour the Jiozhou Star in person. Beautiful scenery. That's why we have this scene in front of us. Spaceships carrying immigrants began to play on the Kyushu Star. The highlight of the trip was naturally to come to the tropical rainforest to see this huge towering tree. The name of this tree is the Towering Tree. It is a kind of tree that is widely found in the tropical rainforest of Kyushu. It usually takes about 300 years to grow from a seedling to an adult tree before it can grow to its current size. The towering tree in front of us has a trunk diameter of more than 200 meters, a height of 1,300 meters, and a canopy covering a diameter of 15 kilometers. On the spaceship, people from the Yin Wang Empire began to act as tour guides, explaining to everyone. Every time a number was said, everyone present couldn't help but exclaimed. Sometimes they were just looking at it, and they weren't surprised. It was really shocking when I heard the specific numbers. Oh my god! It's more than 200 meters in diameter. More than 1,300 meters high. And the crown diameter is 15 kilometers. 
It's incredible. I didn't expect the giant tree in the Avatar movie to actually exist. Lu Yuan clearly heard bursts of exclamations. Someone had contacted the giant tree in the movie Avatar. The towering tree in front of him could be compared with the giant tree in the movie. Or even bigger. This is? While listening to the explanation, Lu Yuan looked at the giant tree in front of him. He saw that this huge towering tree was entangled with very thick vines. These vine-like plants were also very huge. Several meters in diameter. Like like the meridians of a towering tree. They wind up from the bottom of the tree all the way up the giant tree. And often these vines will produce fruits and so on. Various vines are full of various fruits. Some vines are like grapes. Bearing bunches of huge fruits. One by one. There are huge grape fruits as big as footballs. One after another. And the yield is extremely amazing. Some vines bear a large fruit as big as a table, which is covered by a thick sh. L. There are groups of primitive people or animals on these fruits, using their mouths or tools to pry open the fruit. The sh. L reveals the white, tender, rich flesh inside. More vines are blooming at this time, and flowers of various colors form a large sea of flowers. Countless bees as big as birds are busy among them, constantly collecting honey, and they are high in the tree branches here. A hive as huge as a house makes the surrounding primitive people and animals extremely greedy. But they dare not mess with these bees. Lu Yuan's eyes widened, and he looked at everything on the towering tree carefully. Primitive people can be said to be very carefree. Because there are always endless fruits on the towering trees. Countless fruits rotted, because they could not finish eating. Before the old fruits here were finished. New fruits had already grown on the other side. In the entire huge towering tree, Primitive people built their homes on the trunks of the trees. Among them, layer after layer, a huge tribe with thousands of people and countless animals lived together in great harmony. The spacecraft slowly approached the towering tree, and everyone could see it more clearly. Damn! This fruit is too big! One fruit can last us for many days! TSK! TSK! I decided to immigrate because I tasted the fruits on Kyushu Star. I didn't expect that these fruits are all wild. Are these bees or birds? They are so big. It feels like everything on the Kyushu star except the primitive people has been magnified many times. The closer it got to the towering tree, the more exclamations came from the spacecraft. The spacecraft flew slowly around the towering tree, very close to the trunk. And everyone could clearly feel the huge trunk of the towering tree, like a huge wall. On this wall, thick vines, huge leaves, countless flowers, all kinds of huge fruits, and primitive people with a trace of fear and curiosity. Everything all perfectly displayed in everyone's field of vision. The shocks came one after another. So much so that the exclamations in the spacecraft never stopped. Everyone was deeply shocked by this huge towering tree. Dad! Dad! I want to eat fruit! I want to pick fruit to eat! In Lu Yuan's arms. The little daughter drooled when she saw all kinds of fruits. Clamoring to pick fruits. Hey! If you pick the fruits... What will these little animals eat? Of course, it's not allowed to go out to pick fruits. But Li Yuan certainly can't say this to a child. But I want to eat fruit. The little daughter was drooling. Everything in front of her was very similar to the scene in the fairy tale. Don't worry. We will have all kinds of fresh fruits to eat after we return to the big spaceship. Li Yuan comforted him gently. Because he had received the relevant notification. This vast tropical rainforest is so rich in products that we can't eat all the animals here. It can even be said that we can't even eat a very small part of them. Look at the giant tree in front of you that is constantly rotting. You will know it by the fallen fruit. Therefore, people from the empire regularly come here to pick fruits, fruits, etc. and transport them to Kyushu Star for sale. The price is extremely cheap, but the taste is pure natural and ripe high-quality fruits, which is unthinkable on the earth. After visiting the towering trees, the spaceship began to fly rapidly on the Kyushu Star. The huge Kyushu star has a land area of 2.6 billion square kilometers alone, which is more than 10 times the Earth's land area. It is very vast and has countless strange things. Geographical scenery. After the Jiuzhou spacecraft stayed at Jiuzhou star for more than 10 days, it set off again toward Jinwang star. After visiting Jiuzhou star, the immigrants had a preliminary understanding of the empire. The empire's land area is very vast. The vast Kyushu planet is so large and the ecology is so prosperous. However, this planet is completely uninhabited until now. The empire's population is too small. Only more than 10 million. It is estimated that it will take a long time to fully develop Yin Wang Star. For the first time, 
Lu Yuan's mind truly felt the concept of vast land and sparse people. People in China used to say that the land was vast and rich in resources. But compared with the empire, it was just a joke. One Kyushu star was enough to completely explode the entire Earth. In the outer space of Yinhuang star, the Zhouzhou spacecraft slowly docked in the spaceport. Lu Yuan looked into the void. Although the outer space of Yinhuang star is not as prosperous as the Earth, everything is very orderly and arranged more reasonably. In the huge spaceports, there are huge spaceships. The spaceship and space battleship were telling Lu Yuan. Although the empire is far smaller in number than the Earth Federation in terms of numbers, it is much more advanced in terms of technology. Just look at these huge spaceships and space battleships. Spaceships carried immigrants to Chang'an City on Yinhuang Star. The imperial government also attached great importance to the first batch of immigrants. And everything had been arranged. Taking the family as a unit. Each family was arranged into the original community, so that immigrants could integrate into the life of the empire more quickly. It's pretty good. I like it here. As soon as she arrived at her new home, Bai Tingting couldn't help but take her children to look carefully inside and outside her villa. Front and back. Although it was all made of wood. It had a garden in the front and a yard in the back. The area is very large, and the surrounding environment is quite good. Lu Yuan's wife, Bai Tingting, couldn't help but said happily, A new life finally begins. The same goes for Lu Yuan. Standing at the door of his home, watching the groups of children playing freely outside. The birds singing. The fragrance of flowers and the laughter of children coming from the villas. He is also full of expectations for the future. Chapter 308 New Life in the Empire A eh? With the official establishment of diplomatic relations between the Empire and the Earth Federation. The Earth Federation's embassy in Chang'an City, Xing'an Wangxing, the capital of the Empire, has also officially begun operations. Of course, there is very little they can do at the target stage, because there are no people from the Earth Federation in the Yin Wang Empire. And there are no spaceships in the Earth Federation that dare to come to the Empire through the time and space ocean currents. So although the two sides have officially established diplomatic relations, the Earth Federation Embassy is basically basking in the sun. Nothing to do. Of course, the people from these embassies came to the Empire not just to bask in the sun. On the one hand, they actively interacted with the Imperial government in the hope that the Empire could deliver the goods ordered by the Earth Federation from the Empire as soon as possible mainly large plasma engines, spaceships, space battleships, laser cannons, and other high-tech products. On the other hand, they still refused to give up secretly and wanted to use various means to spy on the Empire's technology. So much so that the Empire caught many spies. John Fay, who is responsible for the security of the Empire's homeland, is also ruthless, as long as the spies are caught, regardless of whether they are descendants of Yin and Huang or not they will completely disappear from this world. Which severely shocked the people in the Earth Federation Embassy. There weren't many people who came over originally. But the Empire killed dozens of them at once. They didn't have enough manpower. And they were too embarrassed to ask the Empire because they themselves were disgraceful. So they could only remain silent and eat Coptus Chinensis. The pain is unspeakable. On the other side, the first batch of nearly 70,000 immigrants absorbed from the Earth were quickly integrated into the Empire. The empire was established by the descendants of the Yin and Huang dynasties. Naturally, most of everything was inherited from the previous one on the earth. Everything. And the immigrants absorbed are all descendants of Yin and Huang. And the empire has deliberately made special arrangements. So there is no difficulty at all in integrating into the empire. There is no need to worry about language communication problems. Coming to the empire is just like going home. In addition, there is no need to worry about life. The house is a villa allocated by the empire, which countless Chinese people dream of. As for medical care and education, they are completely free. And the family has there are also government subsidies for children. All walks of life in the empire are booming. And employment is very easy. It can be said that once these immigrants arrived in the empire, they did not experience the differences and changes in life in another country. Of course, the empire naturally has its own rules. And many things still need to be learned and adapted. In the Xuanwu residential area of Chang'an City, when the sun shines gently into the room, the early birds outside have already begun to chirp. The ecological environment of Yinhuang Star is very good, with a wide variety of creatures. Many birds are not afraid of humans at all, but want to be with humans, together, because from time to time the people of the empire would throw away some corn kernels, bits of bread, grains of rice, that sort of thing. 
especially in residential areas. All kinds of small birds are cheering in groups among the trees. There are many species that the biological scientists of the empire have not been in a hurry to name, because there are so many species that sometimes we have to use methods such as sparrow yellow star subspecies 1, 2, and 3 to name it. Lu Yuan gently stretched his waist, got up and opened the window. The sober air rich in oxygen ions came towards him with the slightest trace of moisture in the morning. Although this house was not as luxurious as his house on the earth, this air was definitely it's much better than the air here in the Chinese imperial capital. A new day has begun! After Lu Yuan washed himself, he went downstairs to the restaurant. His wife, Bai Tingting, had already prepared breakfast very virtuously when his family was poor. His wife used to make breakfast every day, but later when he became rich, he also hired a nanny. Now he came to the empire. Bai Tingting is back to the past again. It's delicious. My wife. My cooking skills have improved. Lu Yuan praised him while eating breakfast. In fact, this breakfast was much worse than before. After all, he hadn't made it for a long time. But he was still very grateful to his wife for being able to share hardships with him and enjoy wealth and wealth with him. Such women are already rare in a materialistic society. Some of them won't stop your mouth. After you finish eating, wake the children up quickly. Otherwise it will be bad if you miss the school bus. Although Bai Tingting said what she said, she was happy in her heart. Since coming to the empire, although she had to do many things by herself, it was much more than before. But Bai Tingting found that she was more energetic when she started doing things. Unlike before when she had nothing to do and didn't know how to pass the time. She also found that her family was more harmonious. Her husband went to work on time and she took care of herself at home. Family members communicate more than before about children, cooking, etc. And their relationship is more harmonious. So even though she sometimes feels tired, she still feels that it is all very worthwhile. She is originally a good wife and mother who puts family first. Otherwise, she would not have immigrated to the empire with her husband. Therefore, she also saw the slight changes in her family and was happy in her heart. Lu Yuan woke up his eldest son and second son who were going to school and urged them to have breakfast. He looked at the time. It was still 7 o'clock in Yin Wang star time because Yin Wang star has 26 hours in a day. It was still early. I have to go to work after 9 o'clock. I'm going to mow the front lawn. Other people's lawns are very beautiful. Our family can't be inferior to others. Lu Yuan said to Bai Tingting as he went out. The new lawn mower he bought yesterday arrived. He can finally start to mow the lawn. He has only been here for a short time. So the garden in front and the garden in the back have not been properly taken care of. Every household of the neighbors next to me is neatly maintained. And many of them are very beautiful. Humph. The sound of the lawnmower kept ringing. And the messy garden began to look better. Good morning. Mr. Lu. The neighbor next door had also gotten up at this time and was preparing to repair the flowers and plants in the yard. Because on this side of the earth, most people in China have never lived in such a villa with a garden in front and a garden in the back. Here in the empire, the citizens of the empire attach great importance to their gardens and gardens. They like to plant flowers, repair lawns, etc. whenever they have nothing to do. Morning! Lu Yuan also smiled and greeted his neighbors. In this villa-style distribution, the relationship between neighbors is naturally not comparable to that between high-rise residential buildings in Dashia. Everyone is familiar with each other and has close contact with each other. Didi, a horn sounded, and Lu Yuan took a look and saw a yellow school bus slowing down the situation on the road. The school bus is here. Go to school quickly. Lu Yuan shouted to his family. And soon the two naughty little guys were jumping to school with their school bags on their backs. Here in the empire, all children go to and from school by school bus. And parents are not allowed to pick them up. The purpose is natural. It is to cultivate children's ability to be independent. Another aspect is to cultivate a collective consciousness. Everyone is the same. Even if you are the child of Emperor Li Fu, you still ride the school bus to and from school. Naturally, it is easier for each other to integrate with each other. It is not like here on earth. You go to school in a BMW and he rides an electric car to school. They knew how to compare with each other at a very young age, were divided into circles with each other, and looked at each other with snobbery at a very young age. Children from rich and powerful families gradually develop the consciousness of being superior to others and looking down on children from poor families, while children from poor families tend to have low self-esteem, which affects their future growth and is also a kind of pressure for adults, because no one wants to behave worse than others in front of their children. 
but it's different in the empire. The empire itself places great emphasis on fairness, justice, and openness. Even the houses everyone lives in are the same. This is especially true in terms of education, which places great emphasis on this aspect. It's not just a matter of transportation to and from school. It's also the case everywhere in school, such as uniform clothing requirements, labor classes arranged by the school, etc. And all school supplies are distributed for free, etc. This is the spirit that is cultivated. The reason why the Chinese empire can do this is because the environment in the empire is very safe. First of all, there is no need to worry about human traffickers. Since the establishment of the empire, there have not been any major cases. So that the police only help old people and old women. Things like finding your way home. As for road safety, it's even worse. The road is some distance away from residential areas. And the road has special guardrails. There are also buses. School buses, garbage trucks and bicycles on the roads in the empire. There are no private cars at all. So vehicles are very rare and equipped with various high technologies. The purpose is naturally to create a safe environment for society. Therefore, parents in the empire can feel free to let their children go to school by themselves. In fact, in many countries, children go to school by themselves. However, in China, because the one-child policy has been in effect for a long time, families have few children. Various bad reports have been published. And the roads in China are indeed unsafe. Which is why children in China have to be picked up and dropped off when going to school. There are many children in every household in the empire. If they are afraid of this or that, the adults will not have the energy to work. Therefore, the safety of the social environment has always been the focus of the imperial government. And it has been working hard for it. Study hard and don't be playful. Liu Yuan looked at the two children and warned them with a smile. He thought this was good. In the past, on this side of the earth, he always arranged for drivers to pick him up and drop him off. The children were also studying in aristocratic schools. So it was inevitable that they would develop some bad habits. Now that they are here, the end corrected himself quickly. And he felt very relieved. After all, every parent wants their children to grow up healthily and well. Chapter 309 New Life in the Empire B. He kept watching the two children get on the school bus and the bus slowly drove away. Lu Yuan then relaxed and continued to mow the lawn. He was not used to it when he first came to the empire, especially when he was happy. He was still worried, but slowly he got used to it. We are used to it. Everyone is like this. Children take the school bus to and from school by themselves. It took more than half an hour to make the lawn in front of my house barely visible to people. I have never done this before. Although the villa gardens on this side of the world are very beautiful, they were done by professionals. Now I build them myself. Although the lawn was ugly, in Lu Yuan's eyes it looked much better than before. Back home, Bai Tingting was still sorting the garbage carefully. What can be recycled? What cannot be recycled? And glass that can easily hurt people. Because when the empire was first established here, many resources were brought from the earth. So they were relatively scarce. In addition, the imperial government also deliberately guided it. At the same time, the Fuyun group also developed such a resource on the earth. We are used to it. So here in the empire, all garbage is strictly classified. On the one hand, it is naturally to save resources. And a lot of garbage can be recycled and reused. On the other hand, it is naturally to get rid of the bad habits in China. In the minds of Chinese people, garbage has always been smelly. It is good to find a bag and throw it into the trash can. It is also classified. This habit is only found in some countries such as Europe and the United States. In many cases, it is even directly littering. Rivers, streets, etc. are all garbage dumps. It not only pollutes the environment and makes everyone uncomfortable, but it is also a great waste of resources. And it is also easy to develop the bad habit of not cherishing resources and littering. When it comes to the empire, the empire naturally wants to establish a new atmosphere. It is very loose in many aspects. But in this aspect it is quite strict and the garbage is strictly classified. Each family must strictly classify their garbage. Put it in bags of different colors. And put their own family label on the garbage bag for identification. If that family does not classify their garbage, the entire community will do so. Notification. The punishment reported in the report seems to be very light. There is neither scolding nor beating. But everyone wants to save face. If your family is really reported, you will not be able to hold your head up and see others in the future, especially the empire. Bian also implemented the, okay, 
honorary aristocratic system. Maybe nobility does not have any privileges. But society has great respect for people who are named nobility. Because these people have made outstanding contributions to the empire. But if your family or family is affected by something as trivial as garbage sorting. If you don't get the title of noble in the future. This is really a small gain. So after this regulation came out. Even the thorns that were difficult to manage in the past have to take it seriously. Because this is not only their own business. But also a major event related to their family and future generations. Such as spitting and littering. It cannot be seen in the empire. The empire is fine. It's just that the garbage classification is too troublesome. The classification is too detailed. His wife, by Tinkting, complained slightly. There is still a lot of garbage in this household. And it is quite troublesome to sort it carefully. After all, who doesn't want to face a pile of garbage and have to sort it carefully? This is also for everyone's benefit. If the garbage is sorted, the environment will be better and everyone will live a comfortable life. Lu Yuan comforted him with a smile and went over to help. In fact, it is good to slowly develop a habit of sorting garbage. It will be troublesome at first. But after you get used to it, you will feel that this is actually quite good. I'm going to work. Soon. After finishing his work at home, Lu Yuan was ready to go to work. After coming to the empire, Lu Yuan easily got a good job as a space transporter with his previous qualifications. Lu Yuan used to be an outstanding astronaut, specializing in leading teams to and from the asteroid belt to mine asteroids. He also established his own company and became a trendsetter in the space age. The myth of overnight wealth in the space age. Therefore, he is very familiar with the space field. Not only can he pilot a spaceship, but he can also be the captain and responsible for management of large spaceships. He is a rare talent. When he came to the company, Lu Yuan drove a small private spacecraft into space. His company was called Sky Express, which was responsible for transporting supplies in space. Although the empire has a small population, the space industry is very powerful. In the outer sky of Yinhuang Star, there are huge space buildings, sky factories, space farms, etc. everywhere. Every day, there is a huge demand for transportation between space and space. Between space and the ground. Between Yin Huang Star and Jiuzhou Star, etc. And correspondingly, various large and small transportation companies have been born. The Space Express Company where Li Yuan works is a relatively small transportation company with only more than 100 dumbbell level transportation spacecraft. And the business it undertakes is also the transportation business near the Yin Huang Star in near space. Although this Star Express is considered a small transportation company on the Empire side, if it were placed on the Empire side, it would definitely be a behemoth. You must know that Li Yuan's own company only had more than a dozen dumbbell level spaceships in the past. It was just a spaceship. But such a company was a large space company in China at that time. But the Empire is really a small transportation company. Because any space company in the Empire has hundreds of spaceships. Or even thousands or tens of thousands of spaceships. One of the very important reasons is that the price of spacecraft is very cheap within the Empire. And because the Empire vigorously develops the space industry. The output of spacecraft is very terrible. Large spacecrafts led by Fuyun Group and Imperial Heavy Industries the spaceship manufacturing company is quite impressive. Coupled with other large and small spacecraft production technology companies, the Empire's spacecraft production capacity has completely surpassed the Earth Federation. Although the Empire Federation has a large population and a long history, it cannot bear to be inferior to the Empire in terms of technology. Lao Lu, there is something I want to discuss with you. As soon as Lu Yuan arrived at Sky Express's headquarters in space, Tian Kong, the boss of Sky Express, approached Lu Yuan. Don't dare. Don't dare. If you have anything to do, boss, just give me your orders. Lu Yuan knew that Tian Kong must have something to do with him. Lao Lu, calling me boss is a big deal. We are all brothers. Brothers think highly of me, so they work hard with me. If you call me boss again in the future, I will be really angry. Tian Kong said angrily. To be honest, Tian Kong is the major shareholder of this company. But he treats the employees of the company very well. And everyone has more or less shares in it. Okay. I wonder what's wrong. Lu Yuan smiled helplessly and said. That's right. I heard that you are the boss of a large space company here on Earth. You are also the boss of an interstellar mining company that specializes in mining asteroids. You have rich experience in interstellar mining. You also know that although our company's business is very busy now, the transportation is not profitable fast enough. 
so we also plan to participate in the asteroid mining business. But the company can't find a suitable candidate for a while, so we want to discuss it with you. Now, you will be in charge of this business. Of course, we also know that mining asteroids is tiring, requires long periods of time and space, and involves certain risks. So after discussion, we are willing to give up part of our shares to you. Let's work together to make Sky Express bigger. Powerful. Tian Kong smiled and told the story of the incident. In fact, he had wanted to start an asteroid mining business for a long time. But he had never found a suitable candidate. People with asteroid mining experience are in high demand here in the Empire. Basically, they are their own bosses. Or they cooperate with others. And they are shareholders of large companies. It is difficult to find suitable people who can take charge of their own affairs. Lu Yuan is the best. Good candidate. Well, of course, there is no problem in being responsible for mining asteroids. But let's forget the shares. Lu Yuan thought about it carefully and said very seriously. No. No. You must have shares. We are all brothers and we work together. What's more? You are the person in charge of this company's new business. How can you do it without shares? Tian Kong stopped as soon as he heard this. This really doesn't work. I just came here and haven't made any big contributions to the company. I don't have much savings myself. So I don't dare to be greedy. Lu Yuan also shook his head repeatedly. It has to be there. Don't worry. The shares won't be too much. Just a few percent. We have all discussed it. If this business gets bigger in the future, we will all benefit from it. Tian Kong, you continue to persuade. This? Okay. Lu Yuan hesitated again and again, but nodded and agreed. In fact, he was very moved. He didn't expect that he would be able to return to his old job soon after arriving in the Empire. Okay. Interstellar mining is a technical job and requires luck, because the value of the mined asteroids may be very different. For the same asteroid with a mass of 100 million tons, one contains 80% iron, while the other only has 40%. The value is naturally very different. If asteroids containing a large amount of rare metals can be mined, the value will be doubled. Interstellar mining often takes a month for one trip, and astronauts have to rest and so on. In fact, they can only do it a few times a year. It is very important to find an experienced person to lead the team. Sky Express quickly launched its interstellar mining business due to the participation of Lu Yuan. Lu Yuan was very experienced and soon became prosperous in the interstellar mining business and became a famous interstellar mining company in the empire. People. Chapter 310. Interstellar Trade. In the outer space of Yen Huang Star in the Centaur Galaxy. In a huge spaceport. Spaceships are parked quietly. The smallest of these spaceships are at the same level as the Dumbo spacecraft. As for the Dumbo, spaceships and somersault cloud spaceships are also very common. Among them, there is an oval flying saucer-shaped spacecraft that is very eye-catching. This oval flying saucer-shaped spacecraft is tens of thousands of meters long, more than 4,000 meters wide, nearly 500 meters high, and has a mass of 1 billion tons. It is a huge spacecraft of the same weight class as the Huashan. On this huge spaceship, the two huge characters, Kunlun, tell the world its name. The Kunlun spacecraft is not a space battleship. There are no powerful attack weapons installed on it, because from the design in the beginning, its role was to conduct interstellar trade. The Kunlun spacecraft belongs to the Imperial Fuyun Group. In the early stage, only the Fuyun Group had the ability and capital to build such a huge spaceship specifically for interstellar trade. You must know that although the Empire now has the larger, Wangdi space battleship. There are currently only a few space battleships of the same level as the Kunlun, divided according to tonnage. Spacecraft and space battleships below 100 million tons can be regarded as small spacecrafts. Those between 1 and 1 billion tons can be regarded as medium-sized spacecrafts. And those between 1 billion and 10 billion tons can be regarded as large spacecrafts. As for those like private spaceships and space fighter planes, these can be called micro spacecraft. Although the spacecrafts of the big flying elephant, Dumbo, and somersault systems have different qualities, they are all small spacecrafts. The masses of Huashan, Alps, and Kunlun have reached 10 to 1 with a mass of 100 million tons can be called a medium-sized spacecraft. The Huangdi space battleship has a mass of more than 10 billion tons and can be called a large spacecraft. The Empire has the Huangdi space battleship stationed there. So there is no need to worry too much about the security of the Empire. Therefore, the Empire builds very few medium-sized space battleships. In addition, 
because the Empire's national strength is not too strong now. There is no need to waste too much resources on the military. Above. On the contrary. In the area of interstellar trade. With the formal establishment of diplomatic relations with the Earth Federation. The Earth side continues to attract immigrants to the Empire. And normal trade and economic exchanges between the two sides have become even more urgent. The Kunlun spacecraft was born. Such a huge spaceship was not for war from the beginning. But for interstellar trade. Interstellar immigration. Etc. So naturally many changes were made in the design. At this time. The huge Kunlun spacecraft is here. On top of its huge body. The doors of huge warehouses are wide open at this time. The robotic arms in the spaceport are busy. And standard interstellar cargo containers are constantly being transported to the spacecraft. In the warehouse above. In the interstellar era. Spaceships are getting bigger and bigger. And the specifications of this interstellar cargo container are also much larger. A standard interstellar cargo container is 50 meters long. 20 meters wide. And 10 meters high. Like a huge building. Capable of carrying a lot of freight. Snort! The robotic arms of the spaceport are busy. Containers are easily transported to each warehouse and neatly stacked. Each time a warehouse is installed. There are corresponding equipment in the warehouse to secure these containers. To prevent the scattering of inertia caused by the acceleration and acceleration of the spacecraft. This is the first formal economic and trade exchange between the Empire and the Earth Federation. The huge warehouses are filled with ultra-large plasma engines. Small plasma engines. Small spaceships and private anti-gravity universes produced by the Empire. Spaceships, virtual machines, biotech drugs, etc. are all things that people on Earth dream of. At the same time, there are naturally indispensable local products from Yin Wang Star, such as giant pearls, sea clams, etc. from the ocean of Yin Wang Star, even a flower, a tree, etc. that is very common on Yin Wang Star, as long as it is made into a potted plant. There will be people on this side of the earth waving their banknotes to buy it. Of course, the most popular fruits are the fruits from Jojo Star. But obviously they have to be docked at Jojo Star before being loaded. It is impossible to say that they are transported to Yen Wang Star for loading. High-tech products and local specialties make up the product list for the first interstellar trade. You can imagine how huge the trade surplus with the Earth Federation will be by then. Inside the Kunlun spaceship, Fang Zheng was accompanying Li Fu to inspect the spaceship. After all, it was the first time to officially conduct interstellar trade with the Earth Federation. It was also a major event for the entire empire. Li Fu Fu a founder also attaches great importance to this. The development of interstellar trade can greatly promote the development of the empire's economy. Compared with the poor population of the empire, the billions of people on this side of the earth are a huge market. If this huge market is used to promote the development of the empire's economy, this is an issue currently being discussed by both the imperial government and the Imperial Emperor. Lao Fang, judging from the current situation, our trade surplus with the Earth Federation will definitely be very huge by then. And we currently do not accept the Earth Federation's use of their Earth currency for settlement. We have to deal with this issue. Think carefully about entering. We should have thought about it beforehand. What exactly do we want to obtain from the Earth Federation? We must exchange it for things of equal value. Li Fu looked at the huge warehouses and the mountains of materials and thought of a problem. The Earth Federation has a huge demand for the products of the Empire. But the Empire does not have much demand for the products of the Earth Federation. In terms of technological products, the Empire does not need any products from the Earth at all. As for food and other products, the Empire has plenty of them. There are large areas of land on the two planets for the Empire to grow food. Not to mention that the Empire now uses space. Farmland. There is no food grown on the interstellar world at all. Therefore, it can be said that the Earth Federation has very few products that can be exported to the Empire. It is estimated that only specialty products such as ceramics, wine, silk, etc. have a market. We can't say that we are exporting cars and ships to the Empire. The Empire has been slowly popularizing private anti-gravity spaceships. These cars, ships and other completely obsolete products can only be used as collections when shipped over. Because there are strict regulations on the roads of the Empire and things that burn gasoline cannot be used on the roads. We have been discussing this issue for a long time, but we have not come up with a good plan. Hearing Li Fu's words, Fang Zheng also frowned with a headache. He and other cabinet ministers had long been aware of this problem, but they had never been able to come up with a good solution. We will definitely not accept the currency from the Earth Federation. 
their currency is devaluing every year. If we cannot spend it, our wealth will continue to evaporate, which is equivalent to a blood transfusion for the Earth Federation. But this economic and trade exchanges cannot be stopped. The huge market here in the Earth Federation can greatly promote the development of our empire's economy. It is impossible to say that we can't eat because of choking. Zhong Yuan and I also discussed for a long time, and finally felt that if there is no way for the time being, we can only accept the Earth Federation's payment in gold and other precious metals. Otherwise, the Earth Federation's method of balancing the trade balance is really it's too little. That's all we can do. Our own market is still too small. Li Fu nodded slightly after hearing this. Although with the rapid development of the interstellar mining industry, the production of gold has greatly increased and the price of gold has continued to decline. It is still a precious metal with extremely high value and gold is widely used in industry. It is also a very important raw material, widely used in industrial fields, with a wide range of uses and great effects. And all along, before the Earth Federation was established, countries around the world carried out economic and trade transactions. In addition to using international currencies, such as the US dollar for settlement, they sometimes also use gold for trade settlement, especially in the event of war. The currencies issued by countries around the world cannot leave the country at all. If you want to trade internationally, you must use gold for settlement. The world's largest gold reserves in Uncle Sam's hands were obtained by selling arms and weapons to both warring parties during World War I and World War II. At that time, Western European countries were in dire straits and had to transfer the gold they had plundered from all over the world over hundreds of years to Sam's in the hands of the uncle, especially Britain and France. The two old colonial empires were beaten by Germany and were under great pressure. They could only continue to use gold to buy arms, allowing Uncle Sam to rise rapidly during World War II. The amount of gold reserves represents a country's ability to make international currency settlements and balance trade deficits. On this side of the world, both the national level and ordinary people have the habit of collecting gold. Various gold and silver jewelry made of gold are selling very well. And small yellow croakers made of pure gold are also bought by countless people, which are regarded as an important means of maintaining and increasing the value of assets. Therefore, whether it is at the national level, industrial level, or private level, gold is still acceptable. And it is one of the few things in the Earth Federation that can be used to balance the trade deficit. There are many things that need to be paid attention to in trade between countries especially interstellar trade. Li Fu, Fang Zhang and others also have to think more about it. Chapter 311 A fortune, eh? The huge, Kunlun, spacecraft started slowly. All supplies, cargo, etc. had been loaded and started flying towards the Jiuzhou Star. On the Jiuzhou Star, there would also be a batch of Jiuzhou Star's special products that needed to be brought to Earth. Side sales, such as Kyushu Star's specialty giant fruits, etc. In the spaceship, Lu Yuan was sitting in his room, looking at the Yin Huang star exuding the halo of life in the void outside. He was very excited. He did not expect that he would have the opportunity to return to Earth soon. I originally thought that after immigrating to the Empire, even if I could return to Earth in the future, I didn't know it would be a matter of years and years. However, just over a year later, I was able to return to Earth. And it was still on a business trip. The Kunlun spacecraft is too huge. Although it is a spacecraft built and operated by Fuyun Group, Fuyun Group generally only engages in some relatively high-end high-tech industries, especially in this kind of interstellar trade. Among them, Fuyun Group is not interested in selling local specialties. Therefore, about half of the cabins in the spaceship are Fuyun Group's own products, all of which are high-tech products. The remaining half of the warehouse is also based on the principle of benefiting everyone and making money together. So Fuyun Group will this half of the warehouse is open to other companies within the empire. On the one hand, this can enrich the product types of this interstellar trade. On the other hand, it can support the empire's own trading companies, especially the interstellar trading companies. As long as someone tastes the sweetness, this interstellar trade will definitely develop rapidly in the future. Just like the Earth's asteroid mining industry and space industry, the Star Express company where Lu Yuan worked was originally engaged in the transportation business. Because of Lu Yuan's joining, the company also launched an asteroid mining business, which has also experienced rapid development in the past year. As soon as the news came out that the Kunlun spacecraft was heading to the Earth for interstellar trade this time, Lu Yuan instinctively felt that it contained endless business opportunities and wealth. He came from the Earth, 
and he knew very well what the earth had to do with it. The desire for products from the empire. Even if you just sell some random things from the empire, you can sell them at a high price, sell them at special prices, and make a lot of money. Therefore, after discussing with Tian Kong and other shareholders, Liu Yuan felt that this opportunity was rare and should be grasped to lay the foundation for the company to enter the field of interstellar trade in the future. This time, Liu Yuan Star Express Company also rented a location and brought some specialties from Yin Wang Star to prepare to try the waters here on Earth. The warehouse on the Kunlun spacecraft is rented out based on volume because it contains policy support. The price is very cheap. It does not become very expensive because of the long distance and time required to sail. This is why reason why it was rented out so quickly. There are many people in the empire who have the same idea as Lu Yuan. Various companies, large and small, have quickly rented out the remaining general warehouse locations. Some people also want to return to Earth to visit their relatives. It's not expensive anyway. It would be better if you can make money. The Yin Huang stars outside the window gradually became smaller in the field of vision. And the void further away was dark and dim. The starlight from who knows how many light years away provided the only light. It takes more than two months to reach Earth. It's really a long journey. Lu Yuan closed the window, sat on his bed, picked up a book and looked slowly around. The room was very small, with only a small bed, a bathroom, and a few potted plants to reduce some of the negative aspects of the journey. Mood. Space is precious. Especially when you come back and you have to bring a lot of immigrants with you. So naturally you can't afford this luxury. You have to do this. The Kunlun spacecraft uses an anti-gravity power system. Driven by the powerful anti-gravity power system, the spacecraft accelerates very quickly and sets off towards the Kyushu star at a speed of several hundred kilometers per second. After staying briefly at Jojo star for a few days and bringing the specialties of Jojo star, the spacecraft flew directly to connect the space-time ocean currents of the solar system without stopping at all. Two months later, in the outer space of the Earth in the solar system, the huge Kunlun spacecraft slowly parked in a large military spaceport. The spacecraft was so big that ordinary civilian spaceships could no longer park and could only temporary military spaceport. Of course, the military spaceports on Earth are also very idle now, because the construction of new space battleships has not started at all. Without super large plasma engines, the Earth Federation cannot build large scale space battleships. With the resistance of the Kunlun spacecraft, the entire Earth also became commotion, especially the capitalists in the Earth Federation. They have long been eager to obtain various products from the Empire. As long as they can get the goods, they can resell them. You can make a lot of money. In the virtual world, in a specially open chat world, figures kept flashing. And the figures of famous businessmen on the Earth were revealed. As soon as they appeared in this virtual world, they immediately used curious words. He looked carefully with his eyes. This virtual world was specially created by the Empire to trade interstellar goods. Once you enter it, it is somewhat similar to setting up stalls in the game. Each stall has detailed information about the goods, which can be read with just a thought. The quantity, quality, model, price and other information of the products sold by this stall owner. If you are satisfied with all aspects of the information, you can bargain with the stall owner, discuss the details of the specific transaction, etc. Of course, if you want to see the goods, you will naturally have to go to the corresponding warehouse in a Kunlun spacecraft in the real world to see the actual goods. Trade models like this are becoming more and more mainstream with the birth of the virtual world. The two parties do not need to actually meet each other. The transaction can be completed in the virtual world before. Of course, the premise is mutual trust and there will be no difference in physical goods. In and out. At this time, in the virtual world, businessmen from the Earth Federation came to the virtual world one after another, like sharks smelling the smell of blood. In a short period of time, tens of thousands of people entered. You must know that this virtual chat world has set a threshold. It is not possible to enter it casually. At least it requires a price increase of hundreds of millions or a representative of a large trading company to enter. However, in a short period of time, the entire Earth Federation has tens of thousands of people entered it. Kuza Star Fruit is on sale. All kinds of pure natural Jojo Star Fruit. Private anti-gravity spacecraft for sale. This is a virtual machine from the Yen One Empire. If you want the goods, hurry up. Signboards were also hung up on each stall. These stalls selling virtual machines and spaceships were all opened by Fuyun Group. As soon as the signboards were put out, 
They attracted the attention of countless people. Everyone flocked to the stalls one after another. Start negotiating with Fuyin Group. Whether it is an anti-gravity spacecraft or a virtual machine, it is very common on the Earth now. Like a virtual machine. Because the Earth Federation has not mastered biosensing technology. It cannot be built at all. No new virtual machines have appeared in these years. So secondhand the price of virtual machines has also skyrocketed. Everyone regards their virtual machines as extremely precious. And there are endless attempts to steal and rob virtual machines because the price of secondhand virtual machines is too high. So after the Empire and the Earth Federation established diplomatic relations, countless businessmen asked the Empire when they would sell virtual machines again. You can imagine how many people would eye this huge piece of cake. The local products of Yin Wang Star are the giant clam pearls from the ocean of Yin Wang Star and the blood ginseng from the snow-capped mountains in the frigid zone. Among the many stalls, Lu Yuan stall sign has also been hung up. However, compared to the Fuyun Group stall, there is naturally no way to attract so many people to flock here. In comparison, Lu Yuan only brought some Yin Wang star specialties this time. And such specialties are the most common. Many people, like Lu Yuan, only bought some local specialties from Yin Wang star and nothing else. But even so, because there were too many people entering, there were more or less people coming to each stall to ask for relevant information. And the same was true for Lu Yuan. Sir, what is this snow ginseng of yours? How do you sell this giant clam pearl? How much does it cost? At Lu Yuan's stall, the people gathered began to ask questions. A lot of information could enter their minds directly. In fact, there was no need to ask at all. Of course, the prices of these local products and the like, before arriving on Earth, were not available on the Empire's side. People are also unified. All products can only be sold upwards on the basis of a certain price. And low price competition with each other is not allowed. For example, this giant clam pearl is classified according to pearl size, color, texture, weight, etc. The price of Class A goods must be higher than 10,000 Imperial coins. You can buy it for 20,000 or 30,000, but it cannot be lower than 10,000. This is naturally done to ensure that everyone's interests are maximized. Otherwise, it is easy to compete with each other at low prices. Sir, this no ginseng is a unique plant here in Yin Wang Star. It grows similar to ginseng and American ginseng on this side of the earth. From the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, its medicinal effect is even better. These snow ginsengs of mine are all the ginseng is collected from the high-altitude snow-capped mountains above 2,000 meters above sea level in the northern Yunda snow mountains of the Yin Wang Star. They are pure natural products. And all the snow ginsengs are over a hundred years old. In terms of selling price, a snow ginseng that is over 300 years old sells for 1 million yuan. A snow ginseng that is 200 years old sells for 800,000 yuan. And a snow ginseng that is 100 years old sells for 500,000 yuan. Although there was information that people could see automatically, Lu Yuan still had to explain it to the guests. Chapter 312 A Fortune B Although the snow ginseng mentioned by Lu Yuan is very old and is still pure natural wild snow ginseng, the price quoted is also very high. The price is quoted in imperial currency. In fact, the price everyone agreed on this time was in Lu Yuan the quoted price is based on missing zeros. In other words, the price of 300-year-old snow ginseng is 100,000 yuan. The price of 200-year-old snow ginseng is 80,000 yuan. And the price of 100-year-old snow ginseng is 50,000 yuan. In fact, this price can be used to reach Grandma's house. These snow ginsengs are everywhere in the Beiyun Dashua Mountains above Yen Huang Star. They are no different from the weeds we usually see. The environment in the Beiyun Dashua Mountains is very suitable for the growth of this plant. In addition, are there any people collect these things? So snow ginseng is really everywhere. Of course, it cannot be said that the high amount of ginseng is really bad. In ancient times, the amount of ginseng in the Changmai Mountain of the Earth was also very large. Can it be said that the medicinal effect of ginseng is not good? Snow ginseng has been analyzed by imperial scientists. Its efficacy is not much different from that of ginseng. It can also replenish qi and nourish people. The reason why there are so many is because the climate and environment here on Yin Huang Star are not polluted. Plus the snow no one is mining ginseng. So the quantity will naturally be very large. While ginseng on this side of the earth is already very rare. On the one hand, it is due to uncontrolled logging. And on the other hand, the climate on this side of the earth is constantly changing and the environment is polluted. 
the number of wild ginseng is naturally getting smaller and smaller. This price is too expensive. Hearing Lu Yuan's words, Tang Rong frowned. Although the quantity of wild ginseng is becoming increasingly scarce, especially old wild ginseng, rich people on this side of the earth, especially in China, like to collect some old ginseng, vintage ginseng, if it is really the Yaren Mountain produced in Chang'e Mountain on the earth for hundreds of years. The price will naturally be very expensive. But this is snow ginseng. Snow ginseng from Yen Wang Star. And everyone still doesn't know the specific medicinal effects. Etc. But the people from the Yen Wang Empire are just bragging. Tang Rong is the head of Tang Group. Tang Group is a well-known pharmaceutical group in China. It has been passed down for hundreds of years. In ancient times, it was the supplier of royal medicines to the palace. In modern times, it is no longer limited to traditional medicines. Traditional Chinese medicine has also made great achievements in Western medicine. This time, I also came to purchase medical products produced in the empire. When he saw the snow ginseng, his eyes also lit up. This snow ginseng may not necessarily be comparable to the ginseng on this side of the earth, but it should not be too far different from American ginseng. Sir, the price is not expensive at all. This snow ginseng is produced in Beiyun Dashiya Mountain. There is no pollution in the empire's Yen Wang Star. These snow ginsengs are all old. And their medicinal effects are only better than those of Earth's ginseng. Good. Lu Yuan responded with a smile. Are you Mr. Lu Yuan? You actually returned to Earth. Tang Rong didn't pay attention at first. But when he took a closer look, he discovered that it was Lu Yuan, a man who was originally a trendsetter in China's domestic space field, but later decisively chose to give up his huge immigration empire. You are? When Lu Yuan heard this, he took a closer look and did not recognize Tang Rong for a moment. After all, the two people were not in the same field. People in the medical field always pursued the idea of making a fortune in silence and kept quiet. So Lu Yuan naturally did not recognize him. My name is Tang Rong. I work for the Tang Group. I do some small business in medicine. Tang Rong introduced himself in a humble tone. He was right. Compared with the wealthy people in the interstellar mining field who are worth hundreds of billions or trillions, Although the Tang Group also has a large business. It is really it can only be said to be a small business. Nice to meet you. I've heard about Mr. Tang's family of traditional Chinese medicine for a long time. No. No. I have always been very familiar with Mr. Lu. I am so lucky to meet him today. The two complimented each other. Mr. Lu. Is the medicinal effect of this snow ginseng really as described in the description? I haven't tried it. And I'm not a medicinal herb maker. But I can rest assured that the testimonials issued by the scientists from the Imperial Academy of Sciences will not be fake. Well, I want to purchase a batch. But the price is too expensive. I wonder if it can be lowered. Mr. Tang, to be honest, this time we come to Earth. I am not the only one who sells snow ginseng. Other people also sell snow ginseng and other specialties. You might as well go and have a look first. Shop around. And finally we can talk. What's the price? The two kept talking about snow ginseng. Tang Rong naturally wanted to purchase a batch. As a member of a family of traditional Chinese medicine, he was also looking forward to the medicinal properties of plants from alien planets. It would be perfect if we could find many common medicinal materials from alien planets to replace the precious medicinal materials here on Earth. Of course, for some of Earth's increasingly depleted resources, such as this wild ginseng resource, if we could find a replacement here in the Empire, the quality is not bad either. Lu Yuan dismissed Tang Rong and continued talking to others. The sale had just started, and it was impossible to lower the price. Lu Yuan estimated that other people were more evil than him, so the price could only be higher, not lower. Sir, how do you sell this big blue pearl of yours? A man shrouded in white robes, who could be easily identified as a wealthy man from the Middle East, said to Lu Yuan, All pearls, regardless of color, are priced at 100,000 renminbi for those with a diameter of 10 to 15 centimeters. 500,000 renminbi for those from 15 to 20 centimeters in diameter. And 1 million renminbi for those between 20 and 30 centimeters in diameter. When Lu Yuan saw that he was a rich man in the Middle East, he had to kill him severely. This kind of giant clam pearls are very common in many empires on Yen Wang Star. If you look for any sea clam, you can find big pearls inside. Lu Yuan had heard that someone even discovered a giant pearl with a diameter of more than one meter. Originally, the price that everyone discussed was two zeros less than Lu Yuan's quotation. However, 
based on the principle that if you encounter a rich man who refuses to kill, your conscience will be condemned. Lu Yuan also made a price with dark intentions. This price is too expensive. Can it be cheaper? After the local tycoon heard the quotation, he shook his head repeatedly. Although he was a tycoon, it did not mean that he was a fool. The quantity of these big pearls was huge, so naturally they were not a scarce commodity, and the value would naturally be greatly reduced. It's not expensive at all. This comes from Yen Huang Star, which is 4.3 light years away. Just transporting it from Yen Huang Star is a sky high price. And you also know that it is very dangerous in the ocean currents of time and space. If you are not careful, you might die in there. But we are risking our lives to make money. Lu Yuan naturally shook his head again and again, joking. It was impossible to reduce the price. Then I purchased 1,000 pearls under 15 centimeters, 100 pearls under 20 centimeters, and 10 pearls under 30 centimeters. I don't know how to transfer the money. The wealthy man thought about it carefully and realized that his new mansion needed something special from Yin Wang Star to decorate it. Although it was expensive, it was still acceptable if the quantity was not large. My quotation is an imperial currency. We do not accept Earth Federation currency. So if you really want to buy it, please sell the materials to our empire first in exchange for imperial currency before purchasing. Lu Yuan smiled and explained that the empire's currency is a constant value energy currency. And the currency of the Earth Federation is constantly depreciating. So naturally it cannot accept the currency of the Earth Federation. I didn't expect it would be such a troublesome thing. Don't you want to accept the currency of our Earth Federation? The rich man frowned when he heard this. He couldn't even use his credit card to make purchases. This service experience was seriously bad. Well, we can accept payment in gold or equivalent goods from Earth. Of course. We only need the goods we need. Lu Yuan pondered for a while, and then slowly spoke. Gold? Okay, I'll pay in gold. After listening to Lu Yuan's words, the rich man thought for a while and nodded. With the development of the interstellar mining industry, gold production has also increased significantly. And the amount of gold reserves here on Earth is still amazing. Soon, Lu Yuan discussed the details of the transaction with a Chinese tycoon named Muhammad. When the time comes, the Chinese tycoon will transport the gold to the Kunlun, and they can inspect the goods together and take the goods away. A deal is done. Mr. Muhammad, do you need any other goods? Like this snow ginseng. It comes from the Beiyun Dashua mountain in our Yin Wang star. The medicinal effect of snow ginseng is comparable to that of ginseng. These are all aged. Snow ginseng has unique effects. I'm sure you know some about it. It's very effective in replenishing the body's vitality. Lu Yuan was secretly delighted. This single order made Lu Yuan a huge profit. With an order of 160 million imperial yuan, Lu Yuan could earn hundreds of millions of imperial yuan. Don't think that these hundreds of millions of imperial yuan are not much. You must know that the empire implements a constant value energy currency. And one yuan can buy 100 kilowatt hours of electricity, which is very valuable. In the empire, everything is very cheap. From spaceships to daily related food, supplies, etc. These hundreds of millions of yuan are enough to buy several large and small flying elephant spaceships in the empire. So Lu Yuan also began to work hard to recommend other products to this rich man in the Middle East. Naturally in order to make more business. Anyway, the things he brought here this time are very common in the empire. And he would make a lot of money if he sold them. Special profit. Ginseng? I know ginseng. It is indeed a good thing. When Muhammad heard this, he nodded repeatedly. Over the years. With the growth of China, Chinese medicine has gradually become famous around the world. And the concepts related to traditional Chinese medicine have begun to spread all over the world. This Muhammad has taken ginseng before. And the effect is natural. Lingbung. I also know that the Chinese like to collect these wild-aged ginseng for occasional needs. Look! These snow ginsengs are all aged and pure wild ones. Their medicinal effects are amazing. They are a very good choice whether you use them yourself or collect them. If you want to buy some, they are not expensive. Then have some. Chapter 313 Living Advertisement Interstellar trade is in full swing. Rich people from all over the earth are waving gold in their hands and buying the top specialties on the earth. Things from the Yen Wang Empire are extremely popular. Although everything is not cheap and is extremely expensive. But after all, it comes from a few light years away. So it's natural that it's more expensive. In less than a week, all the various goods brought by the Kunlun spacecraft were sold out, and in exchange for a large amount of gold. 
There were also a huge number of Earth specialties that filled the warehouses. These goods once it is shipped back to the Empire and sold. It can make another profit. Every time it comes. The profit is hundreds or even thousands of times. Of course, the Imperial government and the Fuyun group took away the bulk. And the remaining bits and pieces are enough for small companies, small businesses, and individuals like Star Express to make their mouths full. And they can also go back to look at your relatives and friends here on Earth who don't have immigrants. In the Imperial capital of China, Lu Yuan returned to his home. After Lu Yuan's parents heard the news, they were overjoyed. They didn't expect Lu Yuan to come back so quickly. Naturally, they had to prepare a table of good food and chat while eating. Let's talk about the basic situation of the Yin Wang Empire. Of course, after receiving the news, the Yin Wang Society and Lu Yuan's former friends or associates also came one after another or sent out invitations to drink tea together and talk about what they had seen and heard in the Yin Wang Empire. Some things had been visited in person. It's better to talk to people. In a manner hidden among tall trees in the Yinju Empire, Zhang Xianzu, Qian Jin, Xiao Guangming, Zhou Wenhong and other Yin Wang society bosses were all present. Lu Yuan acted as the protagonist of this banquet was surrounded by everyone. Brother Lu, what's going on here in the Yin Wang Empire? Hurry up and tell everyone. To be honest, we also want to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire, but it will require us to give up our huge property on the earth. And it is difficult for us to immigrate to the Yin Wang Empire. You are so determined. Qian Jin, who is over 40 years old, does not look like the young master he once was when he was in college. As the roommate of Emperor Li Fu of the Yin Wang Empire in college, he also learned a lot about the Yin Wang Empire from Li Fu. He only talked about immigrating to the Yin Wang Empire. He was still very hesitant. Yes, yes, we guys have been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Xiao Guangming also nodded. Everyone present wanted to continue hanging out with Li Fu. But if they wanted to hang out with Li Fu, they had to put down everything on the earth and go to the empire. But at their level, many things are really difficult. It's not just about letting go. Perhaps there are still many places in the empire that are not as good as earth. However, everything in the empire is developing very fast and there are many opportunities. In addition, the environment of the empire is very good. I mean not only the natural environment, but also the social environment. As long as you have the ability, you can actually get up again soon. Li Yuan smiled and spoke slowly. He definitely did not regret his choice to immigrate to the empire. Although he had to do many things by himself in the empire, his life was much more comfortable. The social security was good. So that everyone no one has any worries. Don't worry about the house being too expensive. You can't afford it. Or you don't have a house to live in. The empire allocates houses for free. Couples who marry at the same level can get their own house for free. There is no need to worry about not being able to afford medical treatment if you are sick. All medical care is free. And citizens must go to the hospital regularly for physical examinations. This phenomenon of being sick and unable to afford medical treatment is impossible in the empire. You don't have to worry about your children's education. Schools near your residential area accept them unconditionally. Everything is free. Even if you move your job, you can have your children transfer to another school at any time. There will be subsidies for having more children. There are rewards. The social environment is safe. And children can go out and play freely. So they have less to worry about. Not to mention, you don't have to worry about being homeless when you get old. No one will demolish the house you've lived in all your life. A complete pension system is enough to let you enjoy your old age. It's completely different here on earth. Ordinary people struggle all their lives for houses, cars, and children. Being unable to afford housing, medical care, and retirement is even more of a problem. As for the rich and powerful, they are also full of worries. I am afraid that I will lose my current life accidentally. In short, there is a lot of pressure from society. The most important thing about living in the empire is that you don't have any worries. You don't have to worry about too many things. You can do what you like with peace of mind. Everyone can live a relatively simple and relaxed life. Lu Yuan slowly explained the humanistic and social environment of the empire. Is this kind of environment really good? Not everyone will become lazy. Anyway, there is nothing to do and no need to worry about food, clothing, housing and transportation. Someone asked softly after listening. No, on the contrary, everyone works very hard in the empire because the empire also has an honorary aristocracy system. Maybe you are unfair, lazy and idle and it will not affect your own life, but it will affect your family. Humiliated, 
because of the existence of the honorary aristocracy system. My descendants will be disgraced in the future because of what I have done now. And everything is public in the empire. Lu Yuan shook his head. Anyway, from what he has seen and heard during his time in the empire, young people work very hard. And the more leisurely people are elderly people. Even many old people are still working even when they are old. People are restless and must find something to do for themselves. So that they can live more comfortably. What do you think the future will be like for the empire? Zhang Xianzu, who had not finished speaking, asked slowly after listening. The future of the empire will be extremely brilliant. The only thing restricting the development of the empire now is its population. The empire's technology is extremely advanced. Small spaceships like the Dumbo and Dumbo spaceships are very cheap in the empire. You can buy it for just tens of millions. In the empire, any company in the space field often has hundreds of spaceships. It is very common to have thousands or tens of thousands of spaceships. The Star Express company where I work has more than 100 spaceships. Spaceship. This is the smallest company. Lu Yuan said categorically that although he had not lived in the empire long enough, he had seen all aspects of the empire and he was full of confidence in the future of the empire. You can buy a spaceship for tens of millions? How can it be so cheap? Damn it. A company with hundreds of spaceships is still the smallest company. It's hard to live. I have been engaged in interstellar mining for decades. And now I only have less than 20 spaceships. Not even a fraction of what others have. It's so black-hearted. The Dumbo spaceship was sold to us for billions of dollars, which is the currency of the empire. I didn't expect that the internal price was only tens of millions. It's very, very shameful. When everyone heard this, they all started shouting. On the one hand, they were shocked by the Empire's advanced technology. This space technology enterprise often has hundreds or thousands of spaceships. This strength is enough to become the strongest on Earth. It is a big technology company, but it is the most ordinary one in the Empire. On the other hand, they also deeply feel the evil side of the Empire. Damn. Although everyone can buy large and small flying elephant spaceships from the Empire. The price difference is really too far. Billions of Imperial Yuan. This is Imperial Yuan. If you want to buy a spaceship, you must also find a way to exchange the Earth currency in your hands into Imperial currency. After conversion, it will take at least hundreds of billions of Earth Federation currency to buy one. An Imperial spaceship. However, in the Empire, it is very easy for Imperial citizens to buy spaceships by themselves. And the price is very cheap. Even within the Empire, many private individuals buy large and small flying elephant spaceships for special trips to Kyushu Star. It is conceivable that I know how indignant everyone present was at this time. Don't be aggrieved. If you want to enjoy the same treatment, you can choose to immigrate to the Empire. Actually, the Empire has just begun to develop. And there are many opportunities. I just immigrated to the Empire last year. Because I have experience in mining asteroids. The company also gave me some shares. After calculation, I now have several ships. It's a spaceship. Of course, I think the most important thing is that in the Empire, under a fair, just an open environment, ordinary people can stand upright without asking anyone. Lu Yuan also smiled when he saw everyone's angry expressions. Hearing Lu Yuan's words, the scene was silent again. When it came to immigrating to the Empire, everyone immediately stopped. Everyone was worth a lot. If they really gave up all this and went to the Empire, everyone would really be reluctant to do so. No matter how good Lu Yuan's bragging is, they have never experienced it personally. Not to mention that everyone is living quite comfortably here in the Earth Federation. Anyway, they have money in their hands. And they don't know how comfortable they are in a materialistic society. It's just that although they have money, they still have a lot of worries. Because of the establishment of the Earth Federation, many things inside the Earth are slowly opening up. Competition in the space industry has caused many original members of the Yin Huang society to go bankrupt. And this trend is becoming more and more obvious. Many newly emerging forces relying on political power have had a huge impact on the Yin Huang society. We simply cannot defeat them. Because others have the power, and we only have money. This is why everyone hurried over after seeing Lu Yuan come back. They all wanted to know about the situation in the Yin Huang Empire, and see if it was really possible to immigrate there. Chapter 314 the house is touching. In Earth China, the Empire is not just coming to Earth to conduct interstellar trade this time. There are many people on the ship who were among the first batch of immigrants to the Empire like Lu Yuan. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, or for various reasons, the Empire this side arranges for them to return to the Earth again. 
There is no doubt that these people are living billboards. How are they living in the empire? And whether they are living well or not? This is definitely the topic that people on earth are most concerned about. Especially many who have already had the idea of immigrating to the empire. People. Letting people like Lu Yuan personally promote it is a thousand times more effective than the immigration propaganda advertisements carefully planned by the empire's embassy on earth. In a private room of a restaurant in the imperial capital of China, a table of more than 20 people were enjoying delicious food and discussing something. All of them had eyes and were dressed in fashionable white-collar clothes. These people came from all over the country to study in the imperial capital and finally stayed in the imperial capital. People who fight hard in the imperial capital. Brother Yu, how is the Yin Wang Empire doing? Everyone seemed a little absent-minded while eating. And Guoling, the squad leader when they were studying, asked hurriedly. This time everyone gathered together to ask Yu Guangan, who immigrated to the Yin Wang Empire, about the specific situation in the Yin Wang Empire. Even though everyone is dressed like a dog. In fact, most of them are not doing well in the imperial capital. In this day and age, there are as many college students as dogs, especially here in the imperial capital. Although the income here in the imperial capital is pretty good, many people here have annual incomes of 20,000 to 30,000 yuan. And some can even reach 4,500,000 yuan. But it has been five or six years since everyone graduated. And it is not that this young man who has just graduated is very eager to start a family and start a career. However, here in the imperial capital, houses are always a pain in everyone's heart. A large table of more than 20 people present could count on one hand the number of people buying a house. And they basically drain the savings of their parents and barely paid. Down payment and monthly payments are still very stressful. Many people don't dare to get married because they don't have a house. Even if they get married, they don't dare to have children because the pressure is too great and child care, education, etc. are huge expenses. Generally speaking, everyone looks glamorous on the outside. But in fact, they are all under tremendous pressure. They cannot afford to buy a house, get married, or have children. In the end, the better outcome is to leave the city sadly and return to their hometown. Live a simpler and easier life. But young people are often unwilling to do so. They all want to try and struggle. However, only a few succeed. And most people live a very tiring life. Yes, brother you. Tell me quickly. Does the Yin Wang Empire really allocate villas to everyone? Is it as good as advertised? Others also shouted along. Yu Guangan looked at the people at the table. Opposite him. The once familiar girl had now become a stranger. Because of the huge pressure in the imperial capital. The two of them had been in love for seven years and finally parted ways. Yu Guangan Guangan also saw through everything in the imperial capital. Finally, after hearing about the immigration policy of the Yin Wang Empire, he decisively chose to immigrate. Facts have proved that he is right. In the empire, Yu Guangan lives a very relaxed life without any pressure. And his career development is also booming. This time, he was also sent to the earth by the company to carry out interstellar trade. Only then opportunity to get together with everyone again. I think my wisest choice was to immigrate to the empire. Look, this is my house in the empire. With a garden in the front and a garden in the back. In the style of a small villa. With a total area of more than 1,000 square meters. This is Dongbing Community. Qilong District. Chang'an City. Where I live. All the rows of villas are uniformly planned villas. Each household has one set. Which is completely free of charge. Yu Guangan recorded everything about his home through a virtual machine. And now sent it to everyone present and then explained it in detail while playing it back. In the video, villas are hidden among the flowers and trees. Yu Guangan's garden has been beautifully repaired by him. The garden behind is full of flowers and plants. The streets where the villas are located are clean and tidy. And there are all kinds of things on Yin Wang Star. The flowers and plants were in full bloom. And it was particularly beautiful. After seeing it, everyone present couldn't help but want to own a house like this. Not to mention anything else. This point alone is enough to make many people present choose to immigrate to the empire. After Yu Guangan's personal words, everyone believes that the Yin Wang Empire really provides free houses to everyone and is not a scam. People, in addition to housing, education and medical care are also free. You will definitely not go wrong by immigrating there. Yu Guangan didn't say too much. Some things, if he said too much, no one would believe him. After he finished speaking, he ate his food quietly. To be honest, he was used to eating purely natural and naturally mature things here in the empire. Returning to Earth after having sex, 
I always feel that the food I eat does not taste the same. Really worthy of a house. It's still a villa. More than 1,000 square meters. With a garden in the front and a garden in the back. Everyone present watched the video one by one. And were extremely jealous. A house is what these young people want to own most. Even if they have bought a house. It is impossible to say that they can afford such a villa. In China. Let alone the imperial capital. In any city. Such a villa area with a very large area and a very beautiful surrounding environment is not something that ordinary people can have. Not to mention that in the imperial capital where every inch of land is precious. It is even more remote. It's an unattainable dream. Even if you sleep and dream. You don't dare to think about owning a villa like this in the imperial capital. Brother you. Is it easy to find a job in the empire? Is it easy to develop? Hearing what you said in person. I have decided. I want to immigrate to the Yin Huang Empire and live in QTM's house. I don't want to work for a house all my life. And I don't want my parents to suffer with me. I am still young and I want to pursue my dream. Everyone was silent for a long time. The squad leader Guoling drank a large glass of beer in one gulp. He seemed to have made up his mind and used vulgar words when speaking. Me too. I've wanted to immigrate for a long time. Now that I haven't broken up with my girlfriend, we can immigrate together. Isn't it just a house? Let's immigrate to live in a villa. Guoling started. And soon everyone else followed suit and made up their minds. Clamoring to immigrate. Scenes like this appeared all over China. In each virtual chat world. The people who came back from Yin Huang Star became the focus. Everyone gathered around these people to inquire about the situation in the empire. Including people like Lu Yuan. From the upper class to ordinary people like Yu Guangin. Each person has become a living advertisement causing the already very popular imperial immigration to explode in an instant. At the Empire's Embassy in the Earth Federation, Imperial Ambassador Jean Lu was holding a copy of the latest data with a smile on his face. Sure enough, this word-of-mouth reputation is much better than the advertisements we have put so much effort into promoting. Bringing these immigrants back to the Earth again, and having them say it themselves, will be extremely effective. Judging from the latest immigration application data, not only the number of applications received every day has doubled, but also the proportion of people with higher education levels among those applying for immigration has skyrocketed. Many engineers, scientists, entrepreneurs, and other people who are doing well here on Earth have begun to apply for immigration to the empire. This is a good phenomenon. Although the quantity of immigrants is important, the quality is also critical. It's no wonder that John Liu is all smiles at this time. As the empire's ambassador to the Earth Federation, his most important job now is immigration work. Absorbing immigrants from China. The number of immigrants. The composition of immigrants. Etc. These are all related to the key to Jean Lu's performance evaluation. In the Centauri Galaxy, which is 4.3 light years away, Emperor Li Fu received the latest news from the Earth. And he was smiling from ear to ear. Old Fong. Look at it. Our Kunlun spacecraft made a trip to the Earth and almost emptied the gold reserves of various countries in the Earth Federation. The profits from interstellar trade are really too high. Every common thing we have here on Yen Wang Star can be sold for hundreds of thousands or millions when shipped to Earth. Many people have made a fortune this time. It seems that we should adjust the taxes on this interstellar trade. This is simply huge profits. How can we not charge more taxes? Li Fu looked at the detailed data and was actually thinking about raising taxes. He didn't even think about the fact that his private Fuyin group was the one that made the most money from this interstellar trade. Not only has interstellar trade made a lot of money, but according to the feedback from Zhang Lu, the number of people applying for immigration to the empire has doubled, and many middle and upper level people have begun to appear among those applying for immigration. It can be seen that we the original plan worked, and some immigrants were returned to Earth. After their publicity, our immigration work became much easier. Fong Zheng also received the news. So he knew it very well, and had a smile on his face. Now the empire lacks nothing. The only thing it lacks is population. The vast land of 2.7 billion square kilometers of two living planets is enough to easily support a population of hundreds of billions. However, the current population of the empire is only more than 10 million, which is far from enough. The empire needs population. On the one hand, it strongly encourages births. And on the other hand, it introduces immigrants from China, the Earth Federation. As long as the population reaches several hundred million, the empire can start a new expansion. Immigrating to the empire is right. I am going to consider opening up cultivation to all people 
and teaching the Yuanli method to every citizen of the Empire. Our population is still too small. In this case, we should find ways to greatly improve the quality of our population. Li Fu nodded, and slowly proposed a plan that he had long wanted to implement. To popularize the practice of Yuanli method to the whole people, and let every citizen of the Empire practice Yuanli method. Chapter 315 Cultivation for All Is it too early to open up the practice to all people now? To be honest, the Yuanli cultivation method is the biggest reliance for our empire to achieve its current achievements. If this Yuanli cultivation method is leaked to the earth, what will happen in the future? Their population base will soon exceed ours. After hearing Li Fu's words, Fang Zheng thought for a long time and said very worriedly, Fang Zheng's worry is not unreasonable. The Yuanli practice method is very powerful. Practicing the Yuanli method can not only exercise the human body, but also greatly improve people's physical fitness. The deeper the Yuanli practice method, the healthier the body will be. Powerful. This may not be reflected too much on the ground, but in the universe, especially in terms of pilots of space fighter planes, there is a very big difference between those who have practiced the Yuanli method and those who have not practiced the Yuanli method. The powerful body, the quality allows Yuanli warriors to withstand pressure that ordinary people cannot bear. After cultivating to a profound and powerful level, you and Li warriors can even physically traverse the universe and destroy stars with just one hand. Of course, such a powerful you and Li warrior needs to practice for who knows how many years, and also needs a complete training method. In addition to strengthening the body, it can also develop the brain. The utilization rate of the human brain has always been very low. The brain utilization rate of Einstein, an outstanding scientist who is said to be born once in a century, has only just reached two-digit percentages. However, through practicing Yuan use the power method to develop your brain. The deeper the cultivation, the higher the degree of development of the brain. There is no doubt that this will be of great help to scientific research. The scientists of the Imperial Academy of Sciences were all originally from the Fuyun Group Scientific Research Institute. Every one of them cultivates Yuanli. And their brains gain development. So scientific research can make rapid progress. Although the number of people is far from the scientists of the regional federation. In terms of technology, it is far superior to that of the Earth Federation. There is another even more fascinating thing. That is, cultivating you and Link can greatly increase a person's lifespan. As long as you practice a little and have some achievements, you can gain a lifespan of hundreds of years. If you practice at an intermediate level, you can live for thousands or even tens of thousands years of life. If you can cultivate to a higher level, it is not impossible to obtain eternal life. Possessing many magical abilities, this is the most precious thing about the Yuanli method. And it is also the reason why countless civilizations in the universe dream of obtaining complete cultivation methods and systems. It makes sense for Fang Zheng to worry about Z. Once this method is leaked, it will be a disaster for the Empire. Maybe the Empire may not be technically excellent, but it must not lose the advantage of Yuanli method. Because these are the wings for the Empire to take off. Once others also possess it, the Empire will have no advantage. Don't worry. It's absolutely impossible to leak it. Our population is still too small. On the one hand, we are vigorously increasing the population. And on the other hand, we are trying to find ways to improve the quality of the population. Only in this way can we consolidate our foundation as soon as possible and continue interstellar expansion and colonization earlier. Li Fu said very confidently that the control of the Yuanli method is a very important thing. The super-civilized Han technology empire has many ways to control it. The most effective one is to encrypt the brain of the recipient when teaching the Yuanli method. Of course, this involves the use of Yuanli. This is like watching some encrypted files, movies, etc. We can watch it ourselves. But if we want to send it to others to watch, it is not. Okay, because the content has been encrypted and can only be used once. That's good. We have to speed up the pace. The population is too small. Protection measures here in the Centaur Galaxy should have been put on the agenda. Defense systems should be built at the entrances and exits of various space-time ocean currents. However, our population is too small and the manpower is too small. It's really in short supply. Fang Zheng nodded. As long as this Yuanli method is not leaked, there will be no problem. The Empire was only established a few years ago and is full of waste. It occupies a huge galaxy and two living planets. There are too many places that need to be managed well. Too much. Soon. When the news of the opening of comprehensive cultivation spread throughout the empire, the entire empire began to boil. 
the empire's senior officials and scientists had a special cultivation method that could increase people's lifespan and physical fitness. Ordinary people in the empire have known about this for a long time. And even the Earth Federation has known about it. After all, there is more or less someone in every family who has been an employee of Fuyun Group. And many of them are scientists. There are many benefits of practicing the Yuanli method that you can't see otherwise. The effect of eternal youth can still be seen. I didn't notice that the Emperor Li Fu was already over 40 years old. He looked no different than he did more than 20 years ago. There is no difference. Li Fu's wife Wang Yun is still like a girl. You must know that she is the mother of eight children. Scientists at the Imperial Academy of Sciences. Personnel in the military. High-level government officials. Etc. Are all people who have cultivated Yuan Li. And they all seem to be eternally young. There has been no change in decades. The knife could not leave any mark on their bodies at all. In some families, the husband is a scientist from the Imperial Academy of Sciences and has been taught the practice. But the wife is not. After more than 20 years, the gap becomes very obvious. Therefore, within the Empire, some people have already reported this issue to Li Fu, Fang Zheng and other high-level Empire officials, requesting that more people be allowed to obtain cultivation qualifications, even in exchange for contributions. Li Fu decided to open up all-round cultivation this time which can be regarded as catering to everyone's wishes, so that the whole country rejoiced, who didn't want to live a few more years, and who didn't want to have a good body and a strong brain. Ha uh ha! -huh. Great! The empire has finally opened up cultivation to all people. Although my parents are already old, and the cultivation effect is not ideal, it can still strengthen the body and prolong life. His Majesty the Emperor is mighty. Long live His Majesty the Emperor. Are you cursing His Majesty the Emperor? Long live it? With His Majesty's current Yuanli cultivation, you are really cursing him. Don't let anyone hear it. Otherwise you won't have to buy eggs and vegetables in the future. Someone will give them to you. To your door. The people of the Empire cheered and cheered. This cultivation of Yuanli has long been no secret. Starting from elementary schools in the Empire, children have been practicing since childhood. The Academy of Sciences of the Empire, the Imperial Army, etc., you can also get the cultivation method as long as you enter them. So everyone knows that. Now let's open it up to everyone so that everyone can practice it. In the Qilong district of Chang'an City on the Yinhuang Star, there is an area that has always been very mysterious. The Yuanling Warrior Temple is directly under the leadership of Emperor Li Fu and is a place dedicated to teaching Yuanling cultivation techniques. Generally, when you are practicing for the first time, you come here to receive the guidance of the Yuanli method. When you have broken through to the next level, you come to the Yuanli Warrior Temple to receive the guidance of the next step of practice. It is all step by step to reach a level. Then teach the next level of practice. The advantage of doing this is naturally to prevent the leakage of Yuanli cultivation methods. And all the Yuanli cultivation methods taught are special Yuanli cultivation methods. If you break through to the next level, you will not be able to obtain the next level of Yuanli cultivation for a long time. Method. This Yuanli cultivation will continue to regress. This is also to prevent the leakage of Yuanli cultivation. Of course, as long as you don't betray the empire, you will naturally be able to obtain the next step of Yuanli cultivation. But once you betray the empire, or have second thoughts about the empire, everything will be read out by the people in the Yuanli warrior temple when the Yuanli method is taught. And then it will be miserable. Imperial Yuanli warrior temple. The Yuanli warrior temple does not look as majestic or solemn as expected. It is very ordinary. Even the sign at the door is very unnoticeable. If you don't know this place, you will definitely not notice it. At this time, there was a long queue at the Yuanli Warrior Temple, ranging from old men in their 60s to young beauties in their prime. Everyone was waiting patiently. Everyone has a little bit of desire. The Yuanli practice method. The empire is finally open to all. So everyone is hurried here very early, ready to accept the guidance of the Yuanli method of practice, and strive to set foot on it as soon as possible the path of spiritual practice. Nowadays, many things about the cultivation of Yuanli are slowly being made public within the empire. Everyone also knows that the sooner the cultivation of Yuanli is naturally better. It is best to practice it from a young age. When you are older, the human body is one ages. The effectiveness of spiritual practice will be greatly reduced, and it will be difficult to achieve anything. In the Temple of Yuanli Warriors, among the thousands of rooms, Yuanli warriors wearing special uniforms are currently guiding people on the practice of Yuanli warriors. The uniforms of these people are uniformly black, with only the imperial royal label embroidered on the collar. 
indicating that they are retainers belonging to the Imperial Royal Family. And there are also signs indicating the corresponding Yuanli cultivation level. I saw these people sitting cross-legged in front of them. People who came to receive practice guidance had their eyes closed at this time. Between their brows, the Yuanli warriors in the temple gently touched them with their index fingers. Both had their eyes closed. More than 10 seconds later, the Yuanli warrior who taught the skills in the temple retracted his index finger. And both parties gently opened their eyes. The method of Yuanli practice has been taught to the other party's brain. As long as you practice according to this method, you can step on it. The path of spiritual cultivation. Thanks. The person who was taught the practice couldn't hide the joy in his heart. At this time, he knew very clearly how to practice. So he naturally felt grateful to the person who taught him the practice. You don't need to thank me. If you want to thank me, just thank His Majesty the Emperor. From now on, as a Yuanli warrior, you must keep in mind the Yuanli warrior creed. Yes, having great power means taking on greater responsibilities. Always remember that you are a descendant of Yin and Huang. Well, go ahead. Chapter 316. It's time to expand. Time passes day by day, and in a blink of an eye, we have arrived in 2050 AD, in the middle of the 21st century, in the back garden of the Imperial Palace. Li Fu, Fang Zheng, Zhong Yun, Shen Bin, Yu Liang and other senior officials of the Empire gathered together, talking and laughing among themselves and they were all obviously in a good mood. Over the years, through the painstaking efforts of everyone, the empire has gradually become prosperous and powerful, and a powerful country that is completely different from the Earth Federation has begun to rise. The empire's population, on the one hand, benefited from the empire's policy of vigorously encouraging and forcing births. The natural growth rate of the empire's population was very high, and every household had at least three or four children. On the other hand, the most important thing is that the Empire has been introducing immigrants from the Earth Federation for a long time. This is the bulk of the effort and can quickly increase the Empire's population in a short period of time. In less than 10 years, the Empire's population finally exceeded 100 million, most of whom were immigrants or descendants of immigrants absorbed from the Earth Federation. After all, if the original population of more than 10 million people wants to rely on natural growth to reach 100 million, it is impossible to achieve it in such a short period of time, no matter how high the fertility rate is. With a huge population, and the empire attaching great importance to education, not only children must receive complete compulsory education from an early age, but even adults receive corresponding free re-education every year, and many immigrate from the Earth Federation. People who come here do not have a high level of education at first. After coming here, they can improve their education and skills through adult re-education. The combination of general compulsory education and adult re-education is the hard work the empire has made in improving the quality of the population over the years. Because the empire, from the top to Lifu and Fang Zheng, down to the ordinary people, deeply understands the truth that if without a certain level of cultural foundation, it will be very difficult to adapt to the interstellar universe era. If the empire wants to embark on the road of interstellar expansion as soon as possible, it must improve its population and population quality. Only if these two aspects are grasped, all kinds of talents will continue to emerge like carps crossing the river, thus greatly promoting the development of the empire's technology, economy, culture and other aspects. Of course, on the other hand, the empire has opened up all people to practice, and everyone can practice you and Lee. This has greatly improved the quality of the population, and various geniuses have continued to emerge in the empire, not to mention the geniuses among the younger generation. Many people who were originally unknown here on Earth began to become dazzling after immigrating to the Empire, practicing Yuan Li, and receiving re-education from the Empire. Among them was a man named Du Chao. He was fond of studying when he was a child and did not know the value of studying. He learned to go out to work with others before graduating from high school. When he grew up, he began to regret it and wanted to study on his own to improve his cultural level. However, in the Earth Federation, there are so many things to worry about here and there is no way to calm down. Later, I emigrated to the Empire. After arriving in the Empire, on the one hand, the various benefits of the Empire were very good and there were not many worries. At the same time, the Empire also valued re-education and Yuanli cultivation. This Du Chao actually started to shine, and he successfully passed the Imperial Academy of Sciences exam through self-study, became a scientist, and slowly became brilliant in the field of scientific research. 
It's a bit unbelievable to say that a man in his 30s, after immigrating to the empire, turned out to be a wage earner and turned into a scientist, achieving a magnificent transformation in life. However, this is the fact. What really happens in the empire is just one example. The immigrants who come to the empire basically undergo earth-shaking changes. There are no big worries or worries. So many immigrants began to pursue their own values after coming to the empire. The dreams that countless people had buried deep in their hearts since childhood began to sprout, driving them towards their dreams. As the saying goes, those who are close to vermilion are red and those who are close to ink are black. In a good social environment, a fair, just, open and transparent society. The people of the empire are very involved in large and small matters within the empire because they know that their voices can be conveyed to the upper echelons of the empire. The suggestions that they have carefully considered and are useful to the country will be implemented quickly. Every effort and contribution they make will be fairly rewarded. And the positive energy of the entire society will begin to be exerted, affecting everyone. It turns out that on this side of the earth, people who like to use back doors and take advantage of loopholes came to the empire and found that they could get things done quickly without using the back door. Originally, on this side of the earth, people were defensive about others and did not dare to help others because everyone I have been deceived too much. But in the empire, the phenomenon of old people falling and having no one to help them does not exist at all because everyone does not have to worry about being blackmailed when helping the elderly or that their good intentions will lead to painful lessons or that good people will not be rewarded. The descendants of Yin and Huang have been willing to help others since ancient times and they also know that a drop of kindness should be repaid by a spring. However, in modern society, there are too many scammers who take advantage of people's kindness to make money. There are too many people to deceive these kind people. Good intentions are not rewarded. But bites occur frequently. So everyone is separated from each other. Sometimes even if they see someone in need of help, they dare not lend a helping hand. And the entire society has become indifferent and heartless. This is a vicious cycle. Good people are not rewarded. Naturally, no one will be good people. Kind people are bullied and justice is not served. Naturally, everyone gradually changes. But it is completely different here in the empire. In a good social environment, the elderly will not think about blackmailing others by falling. Because even if they are old, they still don't have to worry about anything in the empire. Neither their own lives nor their children and grandchildren. With future generations to worry about, there is naturally no incentive to blackmail people. Good people are rewarded. And everyone likes kind people. The empire's news media are also happy to report such news. A good social environment continues to circulate. And even people who were originally bad will slowly become good people. Therefore, since the establishment of the empire, the empire police department has nothing to do. Basically, they help old ladies and grandfathers catch lost pets and find children who don't know where to run to play. The empire was developing prosperously in all aspects. Li Fu. Fang Zheng and others were naturally very relaxed and had no pressure. So they could talk and laugh happily when sitting together. I heard that the Earth Federation is very lucky this time. The indigenous civilization in the Canis Minor Galaxy is still in the primitive slave civilization stage. Allowing them to easily obtain a planet with a land area of more than 800 million square kilometers. News when it was transmitted back to the Earth. The whole Earth was boiling. While Yu Lian was eating the delicious fruits collected by Jojo Star. He chatted with everyone very casually. Today was considered a private party. And we didn't really have anything to discuss together. So it was very casual and casual. Chat. I have also heard about this incident. It is said that all major stock markets on Earth have skyrocketed because of this incident. China's domestic stocks have even reached their daily limit more than 10 times. Zhong Yun also smiled and nodded. Obtaining a living planet is of great significance to the current Earth Federation. It is no less than giving the Earth Federation a dose of stimulants. After the failure of the Canis Major Galaxy, the Earth Federation has finally taken the most important step on the road to interstellar colonization. You are really lucky. But this also shows that in the universe, there are great opportunities. Sometimes the difference in the development level of civilizations is enough to cause crushing. Chin Bin curled his lips and felt a little jealous when he saw the Earth Federation's interstellar expansion. Because the Empire has not officially stepped out of the Centaur Galaxy and is still nestled in the Centaur Galaxy. That's right. It seems we have to hurry up and we can't limit ourselves to the Centauri Galaxy. Otherwise, if the Earth Federation is occupied by then, we will be passive. Zhong Yun nodded in support. What they think is beautiful. Although they have occupied the Canis Minor Galaxy, 
The Earth Federation does not have the ability to carry out large-scale immigration. Isn't the Earth Federation President Zhao Dongyet coming to our empire soon? I guess he is coming to our empire for help. Yes, without large spaceships or space battleships. It would be difficult for the Earth Federation to immigrate to new planets on a large scale. Yu Liang said without hesitation that although the Earth Federation's technology is constantly developing, it still relies on the empire in many key areas. The population of our empire is still too small. There are only two cities in Jiuzhou Star with a population of less than 5 million. If we expand now, we will not have much population to develop. The population is one big problem. Fang Xing also spoke. It wasn't that he didn't want to expand, nor that he didn't have the strength to expand. But the population was too small. And no one would develop it even if it expanded. I think it's almost time for us to expand into the interstellar space. Everyone knows about the polar bears on Earth. They expanded from a small principality and finally became the largest country on Earth. We can do the same. Maybe the population is very small now. But we can occupy the resources in advance. And sooner or later our population will slowly expand. Li Fu listened to everyone's conversation with a smile on his face. Whether the Empire should expand into the interstellar world now is also a controversial topic within the Empire. But Li Fu knew that it was almost time to go out and expand. The Empire obviously had a population of hundreds of millions. And the Centauri Galaxy had been managed like an iron bucket over the years. There was no need to worry about a powerful civilization invading the Centaur Galaxy and damaging the Empire. Create a threat. Well, it's time to go out and expand. Let's encircle the territory first. Chapter 317 Zhao Dongya's Visit The entrance to the space-time ocean flow from the Centaur Galaxy to the solar system is here. After these years of management by the Empire, every entrance and exit in the Centaur Galaxy is closely guarded by the Imperial Army. The originally dark, gloomy, and cold void is now turned into a bright world, surrounded by huge spaceports and space fortresses. And various monitoring instruments are constantly monitoring the place. Changes at the entrance and exit of the ocean can be known immediately if there is any disturbance. In addition to monitoring enemy invasions, another role here is to provide assistance to the Empire spaceships. The trade exchanges between the Empire and the Earth Federation are now relatively close, and several spaceships fly between the Empire and the Earth Federation almost every month, bringing the Empire's technological products and specialty products, bringing back specialties to the Earth and an increasingly large number of immigrants. The Empire's population can exceed 100 million. And naturally it is indispensable to draw a steady stream of fresh blood from the Earth Federation's Chinese side. Although trade exchanges are relatively frequent, they are all carried out by large spaceships. There are only a few spaceships a month. Most of the time, it is very quiet here. And the Imperial soldiers stationed here do not have any problems. Things to do. A huge spaceship flew quickly from the Centaur Galaxy. The closer it got, the slower it became. It got closer and closer to the port here, and its huge body began to reveal itself. Yishin! This is a medium-sized spacecraft as huge as the Kunlun, with a mass of 1 billion tons. The oval flying saucer-shaped alien is full of streamlines, as if it is an alien flying saucer from a science fiction movie. This spacecraft is also the same as the Kunlun. It is a spacecraft specially used for interstellar trade and often travels between the Centauri Galaxy and the Solar System. However, this time he was not going to the solar system, but to greet a big shot from the solar system. In the Yishin spacecraft, important members of the imperial cabinet such as Prime Minister Fan Zheng, cabinet ministers of finance Zhong Yun, and Yu Liang were also present. Column. It is obvious that the people who come to the empire this time are very special. Otherwise, they would not have to come here to greet them in person. Zhao Dongye is not an ordinary person. He is now in his 50s, and has sat on the throne of the President of the Earth Federation. He is young and promising. In the spaceship, Zhong Yun took Xiao Dongye's detailed information and studied it carefully, and couldn't help but sigh. Of course it's not simple. Zhao Dongye, Qian Jin, and Li Fu, the four of them in the dormitory, have two top leaders. One is the President of the Earth Federation. The other is the Emperor of our Empire. And the other Qian Jin is not simple either. He is a giant in the field of virtual games in the Earth Federation. Yu Liang also smiled and said that he was very familiar with Li Fu's experience. He had met several of his roommates in college. And Zhao Dongya left a very deep impression on him. I have seen Zhao Dongya before. It is indeed not simple. Fang Sheng also nodded. He had been in contact with Zhao Dongya before. At that time, 
Zhao Dongye was just a local leader in China. He came to Fuyun Group to attract investment, and he was impeccable and mature. He hurried to the empire just after he became the president of the federation. It is obviously not just to develop the Canis Minor Galaxy. There must be other things. He is ambitious, capable, and powerful. And his plans are very big. I guess they definitely want to fight with the Lorne Empire again. And they probably came here hoping to join forces with us. No way. The Earth Federation has just conquered the Canis Minor Galaxy. And the territory has not been consolidated yet. Could it be that they want to attack the Lorne Empire? Since the Lorne Empire suffered a loss last time. It should have lost time and space. The entrance to the ocean flow should be tightly sealed. It is not easy to conquer the Lorne Empire. After hearing this, Yu Lian raised his eyebrows. Isn't it true? You will know when he comes. He came to power with iron-blooded methods. Many disobedient forces within the Earth Federation were wiped out. Fong Zhum smiled confidently. Not long after the Yishan arrived here, the space-time ocean flowed out of the entrance. In the originally empty void, Suddenly, with colorful brilliance, spaceships appeared in the void. The first few spaceships are not big. They are only on the same level as the big flying elephant spacecraft. But behind these spaceships, a huge spaceship reveals its majestic body. The Huashan Space Battleship. The most powerful space battleship in the hands of the Earth Federation. Unexpectedly arrived at the Centauri Galaxy this time. And temporarily became the exclusive interstellar vehicle of the President of the Earth Federation. Welcome the President of the Earth Federation to the Yin Huang Technology Empire. Please follow the instructions to park all spacecraft at the spaceport. A guide was quickly sent to the spaceships and battleships of the Earth Federation. Zhao Dongye and his group of more than 10 spaceships slowly parked in a nearby spaceport under the guidance. For the safety of the Empire, it is natural that space battleships and spaceships from other forces are not allowed to enter the inner circle of the Centauri Galaxy, especially the living planets that are not allowed to approach the Empire. Therefore, all these spaceships, space battleships, etc. must park at the spaceport here, and then transfer to the spaceship prepared by the Empire to go to the Empire's living planet. In a huge spaceport, the Huashan has been parked. In the spaceport, Fan Zheng, Yu Liang, Zhong Yun and other high-level Empire officials came to greet them in person. The Earth Federation reporters, the Empire reporters, etc., who had already come out in advance also arrived early, already waiting patiently within the specified area. This is the first official meeting between the leaders of two powerful countries and mankind, so both sides attach great importance to it. The Empire has also prepared a grand welcome ceremony, and all specifications are received in accordance with the highest standards. Amidst the flickering lights, Zhao Dongye and his wife Li Shui walked out slowly. Zhao Dongye, dressed in a black suit, had a tall figure, bright eyes, and exuded a strong aura. His wife Li Shui, herself she comes from a top family in China. Although she is over 50 years old, she still looks very young and elegant. She wears a Chong San that perfectly shows off her graceful figure. The two of them had smiles on their faces and waved their hands gently to signal everyone. Children holding flowers rushed up to present flowers. The two of them were also very amiable and took photos with the children to express their gratitude. Welcome to the Empire. The team led by Fang Zheng came forward to express welcome and introduce the team he led to each other. Zhao Dongya also came prepared this time, and the team he brought were all important personnel with real power in the Earth Federation. For example, Earth Federation Minister of Defense General Shuiyu, Earth Federation Finance Minister Osleys, Earth Federation Speaker Jones, Earth Federation Secretary of State Ajinsa, etc. Each of them is a pivotal figure in the Earth Federation. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, for coming to greet me personally. Xiao Dongye's voice was very loud, and he held his hands with Fang Zheng, instantly killing countless lights. Under the leadership of Fang Zheng, both parties played the national anthem, raised the national flag, and reviewed the guard of honor. The whole procedure was very cumbersome, but it was necessary to go-go because the representatives of both sides are from their respective countries. After the welcome ceremony, Xiao Dongye and his party switched to the Huayishan, spacecraft and first headed to the Imperial Kyushu Star for a friendly visit and inspection. There are currently only two newly established cities in the Empire's Kyushu Star, with about a million people here. Because there is no night here in Kyushu Star, many people in the Empire are not used to living here in Kyushu Star. Mr. President, this is the Towering Tree. It is a unique tree on the Kyushu planet of our Empire. 
It belongs to the giant wood family. It can grow to thousands of meters high and hundreds of meters in diameter. The diameter of the tree crown covers an area of more than 10 meters. Many kilometers. This is the largest freshwater ocean on the planet Kyushu in our empire. Its area is larger than the Mediterranean Sea on Earth. The deepest point is more than 5,000 meters. And the freshwater resources it contains are dozens of times the total amount of freshwater on Earth. Mr. President, these are the primitive indigenous people on the Kyushu planet. Their current development stage is still in a very primitive tribal stage. They have only mastered the ability to drill wood to make fire and use stone tools. On Jiuzhou's star, Fang Zhen accompanied Zhao Dongya and his group to play everywhere on Jiuzhou's star. There are many kinds of natural scenery on Jiuzhou's star. For example, the original tropical rainforest is definitely a must-see. Fang Zhen also acted as a temporary commentator. He naturally looked very proud in his words. There is no doubt that even though he is used to seeing all kinds of beautiful scenery here on Earth, Zhao Dongye is still deeply shocked by the colorful and majestic scenery on Kyushu Star, especially the towering trees, fresh seas, etc. Wait, I have heard many people talk about this towering tree. Today, seeing it in person is really shocking. It is incredible that such a huge tree actually exists. The resources your empire possesses are truly enviable. The freshwater resources possessed by a Danhai Sea exceed the total freshwater of the earth dozens of times. Zhao Dongya also kept praising him. Only after he came to the empire could he truly feel the wealth of the empire. Just one Jiuzhou star already had too much wealth that made people envious and jealous. What's more? What's more? The empire still has a Yin Wang star. But the total population of the empire has only just exceeded 100 million. With such vast land and resources and a sparse population. It is a vast land with sparse people and vast resources in a true sense. Chapter 318 It is impossible to settle with earth currency. In the capital of the empire, Xingyan Huangxingchangan City, in the imperial palace, the imperial emperor Li Fu held a grand welcome ceremony to welcome the arrival of Earth Federation President Zhao Dongya. Of course, when Li Fu and Zhao Dongya stood together and clasped their hands, countless lights flashed nonstop and the two people represented the two most powerful forces in mankind. After a tedious welcome ceremony, the two sides also officially entered the negotiation stage. Zhao Dongye came to the empire this time, but he brought a very large team here to seek cooperation and exchanges in many fields such as economy, technology, military, culture, etc., among which the most the important ones are the three fields of economy, science and technology, and military. Decades have passed in a flash. When I was in college, I would never have imagined that our two brothers would meet in our current identities in the distant Centaur galaxy. Zhao Dongya looked at Li Fu who was directly opposite him. His appearance had not changed much from when he was in college. Time seemed to be unable to leave a trace on his body at all. Although he took good care of himself, time was ruthless and there were wrinkles between the corners of his eyes. His true age can already be seen. Recalling the scene when we were studying together in the same dormitory at Huashu Imperial University. Too many memories came to mind. Time passed by, and in the blink of an eye, they were both leaders of a huge country, especially at the beginning. Although Zhao Dongye treated everyone equally, and did not look down on Li Fu, who was born in a rural area, he would never dare to imagine that he could predict that Li Fu would become the emperor of a powerful empire. After all, Li Fu at that time the way he behaves. He will at best be an outstanding scientist in the future. The world is unpredictable and changes too fast. We humans have now taken our own steps in the interstellar and universe. And we will continue to rise in the interstellar and universe in the future. Li Fu also nodded. There are too many things that are difficult to predict. This may be the wonderful thing about everything. The two chatted with each other about their daily life. Which was a way to reminisce about the good times they had in college. The people accompanying them also had smiles on their faces and listened carefully. This was the first time for many people to know that Zhao Dongya and Li Fu had been together in the past. He was actually a college classmate and roommate. So naturally he was a little surprised. Soon, the talks between the two sides returned to the main topic and began to carry out exchanges and talks around economy, science and technology, military, culture and other aspects. Your Majesty the Emperor, in our economic and trade exchanges, we have always used gold to settle or use barter. This is very detrimental to the economic and trade exchanges between the two parties. I think we can consider using the currencies of both parties for settlement. Speaking of formality, Zhao Dongya also referred to Li Fu as His Majesty the Emperor. 
which obviously meant that business was businesslike. Before discussing this issue, I think I should talk to Mr. President about the monetary policy of our empire. Our empire implements a constant value energy monetary policy. The currency will never depreciate if the trade between the two sides uses the currency of our empire. In terms of calculation, we naturally have no opinion. But if it is settled using Earth Federation currency, then I'm sorry that I cannot agree. When it comes to economic and trade issues between the two sides, this settlement method has always been a major conflict between the Earth Federation and the Empire. The Empire relies on its powerful technological products to form a huge trade surplus with the Earth Federation. And all of these trade surpluses are made using gold. Settlement completed. Therefore, although the Earth Federation's gold reserves are very rich, and with the development of interstellar mining, gold production has continued to increase. But after these years of economic and trade exchanges, the Earth Federation's gold has basically been transferred to the hands of the Empire. If this continues, there will be no gold at all in the Earth Federation that can be used to purchase products from the Empire. The Empire's demand for goods from the Earth Federation has never been large. And they are all traditional products, such as porcelain, silk, clothes, and other things of low value. The Earth Federation has not once or twice responded to the Empire, requesting the use of Earth Federation currency for settlement. But the Empire has always refused. Just kidding. If the Earth Federation currency is used to settle the settlement, the Earth Federation will go crazy and buy up everything the Empire has. By then, what is the use of the Empire holding a bunch of Earth Federation waste paper? It will depreciate every year. So there is no need for it at all it is impossible to agree to their request. Unless the Imperial currency is used to settle trade between the two parties. In fact, the Imperial currency is very popular on the Earth Federation. One yuan of imperial currency can even be worth thousands of regional federation currencies on the Earth Federation. Because everyone wants the empire. Currency to purchase the products of the empire. The Earth Federation is unwilling to use the empire's currency for settlement. Because there is no doubt that this means that the Earth Federation needs to hoard some of the empire's currency as foreign exchange reserves. This means that a lot of things need to be exchanged for these things. And this transaction is not worth it. The Minister of Finance of the Earth Federation is the former Minister of Finance of Uncle Sam. And he knows this clearly. Because of this matter, the two sides often had frictions. And both sides refused to give in. Now even though Zhao Dongye told Li Fu personally, Li Fu still adhered to his principles and joked that the Earth Federation currency was depreciating every year. And he was stupid to use the Earth Federation currency to settle accounts. When it comes to the first issue, the two sides are at a stalemate. Neither side is willing to back down so they can only avoid this topic and start discussing the next topic. We hope that both of us can send overseas students to each other and deepen mutual exchanges. Zhao Dongye chose an issue that was not very important in his opinion and sent overseas students to each other. This kind of thing was very common in various countries on the earth in the past. And it should be relatively easy to achieve. The empire's technology is very advanced, which is inseparable from the empire's education. The Earth Federation's embassy in the Empire has suggested to the Earth Federation more than once that the Empire and the Earth Federation send students to each other to learn from the country's advanced education and technology. However, the Empire has always refused to exchange students with the Earth Federation because this technology is the easiest place to leak in universities. In the past, China's rise was only possible because of those who traveled across the ocean to learn advanced knowledge for the sake of China's rise of international students. Of course you can send foreign students. But our empire also has its own rules. So we only accept students who are descendants of Yen and Huang. And we will not accept any foreign students who are not descendants of Yen and Huang. Li Fu thought for a long time. Then slowly nodded and agreed to the request. But also added conditions. In the past, the foundation of the empire was not stable. So it would naturally not consider accepting foreign students. But now it is not afraid. However, the Empire has always implemented the principle that people who are not our own race must have different hearts. And it is still only willing to accept descendants of the Yin and Huang descendants. There is no doubt that Li Fu also has his own little calculation. After these foreign students come to the Empire, they may learn some of the Empire's advanced technologies, but the Empire can also attract them and stay in the Empire. After all, they are all descendants of Yin and Huang. Those who can come to study abroad must also be outstanding talents. Hearing Li Fu's words, O Slaves, Jones, Ajinsa, and others all showed displeasure. Li Fu was really racially dissatisfied in front of his face. 
the Earth Federation has always been most dissatisfied with the Empire. That is, the Empire carries a strong sense of racial discrimination when implementing any policy. It only accepts immigrants from the descendants of the Yin and Huang people. And there is limited care for the descendants of the Yin and Huang people in terms of business. Now it even applies to students studying abroad. Naturally, everyone is unhappy. However, he was not happy. But he still had no way to deal with the empire. The current empire was not the original China. And it would not count out for the so-called foreign guests. Everything must be done according to the rules of the Yin Wang Empire. If they don't do things according to the rules of the empire, the empire would rather sever ties with the Earth Federation than change. It is naturally impossible to sever ties with the empire now. The Earth Federation has too many things that rely on the empire. So it can only hold on. Nose. Do things honestly according to the rules of the empire. Seeing that the negotiation was completed, Zhao Dongya also had a smile on his face. At least he had gained something. Although if this news was spread back to the earth, it would definitely trigger demonstrations and protests around the world. But I have become accustomed to these things. Every time the empire announces a new policy, large demonstrations will break out on the Earth Federation side to protest against the racial discrimination of the empire's policies. There are demonstrations in front of the empire's embassy in the Earth Federation almost every day to express protest. Our Federation and your empire are both members of human civilization. And they all originated from the same place. In the interstellar and cosmic era. We should deepen scientific and technological and military exchanges and work together to create a starry sky for our descendants of mankind. While chatting, Zhao Dongye shifted the topic to the key point. Technology and military aspects. Although the population of the empire is much smaller than that of the Earth Federation, its technological strength is obvious to all. The Earth Federation still has not fully understood the empire's technology decades ago. To what extent has the empire's current technology developed? Scientists from the Earth Federation estimate that it will be at least 50 years ahead of the Earth Federation. This is still a conservative estimate. As for military strength, there is no need to mention it. Although both sides have been working very hard to develop military strength, the Earth Federation has continued to import space battleships, space fighter planes, arms and weapons, etc. from the Empire. However, with the Empire, the gap in military strength is getting bigger and bigger, not to mention anything else. The Empire now has more than 10 space battleships of the same level as the Huashan. And it also has two large space battleships with a mass of more than 10 billion tons. The Huangdi and the Qin Shi Huang battleship the power completely destroyed the Earth Federation. Chapter 319 Returning disappointed, the palace of the Yin Huang Empire was decorated in black, giving people a solemn and grand feeling. Hearing Zhao Dongye's words, Li Fu knew that the main event was coming. As the president of the Earth Federation, Zhao Dongye personally came to the empire for a visit. It was definitely not just to talk about economics, trade and international students. The exchange of technology and military was the main purpose of his visit to the empire this time. The empire's strong technological and military strength were the most important things in interstellar and universe colonization. It is necessary to strengthen communication. But we just don't know how to communicate. Li Fu nodded. Although he didn't really say that he wanted to carry out scientific and technological exchanges and cooperation with the Earth Federation. He couldn't refuse it so directly. Both of us have the same origin. And we support and help each other in the vast interstellar universe. As the saying goes, brothers are of the same mind, and their strength is as strong as gold. Let's not talk about the distance. Just the Lorne Empire in the Canis Major Galaxy has great influence on us. It poses a huge threat to human civilization. The Lorne Empire is powerful, has a long history of development, and has a large population. Although they suffered heavy losses in the last battle, it did not damage their roots at all, and they will soon regain their strength. If we don't seize the opportunity to eradicate the Lorne Empire now, the cost of destroying the Lorne Empire in the future will be very heavy. As the saying goes, how can we allow others to snore on the side of the bed? The Canis Major Galaxy is too far away from both our empires. It's close. Zhao Dongya pondered for a while, then slowly spoke, proposing a joint effort to destroy the Lorne Empire. After listening to this, Li Fu frowned and pondered carefully. As for the nearest Lorne Empire, there were actually loud voices within the empire suggesting that it be eliminated as soon as possible. The scientists of the empire even proposed that within 100 kilometers of the Centaur galaxy, within the scope of light years, there should be no force that can threaten the empire, including regional federations. 
The distance of 100 light years seems very far, but because of the existence of the ocean currents of time and space, it is actually very close. Once a powerful civilization comes through the ocean currents of time and space, the Empire will be able to have a buffer time. But if we really want to send troops to attack the Canis Major Galaxy together with the Earth Federation, Li Fu will naturally not do it. How will the Canis Major Galaxy be divided when the time comes? Half each? Moreover, the Empire has to transit through the solar system to go to the Canis Major Galaxy. There is no space-time ocean current directly leading to the Canis Major Galaxy. Therefore, the expansion of the Canis Major Galaxy in this direction is very disadvantageous for the Empire because it is its own transportation hub. The core will be stuck by the Earth Federation. By then, no matter how large the territory the Empire has established, it is very likely that it will eventually be advantageous to the Earth Federation. Li Fu has no interest in making wedding clothes for others. Anyway, the Empire is preparing to expand externally recently. With this power, it is better to expand to other galaxies. With luck, you can easily occupy the low-level life planets. And there is no need to expend any effort to attack Luo. An Empire. The Earth Federation's plan is to use the power of the Empire to attack the Lorne Empire. In this case, it is a sure shot. Otherwise, if the Earth Federation uses its own power to conquer the Lorne Empire, it is likely to suffer heavy losses by then. Unable to win. Both sides suffered losses in the end. But if we don't attack the Lorne Empire, when the Earth Federation expands externally in the future, it will be like a knot in our throats. And we will always worry that the Lorne Empire will counterattack the solar system. After all, they have already taken over their hatred. So they will not be able to concentrate their efforts. External expansion. After this, the speed of expansion will definitely not be as fast as that of the Empire. In the end, most of them will be able to watch the galaxies in the starry sky slowly being included in the embrace of the Empire. After thinking about the key, Li Fu naturally knew what to do. It was absolutely impossible to send troops. The Empire was still eager for the Lorne Empire and the Earth Federation to fight and restrain each other. The Empire could also sell arms from them, make a lot of money, and more importantly, the Empire can continue to expand without worries. Our Empire is now sparsely populated and weak, and has no ability to attack the Lorne Empire. Moreover, the Lorne Empire must have learned the lesson from last time and built a strong defense force at the entrance and exit of the time and space ocean currents. It will definitely be there will be heavy losses. Li Fu shook his head and rejected Zhao Dongya's proposal. Although your empire has a sparse population, its technology and military strength are extremely powerful. With two powerful space battleships like the USS Pacific, it is much more powerful than our Earth Federation, and it should shoulder some responsibilities. Zhao Dongya was obviously unwilling to do so. If he didn't drag the empire into trouble, his trip would be in vain. At the same time, there was something else in his words. The Pacific space battleship he mentioned was the Huangdi space battleship. It was a large battleship that was originally commissioned by the Earth United Front to be built by the Fuyin Group. It was later evacuated from the solar system by Li Fu, taken away at the time. The meaning of the words is obvious. You have kidnapped our most powerful space battleship. Now, should you do something for us to show it? Although our empire has a few decent warships, they are only enough to protect our home Centauri galaxy. As for sending troops to the Lorne Empire, there is really nothing we can do. Li Fu smiled and refused. Naturally, interests are the main priority between countries. Of course, he will not do things that only have disadvantages but no benefits. Hearing Li Fu's repeated refusal, Zhao Dongji was also slightly disappointed. Although he had already expected that the Empire would not send troops, he came with the mentality of giving it a try. Sure enough, there are only interests between countries. Nothing else things are no longer within the scope of consideration. Our Earth Federation can promise that after occupying the Canis Major Galaxy, our Earth Federation can cede the living planet to the Empire. The existence of the Lorne Empire is a huge threat to our human civilization and must be eradicated. Zhao Dongye was still unwilling to give in and promise benefits. After the entire Canis Major Galaxy was conquered, it would be returned to the Empire. This was an astonishing act of courage. Our Empire's current two living planets are far from reaching saturation. Another living planet is of no use. Let's leave it to you. The Earth Federation. If you need any space battleships, weapons, etc., you can ask us. Imperial Purchase. Li Fu still shook his head. The Empire had to pass through the solar system to go to the Canis Major Galaxy. The Empire's current population was sparse, 
and it simply didn't have the ability to manage it, let alone have to travel across the solar system. Zhao Dongye didn't look good after being rejected repeatedly, but he had no choice. This time, he came here to ask for help from the Empire. Since there was no possibility of military cooperation, he could seek exchanges and cooperation in science and technology. In this case, I wonder if your Empire is willing to transfer some technology to our Earth Federation. If there are not enough advanced technologies and powerful space battleships, weapons, etc., even if our Earth Federation has a new attack on the Canis Major Galaxy, we could also lose a lot of money. Zhao Dongye also used the strategy of advancing before retreating very skillfully. Technology transfer? I wonder which technologies you are interested in. Although our empire also intends to help the Earth Federation. Many technologies are the foundation of our empire, and we will never transfer them. Li Fu nodded lightly. Having already said it beforehand, technology transfer depends on what kind of technology it is. We will never transfer technologies of great importance. We hope to obtain black gold material technology, large plasma engine manufacturing technology, quantum communication technology, anti-gravity technology, virtual induction technology, and 5 million kilometer energy cannon technology. Zhao Dongye pondered for a while and reported a list of technologies. These technologies are all technologies that the Earth Federation is very eager to obtain. Each technology is very helpful in improving strength. Black gold material technology can greatly reduce the manufacturing cost of spacecraft engines. Large plasma engine manufacturing technology is the core technology for manufacturing large spacecrafts and space battleships, not to mention the power of quantum communication technology, which can allow the Earth to realize real-time control every move on an alien planet. Mr. President, these technologies are the core and critical technologies of our empire, and they are also the most advanced technologies of our empire even if we are willing to transfer them. I wonder what the Federation will exchange for them. Li Fu looked at Zhao Dongye and smiled slightly. There is no doubt that the Earth Federation has a good vision. These technologies are very valuable and useful technologies. This, hearing Li Fu's words, Zhao Dongye couldn't help but say that the Earth Federation didn't have much to offer. From the trade exchanges between the two sides, we could know that the Empire imported some special products from the Earth Federation and low-tech items such as clothes and shoes. Actually, you don't have to master these technologies. Our empire will still sell products to you. We can sell space battleships to you. Li Fu saw Zhao Dongye's expression and continued to say. His meaning was very clear. If you can't come up with the corresponding technology, it would be better to honestly buy our empire's products. The meeting between the two parties has almost ended here. Zhao Dongye, who came to the empire with many purposes, can only return disappointed. The empire is still the same as before. The protection of technology is very strict. It is founded on technology and relies on powerful only the power of science and technology can create a world. Naturally, it is impossible for Li Fu to really sell his foundation to the Earth Federation. Although the Earth Federation's technological development is also very fast, it is not easy to come up with these technologies in a short time. Wait for them research shows that the empire already has more advanced technology. Chapter 320, Expanding to Three Galaxies at the Same Time Zhao Dongye and his team, who had nothing to gain, stayed with the Empire for a few days and quickly embarked on a voyage back to the solar system. However, both the Empire and the Earth Federation highly praised this time during the press conference, meeting between the top leaders of both sides, claiming to have achieved unprecedented results. They signed cooperation agreements in many fields such as economy, culture, science and technology and military, deepening mutual feelings and exchanges. The scene of Li Fu and Zhao Dongye shaking hands has undoubtedly become the scene in Time magazine that year. The most powerful forces in human civilization unite to jointly create a glorious picture of the interstellar era. In the outer space of the Empire's Kyushu planet, there are huge spaceports. In these large spaceports, there are huge space battleships parked. There is no doubt that these are all space used by the Imperial military. Port, at this time, in the spaceports, the flags of huge space battleships were flying, and the national anthem of the Empire was ringing in every military port. In the space outside, groups of space fighters were lined up neatly in the void like void elves. The team flashed past quickly, like a tired bird returning to the forest and landing among the space battleships. Farther away in the void, spaceships from the Empire's capital, Xingyanwang Star, are still constantly transporting supplies and replenishing energy for these warships. 
The nearby Jojo star exudes a halo of life. From the Jojo star, countless space fighters and spaceships are flying over quickly. There are two cities on Jojo star, and there are also huge military camps. This time the Empire is preparing to expand externally, and all the soldiers are resting here on Jojo star. At this time, spacecraft and so on are constantly transporting these Imperial soldiers to the spaceport. Among them, the army is about to set off. The spaceport is extremely busy. The Empire has a population of over 100 million, but it has a very small army. The total number of the Empire's army is only 200,000, which is very rare. However, although the number of the army is small, it is very powerful. The Empire currently has two large space battleships with a mass of 10 billion tons. The Yellow Emperor and the Qin Shi Huang. It has 10 medium-sized space battleships with a mass of 1 billion tons. Each one is as large as the Earth Federation's largest space battleship, Huashan. And all of them use anti-gravity power systems and are faster. The defense is stronger. The attack power is more terrifying. And the attack range is farther. In addition to these large and medium-sized space battleships, the Empire also has more than 200 small space battleships, spaceships, and millions of space fighter planes. Because the fighter planes are more than the total population of the Imperial Army, most of the space fighter planes are it is kept in the form of reserves and will be sold to the Earth Federation for replacement at a similar time. The Empire's army is well armed to the teeth, with only 200,000 troops. But it has such a huge military force. The Empire has always spared no effort in investing in national defense. Although there are only 200,000 troops, each of these 200,000 people is an elite among the young people of the Empire. First of all, in terms of Yuanli cultivation, all of them have at least reached the stage of Yuanli warriors. Their physical fitness is very good and they can withstand what ordinary people cannot. Withstand the pressure. At the same time, in terms of educational level, everyone is recruited from major universities in the Empire and is at least a college graduate with a bachelor's degree. Moreover, this standard is still based on the teaching level of the Empire. If it is replaced by the Earth Federation, each person must be a college graduate. All have PhD degrees. And after arriving in the army, they still have to undergo rigorous training, especially in terms of professional knowledge and abilities. The army in the interstellar and cosmic era is where talents are really needed. Because of high-tech warships, weapons, equipment, etc., you if you don't have a certain foundation, you won't be able to control it at all. Not to mention that you still need to perform maintenance, emergency repairs, and deal with more serious emergencies on the battlefield, which is a test of your overall quality. Li Fu, who was well aware of this, had always followed the policy of elite troops in army building. Although the number was small, they were all truly elite. From the individual qualities of the soldiers to the army's weapons and equipment, logistical support, etc., all aspects were comprehensively developed. In Kung Fu, the first place where various high technologies were applied was in the military. Serving as a soldier in the empire is very generous. The average income of the Imperial Army is more than three times the average income of the Empire as a whole. Therefore, in the Empire, those who can serve as soldiers are talented people. And they are also the envy of young people. Raise an army for a thousand days and use it for a while. Since the Empire decided to officially expand externally, the Empire's army has begun to take action. The Empire's huge investment in the army over the years has always shown its value and brought rewards to the Empire. In the largest spaceport, Imperial Emperor Li Fu, Imperial Cabinet Prime Minister Fang Zheng and other senior officials of the Empire were personally seeing off the soldiers who were about to go on an expedition. The three military admirals Luo Xiaoyao, John Fei, and Lu Xiuling were standing at the front with tall postures and resolute eyes. This time, the three of them would lead a fleet to expand to a galaxy. So at this time everyone seemed very excited inside. From ancient times to the present, soldiers, especially senior generals in the army, have had such a plot in everyone's mind to open up territories and expand territory, to leave a name in the history, to grant titles to marquises, and to worship prime ministers. This is even more true in the interstellar universe era. The vast starry sky universe is their best battlefield. They strive to create a starry sky for future generations. This is also the most important educational link in the imperial army. From the very beginning, when the Imperial Army was established from this moment on, Li Fu planted the seeds of active external expansion for the Imperial Army. So every soldier in the Imperial Army was instilled with this idea. History will remember today. And each of your names will also be written into the textbooks of history. 
because you are about to complete a great cause. A great cause that will serve the present and benefit the future. You will become a sharp sword in the hands of our empire and lay down a starry sky for our descendants of Yen and Huang. Li Fu's voice was loud and passionate. He looked at the young faces below. Their eyes were resolute and sparkling with excitement. Each and every one of them had pride written on their faces. And their fighting spirit soared into the stars. Set off! Following Li Fu's order, the entire huge space port began to operate crazily. And the imperial soldiers lined up to enter their space battleships in an orderly manner. Soon, space battleships began to slowly leave the space port one after another. There were three fleets. Each fleet consisted of two medium-sized space battleships and ten small space battleships carrying more than 20,000 space battleships. The total number of soldiers is 20,000, and the three fleets are 60,000. It can be said that this time the Empire has dispatched one-third of its power to expand three galaxies at the same time, which can be said to be full of confidence. After all, the strength of the Empire is here. The combat capabilities of each fleet are very impressive, and their strength is even more powerful than the original expeditionary force of the Earth's expedition to the Canis Major Galaxy. The number of combatants is small, and may not even be a fraction of the Earth Expeditionary Force. But the difference in the number of battleships is very small. And every space battleship in the Imperial Army is the crystallization of Imperial technology. And its comprehensive combat power will completely exceed the Earth Federation's original old space battleship. Regardless of the speed, acceleration, defense power, attack weapons, attack distance, etc. of battleships, or the performance of space fighter planes the capabilities and training of combat soldiers. They are far beyond what the Earth Federation's military can match. Then, the three fleets are flying farther and farther in the void. This time, the Imperial Royal Legion led by Luo Xiao will go to the Aquila Galaxy, which is 10.2 light years away from the Centauri Galaxy. The Imperial Frontier Legion led by Jean Fei will go to the Aquila Galaxy, which is half a distance away. The Eridanus Galaxy is 8.5 light years away from the Sagittarius Galaxy. The Imperial Guard Corps led by Lu Xuling will head to the Hercules Galaxy, which is 5.4 light years away from the Centauri Galaxy. The Aquila Galaxy, the Eridanus Galaxy, and the Hercules Galaxy are all the three galaxies closest to the Centaur Galaxy. Each galaxy is connected to the Centaur Galaxy by space-time ocean currents. And they are also galaxies that the Empire must conquer. Three galaxies, each with a different direction, and completely different from the direction of the solar system. Li Wanda looked at the increasingly blurry Jojo star outside the battleship. Feeling the slightest pressure brought by the continuous acceleration of the powerful anti-gravity engine, his eyes flashed with light, and his hands clenched his fists tightly. As the fifth son of Emperor Li Fu, Li Wandu is still young, only in his early twenties. He inherited the excellent genes of his parents. Li Wandu is very handsome, but he is also a genius. He has performed very well in Yuanli cultivation since he was a child. Under Li Fu's personal guidance, he has reached the stage of Yuanli warrior at a very young age, and is now about to enter the realm of Yuanli master. At the same time, he is also very hardworking and excellent in study. He has completed his university credits two years in advance, and is actively preparing to take the Imperial Academy of Science exam, hoping to become a scientist as soon as possible. As a member of the Imperial family, he did not receive any superior treatment, but instead suffered a lot of pressure. There was an emperor, and his brothers and sisters in front of him were all outstanding, and they had achieved such a great reputation on their own. Therefore, Li Wandu is also under a lot of pressure. In addition, Li Fu and Wang Yun have been very strict in their education since childhood, so Li Wandu also hopes to have the opportunity to express himself well. This time, when the news came out that the Imperial Army was about to go on an expedition, he, like everyone else, applied to join the expeditionary force without any hesitation and became a soldier of the expeditionary force. Determined to open up new territories and leave a name in history. Chapter 321 Red Algae Star The Aquila Galaxy is 10.2 light years away from the Centauri Galaxy. The geographical location of the Aquila Galaxy is somewhat special because it not only has space-time ocean currents connecting the Centauri Galaxy, but also has space-time ocean currents connecting the solar system. The three galaxies are connected to each other. They are connected to each other by space-time ocean currents. Therefore, the Empire is also determined to win the Aquila Galaxy. Because acquiring the Aquila Galaxy means that it has an additional direction of expansion. And at the same time it cuts off the expansion direction of the Earth Federation. And with the Aquila Galaxy in such a position, 
There is no doubt that it will become a very important transportation core hub in the future, able to lead to both the solar system and the Centauri galaxy. It is naturally better for such an important galaxy to be included in the embrace of the Empire first. Some. The Kuiper Belt region of the Aquila galaxy is the same as other galaxies. It is dark. Dark and cold. The light from Altair in the center of the galaxy is not much different from other galaxies in the starry sky. The void is filled with asteroids and meteorites of varying masses. During the gestation of early stars in the Aquila galaxy, a large amount of stellar placenta material remained in the Oort Cloud Belt and Kuiper Belt. Compared with the solar system and the Kuiper Belt, coming to the Centauri galaxy, the cosmic matter here is larger in quantity and mass. And it is a very rich galaxy. The calm and dark void was just like it had been for a long time before. But suddenly, a burst of colorful light flashed out in the void. From these lights, huge space battleships appeared in the void. These space battleships are more or less damaged. The first few space battleships are even very seriously injured. With several large holes, one can tell at a glance that they have obviously suffered special damage in the ocean currents of time and space. Of care. Damn it! I finally got out of the space-time ocean current. It was really thrilling the first time. Our warships are all equipped with the latest technology gravity field defense devices. But they were hit by so many meteorites and asteroids. The front the two space battleships were almost buried in the ocean currents of time and space. Luo Xiaoyao, the commander of the Imperial Royal Legion, still felt a little scared at this time. This was the first time that the space-time ocean current between the Centaur Galaxy and the Aquila Galaxy had entered. There is no doubt that this space-time ocean current that no one has passed before. Inside asteroids, meteorites, etc. are very scary. Even though these space battleships are the crystallization of Imperial technology, they still almost suffered heavy losses. Release the detector. Contact base camp. Start repairing the space battleship. A series of orders were issued from Luo Xiaoyao. As one of the few generals in the Imperial military with experience in expeditions to alien galaxies, Luo Xiaoyao immediately became serious after regaining his composure. The fleet is far away from the Centauri galaxy and is fighting in a different galaxy. If it encounters a civilization with a low level of civilization, there is nothing to worry about. However, if it encounters a civilization with a technological level similar to its own, it will be more dangerous. So no matter it is for your own as for his life, and as the commander of a fleet, he must be careful. The Imperial Royal Legion is parked in the Kuiper Belt area, while collecting surrounding resources to repair space battleships. It is also spying on the basic situation of the entire galaxy, obtaining more detailed intelligence, and formulating corresponding strategies. I didn't expect that the level of civilization here in the Aquila Galaxy has developed to such a high level. It is almost equivalent to the Earth a few decades ago, and has initially entered space. All kinds of information were gathered together, and by monitoring the electromagnetic waves in the void, it was easy to discover the local civilization in the Aquila Galaxy. The technological strength of the local civilization was already quite good, and it had initially entered space. But it was different from the Earth. There is still a certain gap between the Federation and the Lorn Empire. If your technology can develop for a few more decades, it will be really difficult to conquer. But now that technology has developed, we can't keep you. Luo Shiryu's eyes were shining. The Empire had formulated a detailed strategy for external expansion. If they encountered primitive indigenous civilizations, like those on Yin Huang Star and Jiuzhou Star, the Empire could also pretend to be benevolent and build some protected areas to make them proud. Save it. But if you encounter a civilization that has already developed, then there is no doubt that such a civilization cannot be retained, because they have already developed. And retaining them will be a disaster and must be eradicated. In the inner circle of the Aquila Galaxy, the third planet from the inside to the outside is a life planet that exudes a halo of life and looks a bit reddish overall. A red algae star. Red algae star. The ocean on red algae star is different from the oceans on Earth. Jiuzhou star. And Yin Wang star. The ocean on red algae star is actually a freshwater ocean. Which is obviously incredible. Because whether it is the Earth, Kyushu star, Yin Wang star, etc. The oceans were all freshwater oceans in the beginning. After long years of erosion and evaporation, the salt content in the oceans became higher and higher. And eventually slowly became the current saltwater ocean. But here on the red algae star, the vast ocean turns out to be a freshwater ocean. However, the history of the Red Algae Star is similar to that of the Earth in the solar system. They both have a long history of billions of years. Logically speaking, 
This ocean should also be a saltwater ocean. Right. The key is a very red marine plant in the Red Algae Star Ocean. The native civilization of the Red Algae Star calls it red algae. But it is actually not an algae plant. But a marine plant like kelp. The average depth of the ocean on the Red Algae Star does not exceed 200 meters. The biological species in the ocean are extremely rich. Various marine plants form a vast ocean forest. These marine plants like to absorb salt very much. So most of them, it also shows reddish. Light red and other reddish colors. The entire ocean looks like a red ocean. Which is why the red algae star is named. The salt content of the seawater in the ocean is also absorbed by this huge marine flora. Turning it into a freshwater ocean. Of course, the formation of this special phenomenon has a lot to do with the mass of the red algae star. The mass and volume of the red algae star are extremely huge because the mass is too large. The entire red algae star is under the action of fluid static equilibrium. The topography of red algae stars is relatively gentle. The average depth of the ocean does not exceed 200 meters. You must know that on the Earth's side, the average depth of the Earth's ocean is nearly 4,000 meters. And the deepest Mariana Trench is more than 10,000 meters deep. The average depth is only more than 200 meters, which provides a good environment for plants, organisms, etc. in the ocean. If it is too deep, the sunlight will not reach it at all, and it will be difficult for plants in the ocean to survive. Therefore, on the earth there is no such thing as a marine forest in the ocean. Only some areas of the shallow sea are very rich in marine plants and animals. But red algae stars are completely different. The ocean is very shallow, and marine plants can have a place to take root. At the same time, sunlight can shine in. So the conditions for the growth of marine plants are very good. Superior. The huge red algae star has a mass dozens of times that of the Earth, and a surface area hundreds of times that of the Earth. It has an extremely vast land area of more than 20 billion square kilometers. Countless creatures live on this huge planet. There are more species than the tropical rainforests of Kyushu. The planet is ruled by a race of dwarves, who are less than one meter tall, and have very strong legs. They call themselves goblins, which means elves bred by Mother Earth. The goblin tribe has a very long history with a recorded history of more than 100,000 years. However, the level of scientific and technological civilization has only begun to develop rapidly in the past few hundred years. And finally it has overcome the huge gravity of the red algae star and successfully entered in space. However, because the gravity of the red algae star is too great, the cost of entering space is too high. Therefore, the technological development of the goblins has been greatly restricted. Even with a long history of 100,000 years, the technological level of the goblins is still not comparable to that of the people on Earth. In the outer space of the Red Algae Star, the figures of the Imperial Royal Legion battleships flashed over from the distant void. The goblins on the Red Algae Star began to become extremely panicked. Although the goblins had initially entered the space, they there is no way to cross the void and reach other galaxies. There is no doubt that the technological level of aliens is much more advanced than ours, which makes the goblins of Red Algae extremely panicked. The aliens in novels, and movies finally arrived on Red Algae Planet. The Goblin Clan is really interesting. The gravity of this planet is too great. Anyone who has not reached the stage of Yuanli Warrior will probably be directly crushed by the strong gravity if he steps on it. The gravity is more than 10 times that of the Earth. I really admire these goblins. They are able to overcome such a huge gravity and develop into space. Gee, we need to study this technology carefully. The scientists of the Empire were watching the information sent back by the detector with great interest. On the Red Algae Star. Except for the large animals in the ocean. There were no large animals on the land at all. Because this planet, the planet's gravity is too great. And the larger the animals, the greater the pressure. Therefore, during the long evolutionary years, the creatures on this planet have evolved towards miniaturization. And their legs and bones are very strong. Only in this way can they support the huge pressure of the Red Algae Star. Of course, it is different in the ocean. In the ocean, because the sea water has buoyancy, and there are too many types of marine life on the red algae star, there are sufficient food sources. So the large creatures in the red algae star ocean are there are so many marine organisms, thousands of meters long and thousands of tons in mass, that are common. On the red algae star, there is a very sharp contrast between land and ocean. Chapter 322 Goblin In the Aquila Galaxy, Red Algae Star. A spaceship pierced the sky and flew rapidly from space to the huge landmass of Red Algae Star. Abel City. The holy city in the hearts of goblins. Almost all goblins, 
who believe in Mother Earth consider this the most sacred and inviolable place. However, at this moment, the spaceship flying from the sky landed in the central square of this holy city. Accompanied by bursts of unpleasant mechanical sounds, the door of the spacecraft slowly opened, and groups of people wearing space suits opened. The Imperial warriors stepped out of the spaceship and set foot on this magical land. This gravity is really amazing! Lee wanted to continue to use the Yuan power in his body, carefully feeling the huge gravity on the red algae star, as if a huge mountain was pressing on him. With the movement of the Yuan power, he quickly adapted to this kind of force. Gravity environment. Look at the teammates around you. Some people who are not too advanced are already sweating profusely. It is obvious that it is not easy to bear such a huge gravity. Disperse detection. As the team leader, Lee Wanda gave the order gently. And in groups of two, they began to explore in all directions. This once prosperous holy city of goblins is now dead and lifeless. With corpses everywhere. Some of them are still praying devoutly until they die. The goblins are praying. Praying for their hearts. God can protect them and enable them to defeat the evil spirits descending from the sky. Because the goblin civilization has developed. According to the Empire's expansion strategy, the goblin civilization must be wiped out. Therefore, when the Imperial Royal Legion arrived here, they used quite inhumane biochemical virus weapons and dropped them on various goblin cities across the planet. Got a virus. With the Empire's current biotechnology methods, let alone the Goblin's current technological level, even the Lorne Empire and the Earth Federation would suffer heavy casualties in a short period of time if they were attacked by the Empire's biochemical weapons. There is no doubt that although Goblin technology has developed, there is no way to reach the Empire's biochemical technology weapons. Various comprehensive viruses from the three planets of the Earth, Yin Wan Star, and Jojo Star are ravaging the entire planet. It simply completely conquered the entire planet without any effort. The once glorious goblin civilization has tens of billions of goblins left. Even if there are lucky ones who survive, they have to be like their ancestors. He began to go deep into the low places, not daring to show his head at all. Likely Wandu. Their only goal is to find the surviving goblins. Find them. And then eliminate them all. When things have reached this point, there is no room to turn back. They must eradicate the roots. Otherwise, if these goblins are still left, they will be destroyed. Leave a legacy behind. Resisting the desire to vomit. Li Wandu walked in this holy city. Fortunately, the space suit came with its own oxygen. Otherwise, Li Wandu estimated that he would be vomiting immediately. There were corpses everywhere. Many they were all rotten and infested with disgusting maggots. In the sky, there are scavengers similar to vultures constantly circling. And excited chirps echo through the sky. Occasionally, you can see hurried shadows in the city. These are animals. At this time, the city has become their paradise. It's really terrible. This biological weapon is really harmful to the world. Looking at everything in front of him, Li Wan frowned. He really couldn't bear it. But he also knew that if the goblins were not wiped out, it would be impossible for the Empire to occupy this place in the future. There was really a huge gap between the two. Contradiction. Since ancient times, the expansion of any civilization, race, or country has been accompanied by blood. If an empire rises in the universe, we don't know how many civilizations will be exterminated. But if the empire does not exterminate other civilizations, once it encounters when a powerful civilization arrives, will they be merciful to the empire? Thinking of the words of army commander Luo Xiaoyao, Li Wanda felt better. Sometimes he just needed to find some excuses to give himself some comfort, so that he could feel better. Li Wandu began to carefully appreciate the Goblin City. As the holy city of goblins, the buildings here are very exquisite. Most of them use complicated patterns to show the unique art of goblins. The color of the buildings is mainly light yellow. The urban system is very complex and has a three-dimensional feel. The doors of all buildings are relatively short and look like holes, which are very suitable for the short bodies of goblins. Only in places like parliament halls and temples. The doors will look majestic, and Li Wandu and others can enter. Go check it out. Goblins like gems? So in this holy city, you can see buildings decorated with various gems everywhere. Basically, you can see large or small gems on the top of every building. Some of them look like the tops of the tallest buildings in the mansion complex. Many gems that are very precious on this side of the earth are shining with a breathtaking light. As for the top of the most sacred temple at the core of this holy city, a stone with a diameter of enough the more than 10 meter long spherical purple gem emits astonishing light at all times. Even during the day, the light it emits is clearly visible. 
Once it comes to night, its light is even greater, enough to cover a large area. This gemstone is very precious. It seems that the red algae star is very rich in all kinds of gems. Looking at the quality of these gems, they are definitely the top gems. Anyone sold to the earth can be sold for a sky-high price. Walking in this holy city, you feel the strong religious atmosphere and rich atmosphere. Not only gems, goblins are very fond of sparkling things. Gold, silver, emerald, etc. can be seen everywhere, and they are all attracted by goblins to decorate their holy city. Dee Dee. Dee Dee. The detectors he carries are always on, constantly detecting the lower world. What he can see now is just the top of this holy city. There is also a very huge world underground. The goblins are very good at digging underground. And now basically all the surviving goblins have taken refuge in low places. The biochemical weapons were so powerful that the goblins were almost dead. And the detectors didn't respond at all. Or are the goblins mastering technology that can evade detection? This city is their holy city. If the goblins are still alive, there must be people underground. Lee Wandu was constantly thinking in his mind. The goblins are really rich. There are gems, gold, silver, and emerald everywhere. If you dig up a gem at random and place it in the empire and the earth, it will be the most precious gem. It's not that the goblins are rich, but that this red algae star is large enough. Its mass is too great, and it is very rich in various minerals. In addition, this is the holy city of the goblins, and it is basically related to religion. There is no reason left. So naturally I can't wait to move everything here. I heard that the ocean on the red algae star is particularly interesting. In the clear water, you can clearly see the vast ocean forest and countless types of marine life. The sound of teammates discussing with each other constantly came from the headphones. Everyone was obviously exploring this unknown world with curiosity. And everything was full of novelty. Everyone, please be careful and don't take it lightly. Lee Wandu warned gently. And after searching for a long time, no trace of the goblin was found at all. At this time, on Red Algae Star, seems like holy cities were happening everywhere. Groups of Imperial soldiers were exploring cities, searching for surviving goblins. At the same time, at the Goblin Space Center, scientists from the Imperial Academy of Sciences were ecstatic. Many scientists were discussing excitedly around a giant tower as high as the clouds. This huge tower is like a triangle, but this triangle is really too big with a height of more than 2,000 meters. This is almost impossible to complete on the Red Algae Star with huge gravity, because the building is too tall. The higher, the greater the pressure below, and the higher the requirements for materials. Near this giant tower, crewed spaceships were abandoned one after another, with something like a track used for traction. The goblins relied on this giant tower to generate spacecrafts. Optomagnetic traction technology? I didn't expect the goblins to have mastered this technology. It's really incredible. A scientist carefully studied this giant tower and immediately exclaimed, Optomagnetic traction technology is a new technology that the Empire has been researching. Using the traction force of optomagnetics, objects can be launched from the planet to space very easily. Among, of course, in addition to this function, its more important role is to be used in space, especially on large space battleships and spacecrafts. The use of optomagnetic traction technology can very conveniently move small spacecraft flying to the corresponding location. Above, if the optomagnetic traction technology can be further developed, this technology can even be used to increase the defense capabilities of space battleships. When local small spaceships and space battleships approach one's own space battleship, they can rely on optomagnetic traction technology to directly pull the opponent spacecraft so that the enemy can be destroyed very easily. Of course, if this optomagnetic traction technology can be developed to its peak, it will not only be used to tow small spaceships and space fighters, but can even be used to tow large space battleships, asteroids, and even large space battleships. Planets are possible. Uh-huh. That's it. I said I haven't been able to research the light-transmitting magnetic traction technology. Fortunately, we are here now. If we arrive in the Aquila Galaxy at night in a few decades, it will not be so easy to defeat the goblins. Chapter 323 Interstellar Colonization Act In the Imperial Palace of Chang'an City, Xingyan Huangxing, the capital of the Centaur Galaxy, in the office of Emperor Li Fu. Li Fu was reviewing documents one after another. Although government matters are handled by the cabinet, things that require Li Fu's signature and approval are it's still a lot. Half a day is spent on this every day. 
and the remaining half of the day can be spent in the laboratory to do research. The old profession cannot be forgotten. Your Majesty, Prime Minister Fang Zheng, Cabinet Ministers Chen Bin, Yu Liang, Chao Haitao, and others would like to see you. Li Fu's secretary Ding Xian knocked on the door and came in, gently reminding him, Let everyone come in! Li Fu nodded. Ha ha! Good news! Our last army has received good news. Three galaxies and four living planets have been included in the territory of our empire. Soon, a cheerful voice came from outside the door. You didn't have to think about it to know who it was. Except for Yu Liang. No one could do this. Fang Zheng, Shen Bin, Chao Haitao, and others also had smiles on their faces. Apparently he was in a pretty good mood. Everyone, please sit down wherever you like. Sister Xian, please make tea and serve some fruits for everyone. When Li Fu saw everyone coming, he also smiled and motioned for everyone to feel free. He never had any airs. So everyone sat down naturally. Soon, Ding Xian was also served with tea, fruits, etc. Good news came one after another from the three expansion armies. From the nearest Imperial Guard Corps led by Lu Xuling. The earliest news came. The native civilization of the Hercules galaxy they were heading to was actually still in the stage of primitive tribal civilization. There was no need to use it at all. It easily occupied the Hercules galaxy without any effort. And began to expand to the next galaxy through the Hercules galaxy. Then, there is good news from John Fay. The Aridinus galaxy is the same as the Centauri galaxy. There are actually two living planets. Although the local civilization has developed, it is still in the stage of feudal society. It also costs nothing. The power was taken over. And then it began to expand towards the next galaxy. The farthest way is also the Aquila galaxy where the Imperial Royal Legion led by Luo Xiaoyao is headed. Recently, it seems that they easily defeated the local goblin civilization using biological and chemical weapons. And the Imperial scientists, who accompanied the fleet also learned from the goblin civilization. Optomagnetic traction technology has been obtained here, which can be said to be a fruitful harvest. This is why Fang Zheng, Chen Bin, Yu Liang and others all had smiles on their faces. Three galaxies were easily included in the Empire's territory, and they obtained four living planets, and also obtained optomagnetic traction technology. The strength of the Empire it can be said to have expanded rapidly. Ha ha! I didn't expect how lucky we are! The civilizations in the three galaxies have not really developed. We easily acquired three galaxies. Now we can add three more stars to the flag of our empire. Chao Haitao laughed happily, and everyone else also laughed after hearing this. They were in a good mood. The broader the territory, the more resources they have at their disposal, and the larger the buffer zone. The reason is very simple. During World War II, in front of German tanks, small countries were basically destroyed in a few days. Only big countries, like the Soviet Union with vast and deep territory could still have strong power even if they lost large areas of land. The strength to fight back. The same is true in the East Asian battlefield. Although Japan occupied half of the Xia Kingdom, it lost strength the further it reached the rear. Everyone is very clear about the importance of having a vast territory. So everyone is naturally happier to see that the Empire's territory has become vast. As it develops in the future, the Empire will quickly occupy a large area in the starry sky like an atomic reaction. A vast star map. TSK. TSK. The little goblins of Aquila can actually develop optomagnetic traction technology. This is really surprising. But in the end it gave us an advantage. Yu Liang even laughed heartily. As if he were a stingy landowner who had made a fortune. Everyone. Please don't be too happy. We already have the territory. But how should we consolidate it? This issue is very worth thinking about. Our empire has a small population and good welfare. We want to encourage everyone to immigrate to other galaxies. It's not an easy thing to go. Although Fang Zheng said this, the smile on his face was still bright. The questions he asked were naturally of the happiness and worry type. After all, the wild goose has been shot down. And now it's time to discuss whether it's better to eat it cooked or roasted. Instead of worrying about how to catch the wild goose while the wild goose is still flying in the sky. This is indeed a question worth thinking about. Our army is still expanding. As long as we don't encounter an overly powerful civilization, we will continue to expand, which means that more and more galaxies and life planets will be included. Within the territory of our empire, the territory is very large. How to develop and develop it? We have to come up with a good plan and consolidate the site into a whole. After listening to Fang Jing's words, Li Fu and everyone present also nodded 
and everyone began to frown in thought. The population of our empire is still very small, mainly in the cities of Yinhuang Star. Even Jiuzhou Star has a population of less than 10 million. If we want to encourage everyone to immigrate to new territories in other galaxies, we must come up with policies that are attractive enough. If we had a population of nearly 10 billion like the Earth Federation, we wouldn't have to worry about interstellar immigration at all. There are so many people applying to immigrate to the Canis Minor Galaxy from the Earth Federation that the Earth Federation can easily, we can immigrate hundreds of millions of people to the Canis Minor Galaxy. When talking about the issue of population and immigration, everyone present looked sad. The population of the Empire was really a big problem. The population was too small. The way I see it, as long as they are willing to immigrate there, we will give them land. Permanent private land. As long as we give them enough land, I don't believe that no one will be willing to go. Fang Zheng thought for a long time and slowly proposed. Land? This is a good idea. We descendants of the Yin and Huang dynasties have had very deep feelings for the land since ancient times. In everyone's thoughts, land is more precious than anything else. In ancient times, land was passed down from generation to generation. Only with land can one have identity and status. In modern times, owning land is synonymous with local tyrants. When villages in the city are demolished, billionaires and multimillionaires suddenly emerge. When everyone heard this, their eyes immediately lit up. The welfare of the empire was very good. There was really not much motivation to use money to promote the trend. But if it were to use land to promote the trend, the effect would definitely be different. Lao Fang, please study with everyone and come up with a plan. Let's convene a meeting to discuss it. I think this method is feasible. Anyway, we now have four more living planets. And there will be more in the future. As long as you are willing to immigrate there, yes. It doesn't matter if we give them more land. Li Fu thought for a long time and nodded in agreement. People are selfish. And they certainly don't care about their own private things when it comes to public things. As long as they make full use of this, they won't be afraid that no one will develop the new land. Soon, the Imperial Parliament passed the Interstellar Colonization Act. Drafted by the Imperial Cabinet, the Interstellar Colonization Act came into being after the Empire's formal external expansion. The core of it revolved around how to develop and consolidate the newly incorporated territory of the Empire. The most important thing is one is to use private land to encourage interstellar immigration. The bill clearly stipulates that as long as they are citizens of the Empire and are willing to immigrate to outer systems, they will be allocated private land locally. The current standard is that one person can obtain 100 square kilometers of vast land. And this land is permanently privately owned. The Empire granted legal recognition and protection. How big is 100 square kilometers of land? The average area of towns in China is about 50 to 200 square kilometers, which means that one person can own land the size of a town. If a family immigrates there, even if there are five people, then they will own a vast land of 500 square kilometers which is a very large area and is permanent private land. As soon as the interstellar colonization bill was promulgated, the entire empire immediately became excited. Land, or permanent private land, is definitely what everyone dreams of. What's more, in this interstellar immigration bill introduced by the empire, one person can obtain 100 square kilometers of land. Vast land. This is simply unimaginable. If one person has 100 square kilometers of land and his family immigrate there, if the population is large enough, he can own almost as much land as a county. From now on, everyone will become a landlord. The most important thing is permanent private land. Our empire will definitely continue to develop in the future. The Hercules, Eridanus, and Aquila galaxies that have recently been included in the territory are so close to the empire's base camp. The Centauri galaxy. The future appreciation of this land, while the space is very large. If you choose to immigrate there now, these lands alone will be enough for future generations to enjoy endlessly in the future. Yes, maybe there are not many people now. But this also means opportunities. Immigrants, apply for immigration immediately. The enthusiasm of the people throughout the empire was mobilized. Once the big move of permanent private land was released, no one could resist it. The deep-rooted attachment to land since ancient times made countless people choose to apply to immigrate to the country without hesitation. Go to other galaxies. What's more, it was possible to emigrate to the Empire from Earth. Most citizens of the Empire are adventurous. Now that the conditions are so favorable, the number of people applying for interstellar immigration to the Empire soon exceeded 10 million. Chapter 324 Uncle Wang's Immigration Experience 
with the promulgation of the Interstellar Colonization Act, the entire empire fell into restlessness. Almost as soon as they received the news, tens of millions of people in the empire chose to submit immigration applications without hesitation. 100 square kilometers of permanent private land is available to both children and the elderly. Such a huge temptation is too great for the descendants of Yen and Huang who have deep-rooted attachment to their own private land. The interstellar colonization bill is being discussed in every corner of the empire. With the relevant information released by the government, the people of the empire are constantly discussing which galaxy and planet are more suitable for immigrants and which will have better future development prospects. In a park in a residential area in Zhukai district, Chang'an City, a group of elderly men and women were studying very carefully with their eyes open and information in their hands. I think the Aquila is quite good. There are space-time ocean currents in the Aquila connecting the Centauri galaxy and the solar system. This is a unique geographical advantage among the surrounding galaxies. It is likely to become a transportation hub in the future. It is right to immigrate here. Uncle Lee, who is over 70 years old, studied the information carefully. He only immigrated to the Empire with his children a few years ago. He usually helps the children cook at home. And other times he plays cards with other elderly people in the park. Play chess. However, when he heard the news about the interstellar immigration bill, Uncle Lee couldn't sit still. From childhood to adulthood, in his mind, land is the most precious thing. Only with land can everything be achieved. And land means wealth. So now, he doesn't even play cards or chess. Now he discusses with others every day which galaxy or planet of life is better to immigrate to. Because at Uncle Lee's insistence, their family decided to immigrate to Empire New Galaxy to go. The location of the Aquila Galaxy is indeed good. But this living planet, Red Algae Star, has a very large mass and a strong gravity. The information clearly states that people must have Yuanli cultivation to reach the Yuanli warrior stage. You can bear it, loudly, but you can't even walk if you have such old bones. Uncle Wang next to him obviously had a more thorough research and said with a smile that Uncle Wang's family was the first batch of immigrants. So he knew more about various novel affairs. Old Wang, if you are more educated, how about helping us take a look at the Hercules galaxy? Grandma Zhao on the side was wearing a pair of reading glasses and holding information in her hand. But she didn't know how to compare it. She saw the information on the Hercules galaxy. The life planet of the Hercules galaxy. Xianwu. Is it is a living planet that is very similar to the Earth. So she thinks this planet is good. Let me see. The geographical location of the Hercules galaxy is not very good. But the planet Hercules is very similar to the Earth. The revolution. Autobiography. Gravity etc. are similar. The immigrants used to be very similar. You can adapt to it quickly. And the civilization on Xianwu planet is still in a very primitive stage. The planet does not have any industrial pollution. So it is a good choice. Uncle Wang took the information about Xianwu star and studied it carefully. And then told all the advantages and disadvantages of this planet. The other grandfathers and grandmothers next to him also nodded after listening. Obviously, Uncle Wang the reviews are still spot on. Lao Wang. Lao Wang. How about helping us take a look at the Eridanus Galaxy? Yes. Help analyze the Eridanus Galaxy. Someone nearby spoke quickly. Obviously wanting to hear Lao Wang's opinion. Let me see. The Eridanus Galaxy is a very rich galaxy. Like the Centauri Galaxy. It has two living planets. Jianling Star and Jianshan Star. In terms of future development prospects. The Eridani Galaxy. Which has two living planets. Well, it will definitely be more prosperous. Furthermore, these two living planets have a very large land area. Their future development may not be much worse than that of the Centauri Galaxy. They are also close to the core base camp of the Empire. So they are a good choice. However, these two living planets are not very similar to our Yin Wang planet and the Earth. There are big differences in revolution, autobiography, gravity, etc. So if you immigrate there, it will take some time to adapt. Uncle Wang looked at the data carefully and analyzed it. He not only analyzed the current situation, but also analyzed the future development prospects, etc., which seemed to be quite advanced. I still think the red algae star in the Aquila galaxy is good. The location is very advantageous. And the red algae star has a strong gravity, which is also very helpful for the cultivation of Yuanli. It may become a holy land for cultivation in the future. After hearing this, Uncle Lee still insisted on his opinion. Oldly, what you say is not unreasonable. But for now, 
There is no way for us to live on this living planet. The gravity is too high. Uncle Wang nodded in agreement. That's true. It's really a pity. I really want to immigrate to the Aquila Galaxy. Uncle Lee nodded helplessly when he heard me. It would be good to return home. But it would be useless if there was no way to immigrate there. Lao Wang. Where are your family planning to immigrate to? How about we all choose to immigrate together, so that we can have a companion in the future, and continue playing cards together? Uncle Sun next to him suggested with a smile. Our family is immigrating to Jiangling in the Eridano system. If you guys are willing, we can immigrate there together, so that we can go sightseeing together in the future. I heard that the scenery on Jiangling is pretty good. When Uncle Wang heard this, he smiled and said, Okay, okay, let's immigrate to Jiangling Star together. We are all immigrants anyway. Just give us land. When our land becomes one, we will become permanent neighbors. Uh huh. Yes. I didn't expect that when we grow old, we will be able to own a piece of our own land. And we can also fight for a permanent piece of land for future generations. This life is worth it. When the other old people heard this, they nodded and shouted to immigrate to the same living planet together. Okay. Since everyone is willing to immigrate to Jiangling Star together, we have made a happy decision. A gentleman's words are hard to follow. So don't regret it when the time comes. Everyone, come and take a look. This is the map of Jianling Star. Although we immigrants used to get 100 square kilometers of land, there is a difference between this land and the land. Of course, 100 acres of desert cannot be compared with 100 acres of cultivated land. So we have to choose a good place. There must be beautiful scenery, green mountains and green waters, etc. Uncle Wang was obviously prepared. He opened a map, and it was a map of Jiangling. It marked many things in detail, including several continents. The land in those places was allocated to immigrants, and the land was not allocated. The terrain of this area, etc. The information is very detailed. Yes, Lao Wang. He is so well prepared and even has such detailed information. Uncle Lee looked at it and gave a thumbs up. Compared with Lao Wang, he was still far behind. The other party actually even studied the assigned piece of land carefully, which seemed to be very attentive. Hee <laughs> hee. Of course, I have to prepare well. To be honest, I have been studying it at home for a long time. Uncle Wang smiled, then pointed at the map and started talking. Please see. Everyone. The Imperial government is very smart to retain the largest continent in the Gangnam Galaxy and not distribute it. It is obvious that the Empire also has long-term considerations. The land allocated to us immigrants is not very good land, such as mountains, hills, plateaus, etc. in the mainland, or some islands. What we have to do now is to select the tall ones from these short ones, choose an area with maximum value, and then we will immigrate there together. Uncle Wang took a pen and kept drawing marks on the map. Obviously, these were not considered. We don't have to think about desert areas at all. Even if there is oil, we don't think about it. What's more, if you are unlucky, there may be nothing but sand. The rainforest areas are protected by the government. Obviously because they are afraid that uncontrolled private development will affect the ecological balance of the planet. So we don't need to consider these areas. The terrain in the hilly areas is too undulating and the development cost is high. However, it may contain rich resources. This depends on luck. It can be used as an alternative. Basins. Plains. These areas have all been occupied by the government. They don't have our share. So we don't need to consider them. I think the plateau area is quite good. Especially the plateau area of this continent. The altitude is only more than 2,000 meters. The terrain is very gentle and the rainfall is sufficient. The local indigenous people of Jianling Star were originally very famous nomadic people. So it is very suitable for developed animal husbandry. And our initial investment can be very small. The land does not need to be leveled. It can be used directly for grazing. If you raise some dogs and the like, you can graze on horses, and you can quickly generate economic benefits. Uncle Wan calculated carefully. He fell in love with the plateau grassland and planned to go to an alien planet to engage in animal husbandry. Chili Chuan, at the foot of Inshan Mountain, the sky is like a dome, covering the surrounding fields. The sky is blue, and the fields are vast. Cattle and sheep can be seen on the windblown grass. Ha ha. Lao Wang, don't tell me. I was envious of this kind of life when I was a child. I didn't expect that I would have the opportunity to become a herdsman when I get older. When Uncle Lee heard this, his eyes lit up. 
and he immediately recalled the poems he had learned when he was a child, and recalled his childhood dreams. I think it's okay. We can engage in animal husbandry, and we can also hunt and lead eagles and animals. This can lead to a better life in our later years. I like that the life of the herdsman over there is very nourishing. Others also nodded one after another, and some of the older people became agitated. Of course I won. Let's see what we can choose to raise. The cattle and sheep of the earth are not good. The giant herd beast on Yin Wang's star is a good choice. I just don't know if I can adapt to it when I get to Jiangling. It is said that Jiangling there are several good livestock animals here in Xing. Maybe we can try them. You must raise some good breeds of dogs. The Ligao Mastiffs raised by the primitive aborigines on the Kyushu planet are a good choice. As for horses, I think it would be good to use horses from this side of the earth. Uncle Wan laughed happily, and then began to discuss something again. Chapter 325 Excited Uncle Wan With the promulgation of the Interstellar Colonization Act, the enthusiasm of the people of the Empire was fully mobilized. The Empire also opened three new routes in a very timely manner. Three new routes to the Aquila Galaxy, the Hercules Galaxy, and the Eridanus Galaxy. Routes. And in order to promote the development of these three new territories, these new routes have spaceships traveling back and forth every month. In the void of the Kuiper Belt of the Eridanus Galaxy, which is 8.5 light years away from the Centauri Galaxy, a huge spaceship suddenly appeared in the dark and cold void. The mass of this spaceship reached a billion tons. A medium-sized spaceship. The spacecraft was covered with scars. It was obvious that it had been hit a lot while passing through the space-time ocean currents. The space-time ocean currents between the Centauri Galaxy and the Eridanus Galaxy are very dangerous to pass through now because the number of spacecrafts traveling between them is too small. This is why the reason why the Empire wants to use medium-sized spaceships to open routes. Because only the gravity field installed on a medium-sized spacecraft is strong enough to ensure safe passage of space-time ocean currents. If it is the space-time ocean current between the solar system and the Centauri Galaxy, the degree of danger is already very small. Ordinary spacecraft only need no matter how unlucky you are. You can pass with confidence. There is no road in the world. If you walk through it, there will naturally be a road. This huge spaceship carries more than one million immigrants from the Empire. All of them were stimulated by the Empire's Interstellar Colonization Act and chose to immigrate to the Eridanus Galaxy. Uncle Wang, Uncle Lee, and others were all among them. Ha ha! We finally arrived at the Eridanus Galaxy. Soon we will be able to travel to our own vast land. Uncle Wang looked at the stars outside and smiled excitedly. During the trip, Uncle Wang did not stop at all. While planning the future land of his family in detail, he also learned knowledge related to animal husbandry. Grandpa, can we live in a tent then? A yurt type? Beside him, his little grandson stared at him with big eyes and looked at him curiously. Of course, Grandpa will build you the best yurt. Uncle Wang hugged his grandson dotingly happily picked up a book and began to learn how to build a yurt. On the side, Uncle Wang's son Wang Kuei shook his head helplessly. In fact, Wang Kuei didn't really want to immigrate to the Eridanus Galaxy. After all, after immigrating, his original peaceful and stable life changed. Nothing was left in the Eridanus Galaxy. If it is not done, as the first batch of immigrants, you will naturally have to rely on your own hands to work hard. Life will definitely not be as comfortable as Yin Wang Star. In addition, children's reading will definitely be affected in various aspects, and their grades may not be able to keep up by then. Also, my wife is already used to life here in Yan Huangxing, and she also lives in Yan Huangxing's small home. It's very warm and comfortable. I don't want to leave. However, Uncle Wang insisted on immigrating there, and the Empire also encouraged immigration. At the same time, it also made detailed arrangements for the immigrant's life, including medical care, study, and employment. There were very few worries. So Wang Kui like others. The whole family immigrated to the Eridanus Galaxy. There are always people who have the courage to try. The Empire has always encouraged and cultivated the spirit of exploration and adventure among the people of the Empire. People who can immigrate to the Empire more or less have this spirit. Especially young people. Who also respond very positively. The Call of Empire. I don't know if the animals we brought this time can adapt to the environment on Jiangling Planet. Well, the high-quality forage from Yin Huang Star must be sown first. Uncle Wang was holding a small notebook and kept recording something. This notebook contained all the things he had discussed with other old men during this period, such as how to select seeds, breed seeds, cultivate forage, etc. Uncle Wang was very ruthless. 
I have read many books on animal husbandry. Dad, didn't I tell you before? Not everything can be spread randomly. It may affect the ecological balance of the planet. When we were on the Earth, there was a phenomenon of species invasion. If we spread it randomly, moving a species to another planet could have disastrous consequences. We'd better consult more scientists at the Academy of Sciences to see their opinions. We can't mess around. Wang Kui also had no choice but to remind him again. There was really no other way. His father couldn't sit still when he thought about the hundreds of square kilometers of land that his family was about to own. He was always planning how to manage and develop it in the future. I know. I know. I have already consulted and asked you to teach me. I said that if you have time, you might as well help and refer to it. This is the land that our family will pass down from generation to generation. How can we not plan it well? Uncle Wang said nonchalantly. And at the same time, he was quite angry at his son Wang Kuei's lack of attention. Dad, we haven't arrived yet. I don't even know what our land is like. Is the soil acidic or alkaline? Suitable for the growth of that kind of grass? What is the climate of Jiangling Star like? And the native grass? What are the nutritional ingredients? Etc. We haven't figured out these situations yet. So planning now is just a blind plan. Wang Kuei shook his head helplessly again. His family of seven could be allocated 700 square kilometers of land. Wang Kuei would naturally plan such a vast land carefully. As a scientist at the Imperial Academy of Sciences, Wang Kuei was learned more about how to get started. Right. Upon hearing Wang Kuei's words, Uncle Wang was also stunned. And then he picked up the book and started flipping through it. If the soil is acidic, it may not be suitable for growing orc grass. And that would be bad. Uncle Wang muttered as he watched. Orc grass is a high-quality pasture cultivated by the orcs on Yin Huang Star. It is eaten by the orcs themselves as food. It is rich in nutrients and grows very fast. It is very a high-quality pasture grass. But this grass prefers alkaline soil. When Wang Kuei saw Uncle Wang's appearance, he shook his head helplessly and simply let the old man figure it out. The spacecraft advanced rapidly in the void, and two blue life planets gradually appeared in everyone's field of vision. Originally, the orbits of Jianling Star and Jianshan Star were different, and it would take about a few decades for them to separate. Recently, and this is precisely the time when we are closest, it seems to be to welcome the arrival of immigrants. Jianling Star has a mass 2.1 times that of the Earth and a surface area 4.2 times that of the Earth. It has a vast landmass of nearly 1 billion square kilometers. Its orbital period is only 245 days, and its rotation period is about 21 hours. Jiangling Star is a top-level planet with primitive life. The indigenous people were still in a very primitive tribal stage at this time. And the Empire occupied this place without any effort. Like the Empire's base camp, the Empire implements a model of living together in big cities on every immigrant planet. Anyway, transportation is convenient. With the existence of private anti-gravity spaceships, there is no transportation problem. Jiangling Star Jinling City At this time, Jinling City had just been built, and the roads had not yet been hardened. The houses and so on were all built using 3D printing technology. They were not beautiful at all, and there was no interior decoration at all. But these houses are big enough and strong enough. Just like the Empire Capital Star, there are also small villas and exclusive courtyards arranged neatly, and each immigrant family will be assigned a small villa. The area is quite large, but it seems that this decoration will have to be done by myself. When the time comes, I will get some wooden boards and simply decorate the walls. When they arrived at their new home, Wang Kuei and his family naturally looked carefully from front to back, inside and out. The small villa has an area of more than 2,000 square meters, which is very large. Water, electricity, network, etc. have been taken care of. But there is no one at all. Furnish. Wang Kui looked at the 3D printed house and discussed with his wife how to decorate it in the future. The conditions for immigrating here are still relatively simple. This condition is only possible because of the technology of 3D printing houses developed by imperial scientists. Build the house very quickly. Otherwise, everyone will probably have to live in the open. Hello? Lowly. I live at No. AF87. How is the situation there? Let's find a time to call everyone together and go to our pasture to have a look. It's best to collect some soil, water, plants, etc. Take it back for testing and see what the scientists at the Imperial Academy of Sciences say. Wang Kuei's father, however, 
could no longer hold himself back and hurriedly called his old friends, obviously wanting to inspect his territory as soon as possible. How about taking a look at our land this afternoon? What? It's night over there where our land is. So let's go there at night. I have a small private spaceship at home. So don't worry. Uncle Wong was very excited at this time and wished he could fly to his land to take a closer look. This made Wang Kui on the side shake his head, and it was difficult to understand Uncle Wang's mood at this time. Dad, the land is right there, and it won't be taken away by others. There's no need to be in such a hurry. We can take a good rest for a while, and get used to Jiangling Star first. What do you know? The cultivation and breeding of this land are all about seasons. If you miss it, you will have to wait another year. Then your time will be wasted. You think it is an industrial product. As long as the machine is moving, the products will continue to flow. Come out. Uncle Wang glared at Wang Kuei fiercely. Uncle Wang was born in a rural area, so he paid great attention to the seasons and knew the importance of planting and raising livestock on time. Of course, more importantly, he wanted to go to his own land and take a good look at it as soon as possible. Chapter 326 Cows and sheep are seen in the wind and grass. Jianling's in Gear Plateau in a Ridinous Galaxy. The Gear Plateau is located between 40 and 45 degrees north latitude of Jianling Xing. It has a temperate climate with an average altitude of more than 2,000 meters. It has sufficient precipitation and a mild climate, creating the beautiful Gear Prairie. Blue sky and white clouds. Endless prairie. Meandering rivers. Wild grassland native animals running freely. And sleeping beasts in the low shrubs. The pristine and natural prairie is at this time of the year. The most beautiful season. A spaceship flew rapidly from the sky and soon flew to the air only a dozen meters above the ground. The speed also dropped very slowly and then flew slowly over the prairie. 43 degrees 23 minutes north latitude. 87 degrees 32 minutes west longitude. Ha ha. Fly a little further ahead and you will officially enter our home territory. On the spaceship, Uncle One looked at the navigation and positioning system on the spacecraft while excitedly looking at the prairie below. Did you see how beautiful this grassland is? It's much better than the HLB prairie on Earth and the Pampas grassland in Argentina. TSK TSK! Our 700 square kilometers of land must be planned well. While piloting the spaceship, Wang Kuei seemed helpless while listening to his father muttering about something. To be honest, he actually preferred the hilly and mountainous areas. He would build a manor near the mountains and lakes, so that if anything happened in the future, he would be fine, taking the family to live in the manor, go fishing, hunting, etc. This grassland really doesn't have much appeal. It seems that the old man has also put in a lot of effort. He actually knows about the HLB prairie and the Pampas grassland, and is determined to start a ranch. Old Wong, you are really good at choosing a location. This area is good, with sufficient water sources and lush aquatic plants. It is very suitable for animal husbandry. Uncle Lee, who was also on the spaceship, smiled and said to Mr. Wang that his family's land was next to Mr. Wang's house. And he was looking forward to going there and taking a look. That is, in order to choose a good piece of land. I checked a lot of information. Look at this land. One side is backed by a mountain. And there are countless timbers on it. It will definitely be used to build a pasture in the future. Hee <laughs> hee. This can be done. There is a lot of money left. And there is a lake in the middle of my land where we can go fishing and stuff like that in the future. Upon hearing what Uncle Lee said, Uncle Wang was extremely happy and began to talk in detail. Soon, the spaceship arrived at the territory of Uncle Wang's family. The territories allocated to immigrants were planned piece by piece. The area of a piece of land is 100 square kilometers. If the family chooses to immigrate, then they can choose a piece of land. As for the border line, there is no such thing at all. It relies entirely on the global positioning system to accurately locate the land based on longitude and latitude. In the future, the two adjacent areas will be marked by themselves. On a low hillside, the spacecraft slowly landed. Wang Kui held a gun in his hand. Because Jiangling Star is relatively primitive, it is naturally very safe in the city with various defense measures. But in the wild, all kinds of there are many such beasts. So the imperial government also allows immigrants to legally hold guns. This gun is not only used to deal with ferocious beasts, etc. Primitive natives may sometimes attack immigrants, which is impossible without a gun in their hands. Of course, for the safety of immigrants, the imperial government not only allows the legal possession of guns,
but also researches many high-tech equipment to ensure the safety of immigrants, such as emergency distress systems, security defense systems, etc. The emergency rescue system uses the global positioning system and the global communication system through the virtual machine. Once a danger signal occurs, the rescue team in space can come to the rescue from space in an anti-gravity spacecraft as soon as possible. As for the security defense system, this uses 3D radar to continuously scan the area. Once a dangerous animal appears, the laser weapon on the defense system will automatically expel the dangerous animal. If it cannot be expelled, extermination will be performed. Under the comprehensive protection of these two systems, the Empire has never had any casualties caused by beast attacks or the like on Yin Huang and Jiuzhou planets. Didi. Didi. There are quite a lot of ferocious beasts. Look. There is a group of wolf-like animals here. And there are large ferocious beasts that hunt alone in the West. Dad, I guess what you raise in the future will not be enough to feed these ferocious beasts. Wong Kai holds a detector in his hand. The detector can detect animals within a 10-mile radius and display it directly in the brain through a virtual machine. Making it clear. Humph. If these animals dare to come here, see if I don't kill them all. Mr. Wong obviously didn't care. He had nothing to fear when he had a gun in his hand. Oldly, look, I think it is quite good to establish a breeding farm in that location. The water source is close, and the grass nearby is lush. In the future, I will buy a lawnmower, dig a cellar to store grass, etc., and raise thousands of animals. There is definitely no problem with cattle and sheep. I think we don't need to raise too much in the early stage. Let's take it slow. Your land area is large, as long as this pasture is well managed and planned. My suggestion is to build more pastures and carry out grazing on a regular basis. This way it can make full use of the pasture and allow the pasture to rest. In addition, I think we can first take a look at the soil conditions and pasture conditions here and see if we can think of ways to improve the pastures and then find ways to divert water from the lake and use sprinklers to spray water so that the grass can grow more lush. If you use more scientific management methods, I guess it won't be a problem for your family to raise hundreds of thousands of pastures. Hundreds of thousands? Not that many. This land is permanent land. We must cherish it. It is not worthwhile to raise too many and waste them. Raising a few thousand will be enough. That's right. The children are not very interested in this part anyway. So we old men like to toss with these things. Uncle Wong and Uncle Lee pointed around enthusiastically and began to plan. The two old people had nothing to do anyway. They were really full of energy to do this in their later years. Wang Kue on the side looked a little bored, looking at the empty grassland around him. Some of the small emotions caused by immigration also disappeared. At first, he didn't quite understand why his father was so passionate and obsessed with having his own land. Looking up now, I can't see the edge at a glance. Such a large piece of land will belong to my family in the future and will be passed down from generation to generation. I suddenly feel that immigrating here is a wise choice. Otherwise, where can I get such a large piece of land? The turbulent immigration development is unfolding in every corner of Jiangling. The people of the empire cherish their private land very much. Some people in the empire built their own land into large pastures and lived the life of herdsmen in the interstellar era. They grazed during the day. At night, the grazing animals returned to the pastures and then took spaceships back to the cities to live. Some people in the empire chose the mountainous hilly areas, built manors, and lived a leisurely life as manor owners. They drank tea and hunted with their friends, and lived a very leisurely life. There are also some people who use large-scale machinery to cultivate their own land and plant grains, fruits, flowers, etc. Naturally, the cultivation of grains is very rough. The land is too large, and it is fully mechanized farming, and the cultivation of fruits and flowers is also very rough. At will, all kinds of machinery are used on a large scale. Even lazy people who don't plant anything or raise anything will build something like a house on their own land. Install solar panels on the mountain. Or simply use magnetic field batteries as energy sources to connect connect to the satellite network. Etc. When you have time, go on vacation on your own land and declare that you are the owner of this land. As spring passed and autumn came, the immigrants worked hard and managed their new homes and quickly adapted. Children, come up quickly. Your grandpa just called. The stuffed beasts at home have started to give birth to little stuffed animals. Jinling City. Today is the weekend, and there is no need to go to work. 
Wang Kui is going to take the children to his ranch to stay for two days to accompany the old man. The old man doesn't even want to come back to Jinling City now. Basically, he has food and accommodation here at the ranch. What do you need? Just send a message to Wang Kui to send the daily necessities. Wow! The plush beast has given birth. I want to go. I want to go. When the children in Wang Kui's family heard this, they immediately became excited. They all quickly ran to the anti-gravity spaceship. Eager to see the little stuffed beast. This stuffed beast is unique to Jiangling planet. An animal whose fur is very fine and thick. Making it the finest leather. Soon, carrying a family, the anti-gravity spacecraft slowly took off from behind the small villa of Wang Kui's family. And then continued to accelerate, cutting through the void, flying towards the Wang family ranch on the other side of Jianling Star. In just 10 minutes, the anti-gravity spacecraft arrived at the Wang family ranch. At this time, the Wang family ranch was brightly lit and very eye-catching in the dark and empty grassland. At this time, Mr. Wang was carefully waiting for the stuffed beast, and with the cub under the plush beast was wiped clean and placed in a clean and warm nest. Grandpa! Grandpa! Where is the stuffed animal baby? Before the little guys came in, the sound came over, scaring the stuffed beasts and immediately alerting them. The animals that gave birth to their babies are very sensitive. Uncle Wan quickly stroked to calm his mood, and at the same time, he signaled to the little guys who opened the door to whisper. Some. Wow! So cute! From now on, you will be called Xiao Hei. The little granddaughter, who was only four or five years old, melted instantly when she saw the furry little stuffed animals. She pointed at a little stuffed animal and immediately named it. I like this. It's called Little Flower. My name is Xu Chiang. Look at it. It's so cute when you squint your eyes. The little ones were chirping and happily surrounding the little plush beast. Mr. Wang was smiling all over his face. While comforting the big plush beast, he motioned for the little ones to be quiet. Wang Kui looked at everything in front of him, smiled slightly at his wife, and hugged her. Maybe it was a little harder to start life after immigrating, but it was all worth it. My father was happy and could be happy. Have a good night's sleep, and the kids will have a good place to go during the holidays. The next day, at dawn, Wang Kui rode a tall horse and drove the grazing animals out to graze. A gust of wind blew by and groups of grazing animals emerged from the grass. The wind blew the grass, and the cattle and sheep were visible. Chapter 327 Crazy Expansion Time passes day by day, and the vigorous immigration is still going on all the time. On the one hand, the empire continues to attract immigrants from China, the Earth Federation, and on the other hand, it continues to transfer domestic citizens to newly developed galaxies. The living planet immigrated to the past. The Seafuse Galaxy is 7.8 light years away from the Hercules Galaxy. The local indigenous civilization in the Seafuse Galaxy has a very high level of scientific and technological development. It almost has the technological level and strength of the Earth a few decades ago. It can be regarded as the primary level 2 cosmic civilization. Stage The Imperial Garrison Corps led by Liu Xiling was currently fighting against the entire local Atli Federation in the void of the Seafuse Galaxy. The sudden appearance of the Imperial Army shocked the Atli Federation. They did not expect that an alien civilization would arrive. Own galaxy. So in the face of invasion by foreign enemies, almost the entire Atli civilization fled. In the void where the two sides were fighting, the Atli Empire's mighty spacecraft, space battleships, etc. formed a huge army. And the number was very large. But it seems very complicated. There is no formation. And it feels like a swarm. More importantly, the attack weapons of the Atli Federation are still very backward weapons used on planets, such as missiles. Even energy weapons have not been developed. On the contrary, Lu Xiling led the Imperial Garrison. Although the number of battleships was sparse, the mass of each battleship was very large. The smallest battleship was far larger than the largest space battleship of the Atli Federation. And all the space battleships marched in the void in a very orderly manner, setting up a powerful combat formation. Tens of thousands of space battleships were combined into attack formations in the void, like wild beasts that choose people and devour them. The battle between the two sides showed a one-sided massacre from the beginning. At a long distance, the Empire's space battleships began to pour out bursts of light rain. The powerful energy weapons easily killed off, who did not understand space warfare at all. The special forces of the Federal Army lost their armor and armor. However, this was just the beginning. As the distance between the two sides got closer and closer, the Empire's Ace Force, the Space Fighter Force, 
began to show its power. Tens of thousands of space fighter planes roared in the void. And each powerful attack formation was like a beast targeting them. Like a huge flock of sheep. Although the Atlee Federation's army is huge. And the number of spacecraft is many times greater than that of the garrison. The performance of the fighter planes is not as good as humans. And the more important training aspects are too far apart. The huge group of fighter planes swept through the void over and over again. Accompanied by bursts of light rain flashing in the void and countless fireworks rising continuously in the void. The Atlee Federation's army did not even touch the edge of the Imperial Space Battleship. The huge fighter group was like a gust of wind, easily blowing away the Atlee Federation army. It was a one-sided massacre. A massacre without any pressure at all. Although the technological level of the Atlee Federation has developed to the beginning of Level 2 Cosmic Civilization, it is still far behind the technological level of the Empire. After a long time, Calm returned to the void, Countless spacecraft wreckage were still floating in all directions. All the space power of the Atlee Federation was completely destroyed. The Imperial Guard Corps' army marched toward the Atlee Federation in a mighty manner. The home planet attacks. One month later, after a month-long attack by biological virus weapons, the entire Atlee Federation's home planet turned into a dead world, announcing the demise of the Atlee Federation. And another galaxy was included in the Empire's territory. The Equus Galaxy is 7.3 light years away from the Eridanus Galaxy. In the inner circle of the Equus Galaxy, in the same orbit, two planets with a mass similar to that of the Earth are actually entangled with each other and orbiting the center of the galaxy at the same time. Stars revolve around each other. Such celestial bodies are quite rare in the universe, even rarer than binary star systems. However, what is even more rare is that these two planets are actually life planets, and both have given birth to countless lives. However, the level of civilization on these two life planets is not high. And the civilization on one life planet has just entered a feudal society. Stage. And the other is still in the bloody slave stage. The army of the Imperial Frontier Legion came from the distant void and occupied the two planets effortlessly. Just like the Orc Empire on Yin Wang Star. They even pretended to be a ghost to let the indigenous people on the planet build huge cities to lay the foundation for future immigration. The primitive indigenous people who had not developed yet thought that these people who descended from the sky were gods from the sky. Who knew that these aliens from distant galaxies had come to occupy their homeland. Being weak is not drunk. It's just that you don't even know what your opponent is. It has to be said to be a kind of sadness. But it is also a kind of luck. Because according to the Empire's foreign expansion strategy, as long as the civilization level has not developed, the Empire will not implement the inhumane extermination policy in the process of expansion. These primitive natives will also have the opportunity to pass on. And perhaps in the future, they may slowly compete with the orcs on Yin Wang Star. In the same way, they were slowly forced into protected areas one after another. But at least, the inheritance of their civilization is still there. Maybe one day in the future, when the Empire shows its kindness, they may even have the opportunity to become an affiliated cosmic civilization of the Empire and start a prosperous and powerful day again. Of course, Obviously it is impossible to escape the control of the Empire. Compared to the Adli Federation and the goblins on the Red Algae Star in the Aquila Galaxy, which were all wiped out, they can be considered lucky. This is like when we are faced with two nests of ants. We feel that the red ants are more aggressive. One bite will make us swell up. So we kill the red ants with a pot of boiling water or a fire. The ants were eliminated, but the black ant nests did not bite. So we thought they might be useful in the future so we only burned some of them to death. But we did not kill them. This is the iron-blooded forest law of Chiguoguo in the cosmic forest. The strong take all, and the weak do not even have the right to speak. They can only pray that they are valuable in the eyes of advanced cosmic civilizations, and will not be destroyed by others. In the void outside the Aquila Galaxy, which is only 8.5 light years away from the Aquila Galaxy, the starlight is dim. The void is cold and dark. And the light from the stars is already very dim. However, in this calm void, two cosmic armies are here. At this time, it was hard to separate from the killing. Li Wanda piloted the space fighter plane and kept rolling and flying up and down in the void, performing classic flight maneuvers one after another. It was like a fleeting glimpse of light, or like a giant claw in snow and mud. The traces were hard to find. From time to time, rays of light came from the space fighter plane. An attack was launched from above causing clouds of flames to be fired at the battleship group of the Bulvo Empire in the opposing Tion and Galaxy. In the void around the space fighter, bursts of light rain enveloped each area, 
The space fighter piloted by Lee Wandu was able to find the pores perfectly every time and continuously attacked the enemy's space fighter group in the void. At this time, he was fully focused. As a Yuanling warrior, his powerful sixth sense was fully activated. He could be alert to any danger in advance. The space fighter was like an elf born in the void, and the tail flame at its tail seemed to be flickering, like a will-o'-the-wisp coming from the underworld. It floats erratically, left and right, without any trace. The Imperial Royal Legion space battleship led by Luo Xiaoyao flew rapidly in the void. Powerful and dazzling light pillars pierced the void, bringing up clusters of dazzling light in the void. It had a farther attack range than the enemy, and was further powerful power. And more importantly, the power of the Empire's space fighter force. Luo Xiaoya took all these advantages to the extreme. The space battleship group flew in an arc in the void, keeping the distance as much as possible, away from the time when the two sides were in close combat and used the advantage of longer attack distance to destroy the Bulvo Empire's battleships as much as possible. On the other side, the Empire's space fighter fleet is dispatched. Although the number of Bulvo Empire's fighter planes is very large, how can the Empire be the opponent of the fighter planes? This is another Yuanli warrior driving a space fighter plane. And at the same time in the virtual world, he has already mastered his technology to the point of proficiency. Not to mention the Bulvo Empire's fighter fleet. Even if the Earth Federation's fighter fleet faced off against the Empire's fighter fleet, it would be a one-sided massacre. Yuanli's powerful body, super reflexes, and most importantly, powerful the sixth sense of consciousness determines that they are the real space warriors. Although the soldiers of the Bulvo Empire were very brave and fought bravely without fear of sacrifice, and also caused some casualties to the Royal Legion of the Empire, the war was still lost. The space army was completely wiped out, leaving only the home planet like a girl who takes off all her clothes. She can only declare herself part of the Empire. The battle with the Bulwer Empire was a civilization with the highest level of scientific and technological development that the Empire had encountered since its expansion. It was similar to the current technological level of the Earth Federation. The Imperial Army had to fight hard to destroy the Bulwer Empire, bringing the Temple of Heaven Galaxy into the arms of the Empire. The Hercules Galaxy, the Eridanus Galaxy, the Aquila Galaxy, and the Empire's base camp, the Centauri Galaxy. The Empire is based on the four major galaxies and spreads to the starry sky in all directions in a divergent state. In just about 20 years, time, that is, around 2080, under the crazy expansion of the three major armies of the Empire, more than 30 galaxies were included in the Empire's territory, with nearly 40 living planets, with the Centauri Galaxy as the core, all galaxies within a 30 light year radius except for the direction of the solar system where the Earth is located, are labeled with the Empire. Chapter 328 Kalan Empire The Empire is expanding very fast and has always been relatively lucky. The civilizations it encounters are basically at a lower technological level than the Empire. Therefore, the Empire's three armies can continue to expand very smoothly. In just a few decades, a huge interstellar civilization with more than 30 galaxies and nearly 40 living planets is rising. However, as the Empire's territory grew larger and larger, the Empire began to encounter truly powerful civilizations. The Boyle Galaxy is more than 50 light years away from the Empire's core Centaur Galaxy, even through the ocean currents of time and space. Starting from the Empire's Centaur Galaxy, it first passes through the Aquila Galaxy and then the Temple of Heaven Galaxy. Finally, it took more than seven years to reach the Boyle Galaxy. The Boyle Galaxy is considered to be a galaxy at the farthest edge of the Empire. It was recently incorporated into the Empire. There are no immigrants yet. And even the name of this galaxy has not been changed to a Chinese name. At this time, Luo Xiaoyao, the commander of the Imperial Royal Legion, was preparing to lead the army back to the Centaur Galaxy, the core of the Empire. Everything in the Boyle Galaxy was handed over to the Imperial government officials, who came from afar, just like the newly occupied ones in the past. Like galaxies, we have conquered the galaxy. As for how to govern and develop it, this is a matter for the government. The military does not need to worry about these things at all. I can finally go home. I don't know what the situation at home will be like after decades. Luo Xiao looked at the star in the sky that was gradually getting smaller and was full of emotion. At the beginning, with dreams, with a passion to make achievements and expand the territory, he embarked on the road of expedition. Over the years, he has been from the Centaur Galaxy to fighting outward. We hit the Boyle Galaxy where we are now. The Imperial Royal Legion led by Luo Xiaoyao conquered more than 10 star systems for the Empire. 
one third of the empire's territory was conquered by the royal legion led by Luo Xiaoyao. It can be said that they have established unparalleled achievements. And now Luo Xiaoyao has also done so. He has been canonized as an earl by Emperor Li Fu, which is the highest among the nobles in the empire. Although this noble title does not seem to be of much use. It is just an honor. Yes, I can finally go home. Although we have fought a lot of battles over the years, there are no hard battles. Only here in the Temple of Heaven Galaxy is a real fierce battle. And the rest is easy. Li Wandu on the side also sighed softly. With his excellent performance, Li Wandu has been promoted steadily. Now he has been promoted to the rank of Imperial Major General. He is already a senior commanding officer. Now he is transferred by Luo Xiaoyao. Focus on cultivating people around you. Xiao Li, I remember that you are not married yet. Do you want me to introduce you and connect you after you return to Yin Wang Star? At this time, the atmosphere seemed very relaxed. Luo Xiaoyao was not as serious as his superiors and subordinates. In fact, the same was true for the entire Royal Legion. Everyone seemed very relaxed after hearing that they were returning to the Empire. They were also talking and laughing among themselves. They are all discussing their life after retirement. Okay. Okay. I'm worried about not getting a wife. Li Wandu said with a smile on his face. Buzz. Buzz. Suddenly, bursts of piercing sirens sounded continuously in the battleship, making everyone stunned. What happened? Luo Xuya's nerves suddenly became tense. The alarm system on the space battleship would not sound for no reason. Something must have happened. Oh no. Our surveillance systems throughout the galaxy have just monitored a huge group of battleships. Where is the location? Quadrant 7. Kuiper Belt Region. The Kuiper Belt Region? Luo Shuyu's eyes suddenly narrowed. Could it be that other alien civilizations arrived in the Boil Galaxy through space-time ocean currents? Li Wandu on the side also frowned. The huge fleet that suddenly appeared in the Kuiper Belt area can basically be concluded to have suddenly appeared through the ocean currents of time and space. Didi. Didi. At this moment, Surveillance images began to appear in the virtual image of the command center. A huge fleet, consisting of two large space battleships, more than 20 medium-sized space battleships, and hundreds of small space battleships, was in the void, flying rapidly and fiercely. The first few space battleships can also see obvious traces of being hit by asteroids, meteorites and the like. There is no doubt that these are left when they pass through the ocean currents of time and space. These space battleships are definitely not our empire's space battleships. Our empire's space battleships all use anti-gravity power systems. They are basically oval-shaped space battleships. The appearance of these space battleships is too different from our empire's, Li Wandu said categorically as soon as he saw them. The appearance of these space battleships was relatively square, and he knew at a glance that they were not produced by the empire. Contact them immediately and give them a warning. All battleships enter combat status and space fighter jets take off. Report the situation to the Imperial Headquarters immediately and transmit all information back to the Headquarters. Luo Shiryu's face was very heavy, and orders were issued continuously from him. He knew the seriousness of the matter. This sudden appearance of the unknown battleship group was definitely not comparable to the civilizations he had defeated in the past. Not to mention anything else. The mass of each of the two large space battleships alone exceeds 10 billion tons which is comparable to the most powerful ones such as the Yellow Emperor, Xin Shi Huang, Hanwu Emperor, and so on. A big space battleship. What's more, the opponent also has more than 20 medium-sized space battleships and hundreds of small space battleships. The combat effectiveness of such a huge group of battleships will be very terrifying. In terms of the number and quality of the battleships, the Imperial Royal Legion led by him is really different. Far. As Luo Xiaoyu's order was issued, the soldiers of the Imperial Royal Legion, who had been preparing to go home had to return to their fighting posts again. The battleship group began to adjust its direction. And the space fighter planes also began to take off. Assuming a fighting posture. In the void of the Kuiper Belt area. Which is more than 30 astronomical units away from the Imperial Royal Legion. A huge fleet suddenly appeared and continued to advance mightily in the void. This huge fleet belonged to the 12th Legion of the Kallen Empire. And was a legion specially used to open up new territories similar in nature to Luo Xiaoya's current Imperial Royal Legion. In the largest space battleship, Commander Webster of the 12th Legion was looking at the information about this new galaxy in a good mood. Like the Empire, the Karen Empire continued to expand in the void of the universe with its powerful force. With more than 200 galaxies, nearly 300 living planets, 
and a huge population of more than 500 billion. The Karen Empire can be considered one of the most powerful civilizations within a few thousand light years. And it is also a well-known and powerful civilization in the entire Orion Spiral Arm. As the commander of the 12th Legion, Webster, like Luo Xiaoyao, has been conquering galaxies one after another over the years and incorporating these galaxies into the territory of the Kalan Empire. Webster's title has also been rising steadily, different from the honorary nobility system implemented by the Empire. The nobles of the Kalan Empire have very great power. Of course, the nobility of the Kalan Empire is also linked to military merit. If you want to obtain a noble title or upgrade, you must pass the it is achieved through military merit, which is somewhat similar to the system during the Qin dynasty. Of course, in addition to soldiers, scientists can also obtain noble titles as long as they have new major achievements. Soldiers and scientists are the two most respected professions in the Kalin Empire. If everything goes well and I capture another 10 galaxies, I will almost be able to upgrade my title to one level. TSK TSK. This speed is as fast as a rocket. And there is no difficulty. I can't even meet a decent opponent. While Webster was drinking wine from the capital star of the Karen Empire, he was silently making his own little calculations. Buzz! Buzz! Suddenly, bursts of sirens sounded continuously in the battleship, making Webster frown slightly. Perhaps the civilization in this galaxy can allow people to stretch their muscles. Webster didn't pay too much attention. The alarm usually sounded when he encountered an already developed civilization. Webster stood up and walked towards the command center. People from the Kalan Empire were tall, generally two meters tall, with ferocious appearance, red eyes, and feline-like pupils. As long as they looked at the same person, they would be targeted by wild beasts. The skin on the body is normal, and thick hair can still be seen on the skin, and there is a tail trailing behind the buttocks. Your Excellency, Commander, we have discovered a fleet and received a message from the other party. Scientists are currently deciphering it urgently. As soon as they arrived at the command center, someone immediately reported the situation to Webster and told them the information detected by the detector. The opponent's battleship group consists of two medium-sized space battleships and ten small space battleships. The shape of the spacecraft is like an oval flying saucer. It is not the shape of a spacecraft of any civilization we know. It can be concluded that it is a space battleship of an unknown civilization. But one thing is worth noting. We have not found other spacecraft in this galaxy. So it is very likely that we have entered a galaxy with a relatively powerful civilization. The people under them are constantly analyzing the data collected. It is obvious that they do not pay too much attention to it. The opponent only has two medium-sized battleships and more than ten small space battleships, which do not pose a threat to themselves at all. The message they send has been deciphered. This is the territory of the Yin Wang Empire. Please report your identity and purpose immediately. Otherwise we will launch an attack. Chapter 329 Firefight Yin Wang Empire Humph! You are so brave. You actually said you would launch an attack. When Webster heard this, he immediately narrowed his eyes to study. His narrow pupils flashed with excitement. He finally met a decent opponent. Tell them that this galaxy belongs to our Kalan Empire from now on. If you don't want to die, get out of here. Webster said very domineeringly and then began to issue orders one after another. And the entire huge battleship group also began to enter a state of combat readiness. Yin Wang Empire, I hope you still have some strength. Otherwise, I won't mind destroying you. Webster looked at the starry sky outside. The stars were dotted. He had already destroyed many civilizations. Sometimes he just liked the feeling of destroying a country and destroying a family. He was like a god from above, making countless decisions in a single thought. Life and death. Radio waves propagate in the void at the speed of light. But the distance is more than 30 astronomical units. And even at the speed of light, it takes several hours to transmit it. Karen Empire. Huh? You have such a domineering tone. I would like to see how much you weigh. Luo Xiaoyao received Webster's reply and couldn't help but clenched his fists. Attack! Without any nonsense. Luo Xiaoyao issued the order to attack to his army. It is the duty of the soldiers of the empire to protect their homes and the country. Now the boil system belongs to the territory of the empire. The territory of the empire has been invaded. Even if the war comes, never flinch even to the last soldier. The Imperial Royal Legion began to operate crazily. Everyone already knew that they might have encountered a strong opponent. And a tough battle was absolutely inevitable. Both sides flew directly towards each other. The distance between the two sides became closer and closer. 
and more and more information was obtained from each other. Scientists began to analyze each other's space battleships. The space battleship of the Karen Empire uses a plasma power system. I have to say that their technology is quite good. They can actually implement the plasma power system to such an extent that it can drive a large space battleship of the 10 billion ton level. However, I can say with absolute certainty that the speed of their space battleships will never be as high as space. And their acceleration will be very slow. Their flexibility is definitely not as good as ours. So we can give full play to this advantage as much as possible. If nothing else goes wrong, the opponent's attack weapon system should be an energy weapon. As for the attack distance, it is currently impossible to speculate. Imperial scientists accompanying the fleet analyze the space battleships of the Karen Empire. In many cases, the technological level of the opponent can be analyzed just from the appearance, size, quality, tail flame, etc. of the battleship. Plasma power? Luo Xiaoyao felt a little relieved after receiving the analysis. This showed that although the opponent's warships were large in number, they were actually inferior to our empire's space battleships in terms of technology. Luo Xiaoyao also had a combat plan in his mind. At the same time, the commander of the 12th Legion of the Kaling Empire also received the analysis report from the scientists. Unknown power system? Most likely an anti-gravity power system? They are all a bunch of trash. They can't even analyze what kind of power system the opponent's space battleship uses. Webster's eyes narrowed slightly. His eyes flashing with cold light, and his tail constantly wagging showed that he was slightly uneasy in his heart at this time. This kind of situation has not been encountered before. The Karen Empire has a vast territory and a vast territory. It has encountered many interstellar civilizations, some of which are more powerful than the Karen Empire. The Karen Empire will never dare to provoke it. Objects. And these objects that the Kalan Empire does not dare to provoke basically have mastered power technology that is more powerful than the plasma power system, including anti-gravity power technology. In such a remote area, it should be impossible to encounter an overly powerful opponent. Otherwise, how could the opponent only have a few space battleships? Not even a large space battleship. Giving himself some comfort in his heart, Webster continued to get down and fly the battleship towards the opponent while preparing for battle. In the void of the Boyle Galaxy, the two fleets were flying towards each other. In the calm void, the rising fighting spirit and murderous aura from both sides gradually filled the air, and each other was constantly launching probes towards the other. Device? Want to know more information and intelligence? 10 million kilometers away. Attack! When the distance between the two sides was only 10 million kilometers, Luo Xiaoyao ordered an attack without hesitation. The Empire's energy weapon technology has made great progress over the years. Under the leadership of Baikai, the top scientist in the Empire's energy technology field, the Empire's latest energy technology, the weapon can even reach an attack range of 20 million kilometers. However, Luo Xiuyu's fleet set out from the Empire's base camp decades ago. It is not the Empire's latest space battleship. But the attack range of energy weapons is still 10 million kilometers. Whoosh! Whoosh! On the 12 space battleships that had long been charged. Dazzling rays of light kept flashing out. Disappearing into the void in an instant. And attacking the Kalin Empire battleship group. First! Among the Kalin Empire battleships. The first three space battleships didn't even understand what was going on. In an instant, each space battleship was hit by more than 10 energy beams. The powerful energy beams hit these space battleships. The battleship caused a devastating blow. And all of a sudden, it turned into a huge flame. Holy crap! 10 million kilometers? The opponent's attack range is a full 3 million kilometers further than the attack range of our energy weapons. Among the battleships of the Kaling Empire, the originally menacing Kaling Empire army was instantly startled. Unexpectedly, the opponent's attack distance and attack power were so terrifying. Three space battleships were destroyed before one of their own attacks. The enemy is destroyed. Speed up! Webster's eyes suddenly opened. With yellow eyes and narrow black pupils. As if he wanted to rely on the instinct inherited from his ancestors to see clearly the true appearance of the enemy on the opposite side through the distant void. He knew that his side's attack range was not as good as the opponent's. So the only thing he could do was to speed up and approach the opponent as quickly as possible and then rely on his side's superiority in the number of warships to defeat the enemy. But obviously Luo Xiaoyao also knows this. So the Imperial Royal Legion led by Luo Xiaoyao flies in an arc in the void, so as to keep the distance as much as possible and try to attack more waves. If the opponent is stupid enough to catch up, then even better. Humph! 
The space fighter planes are dispatched. Luo Xiao looked at the distance and position of the two signs in the virtual image, snorted lightly, and ordered again, in the void near the twelve space battleships. Groups of space fighters that had been idle in the void began to rush like sardines crazily towards the battleships of the Kaling Empire. At the same time, on the twelve space battleships, the hatches slowly opened, and space fighter planes began to roar out from these hatches. Soon, more and more space fighter planes formed in the void. The attack formation formed a second wave of space fighter attack waves and attacked the space battleship group of the Karen Empire. Of the 20,000 space fighters, Luo Xiao took off 10,000, divided into two waves of attack formations. The space fighters are the ace in the Imperial Army. The combat effectiveness of these space fighters piloted by Yuanli warriors is very terrifying. Like a ghost, can often have the miraculous effect of eating something to eat. During the battle in the Temple of Heaven Galaxy, Luo Xiao relied on the space fighter planes in his hands to destroy the Bulwer Empire in the Temple of Heaven Galaxy. You must know that the Bulwer Empire fought locally, and the number of space fighters and space battleships was many times the Imperial Royal Legion. Boom! Boom! Energy beams flash continuously in the void, attacking wave after wave towards the battleships of the Karen Empire. If they didn't use all their firepower at this time, it would be much later. Among the Karen Empire battleships, waves of attacks took away space battleships one after another. This made Webster feel extremely depressed. But he had no choice but to hold on and accelerate towards the opponent. Past. The enemy warship is flying in an arc, trying to distance itself from us. The enemy has dispatched space fighter troops. Two waves. Each wave has 5,000 space fighters. The latest developments were reported to Webster one after another, which made him feel even more uneasy. It was obvious that his opponent was very smart and knew how to use his own advantages instead of just fighting tooth and nail. Change the flight direction and rush over in the shortest time and distance. Send out 100,000 space fighters to destroy all the opponent's space fighters. Just 10,000 space fighters dare to attack us. We are overestimating our capabilities. Webster gave the order harshly. He no longer cared about whether changing the flight path would waste energy. The other party changed the direction. And he had to change the direction as well. So that he could enter the attack range of his own warships faster. As his order was issued, the huge battleship instantly turned into a hornet's nest. Countless space fighters flew out from these huge space battleships. Soon, the void around the battleship was surrounded by groups one after another. Surrounded by a huge group of space fighter planes. The space fighter plane dragged a long tail flame. Like a firefly in the dark void of the universe. The entire void was filled with swarms of fireflies. Forming formations one after another. It was passed and attacked the Yin Wang Empire space fighter plane. 100,000 versus 10,000. Our 12th legion is still a legion that has been beaten by war for a long time in the universe. If I don't eat you to pieces, I won't call you Webster. Looking at the huge group of space fighters in the void outside, Webster was full of confidence. Chapter 330. There really isn't even any scum left. In the boiled galaxy, in the vast and empty void, two huge groups of fireflies were marching forward in the void, each forming strange attack formations against each other. The army of the Karen Empire can be said to be a long-lasting battlefield. And they are not the kind of rookies who have never been on the battlefield. The attack formation is also a formation summarized from the long history of foreign wars of the Karen Empire, which can give full play to its numerical advantage. Like a big net, trying to catch up and wipe out the two waves of attack groups of the Imperial Royal Legion. Humph! You are really arrogant to put up such a formation. Swordfish attack formation. In a space fighter. Li Wandu snorted lightly. The virtual machine he wore had already reported every move of the Kalen Empire battleship group. The enemy's 100,000 space fighters formed a huge net in the void. Formation? The intention is obvious. As Li Wandu's order was issued, the first wave of 5,000 space fighters began to transform in the void. Soon, a strange creature with dots of light appeared in the void. The 5,000 space fighters formed a formation similar to fish-like attack formation. The swordfish attack formation is the most powerful attack formation that the Imperial military has figured out through countless simulation exercises in the virtual world. In a battle between large space fighters, its attack power is extremely terrifying. Once the swordfish formation was formed, it flew quickly in the void like a fish in water. Although it looked very large, it was extremely flexible. Sometimes it darted left and right, and sometimes it flew up and down. It was extremely flexible, just like this piece of like an elf born in the void. 
When we fly later, don't just go up front. Fly to the side as much as possible. The closer the opponent's formation is to the middle, the greater the density of attacks. Even if we can escape by then, we will die. It's quite tragic. There are only a hundred thousand enemy space fighters. We can eat them all in just a few waves. While Lee Wandu was flying the space fighter in the void, he did not forget to tell his teammates what they need to pay attention to. In this kind of large-scale battle between space fighters, the formation is very important, and each other needs to be as close as possible. Only by cooperating can you destroy the enemy as much as possible while saving yourself. Personal heroism is of little use in such a large-scale battle. Without the support and help of teammates, even the best person will have no chance of evading the opponent's intensive attacks. Attack! Lee Wanda looked at the dark starry sky. The light from the distant starry sky looked very dim. But there was a group of flashing lights. Lee Wanda knew that these were the Kalen Empire space fighter fleets. Detectors, etc. that were rapidly attacking. He also told Lee Wanda that the enemy had entered his own attack formation. Call out! The swordfish formation composed of 5,000 space fighters kept flipping in the void. In an instant, 5,000 rays of light formed a dense rain of light and disappeared in the void. Flash! After a wave of attacks, Lee Wandu immediately ordered to evade. The swordfish composed of 5,000 fighter planes flipped in the void and flashed like a ghost. As soon as it left the original area, an even larger rain of light enveloped the original area. Area. Countless people couldn't help but break into cold sweats. First, here, in the formation composed of a group of fighter planes from the Karen Empire, flames rose up in the void one after another. 5,000 light rains were almost always fired. In an instant, 5,000 space fighters exploded in the void. Like fireworks are generally in full bloom. How can it be? Edmund, the commander of the Karen Empire space fighter group, was completely shocked. The opponent's hit rate was too high. In just one wave of attacks, 5,000 space fighters were destroyed. More importantly, it was because the dense light rain attack from his own powerful formation of 100,000 space fighters did not kill even one of the opponent's space fighters, which made it even more difficult for him to accept this situation. It's not that easy to hide away. Change the formation. Edmund gave the order coldly while flying the space fighter in the void. Soon, the space fighters of the Karen Empire changed rapidly in the void. Originally, the swordfish of Liwandu and others had almost escaped the giant net. But when the formation changed, they were once again in the middle of the giant net. It was about to hit him head on. You're the only one who knows how to change formations? Trident attack formation. Lee Wanda paid attention to the changes in the battlefield in time and space. As soon as the space fighter group of the Karen Empire changed, Lee Wanda immediately ordered a change of formation. The Trident attack formation was also a powerful attack formation famous for its attacks. Soon, 5,000 space fighters formed a huge Trident in the void, attacking the group of space fighters heading towards the Karen Empire like giant scissors. Call out! Another wave of light rain attacked the fighter planes of the Karen Empire. In an instant, another wave of fireworks bloomed in the void. In just two waves of attacks, the Karen Empire lost one-tenth of its 100,000 space fighter planes. A huge network it was as if a gap had been opened in the formation. You're still far behind when you play with changing formations with me. Change again! Lee Wanda gave another order. And the Trident attack formation changed again in the void. With three heads as the core. In the blink of an eye, it once again turned into three swordfish distributed and attacking in three directions. The formation had just changed. When a huge rain of light enveloped the void. But it all failed. And not a single space battleship was hit. The three swordfish were like three drill bits. The two sides passed each other in the void. The formation of the Kaling Empire was completely disrupted. And three huge holes appeared in the formation. The two sides almost tacitly chose to turn around and attack the enemy again. In the void between the two parties, bursts of light rain continued to flash in the void, and balls of flames continued to explode in the void, like fireworks. Soon, after several waves, less than half of the 100,000 space fighter planes of the Karen Empire were left. Edmund was already stunned at this time. He had never encountered such a terrifying opponent. No matter how our side changes, there is still no change in the enemy. Although our side has an absolute numerical advantage, the battle situation is a one-sided massacre. Terrible! Edmund's eyes were wide open. With yellow eyeballs and narrow black pupils shrunk deeply. His whole body seemed to have been soaked in water. His tail, which was always high, was swaying weakly. 
as the ace space warrior in the Karen Empire. He has destroyed more than 2,000 space fighters while piloting space fighters in foreign operations. However, today, he even regretted coming to the battlefield because the Empire was beyond imagination. The 5,000 space fighters were like a whole. There was no lag or lack of coordination at all because they were composed of 5,000 space fighters. Situation occurs. A huge formation was able to evade waves of attacks from its own side with great flexibility. As if it knew the position where its own side was about to attack. And had the ability to predict the future. This can't go on like this. If there are a few more waves, we'll have to eat everything. Edmund tried to regain his composure and thought carefully about the situation. All fighter planes fight freely in the smallest unit. If Edmund knew what happened next, he would definitely regret giving such an order. The remaining 50,000 space fighters on the side of the Karen Empire all dispersed in the void, and the giant network-shaped formation disappeared, as many as 50,000 space fighters actually chose to fight freely. Free combat method? You are seeking death. Lee Wandu smiled slightly and gave the same order. Freedom to fight! In the empty and vast void, the fighter groups of both sides dispersed from each other. Rays of light flashed in the void, and balls of flames continued to rise. All are Imperial Space Fighter units composed of Yuanli warriors. Each of them has undergone countless trainings in the virtual world, and has also experienced actual combat again and again. They have already mastered various combat skills. Practice to perfection. What's more important is that because of the Yuanli warrior's strong physical fitness, the Yuanli warrior's powerful sixth sense, and the Empire's space fighter planes, they can make incredible moves in the void that ordinary people can't do. At the same time, and he was able to dodge fatal attacks one after another, as if he had predicted it. The space fighter plane driven by Li Wandu kept flashing in the void, and deadly attacks passed by the space fighter plane. Each time, he could avoid it very accurately without wasting any more energy. Call out! A series of energy attacks attacked from the space fighter planes. In the void directly in front, groups of flames continued to rise. With just one encounter, more than a dozen space fighter planes of the Karen Empire were blown up. Scenes like this appeared in every corner of the battlefield. The moment the two sides fought, it was like a battle between a group of sheep and a group of lions. In just one round, when the space fighters from both sides looked back again in the void, Edmund sadly discovered that there were not many of his 50,000 space fighters left at this time. His hands were trembling even more. Just now, he and several of his teammates went to flank one of the opponent's space fighter planes. I thought that I should be able to kill the opponent easily, but the opponent made several maneuvers that I had never dared to imagine, and followed up with several attacks. Several of my teammates were blown up in the void one after another. It was lucky that he escaped with his life. Ha ha! Demons! They are a group of demons! Edmund felt like he was going crazy. The fear in his heart made him roar loudly. The enemy was too powerful. Whether it was a team battle or a free battle, the Kallen Empire was completely defeated. In the rear, the battleship group of the 12th Legion of the Kallen Empire is here. Webster, who is concentrating on the battle with Luo Xiaoya's battleship, also looks extremely angry. Because the enemy's space battleship group is simply fighting against him. And the enemy relies on a powerful power system. With the advantage in attack distance, he constantly harvested his own space battleships. Oh no! All our 100,000 fighter planes have been wiped out! Chapter 331 leaving green hills without worrying about having no firewood. What? How is this possible? Webster's eyes suddenly widened with disbelief on his face. After he originally dispatched 100,000 space fighters, he stopped paying attention to the battle between space fighters and focused all his energy on the space battleships. Battle above. Because he has enough confidence. 100,000 versus 10,000. And the space fighter force under his command is a long-lasting battlefield force. They are not the kind of newcomers who have never been on the battlefield. They are enough to kill the opponent's 10,000 space fighter aircraft. But now his subordinates hurried over and told him that all 100,000 space fighter planes had been completely wiped out. The battle didn't last long at all. What happened? Webster grabbed the man who came to report, his eyes emitting a cold light, like a bloodthirsty beast. Our space fighter planes are no match for the enemy at all. It is a one-sided massacre. The enemy's space fighter plane group is attacking. The men were trembling with fear, fearing that Webster would tear him alive. And their voices sounded extremely frightened. Go away! A bunch of trash! 100,000 against 10,000! And they were completely wiped out in such a short period of time! 
Is this still the army of our great Kallan Empire? Webster's eyes narrowed. Until now, Webster knew that this Yin Huang Empire was definitely not someone to be trifled with. It had advanced technology and amazing combat power. He had not been able to get any advantage at all until now. The same is true for battles between groups of space battleships. The opponent relies on its powerful power system to maintain a distance in the void. The enemy can attack one's own space battleships. And no matter how fast one's own space battleships accelerate, they can't. There is no way to shorten the distance and get within your own attack range. Although the number is more than 10 times that of the opponent. So far, they have been very passive and have been beaten blindly. The opponent's powerful attacks have poured in wave after wave. And their own space battleships have lost more than 20. Take off 500,000 space fighter planes immediately. Be sure to intercept the opponent's space fighter group. Webster thought carefully. And soon he began to give orders that the opponent's space fighter group must be intercepted. Otherwise once it enters the fighter group, the space battleship will be in danger. The space battleships are divided into three groups. One group will continue to pursue the enemy's space battleships. The second group will attack the opponent's life planet. The third group will be responsible for intercepting from the front. Webster quickly issued the order. At this time, if the opponent keeps consuming it like this, his army will most likely be slowly cannibalized by the opponent. So he simply came to surround Wei and rescue Zhao, and directly attack the opponent's life planet to see if the opponent's space battleship would come to the rescue. At the same time, the other two groups flanked the opponent's space battleship. Our side has enough numerical advantages, and the quality of the battleships is even greater. The disadvantage is that the power system of the battleships is completely different from the opponent's. The opponent's acceleration, deceleration, or flexibility are completely outmatched by ours. Space battleships. That's why they were led by the opponent's nose and beaten. More than 100 space battleships split into three groups in the void, heading straight for the life planet in the inner circle of the boiled galaxy to attack aggressively, preparing to force the Empire's battleships to rescue them. In this case, they will definitely be rescued by then. There will be a chance to severely attack the Empire's space battleship. The other two armies flank the Empire's space battleships in the void, pursuing them all the way, while the other route was outflanking them. No matter what, the Empire's warships would always have to fight against the Karen Empire's warships. It can be said that Webster's three-pronged army arrangement gave full play to his side's numerical advantage. Because the number is large enough, as long as one of the three-pronged armies can enter the attack range, I believe it will be enough to destroy more than 10 space battleships in the Empire. Clean and tidy. Humph. The abacus is ringing. But I'm afraid it will fail. Luo Xiaoya was flying a kite happily. When he saw the strange movement of the Kalen Empire army, he instantly understood the other party's intentions and plans. But he laughed dismissively. There are no people from the Empire on the living planet in the boil system at this time. That is, some government officials who were stationed in the early stage. And there are not even immigrants yet. So the army encircling Wei and rescuing Zhao has failed. The other two groups attacking their own army must first pass the space fighter group. At this time, the space fighter group is already very close to the Kalen Empire's battleship group. As long as they kill the wave of space fighter planes taken off by the opponent, they can easily easily enter the group of space battleships. And then a random nuclear bomb will be enough to destroy a huge space battleship. Keep flying kites and kill them! Liu Xiaoyao ordered coldly. The performance of the space battleship built with a powerful anti-gravity power system in terms of speed, acceleration, deceleration, etc. is many times better than the space battleship built by the Karen Empire using traditional and backward plasma power technology. So it can be used on the battlefield. With ease, taking advantage of the fact that the attack range of one's own energy weapons is farther than the opponent's. It was just like flying a kite and easily killed 20 of the opponent's space battleships without any pressure. The performance of the warships is more powerful, and the attack weapons are more advanced. The advantage brought by the combination of the two is the current situation. Although the Kalen Empire's warships have a very obvious numerical advantage. They can't even hit the enemy. Even with blood. No matter how thick it is. It will eventually dry out. Whoosh! Whoosh! Waves flashed in the void. The twelve space battleships under Luo Xiaoyao could only attack as soon as they charged up. The distance between the two sides was always controlled within a range of about 8 million kilometers. At this distance, at the speed of light, there is very little reaction time for the Kalen Empire's warships. Although the Kalen Empire's warships are constantly flying evasively, the hit rate is still very fast. And every wave of attacks if you go down, 
there will always be a few unlucky space battleships that will be blown up. They completely ignored the other two approaches? Do they have any backups? Webster looked at the surveillance screen. There was no change in the enemy. They were still flying kites as before. They seemed indifferent to the other two armies and simply ignored them. First, suddenly, a dazzling light rose up in the void, as if a new star was born. The light was so dazzling that everyone couldn't help but turn their heads and look over. This, Webster's eyes suddenly widened even more, because he clearly saw an extremely dazzling light group rising next to a huge space battleship of his own. Then, because the light was too strong, his eyes went blank, couldn't see clearly what was happening. Soon, the light disappeared, and darkness returned to the void. The wreckage of a space battleship with only half of it remaining was floating alone in the void, seeming to be telling the story of what had just happened. Before Webster could react, another dazzling light rose up in the void. Soon, the light dissipated, and another huge space battleship was directly melted by the ultra-high temperature, leaving only half of it. The wreckage is in the void. Enemy space fighter plane! Someone finally realized that in the void, sporadic light clusters kept flashing. Behind the light clusters, a large group of light clusters kept chasing after them. Waves of light rain kept flashing in the void. It covers a large area. But these sporadic light groups are like L's, erratic, and very flexible to avoid waves of attacks. At the same time, streaks of light flashed out, blowing up the space fighters on the Karen Empire side. There is no doubt that the two space fighters that were blown up just now were caused by these space fighters that slipped through the net. I don't know how they escaped the interception of the Karen Empire's hundreds of thousands of space battleships and were able to penetrate deeply into the battleship group and easily blew up two huge medium-sized space battleships at close range. It's not good. Our fighter fleet is about to be unable to withstand it. At this time, his subordinates rushed over in a panic to report. It doesn't matter if 500,000 fighter planes can't stop the opponent's 10,000 fighter planes. But now they tell me that I can't stand it anymore. Webster was dumbfounded. He was very surprised that a few fish slipped through the net. He didn't expect that 500,000 space fighter planes could not stop the opponent's 10,000 fighter planes from the front. Seeing that the fish that slipped through the net were getting bigger and bigger. When the time comes, these space battleships under my command will. Webster's whole body shivered when he thought of this. All space fighter planes take off immediately, trying to intercept the opponent at all costs. All warships retreat immediately and do not get entangled with the enemy. Send messages to each other, and we admit defeat. Webster wisely chose to admit defeat. This was no longer the time to be impulsive. The technological strength of the Yin Wang Empire was very powerful. Whether it was in terms of space battleships or space fighter planes, the opponent's technology was significantly higher than that of the Kalin Empire. Otherwise, it would be impossible to crush oneself in such a one-sided manner. You must know that you have sufficient numerical advantage. From now on, our Kalen Empire has another civilization that cannot be messed with. Webster let out a long sigh in his heart. He was very helpless. But there was no other way. The warships and fighter planes were completely defeated on both battlefields. Now he could only beg for mercy and see if the other party was willing to negotiate with him. In the Karen Empire, it is not a shameful thing to temporarily bow your head if you encounter an enemy that is too powerful. On the contrary, it is even more embarrassing to show off your courage even though you know you are invincible. Only to be defeated in the end without a chance to fight back. It's hard to accept that if you keep the green hills, you won't have to worry about having no firewood to burn them. This is the truth. Chapter 332 Fighting is afraid of the opponent. In the void of the Boyle Galaxy, as Webster's order was conveyed, the space battleships of the 12th Legion of the Karen Empire began to turn around and fly toward the outer reaches of the galaxy. If you can't win, just run away. This is the fighting style of the Kalan Empire's military. As long as it retains its strength and is not afraid of not having a chance to make a comeback in the future, it is not unreasonable for the Kalan Empire to occupy more than 200 galaxies. Because the Kalan Empire knows that the persimmon is going to be weak. And it also knows that it must bow to those civilizations that are stronger than itself. No. They actually want to escape. It seems that Li Wandu has put too much pressure on them. Luo Xiaoyao who had been paying attention to the changes in the situation, knew from the surveillance screen that the space battleships of the Karen Empire were about to escape. He also instantly knew that it was probably the space battleships from Liwandu's side that were about to break through their defense lines and attack them. Battleship. So there was no choice but to run away. Catch up with me. 
anyone who offends my strongman will be killed no matter how far away he is. My tone was very loud before. But now I don't care about my face at all when I run away. I really think that the Empire is easy to bully. Without hesitation, Luo Xiaoyao also quickly ordered the battleship to turn around and pursue him. Report. The other party sent a peace message. Seek peace. After hearing the report from his subordinates, Luo Xiaoyao was also slightly startled. After fighting for many years, this was the first time he encountered a civilization seeking peace. He didn't expect that the Kalin Empire's army could not win at first sight. Not only did it immediately he ran away and even admitted defeat and asked for peace. Tell them that it is okay to admit defeat and seek peace. But they must park in the area designated by us. Contact the Imperial Headquarters immediately and request instructions. Luo Xiao frowned, thinking rapidly in his mind, and finally decided to hand over the decision-making power to the Imperial Headquarters, the Empire's base camp. The Imperial Palace of Chang'an City on the Yin Huang Star in the Centauri Galaxy was in a huge conference room. Almost all the Empire's top officials were present. When the news that Luo Xiaoyao encountered the Kalen civilization in the Boiled Galaxy was returned to the Empire, the high-ranking officials of the Empire were alerted, and everyone was summoned urgently to discuss countermeasures together. They spent several days discussing countermeasures. Judging from the current situation, the strength of this Kalen civilization should be relatively strong. A fleet actually consists of two large space battleships. 10 medium-sized space battleships, and hundreds of small space battleships. Such a powerful strength. Even the current strength of the Earth Federation and the Lord Empire is estimated to be difficult to resist. My suggestion is, even if you send reinforcements to the Boil Galaxy, if the Boil Galaxy cannot hold it, you must keep the Temple of Heaven Galaxy. There are currently no immigrants in the Boil Galaxy, but there are 200 people in the Temple of Heaven Galaxy. There must be no problem with tens of thousands of immigrants. No. Although there are no immigrants from the Empire in the Boyle Galaxy, it still belongs to the territory of our Empire. It would be a pity to give up like this. It is still a galaxy after all. It would be really unwilling to retreat without a duel with this Kalen civilization. What's more, if we give in today and one step tomorrow, the enemy will definitely take advantage of it. We must test their strength first. But if a powerful civilization is angered by testing its strength, it may be very detrimental to our empire. Everyone should be very clear about the current situation of the empire. Although we are developing rapidly, in general, our foundation is still too shallow. Some. There is no problem in bullying the weak primitive indigenous civilizations. If we encounter a civilization that is similar in strength to our empire, we will definitely not be able to withstand a long war. Hey, why did Luo Xiaoyao start a fight with the enemy? There is such a huge difference in strength between the enemy and us. This is going to be really bad. You have to fight even if you can't win. And you have to fight even if you can win. How can you extinguish the opponent's arrogance without a fight? These days, the main party and the main war party are trying to convince each other. Facing the sudden appearance of the Kalen Empire fleet, the Empire has no confidence. Those on the side of the Imperial government are mainly those who advocate peace. And those on the side of the Imperial military are naturally the ones who advocate the war. Li Fu remained silent and let them argue with each other. But he had given full authority to Luo Xiaoyao, and could not let Luo Xiaoyao's hands be restrained. Whether it was a fight or a peace. In short, it was a principle, and he could not suffer any loss. That's why Luo Xiaoyao can be very tough. No matter what. The Kalen Empire actually wants the Empire's boil system. So naturally he needs to be taught a lesson. We have won the battle. The warships of the Karen Empire are constantly retreating. At the same time, they have sent peace messages to us. Luo Xiaoyao is asking for instructions. At this time, the person in charge of communications hurriedly came to the conference room and said loudly and excitedly, What? One? The other party is retreating? Did the other party sue for peace? Everyone in the conference room was dumbfounded. Let's all talk about it. Do we want to negotiate peace with the Karen Empire? Li Fu was the first to recover and asked everyone with a smile. He was the most confident. From the analysis of the information received in the past few days, although the number of battleships on Luo Xiuyu's side was much smaller, the advantages of the battleships were too obvious, and Li Fu has great confidence in the space fighter force driven by Yuanli warriors. So now it seems that everything is expected. I think it's better to have peace talks first and see what the Kalen Empire has to say. This may be an opportunity for our empire to officially enter the big stage of the Milky Way through the Kalen Empire. 
We can learn about the galaxies of the Milky Way. At least we can learn some information about the Orion Spiral Arm, where we are located. Besides, we have an advantage now. So we can just give up when things get better. Fawn Jung, who had been silent all this time, thought for a long time, and then slowly opened his mouth to suggest something. Others nodded after hearing this. The current situation is how powerful the Kalan Empire is. Their details are not clear yet, so there is no need to offend them. After the peace talks, they can also learn about the Milky Way and the Orion Spiral Arm through the Kalan Empire. The above information lays the foundation for the Empire to enter the galaxy's big stage. Then let's do what Lao Fang wants and talk about it first. Li Fu nodded and agreed. Soon, the order from the Empire headquarters was conveyed to Luo Xiaoyao. Let's talk. But I still have to give you a painful beating. We can talk about it later when we have peace talks. With the orders and authorization from the Empire's headquarters in his hands, Luo Xiaoyao had his own plans. As a soldier, he knew that only by frightening his opponents with his fists would he not dare to mess with you in the future. Kill one of their two largest large space battleships. Luo Xiaoyao coldly ordered that each of the opponent's two large space battleships had a mass of more than 10 billion tons, which was comparable to the Empire's largest. Guangdi, Qin Shi Huang, Anwu Emperor, and other large space battleships. Although more than 30 enemy space battleships have been killed, the opponent's medium and large space battleships have basically retained their strength. Only some small space battleships have been destroyed, but they have not been injured. To be honest, if you have a strong will to fight, the team will definitely continue to play. Luo Xiaoyao was afraid that the other party would play some tricks under the guise of peace talks. In addition, he originally planned to teach the other party a lesson. So he naturally wanted to hurt the other party before talking. At this time, on the side of the Karen Empire, Webster was still rushing towards the entrance of the time and space ocean with his battleship group. He ignored Luo Xiaoyao's request for peace talks at all. Just kidding. If he really followed the request, parked in a designated area, which basically puts your life in the hands of the other party. Webster wouldn't do this kind of thing. Not to mention that it is actually similar to Luo Xiaoyu's estimate. Webster's strength is still there, and it has not been damaged. The reason for retreating is to preserve strength, and to restore strength, not to the point of being afraid of being beaten. Whoosh. Whoosh. A wave of light rain cut through the void and landed among the Kalen Empire battleships. This time, despite the protection of the small space battleships, there were still several attacks focused on the slowly accelerating large space battleship Kabu the Great. Above, several large holes suddenly appeared on the huge space battleship. At the same time, the Empire Space Fighter Fleet has basically decided the outcome with the Karen Empire Space Fighter Fleet. Although the number of space fighter aircraft on the Karen Empire side is very large, it cannot hold up the Empire Space Fighter Fleet at all. With such power, a few space fighter planes that broke through the defense accelerated in the void and attacked the group of space fighter planes. Evacuate quickly and protect the space battleship Kabu Emperor. Webster frowned, without hesitation, and continued to order an accelerated retreat. Send them a message and say we are willing to negotiate and ask them to cease fire. Webster still wanted to use peace talks as a guise to delay time and buy time for his retreat. But Luo Xiaoyao had already made up his mind and would never give up until the space battleship Kabu Emperor was killed. The two sides continued to chase in the void, and waves of attacks continued to pour towards Webster's 12th Legion. The space battleship Kabu Emperor was stared at and beaten, and its injuries became more and more serious. Call out. Accompanied by a wave of dazzling light beams, the Kabu Emperor space battleship finally couldn't hold on. Huge explosions inside the huge space battleship made the battleship tremble, and then a huge flame completely exploded in the void. Please immediately comply with our request. Slow down and turn around immediately. Otherwise, we will continue to attack until you are truly sincere in peace talks. Listening to the translated warning, Webster clenched his fists tightly. Slow down and turn around. Chapter 333 Surrender The huge fleet of the 12th Legion of the Karen Empire began to turn around and slow down in the void. You must know that in interstellar battles, if you slow down or turn around, it basically means that you become a living target, and the enemy can kill you at will. You get hit. Webster was helpless. There was still a long way to go before the entrance of the space-time ocean flow. During this period of time, the enemy could easily destroy the large space battleship he was riding on. Even in most of the universe, the battleship can successfully return to the Karen Empire through the ocean currents of time and space. 
But the medium-sized and large space battleships will definitely not escape death. Now that we are preparing for peace talks, we can only slow down and turn around according to the other party's requirements. Only then will the other party stop attacking, and can we save our life. Anyway, we are already preparing for peace talks. Humph. You have to be beaten in pain to be honest. Sure enough. It is like this no matter what time it is. Whether it is on the earth or in the universe. It is the same. Luo Xiaoyao saw the other party start to slow down and turn around. And he snorted with satisfaction. If he hadn't killed one of the opponent's large space battleships, he would definitely not be so obedient. And would probably keep procrastinating by then. Until he is near the entrance of the space-time ocean flow. Once he dives into the space-time ocean flow, he will have no way to deal with them. Stop attacking! Orderly Wandu to catch up here! 100 space fighter planes will target a space battleship to see what other tricks they can do. All space battleships keep a distance from the enemy and fly in arcs. Luo Xiaoyao was still very cautious, fearing that the enemy would play tricks. So the space battleship did not slow down at all. Nor did he get close to the enemy's space battleship. Instead, he let the space battleship go up. Even if the opponent played some tricks, the space battleship also able to respond promptly. In the dark and silent void, all the space battleships in the fleet led by Webster slowly stopped moving forward in the void. More than 100 space battleships were neatly arranged in the void. And all the weapon systems were ready at this time. Close it. Fearing that after being detected by the other party, they will continue to attack themselves. At this time, I have become meat on someone else's chopping block. Ready to be slaughtered. The space battleship that has stopped flying is simply a fixed target and can be easily destroyed at will. Call! Webster tidied up his military uniform to make himself look more energetic. Although he was defeated, as a nobleman of the Kalan Empire and a senior commander of the army, Webster felt that he must maintain his mental outlook at all times, especially the upcoming peace talks. Looking into the void outside, groups of fireflies flashed out of the void at very fast speeds. Only a little light could be seen in front of them. Soon, the entire void was filled with the figures of these fireflies, including the enemy's space fighter force. Arrive, getting closer and closer until you can clearly see everything about the opponent's space fighter. The main battleship he was riding on was surrounded by hundreds of space fighter planes. The meaning was obvious. More than 10 of them did not even stop flying and were still flying around in the void. They were obviously worried. There is nothing particularly strange about these space fighters. But why are our space fighters so vulnerable? Webster carefully observed the opponent's space fighter. It was very ordinary and did not find anything unusual. However, just such a space fighter easily wiped out his huge group of space fighters. Commander Luo Xiaoyao of the Royal Legion of the Yan Huang Empire requests to speak to you. Catch! Soon, a figure appeared at the virtual imaging communicator directly in front of Webster. And it was Luo Xiaoyao. It doesn't look like much. But I didn't expect that technology has developed well. Seeing Luo Xiaoyao's figure, Webster's pupil suddenly dilated. But he was muttering in his heart. I am Webster. Commander of the 12th Legion of the Kalan Empire. Nice to meet you. Your Excellency Luo Xiaoyao. Webster was the first to speak, and his attitude was quite sincere. After all, he had lost the fight, and now his life was in someone else's hands. This was not the time to be arrogant. Nice to meet you too. Lord Webster. Your empire invaded our Yen Wang Empire for no reason. You must bear all responsibilities and consequences. Luo Xiaoyao didn't talk nonsense. He immediately identified the other party, as soon as he opened his mouth. I also deeply apologize for offending your empire. And I am willing to bear all responsibilities and consequences. Our Kalan Empire is willing to pay war reparations or compensation to your empire. Webster nodded seriously. In the interstellar universe, since you provoked a war and failed to win, you will naturally have to bear the consequences. There is nothing to quibble about. Since you have surrendered, you still have to keep your attitude correct. Some. That's good. Then please come over to our side and discuss the peace talks in person. Luo Xiaoyao nodded with satisfaction. And after finishing speaking, he ended the call proudly. Webster swung his tail slightly, feeling a little uneasy in his heart. But he had no choice but to bite the bullet and start organizing a negotiation team to go to the other side space battleship for peace talks. Soon, a small spaceship, surrounded by dozens of space fighters, flew rapidly in the void towards the direction of Luo Xiaoyao's fleet. When this small spaceship appeared, Webster took dozens of them with him. A negotiator and senior commander of more than a dozen twelve legions. What kind of power does this spaceship use? 
Why does it have to be shaped like an oval flying saucer? As the Empire's space battleships got closer and closer, Webster saw more and more clearly. He kept thinking in his mind. He had seen many space battleships and spacecrafts from various civilizations. But this oval and flying saucer shaped. This is the first time I have seen a space battleship with no power system at all. Call out! Suddenly a beam of light was fired from a battleship not far away. Webster and others were instantly frightened, thinking that the other party had launched an attack and wanted to destroy their small spaceship. And they broke out in cold sweat. But it was just a false alarm. This beam was not an attacking energy beam, but an unknown technological method. The beam enveloped the spaceship that everyone was riding on. And then the spaceship was completely controlled by this beam. As the light on the beam continued to change, the spacecraft was directly pulled by the beam and flew towards the huge space battleship. Automagnetic Traction Technology There are many scientists in the negotiation team. Some people quickly recognized this technology and couldn't help but exclaimed, This automagnetic traction technology is only in the theoretical stage in the Kalen civilization. It is far from being developed. The two technologies are still thousands of miles apart. I didn't expect to be able to see such advanced technology here in person. This automagnetic traction technology is really amazing, Webster asked softly. He also felt the extraordinary nature of this technology. It can directly restrain a spacecraft by relying on the speed of light. This is quite an amazing technology. Whether it is used in the field of interstellar material transportation or interstellar mining, it is also of great use on the battlefield. Of course it's awesome. As far as I know, currently in the entire Orion spiral arm, the number of civilizations that have mastered this technology will not exceed two digits. Every civilization is beyond the reach of our Kalan Empire. The scientist next to him nodded seriously. The vast Kalan Empire had contacts with many powerful civilizations on the Orion spiral arm. And he also knew some advanced technologies. It seems that we are right to choose peace talks. With such a powerful civilization, the best choice for our Kalan Empire is to become friends with them. Of course. Becoming friends with powerful people has always been the foreign strategy of our Kalan Empire. While everyone was discussing, they looked at the void outside. In their field of vision, the figure of the space battleship was getting bigger and bigger. Soon, the entire field of vision was occupied by its huge figure. Under the traction of light and magnetism, the spacecraft on which Webster and others were riding slowly approached the space battleship and slowly parked at a warehouse entrance above the battleship. Snort! With the sound of hatches opening, Webster and others lined up, preparing to float out in a safe order and enter the opponent's space battleship. Snapped! The person floating at the front had just entered the space battleship. And suddenly he fell to the ground. He couldn't help but convulsed on the ground. And he couldn't help but scream in pain. Well, their space battleship has gravity on it. What? There is gravity? How can this be? The others thought something had happened. So they all stopped moving forward. After hearing what the man said, they all showed expressions of disbelief. It is incredible that there is gravity on the space battleship. You must know that the mass of the space battleship is very small. And it is not enough to form gravity on its own. Gravity technology. They have actually mastered gravity technology and can form a gravity similar to that on the planet on the space battleship. Beside Webster, the scientists who came with the group once again exclaimed, Sorry, we thought your battleship also had a gravity system. We will turn off the gravity system now. At this time, soldiers from the Yen Wang Empire came over. Some began to check on the injured while others came over and said in a very apologetic tone, Well, that's not necessary. We also want to feel the magic of the gravity system. Webster climbed up carefully, feeling the gravity that he had not felt for a long time. Fortunately, this gravity was similar to the gravity of his home planet. Otherwise, it would be embarrassing if he couldn't even stand up. Chapter 334 Session of Territory and Compensation In the Void of the Boyle Galaxy the Empire's space battleships are still moving all the time. Inside the space battleship, Chinchung Mountain, the flagship of the Imperial Royal Legion, Webster and others entered cautiously. People who fight in space know very well that if they stay in space for a long time and return to the planet all at once, their bones will need a buffering time. Therefore, everyone looked a little funny and ridiculous, either lying on the ground or squatting on the ground, and then slowly stood upright after adapting to the gravity on the battleship. Webster straightened out his somewhat messy military uniform and raised his drooping tail. Although he was defeated, he represented the Karen Empire after all. So he still had to show the proper posture. And so did everyone else. 
they quickly organized themselves, lined up, and walked inside behind Webster. While walking, I looked at the space battleship carefully. Because of the existence of the gravity system, the design of the battleship is quite different from the space battleships of the Karen Empire. It is a bit like the buildings on the planet, with upper and lower, left and right. You must know that the space battleships of the Karen Empire do not have a gravity system. So when designing, it is naturally impossible to distinguish up and down, left and right, front and rear, etc. So the design appears to be confusing. While the Imperial Space Battleships with a gravity system are quite with rules, life and work are not much different from living on the planet. The Unknown Power System Octomagnetic Traction Technology and Gravity System Technology The technology displayed alone is quite extraordinary. The technological strength of this Yin Wang Empire is really strong enough. Webster couldn't help but overestimate the Empire. Strong technology means strong strength. But in the universe, they don't recognize anything but their fists. Whoever is powerful can become the king and hegemony. Soon, under the leadership of the leader, Webster and his group came to a huge, empty hall. This hall was used as a warehouse before. But now it is temporarily used as a place for peace talks. Tables and just wait for the chair. Sir Webster, nice to meet you. When Luo Xiaoya saw the arrival of Webster and others, he stepped forward to express his welcome. He didn't know what etiquette to use. So he just used military salutes to show his respect. I am also very happy to meet Mr. Luo Xiaoyao. I am deeply sorry for our ignorance and offense. Webster lowered his proud head, stretched his right hand to his right chest, and said with a very sincere attitude, No need to be polite. Luo Xiaoyao motioned for Webster and his party to take their seats, even though the opponent had already been defeated, since he planned to obtain information related to the Milky Way through the Kalin civilization. He naturally could not embarrass the opponent too much. Not to mention that the descendants of Yin and Huang have treated him kindly since ancient times. Customs of messengers. The two parties were divided into guest and host. Seated opposite each other. And began to get to know each other carefully. People from the Karen Empire actually still have tails. Half-finished products of evolution? It can't be that it evolved from some kind of ferocious beast. The muscles are really amazing. It has yellow eyes and cat-like pupils. Luo Xiaoyao and others looked at it carefully. It was not the first time they saw alien civilizations, and there wasn't much that was strange about them. Dark eyes, black hair, short stature, but gives people a very dangerous feeling. Webster also looked at Luo Xiaoyao carefully. The powerful feeling inherited from his ancestors made him feel that Luo Xiaoyao's short body contained terrifying power. This feeling even made Webster's first stand on end, feeling that he was it seemed like the prey targeted by a powerful beast. No more nonsense. Your empire has taken the initiative to attack our Yin Wang Empire's territory this time. Please tell me how to resolve this matter. A few minutes later, Luo Xiaoyao spoke slowly, going straight to the topic as soon as he opened his mouth, without too much nonsense. We also deeply apologize for this matter, and we are willing to assume relevant responsibilities. Webster said carefully, appearing very sincere. We, the Kalin Empire, are willing to cede a galaxy to your empire as compensation. At the same time, we are also willing to pay a war compensation of 10 billion Kalen coins to gain your empire's understanding. When Webster opened his mouth, he ceded a galaxy and paid 10 billion Kalen as compensation. When Luo Xiaoyao and others heard this, their eyes widened. Oh my god! There is such a good thing in the world! Before I even open my mouth, the other party took the initiative to say that they wanted to cede land and pay compensation. It was like being hit by a huge pie. How much is 10 billion Kalins worth? Of course it is unknown now. But the territory of a galaxy is real. And even a galaxy without life planets is a huge wealth. If there is a galaxy with life planets, this will be a huge profit. There was a huge wave in Luo Xiaoya's heart. Originally, he just planned to ask the other party to pay compensation. He didn't even think about asking the other party to cede land or anything. Unexpectedly, the other party actually offered to cede land and pay compensation. Is it possible that the interstellar civilizations in the universe have so many galaxies that they can be ceded to them casually? If they fight a war and lose, they will actively say that they will cede territory and pay compensation. It is unbelievable. Although Luo Xiaoyao remained calm on the surface, his heart was already fluctuating. At the same time, through quantum communication technology, in a virtual world, Li Fu, Fang Zheng and other high-level officials of the empire were all present and Luo Xiuya's figure was also prominent among them. 
They actually offered to cede land and pay compensation. What should we do? Luo Xiaoyao spoke hurriedly, begging Li Fu and others to at least ask for help. He was also in a trap now. What? You actually offered to cede land and pay compensation? As expected, Li Fu, Fang Zheng, Yu Liang, Qin Bin and others all widened their eyes in disbelief. And then, they were all overjoyed, bargaining with them. Since they offer to cede land and pay compensation, we naturally cannot refuse. Otherwise, in the future, in their impression, we will be the kind of people who are easy to talk to. Li Fu smiled at Luo Xiaoyao with a smile on his face. It seems that ceding territory and paying compensation is very common in the universe. This Kalen civilization probably has many galaxies, and the commander of a fleet can actually see a galaxy at the first word. Uh huh. That's right. Tell them. If there are no ten or eight galaxies, we will never forgive them and will attack them all the way to their home base. Yu Lian also grinned, became happy, and talked with a lot of nonsense. A galaxy? Ten billion Karens? Too little. During the actual negotiation, Luo Xiaoyao used a virtual machine to communicate with the Empire's senior officials while negotiating with Webster. Although he already agreed with a thousand or ten thousand in his heart, he still had to pretend to be angry. Looks dissatisfied. Your Majesty General, this is already a lot. The galaxy we are compensating for is only 8.7 light years away from the galaxy we are in now. There are living planets in this galaxy. In addition, you may not know the value of 10 billion Kalen coins. The currency of our Kalen Empire is very popular in many interstellar civilizations. 10 billion Kalen coins are enough to buy many space battleships. We are very sincere, and we very much hope to gain your empire's understanding. And we also hope to establish friendly relations with your empire. Webster shook his head. As Li Fu and others estimated, in an interstellar war, basically as long as the battle is defeated, compensation for ceding territory is absolutely indispensable. Generally speaking, one galaxy is the minimum and the lightest. The cessation of territory, as for 10 billion Kara coins, is insignificant in front of a galaxy. In the history of the Kalen Empire, it cut off the most territory, but it cut off more than 30 galaxies at once. At that time, the Kalen Empire got into trouble with a very powerful civilization in the Orion Spiral Arm, and also invited another equally powerful civilization. The civilization came out to adjust, and finally more than 30 galaxies were exchanged for peace. As for the matter of seeding one or two galaxies, I don't know how many times. There are several civilizations that are similar in strength to the Kalen civilization. They often have wars with the Kalen civilization. If they fight once, they will cede territory if they lose. This is almost the rule among the many civilizations on the Orion Spiral Arm. At least three galaxies and 100 billion Kalen coins. Otherwise our empire will not stop. Luo Xiaoyao thought for a long time and spoke slowly. Being able to get a star system by spending a little money on the negotiating table is not a lot of good things. The opportunity is rare. So naturally you must seize it. Three is too many. Our Kalen Empire is not easy to bully. Although we were defeated this time, our Kalen Empire has hundreds of fleets like mine. We are not those weak civilizations who can be slaughtered by others. If your empire wants to continue the war, our Kalen Empire will also accompany you to the end. Webster pretended to be strong and would fight to the end, but in fact, he had no confidence in his heart. The Yin Huang Empire defeated its own 12 legions with only more than 10 space battleships and 10,000 space fighter planes. If the entire Yin Huang Empire attacks the Kalen Empire with all its strength, the Kalen Empire will definitely suffer more heavy losses by then. If they want peace talks in the future, they will not just cede one galaxy. Then it's best. Our empire is mobilizing a larger army here. Now we only have a dozen space battleships to defeat you. If the number of battleships is about the same, we only need a few waves to destroy you. Luo Xiaoyao was naturally not scared and responded with a sneer. At most two galaxies, if there are more, we would rather fight. Chapter 335 A Soldier and a Businessman Soon, Luo Xiaoyao represented the Yin Huang Empire and Webster represented the Kalan Empire. The two parties signed the Boil Galaxy Peace Negotiation Agreement. The agreement stipulated that as the party that initiated the war, the Kalan Empire ceded to the Yin Huang Empire the Temple Galaxy and the Worst Galaxy were given to the Yin Huang Empire and 100 billion Kalan coins or equivalent materials were paid to the Yin Huang Empire as war compensation to compensate the Yin Huang Empire for its losses in this war. Ha ha! Two galaxies 
and both of them are galaxies with living planets. This time I made a lot of money. In the virtual world. Yu Liang grinned and couldn't help laughing happily. Hard fists are the truth. This is true everywhere. If we lose this time, I guess the Kalan Empire will not give up easily. Today we were able to take away two galaxies from the Kalan Empire. If we encounter a more powerful civilization tomorrow, the situation will be very delicate. Bong Jung also let out a long sigh. In the past, he was opposed to the current conflict with the Karen Empire. But after this battle, he understood a truth. In the universe, he should never act like he is easy to bully. Otherwise, there will be a steady stream of troubles. In the universe, all civilizations believe in the same truth. Power is truth. Whoever has a strong fist is justified. As for justice, morality, etc., it is bullshit. The weak civilizations that are destroyed one by one are the best. Example. Only when you are strong and have strong strength can you protect your own interests. Otherwise, you can only be a piece of meat. Constantly being slaughtered. Bullied. And even the country may be exterminated. This time, if our space battleships were not more advanced than the opponents, the attack range of our energy weapons was farther. And the space warriors had Yuan power and their quality was much higher than the opponents. We would have fought with more than a dozen space battleships. It is simply wishful thinking to defeat the opponent's fleet of more than 100 space battleships. Technology is always the most powerful force. A small Kalan civilization is nothing. Let's not talk about the Milky Way. There are many powerful civilizations in the Orion arm alone. Our empire's technology must continue to develop. With more advanced warships and more powerful civilizations, only powerful weapons can make us invincible and able to cope with everything that may happen in the future. Li Fu nodded and spoke slowly. Let Luo Xiaoyao establish diplomatic relations with the Kalen Empire. We need to use the Kalen Empire to understand the situation of the Orion Spiral Arm and the Milky Way. In addition, if we can enter the big stage of the Orion Spiral Arm and the Milky Way, it will also be good for the future development of our empire. Very helpful. Of course, this also means that our empire is very likely to enter the vision of other powerful civilizations. Risks and opportunities coexist. Therefore, we must work harder and be more cautious in the future to lead our descendants of Yin and Huan to slowly become stronger in the universe. Rise and finally stand in the forest of powerful clans in the universe. Li Fu's words made everyone present feel a huge invisible pressure. The smiles on their faces just now disappeared and everyone nodded very solemnly. As a high-ranking official in an empire, the leader of an empire must have a sense of historical mission, especially when entering the interstellar universe. If one is not careful and provokes a powerful civilization, it is very likely to bring disaster to the entire empire. Strive for the rise of the nation. In the Boil Galaxy, in the Chinchung Mountain space battleship, after the peace talks were finished, the atmosphere became relaxed and happy. Luo Xiaoyao also had a smile on his face and people prepared a lot of good things to find Weber's. For Tay and his group, the negotiation venue soon turned into a banquet venue, with the aroma of fine wine and food making people salivate. Sir Webster, we have never known each other without fighting. In the words of our banquet empire, this is called fate. Luo Xiaoya was holding a wine glass and talking to Webster with a smile on his face. Fate? Webster read it again in Chinese. The pronunciation was naturally inaccurate. But as soon as he read it, he found it quite interesting. Fate? I like this word. Ha ha. Yes, it's fate. Come on. Mr. Webster, please try the fine wine produced in our Yin Wang Empire. It has been tested and you can taste it with confidence. Luo Xiao picked up the wine glass and said with a smile. Ha ha. Thank you for your hospitality. Because neither of them knew the other's etiquette. Webster immediately raised his head and drank a glass of wine. This wine was imported by the Empire from the Earth Federation and came from the most famous Mount I liquor in China. Good wine! Webster only felt a strange fragrance constantly reverberating in his body. The fragrance lingered in his mouth and nose for a long time. And his lips and teeth were filled with saliva. He couldn't help but admire it loudly. Ha ha! It's rare that you like it! Come on! Come on! Let's continue! Luo Xiaoyao also laughed happily. And people poured wine for him one after another. Try! Try! Webster was also learning to speak Chinese, which seemed a little awkward. However, after drinking a glass of Malhai, his eyes narrowed and his tail swung slightly behind him as he tasted the wine carefully. Good wine! Good wine! I, Webster, 
have tasted the fine wines of many civilizations. I have basically tasted the fine wines produced by various civilizations in the entire Orion spiral arm. I have even been fortunate enough to taste the fine wines of powerful civilizations from the center of the Milky Way. However, unlike this compared to wine, it's a little inferior. It has a unique pure sweet aroma, perfect body, elegant aroma, full and mellow taste, delicate and elegant taste, yellowish and pure color, as if you can feel the richness of the mountains and the sweetness of the clear water. Webster is obviously also a master of wine, holding a wine glass and commenting carefully. Ha ha. If you like it, you might as well drink more. Luo Xiaoya quickly gave a thumbs up. He knew that this Maltai wine was delicious. But if he really wanted to tell him something, he really couldn't. The other party was able to comment on the beauty of this wine in detail. Your Majesty General, my Webster family is quite powerful in the Kalan Empire. I wonder if we can make a deal. I want to buy this kind of wine for the Empire to sell. Of course, I can also purchase other specialties from your Empire. Of. Webster soon regained his shrewd appearance. The Kalan Empire was an empire founded on military merit. But it was also a civilization that attached great importance to commerce and trade. The commercial exchanges between the Kalan Empire and the major civilizations on the Orion Spiral Arm were very important. Even the military is so close that they can do business wherever they go. Webster's 12th Army Space Battleship has special cabins reserved for each soldier. These cabins can be used by these soldiers for business and trade, and can also be used to store war souvenirs and the like. In short, for this aspect, the Karen Empire is quite relaxed. In fact, the formation of this situation is also related to the history and military merit policy of the Karen Empire. The Karen Empire has been continuously expanding externally, although its strength is not very strong. Driven by the military merit policy, it is still among the stars. It laid down a starry sky in the continuous expansion of the outside world. These soldiers need to be motivated. So soldiers are often allowed to burn, kill, loot, etc. Especially when dealing with primitive indigenous cosmic civilizations, etc. Almost every soldier will be full of gains in large and small bags. What to do with these harvested things? You can't just let the soldiers throw away these trophies. So it gradually became a default rule. According to the soldier's position and level, everyone can be assigned a certain position. This position was originally used to hold the trophies. Of. But slowly, the warriors of the Kalan Empire discovered that they were constantly fighting in the universe, floating around from galaxy to galaxy. The value of the same thing in each galaxy was very different. So smart people began to conduct interstellar trade. Gradually everyone followed suit, doing business while fighting. The upper echelons of the Kalan Empire knew about this. But there was nothing they could do about it. Because they discovered that because of such a policy, the soldiers of the Kalan Empire were particularly effective in combat. And the desire of the people within the Empire to expand was greatly stimulated. Everyone wanted to join the army. Soldiers have become the most popular and popular profession. And countless people from ordinary families are eager to join the army. Because this only means that you can become a noble through meritorious service. And it also means that you can do business and trade in the universe and earn a lot of wealth. Countless people may not have made much merit in their military career. But because in the interstellar, he was engaged in trade and was already a very wealthy man when he retired. After retirement, he could live a life without worries about food and clothing. At this time, Webster naturally had the idea of conducting interstellar trade with the empire. Interstellar trade can be very profitable. Just like the European colonists in the age of discovery on Earth. They could exchange glass for gold, gems, ivory, etc. You can easily make profits hundreds of times, thousands of times, or even tens of thousands of times. This is even more true when magnified into the universe. Things that may have no effect on civilization A may become extremely valuable in civilization B. Or things of little value in civilization B may be sold to civilization C and become valuable. They have become a hot commodity. They can make a lot of money casually. And both of them are happy. Ha ha. Of course. I also want to have more exchanges with your empire. Our empire is also happy to establish friendly relations with your empire. Exchange knowledge with each other. And jointly promote development. After hearing Webster's words, Luo Xiaoyang nodded happily and agreed readily. Chapter 336 Trade Fair In a very successful banquet, Luo Xiaoyang easily conquered Webster and his party with the imperial food and wine. Some unpleasantness caused by the fight quickly disappeared. Luo Xiaoyang represented the Yin Wang Empire. 
and Webster represented the Kallan Empire. The two sides once again signed an agreement to formally establish diplomatic relations in the Boyle system. They decided to send ambassadors to each other and carry out exchanges and cooperation in various fields such as economy, trade, culture, science and technology, and jointly promote the development of each other. After finishing the business, Luo Xiao also responded to Webster's request and decided to launch an economic and trade event in the Boyle system. Of course, this was not an official economic and trade exchange, but a private trade relationship. Could it be with the empire? While dating here, Webster also sees the opportunity to make a lot of money because he has discovered a lot of good things. And there are many advanced technological products in the empire. As long as these things are brought back to the Karen empire, it will not be a matter of making money or not, but it will be able to make up for his responsibility for the failure of this war. Of course, the empire has many special products, such as fine wine, tea, etc. As long as these products are sold to the Karen empire, he can easily make a lot of money, because he has tasted them all, and they are very good. There is another reason. This time, I brought my fleet to the Boyle system. I thought I could easily defeat the local indigenous people and let my soldiers follow them. He drank wine and ate meat. But now, he was beaten to pieces by the Imperial Army. The morale of the team was quite low. So he had to find a way to make up for it. Since he couldn't win, he could still do business and make money. As long as he could make money, everyone would still support him as before. The trade activities between the two parties are set on the living planet Boyle Star in the Boyle system. When it comes to doing business, the 12th Legion of the Kallan Empire is very active. The huge fleet is parked in the designated area in accordance with the requirements of the Empire. There is definitely no way to drive very close to Boyle's system. But it doesn't matter. As long as there is business, they have plenty of ways. Small spaceships are coming from the void at high speed. Each spaceship is full of goods from the soldiers of the Kallan Empire. Some of these goods are theirs. Special products purchased from the Kallan Empire. But more of them are trophies these soldiers snatched from the indigenous civilizations. On Boyle Star. On an extremely vast plain. Spaceships descended from the sky one after another. With the hatches wide open. Soldiers from the Kallan Empire dragged large and small bags and spread mats on the grass. He kept taking out his own goods. And then waited patiently for the guests from the Empire. The entire vast plain suddenly became very lively. The soldiers of the Kallan Empire were very orderly. They lined up opposite each other and formed a very long trading stall. The largest stall among them had a luxurious tent set up. Put on display the food and wine from the Kallan Empire. There is no doubt that this belongs to Webster. He has the most warehouses, carries the most goods, and does big business. After the preparations on the Kallan Empire were almost complete, the trade activities between the two sides also officially began. The soldiers of the empire were also allowed to participate in such trade fairs, and they might be able to exchange for some good things. Xianzi, these people from the Kalin Empire are really eye-opening. Li Wandu and his comrade Ding Xuqiang also came to join in the fun. Seeing the lively scene, they were dumbfounded. Not long ago, they beat you to death. Now these people from the Kalin Empire are so active in doing business. Of course. What is even more shocking is that the products of these Kalan Empire soldiers are all kinds of things. There are all kinds of gems. Strange specialties from alien planets. Even indigenous slaves from alien planets. Ferocious animals. Wild beasts. And some idle heads. Statues. Etc. that are clearly cut from the hands of indigenous people. And even some soldiers of the Kalan Empire actually carried a few trees. Flowers and other things and put them for sale. I was dumbfounded too. Ding Xuqiang couldn't help but shook his head. The scene at this time was very lively. The soldiers of the empire were walking back and forth in various stalls with the items they used to exchange. From time to time, they would also bargain with the soldiers of the Kallan Empire. Some they even happily reached a deal with each other. And each other carefully studied what they exchanged with smiles on their faces. At hashtag at hashtag hashtag percent and as soon as Li Wandu and Ding Xiaoqiang walked in, a Kallan Empire soldier shouted loudly in their language at the nearest booth to attract their attention. The two of them walked over with smiles. The stall owner was in a pretty good position. And he was obviously a powerful military officer. So the stall was very large, and the variety of products was extremely rich. The entire huge stall is hundreds of meters long. And the mats are filled with various products. Some of them are products processed by technology at a glance. While others are very primitive. Such as diamonds. Gems jade, and animals, teeth, 
bones, fossils, gold, silver, copper and iron products from primitive indigenous civilizations, etc. Evenly Wan saw that the iron cages nearby contained some primitive indigenous slaves, who were obviously different from the people of the Kalin Empire, as well as various strange animals, beasts, etc. Welcome guests from the Yin Wang Empire. Please take a look and choose as you please. Soon, the other party used the translator, wagging his tail, and greeted Li Wandu with a smile on his face. These are all good things from the other side of the Orion spiral arm. If the customer wants to exchange them, he must come up with something that satisfies me. These are specialties from some primitive indigenous planets. Guests can choose at will. The prices are cheap. As long as they can exchange for the same specialties, it will be fine. The stall owner was very enthusiastic, pointing to the products on his stall and saying with a smile, because neither of them had the other's currency, so they could only trade by barter. Li Wandu and Ding Xuqiang looked at it carefully with interest, picking up things from time to time and examining them carefully. The stall owner didn't have any objections at all. He acted casually and did not introduce each item in detail. After all, this stall most of the things above were snatched from the hands of primitive aborigines, and he didn't even know what they were like. This diamond is really big enough. And these gemstones are also quite good. The jade is basically all top-grade glass types. Well, I guess I'll be returning to the Empire soon. I'll bring some things back as gifts for everyone. Li Wanda thought of this in his mind. After nearly 20 years of fighting outside, he also missed his family very much. Naturally, he wanted to bring something back with him. Mom likes the color blue. It would be nice to find someone to make the sapphire and blue diamond into a necklace. Dad likes black. It would be nice to find someone to carve this black jade and put it on Dad's desk. Third sister likes red. And this ruby must like it. Lee Wanda carefully selected the diamonds, gems, jade, etc. on the stall. They were all of the highest quality. They were all about the size of an egg. And some were even as big as a fist. They were also very good for the Empire and the Earth Federation. The valuable ones are now placed randomly. Boss. Do you think I can exchange these things for this? Before arriving, Li Wandu had already brought out some things. They were all things the young man had collected while fighting in various places. Of course, there were also some technological products, specialties, etc. produced by the Empire. No, no, I can only change it to the same thing at most. The stall owner shook his head when he saw what Li Wandu was holding. What Li Wandu took out was a bottle of wine. The lid of the wine had been opened and waves of wine aroma came out. Although the stall owner was also attracted by the aroma of wine, he looked at it. When Li Wan picked out more than a dozen gems and jades, he still shook his head. Obviously, they were not equivalent in quantity. Then boss, look at this and bring it to your head. Li Wan knew it as soon as he heard it, and took out a virtual game helmet. This virtual game helmet was a standalone virtual game helmet. Li Wan brought it out when he went out to fight in his 20s. The games in it were already tired of playing. So I took it out and prepared to replace it with something. Upon hearing this, the stall owner put the helmet on his head. And soon his eyes widened. His yellow eyes and narrow pupils expanded. He was obviously fascinated by this advanced virtual technology product. Shocking. Okay. Okay. I'll change it. Soon. The stall owner carefully took off the gaming helmet. Touched it with great care. And nodded in agreement. This thing is the most advanced technological product in our empire. So I have to choose a few more things. Li Wandu also saw the other party's love. So naturally he took the opportunity to raise the price. Choose up to three more items. Ten. No. Too many. Five pieces. At least eight pieces. This is a virtual technology gaming helmet. It is a very useful thing during your long journey. Okay. Eight pieces is eight pieces. But you can only choose among these things. After bargaining with the stall owner, Li Wanda finally succeeded in getting the right to choose eight more things, but they were only among the special products snatched from the indigenous planet. Obviously, for this Kalan Empire officer, these things snatched from the primitive planet are not valuable at all. If they can be used to exchange for a virtual game helmet, this transaction is definitely profitable. Anyway, the things are stolen. There is no cost. At this time, he puts the virtual helmet on his head from time to time and carefully feels the charm of the virtual game. Chapter 337 Beyond the Starlight After successfully completing a deal, the stall owner was obviously in a good mood. He couldn't put it down the virtual game helmet in his hand. 
He carefully installed it aside and began to introduce some things to Li Wandu and Ding Xuqiang more enthusiastically. Two guests. Please choose and look around. If you don't understand anything, feel free to ask. My stuff is all good, and I have the most complete range of products. I also have stuff that others have here, and stuff that others don't have. I have everything here, and everything is of high quality. Boss, where is the other side of the starlight? Have I heard about you several times? Li Wandu showed a strong interest in his products. Seeing that he was in a good mood, he also took the opportunity to learn some information about the Milky Way and the Orion Spiral Arm. Don't you even know about the other side of the stars? Hearing Li Wandu's words, the stall owner asked in surprise. I really don't know. Maybe our empire's location is too remote and we have less contact with outside interstellar civilizations. Li Wandu smiled and shook his head. Oh, it's no wonder. The Starlight Beyond is the most powerful civilization in our Orion Spiral Arm. The Starlight Beyond is originally a place name. A very prosperous star field. But later, the Kalav civilization unified the entire Starlight Beyond and established the powerful Kalav Empire. Gradually, everyone became accustomed to calling this Kalav Empire the Starlight Beyond Civilization, which is generally called the Starlight Beyond. The stall owner very enthusiastically taught Li Wandu and Ding Xuqi on the common sense that everyone knows about the spiral arm of Orion. Beyond the starlight? When Li Wandu heard this, he firmly remembered the name. There is a very powerful civilization on the other side of the starlight. They occupy the most prosperous star field above our entire Orion spiral arm. They also control the channel from our Orion spiral arm to the center of the galaxy. They make a lot of money just by selling goods in the middle. The bowl is full. There are millions of galaxies and tens of millions of living planets on the other side of the stars and the population is calculated in Beijing. It is said that their technological level is very powerful and has developed to the top level of level 3 cosmic civilization. All the civilizations in the entire Orion spiral arm are not as powerful as the other side of the starlight. They need to pay tribute to the other side of the starlight regularly. Otherwise, they will suffer the calamity of national subjugation and annihilation of species. Speaking of the other side of the starlight, the eyes of this Kalan Empire officer showed infinite yearning. And of course more of fear. And the pupils in his eyes shrank. It seems that you have been to the other side of the starlight and seen the prosperity and wealth on the other side of the starlight? Ding Xiaoqiang also smiled and said, Where do I have the chance to go to the other side of the starlight? Those who can go to the other side of the starlight are the big forces and big figures in various civilizations. If my current title rises a few levels, I may have the opportunity to experience it. The stall owner smiled and shook his head slightly. These are all products from Starlight Beyond. A drink like this is one of the three major drinks from Starlight Beyond. It tastes quite good and the quantity is very limited. I can't bear to drink it myself. Soon, after saying a few words, the stall owner returned to the topic and enthusiastically promoted some products from the other side of the starlight to the two of them. Li Wan could tell with his toes that these things definitely did not come from the other side of the starlight. Most likely they were from the other side of the starlight. Things from a certain planet in the Karen Empire would naturally not be fooled by him. However, in order to extract more information, Li Wandu still showed strong interest, carefully looked and studied, and also took the opportunity to continue to extract information. Do you have any technological products from the other side of the stars, such as space battleships, space fighter planes, etc.? Or do you know where these things can be sold? What? Do you want to buy a space battleship from beyond the starlight? A space fighter plane? You can't afford it. Even for our Kalan Empire. It's difficult to buy a warship from the other side of the stars. It's too expensive. The stall owner shook his head when he heard this. What a joke. The warships on the other side of the starlight are not cabbage. You can buy them casually. Oh. How expensive is it? It's just a space battleship. What else can be special? Li Wandu said with a smile. How expensive is it? It takes almost 50 galaxies to exchange for a space battleship from the other side of the starlight. This space battleship produced from the other side of the starlight is the best space battleship in our entire Orion spiral arm. It not only has powerful attack weapons, but also has its own there are also energy shields for protection. Every space battleship that comes out of the other side of the starlight is enough to become a national treasure of a civilization. In the interstellar space war, this kind of battleship is simply an invincible myth. The stall owner looked at Li Wandu and Ding Xuqiang like they were country bumpkins, as if he was talking to the natives about something beyond imagination. In addition to the things from beyond the starlight, 
Do you have any other products from powerful civilizations here? Li Wanda probably already had an idea in his mind. And he continued to talk with a smile. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. Please take a look. This is an instrument from Greg Federation. It can play some very special melodies. It is definitely not to be missed by those who love music. And this is a silk fabric from the Augustine Empire. This silk is a kind of animal protruding silk unique to the Augustine Empire. It is very smooth. It would be good to buy some as gifts. The Augustine Empire is second only to the starlight on the Orion arm. The largest civilization on the other side is very powerful. And their products will definitely not be bad. Hearing Lee Wanda's words, the stall owner started talking nonsense, pointing at anything and saying it came from a certain civilization. In fact, these things were all bargains obtained from unknown quarters of the starry sky. Basically, they were all snatched from primitive indigenous civilization. The Grigo Federation? The Augustine Empire? Do you have any books introducing information about the many civilizations and star maps of the Orion Spiral Arm? I'm willing to pay a high price to buy them. Li Wandu became interested when he heard it. Regarding the information about the many civilizations on the Orion Spiral Arm, this is what the Empire is most eager to know at the moment. The reason is very simple. The Empire needs to find out the number and overall strength of the civilizations in the Orion Spiral Arm otherwise. This with constant external expansion. If a person accidentally encounters a powerful civilization, he may be beaten to death. Information is very important. I'm sorry. I can't disclose information to you. Of course. Our two empires have now established diplomatic relations. I estimate that the upper levels of your empire will definitely conduct large-scale transactions of intelligence, information, etc. with the upper levels of our empire. By then you'll know when the time comes. Unexpectedly, when talking about this issue, the stall owner shook his head repeatedly. Apparently, the Karen Empire also had relevant regulations. Those things that can be bought and sold and those that cannot be bought and sold are clearly divided. In fact, this is exactly what happened. At this time, in Webster's luxurious tent, Luo Xiaoyao, commander of the Imperial Royal Legion, was conducting large-scale economic trade with Webster on behalf of the empire. Ordinary people below knew how to do business. And people above him naturally. I will not miss the opportunity. Your Majesty General. Our Kalan Empire hopes to purchase relevant technologies. Of course, you can charge whatever price you want. We guarantee that you will be satisfied. Webster was also negotiating with Luo Xiaoyao on behalf of the Karen Empire at this time. This time he was beaten up. The scientists of the Karen Empire also knew about several advanced technologies in the Empire's hands. Mr. Webster, I have already said that our Empire's technology will never be sold. Even if the price you offer is very exciting. Luo Xiaoyao smiled and shook his head and refused. He was joking. They wanted to buy anti-gravity technology, gravity field technology, optomagnetic traction technology, and the Empire's energy weapon technology. These technologies are the most advanced technologies in the Empire. How could they sell them? The Empire still has we need to rely on these technologies to make a living in the Orion Spiral Arm and the Milky Way. That's such a pity. But I wonder if you can sell some related products to our Kalan Empire. Your empire's arms and weapons have made such progress. And we are willing to pay a lot of money to buy them. Although I was disappointed. It was something that was expected. I just said it casually. This kind of technology trading is not unheard of in the interstellar world. But generally it is impossible to say that you would be stupid enough to sell the top technology in your hands. Webster's purpose, I want to buy some products from the empire and let my own scientists conduct research on them. Our two empires have just established diplomatic relations. Originally, these arms and weapons cannot be sold. However, for the sake of our friendship, we can sell some to you in small quantities. However, the price is naturally not cheap. Luo Xiao pondered for a while, and finally nodded slowly. Between civilizations, the trade of arms, weapons, science and technology, etc. is the largest and most important trade. Every civilization in the interstellar universe will try to increase its strength as much as possible because the stronger the strength, the more important it is. Ability to better protect one's own interests. Great! Our Kalan Empire wants to purchase 10 large space battleships, 100 medium-sized space battleships, several small space fighter planes, and 1 million space fighter planes. When Webster heard this, he almost jumped for joy. He didn't expect that Luo Xiaoya would really agree to sell some arms and weapons to him. So he quickly submitted a list. 
It is absolutely impossible for us to sell so many arms and weapons to your empire. Moreover, it is impossible for your empire to exchange items of equivalent value. At most, we can only sell one medium-sized space battleship. Ten small space battleships. One thousands of space fighters will be given to you. The Karen Empire. Of course, if the relationship between our two empires develops in depth in the future, we can also consider selling large space battleships to you. And even technology transfer is not impossible. Chapter 338 Slaughtered Hearing that the other party asked for such a huge arms and weapons at once, Luo Shaliao refused without hesitation. What a joke. Even if your Kalan Empire can afford the money, it is impossible for the Empire to sell such huge arms and weapons. Come out, especially the large space battleships. Every large space battleship of the Empire is an artifact of the Empire and a crystallization of the Empire's science and technology. The construction of every large space battleship takes a relatively long time. There are too many things in it that are far away, far from being something that can be measured by money. It is something that will never be sold to the outside world. That's such a shame. Webster sighed helplessly. Every civilization cherishes the advanced technology in its hands. Generally, even the products are difficult to buy. The most expensive products in the universe are not the specialties of each planet, but the products of each civilization. High-tech products are very expensive and difficult to buy. After the large-scale arms and weapons sales were negotiated, other insignificant transactions were completed very happily. The trade of souvenirs and the trade of ordinary scientific and technological products were too strict with each other, so they could easily reach an exchange. Mr. Webster, our Yen Huang Empire is located on the inner side of the Orion Spiral Arm. We have very little contact with the outside world. We know very little about the Milky Way and the information on the Orion Spiral Arm. I wonder if your empire can sell a copy. Do you have any information about the various civilizations in the Milky Way and the Orion Arm? The conversation between the two parties was very pleasant. And Luo Xiaoyao also took the opportunity to ask about purchasing information. As Li Wanda thought, the Empire was very eager for information about the entire galaxy and the cosmic civilization on the Orion Spiral Arm, and wanted to know more. More information to guide the future development, expansion, etc. of the Empire. To be honest, even our Kalan Empire knows very, very little information about the inner circle of the Milky Way. Only the most powerful starlight on the Orion Spiral Arm can know the detailed information about the inner circle of the Milky Way. So I can only tell you about the many civilizations in the Orion Spiral Arm. But at this price? When Webster heard this, his eyes narrowed, and he immediately changed his face to a profiteer. He had been begging Lulu Xiaoyao to sell some advanced arms, weapons, and technology to the Kalin Empire. Luo Xiaoyao shook his head repeatedly. Now, he did not want to do the same. I plan to easily let go of this opportunity to slaughter the sheep. Information can be said to be very valuable. Of course, if the Empire comes into contact with many cosmic civilizations, this information will not be very valuable. In many cases, as long as you hang out with other interstellar civilizations for a long time, you will naturally know a lot of information. But now, the Empire has just begun to contact the interstellar civilization on the Orion Spiral Arm. This information is very important. Because if there is no accurate information, it is very likely to suffer a big loss. It may be difficult to offend several powerful civilizations at the same time. So even if Akechi would be slaughtered by Webster, the Empire was still planning to buy this information. The price is easy to talk about. Luo Xiaoyao smiled and said grandly. He was going to get stabbed anyway. So don't be too petty and just let the other party ask for the price. Okay. Cool. This information is the information that our Kalan Empire has been constantly collecting from contact with countless interstellar civilizations over the years. As long as the price of a large space battleship, it is definitely worth the money. Although your empire has advanced technology and strength, being strong, as the saying goes, the most important thing is not how strong you are, but that you have to be good enough in your eyes. There will always be opponents stronger than you. Webster slowly raised a finger, and the lion opened his mouth and asked for the price of a large space battleship. The price of a large space battleship is definitely more expensive than the price of dozens of medium-sized space battleships. And arms the price of weapons is notoriously high in the universe. If the average small space battleship empire needs about 1 billion yuan to manufacture, then the price quoted by the empire when sold to the Karen Empire is more than 1 trillion. As for the price of the medium-sized space battleship, it is as high as 20 trillion. 
the price of the large space battleship, the price of a battleship exceeds 1,000 trillion. Of course, even if the Karen Empire is willing to pay 1,000 trillion worth of goods, the Empire will not sell large space battleships to the Karen Empire. The price quoted for the sale between the two parties is extremely high. What you sell here is expensive. And the other side is equally expensive. But because the Empire's technology is more advanced, there are a lot of technological products sold to the Karen Empire. And the Karen Empire sells more products to the Empire. It's some local specialties and the like. If these products are too expensive, they won't be sold at all. Therefore, this time in the trade between the two sides, the Empire has a huge trade surplus. And the amount of this trade surplus is probably around 1,000 trillion. Naturally, it is impossible for Webster to really use goods of the same value to lower it. So seize this opportunity and take a big bite. A piece of information intelligence is used to balance this trade deficit. And information intelligence does not require any cost at all. It is only useful for civilizations like the Empire that have just entered the universe. Older interstellar civilizations will definitely you won't be fooled. He was also aware of this and knew that the Empire needed this information very much. He was ruthless, accurate and sharp. After quoting the price, he shook his tail slightly with pride, as if he would buy whatever he wanted, put on an attitude of, I've got you. Okay, I'll buy it. Luo Shiryu's eyes were shining, and he couldn't help but tighten his hands. He knew very well that the other party was seizing the opportunity to kill the Empire severely. But there was no way, even if he knew that the other party was going to kill him. But I still have to be willing to go up and take the knife. Without this information, the Empire would have a blank view of the entire Orion spiral arm, and it may suffer a lot in the future. Therefore, compared with the losses it may suffer in the future, the current information fee is insignificant. Okay, feel free. Seeing Luo Xiaoyan nodding, Webster smiled happily. Although the Kalen Empire lost the war this time, the Kalen Empire took advantage of this trade exchange between the two sides, using very few things in exchange for he has obtained many technological products from the Empire, especially this information, and has been very successful in selling them at large prices. This is the best embodiment of interstellar trade. For me, there may be nothing special or very ordinary, but for other cosmic civilizations, they are willing to spend a lot of money to buy it. The profit is astonishing. It's just confidence information. For the Karen Empire, or for the civilizations that are mixed among the stars. These things are just common sense to everyone and are not worth a penny at all. To put it simply and popularly, it is possible that Chinese cabbage is a very common thing on the earth. It costs a few cents per pound. And if you buy one, you will get one free. However, it is very possible that this Chinese cabbage is very important to a certain civilization in the interstellar world. This civilization is willing to spend a lot of money to buy things like holy medicine, life-saving straw, and the profit can no longer be described in terms of how many times it is. This kind of thing is very common in interstellar trade. Information, intelligence, genetic maps of biological races, root information, etc. All these things can be sold for big prices in the universe. When encountering someone like the Empire, who has just entered the interstellar universe, the civilization of a big civilized family can even be severely punished. Humph! Let you be proud first. Sooner or later this debt will be paid back. Luo Xiaoyao also had a smile on the surface. But seeing Webster's proud face in his heart, he had already made up his mind. If there was a chance in the future, he would never let go of the Kalen Empire easily. He must eat what he had eaten today. Get the loss back. Of course, this is also Luo Xiaoyao's self-comfort. At least now, he has been severely stabbed by the other party. As for what will happen in the future, we still have to wait until the future to know. In the Boyle Galaxy, Due to the sudden appearance of the Kalen Empire fleet and the mutual economic and trade between the two sides, the Imperial Royal Legion's plan to return to the Imperial Capital Star was also followed. Before the army to replace the Royal Legion arrived, Luo Xiaoya's Royal Legion the Legion could only continue to sit there, urging the Kalen Empire to pay war reparations to the Empire and the two systems at the delivery site to prevent the Kalen Empire from changing its mind. Another aspect is to protect this interstellar trade. A steady stream of goods from the rear of the empire are transported here to trade with the Kalan Empire. This star is sure is so prosperous. There is a small black hole at its center. With this black hole as the center, there are millions of galaxies within a few hundred light years. The number of living planets in each galaxy, they are also very numerous. Adding up to tens of millions of living planets. It is really unimaginable that there can be such a prosperous place in the universe. 
No wonder the Kalaf Empire on the other side of the starlight has long dominated the entire Orion Spiral Arm. The Earth overlords on the entire Orion Spiral Arm not only occupy the most prosperous starlight shore on the Orion Spiral Arm. They also control the waterway leading to the center of the Milky Way. Only they can go to the center of the Milky Way. And other civilizations cannot. There is no way to get to the center of the Milky Way through the channel. Information about the center of the Milky Way is firmly blocked by the Kalaf Empire. Not only is its technology very powerful, but it has also developed to the pinnacle of level 3 cosmic civilization. It is also able to go to the center of the Milky Way to acquire more advanced technologies, arms and weapons, etc. All civilizations on the entire Orion arm must obey the orders of the Kalaf Empire and must pay tribute regularly. Otherwise, they will be mercilessly destroyed. Luo Xiaoyao frowned deeply at the information obtained from the Kalin Empire. Chapter 339 Interstellar Slave Trade Time returns to the trade fair in the boil system. Li Wandu and Ding Xiuqiang looked around curiously at the stall. Many of the things were very rare. Things that could attract these Kalin Empire soldiers to snatch were naturally not common. Not to mention that these things were very rare. Complex. Coming from many primitive galaxies. This mask is pretty good. Ding Xiuqiang held up a metal mask and gestured to put it on his face. The mask looked very ferocious and terrifying with a green face and fangs. At first glance, it seemed that it was used for sacrifice by some indigenous civilization. I also like this sword. TSK. It's quite sharp. Ding Xiuqiang picked up another ancient sword. This ancient sword had snowflake-like patterns on it. The blade was very sharp, had blood grooves, and was inlaid with a valuable precious sapphire. At a glance, he knew that it should be the sword used by a powerful person on a certain indigenous planet eventually fell into the hands of the Kalan Empire officer in front of him and became a very common item for sale here. Boss, can you exchange these two things for this one? Ding Xiuqiang took out a box of tea leaves in his hand, which was not very good, and tried to ask, What's the use of your leaves? The stall owner took the leaves and observed them carefully. He opened the box and smelled the fragrance of the tea leaves. He narrowed his eyes slightly and seemed to enjoy it. You boil some water, and then brew these tea leaves in the water. Don't add too much each time. It is very beneficial to your health and can strengthen your stomach and digestion. Ding Xiuqiang smiled and explained how to use tea. The stall owner took the tea and smelled it carefully. He seemed to be hesitating. Then he thought about it and finally nodded. Anyway, he had plenty of these things in the hands of the indigenous people and didn't spend a penny. The fragrance of this tea made him like it very much. Just changed it. Ding Xiuqiang happily put away the two items. The mask was definitely not worth much. But the ancient sword still had a certain collection value. Of course, his box of tea itself was not a precious thing. They exchanged it with each other. And both parties were happy. The stall owner's stall is very large and has a full range of items. As the trade fair progresses, more and more people come and look for what they like on the stall. From time to time, people come to the stall with the things they have chosen. The owner bargained and exchanged various things with the stall owner for what he liked. Boss, are these slaves? Some people pointed to the many various aliens in the cages nearby and said that these aliens have different looks. Some are tall, muscular, with thick nostrils and tall and pointed ears, while others are short in stature. They have thick, fluffy hair. Some are just wearing some animal furs to cover important parts. Some are wearing fine clothes. Some are carefully looking at everything around them with curious eyes and some are looking depressed, and panic all day long. In short, there are all kinds of people. Obviously they come from many planets. Some civilizations are still very low level, probably still at the primitive tribal stage, while some are obviously very advanced in civilization. But they were eventually conquered by the Kalan Empire. These people were captured and turned into slaves, and were imprisoned like animals. In the cage, he kept a distance from the primitive like natives with great disgust and his eyes shrewdly looked at everything around him, seeming to be looking for an opportunity to regain his freedom. Yes, these are slaves. They are very cheap. Five slaves are considered one commodity and are cheap to deal with. I am tired of carrying these slaves. I am almost exhausted from food and drink. The stall owner is obviously not good at hiding his inner emotions and seems a bit nagging. He caught these slaves from the primitive star and took them with him. Slaves are not dead commodities. They can eat drink, have sex, etc. It is indispensable. So I have been investing money in it. Since you're losing money, why did you capture these slaves in the first place? 
Li Wanyu also looked over at this time, looking at the many slaves in the cage. At this time, these slaves also looked at Li Wandu with their eyes. Their eyes were full of desire for freedom. And they could also see between the eyes. Raging anger. Especially from some civilizations that have developed. Their unwillingness and yearning for freedom can be clearly seen in their eyes. They are locked in a small cage. Surrounded by primitive natives like beasts. Eating. Drinking. Urinating. Etc. Just like like animals. This is definitely not something that civilized people can tolerate. Percent percent and percent percent at hashtag at. When these slaves saw someone looking over, they started shouting one by one. They obviously wanted to get out of their current situation. Even if they were bought by others, at least they wouldn't have to be locked in a cage. Why are you making so much noise? I'm so impatient with life. The soldiers of the Karen Empire obviously did not smile at Li Wandu and others. They held electric batons in their hands and pointed at the iron cage. Suddenly, all the slaves in the cage rolled their eyes and collapsed to the ground. Dealing with the slaves, the Karen Empire people are never merciful. Originally, we were able to return to our Kalan Empire soon. These slaves could still be sold for a good price as long as they were shipped back. But now you also know that time has been delayed. If you want to buy them, yes, I can sell them to you cheaper. Anyway, if you don't go back after a while, I will get rid of them. I will lose a lot of money eating. Drinking and shitting every day. The stall owner turned to Liwandu and explained with a smile. Is the slave trade flourishing among the stars? When Liwandu heard this, he frowned. The treatment he mentioned should probably be to kill him or deal with him in some way. In short, it was impossible to say that he would be treated well or given freedom. Of course, in the interstellar universe, the slave trade is as popular as the arms trade. If slaves like these can be sold to our Kalan Empire, this slave will be sold for tens of thousands of Kalan coins. If you encounter similar to the statues of people from our Kalan Empire, the price can be increased ten times. Some slaves with special functions can be sold for millions, tens of millions, or even over 100 million Kalan coins. It is not impossible. The stall owner nodded and explained the considerable profits from the interstellar slave trade. Then the profit is quite high. Li Wanda nodded after listening. Of course it's high. Slaves have a wide range of uses. They can be used as labor force. They can also be used for in vivo experiments. They can also meet certain special needs. They can be used as pets. And some can also be used to make food. Etc. In short, slaves have a wide range of uses. In our Kalan Empire, basically every family will buy some slaves. So the slave trade is also a very profitable business in the interstellar trade. I am just doing it in a small way. I catch some slaves on the primitive planet and sell them. The quantity is very small. It is just a business. In various interstellar civilizations, there are companies, individuals, families, etc. that specialize in the interstellar slave trade. These big forces even control planets for planets, specialize in breeding and breeding slaves, and perform special treatment on the slaves according to the needs of the guests. Targeted breeding and breeding, etc. The slaves in their hands are really valuable. Especially those high-end privately customized slaves. Each one is worth a lot of money. Far from being comparable to these low-level goods. The slaves trained by these slave companies or organizations are very obedient and absolutely there will be no betrayal. And you will be able to maximize your own value. The slaves in my hands are still very wild. So for safety reasons, I have installed slave collars on them. There is nothing to worry about. If they don't obey... I will just teach them a lesson. The stall owner and Li Wan both made a deal. Seeing that many people around were interested in slaves, they also talked about various things about the interstellar slave trade with great interest. After listening to the stall owner's words, everyone couldn't help but take a breath. It turned out that such a naked guagua, once reduced to an interstellar slave, would be no different from beasts and animals. It is not just as simple as losing freedom. It has completely become a commodity a commodity that can be manipulated at will, and is sold like a beast. It is also possible that it can be treated like a beast and become food, pets, etc. in the mouth of some civilizations. It would be even more tragic if it fell into the hands of slave organizations. These slave organizations specialize in hard trade and captive breeding. Basically, customers need targeted breeding and cultivation. This has nothing to do with the dogs, pigs, sheep, and cattle around us. Any difference has become a slave for generations. A plaything in the hands of others. 
everyone couldn't help but rejoice. Glad that they lived in the empire and in a powerful civilized country. If the technology of their own civilization was not developed, if they could not defeat these aliens, they would die in the flames of war. Fortunately, once you become an interstellar slave, it is worse than death. Among these slaves, it can be clearly seen that some are already civilized people. They even carry time calculations and other things on their hands, and the clothes they wear are all industrial products. However, although their civilization had developed, but was still defeated by the Karen Empire, so its fate was very tragic. These people are often the most oppressed and depressed among the slaves, and they are also the fastest to die among the interstellar slaves. Among other things, these slaves cannot compete with the original indigenous people in terms of internal competition for food. On the other hand, those primitive aboriginal people were all tall and strong, and seemed to be able to accept being reduced to slaves. At this time, their mental state was quite good, and each of them seemed relatively calm. But they also had the same desire for freedom in their eyes. Yearning. After all, even animals don't like to be kept in cages. Chapter 340 Only the strong have the right to speak. Lee Wandu looked at the many slaves in the cage, and many of his eyes revealed longing, because he was afraid of being shocked. None of them dared to shout like before, and they all seemed to express their inner feelings with their eyes. Medium mood. Being locked up in a cage like an animal. People are dying every day, either from internal fights among slaves, or from diseases, etc. It is not easy for everyone to survive until now, and many of them seem to have died. I have already accepted my fate. Since I have accepted my fate, it is better to sell it as soon as possible. Maybe I can find a better owner. At least I don't have to be locked in a cage. How about we buy some slaves? Ding Xuqiang really couldn't bear it. So he discussed it with Li Fu. No. Our empire has a very strict population policy. And our empire does not allow slaves to exist. At that time, under what name did we take in these people? And we also raised a very serious question to our imperial government put it before the people of our empire. At that time, should our empire open up the slavery system? Should we accept foreign civilized races? This will become a very serious topic in our entire empire. After all, we only have descendants of Yen and Huang as immigrants now, let alone these aliens. People, Li Wandu shook his head. After all, he was thinking further. As a member of the imperial royal family, he had been in contact with Li Fu and many imperial government officials since he was a child. Naturally, his vision and thinking were different. Many things were not simply seen. Now, buying these slaves is very simple. And it seems to be a good thing, allowing these slaves to escape their original fate. However, once these slaves enter the empire, it is worth considering how the empire should treat them. Thinking about it. Oh, I also feel sorry for them. Ding Xuqiang sighed softly, turned around, and no longer looked at the slave in the cage because those eyes were really unbearable. And he couldn't help but want to reach out and help. It's a pity that there is nothing we can do about it. Our empire has our own imperial rules. And the higher-ups have their own considerations. Naturally, there is a reason why we do not open up slavery. Strict restrictions on foreign immigrants are also for the long-term survival of our descendants of the Yan and Huang dynasties. For your own sake. Li Wanu also turned his head and stopped looking. You too. Don't you think about buying some slaves? Look at this Hudson Star. He is strong and has very strong muscles. He is definitely a very good labor force. It would definitely be good to buy him back and use him to do some farm work and the like. Also, this Catwoman with a petite body and extremely smooth skin is also a good toy on the bed. If you buy it back, you are guaranteed to have endless fun. When the stall owner saw that Li Wandu and Ding Xuqiang both turned away from looking at the slaves, he quickly started promoting the alliance. The average Hudson man he said was two meters tall, with strong muscles and wore coarse linen clothes. The other aliens nearby all tacitly agreed to stay away from them. Obviously, they were not easy to mess with. As for the cat women, they are a group of scantily clad, fair-skinned people with furry cat ears and tails. They are petite in stature. They cuddle together in a group and look at everything around them with fearful eyes. No, our empire does not allow keeping slaves. Ding Xuqiang shook his head and looked at the slave in the cage again. His eyes filled with helplessness. Slaves are not allowed. The laws of your empire are really strange. Well, guests can look at other things. They are all very good. When the stall owner heard this, he was slightly surprised. And then he also promoted other things. 
in the interstellar universe. There are no civilizations that do not allow the raising of slaves. But they are very, very few. Most civilizations allow the raising of slaves. Because slaves it is also a very important resource. Not to mention anything else. There is a very large market for slaves just to engage in manual labor, dirty work, etc. Another very important use is the slave coliseum, which is also the largest consumer among interstellar slaves. There are countless slave arenas in almost every civilization. Countless slaves die every day at the mouths of beasts and at the hands of other slaves. In the entire interstellar universe, the prelude to slavery is very large, and it has also given birth to a huge interstellar slave trade industry. From the capture, training, listing of slaves, etc., there is a complete black industry chain. Every moment, countless civilized races are turned from free people into slave commodities by these interstellar slave traders in the black market. Continuous sales. Of course, this black industrial chain is black for the empire. The empire strictly prohibits human trafficking and trafficking. So far, there has not been a single incident of human trafficking in the empire. But for other interstellar civilizations, as long as they are not selling people of their own civilization, the slave trade is legal and open. Even the governments of these civilizations can collect a large amount of tax revenue from it, which is considerable support for the interstellar slave industry. In these civilizations, interstellar slaves are sold and operated openly. Everyone can legally purchase and raise slaves. Slaves are like commodities, and the owner can dispose of them at will. Let's go on and see. Lee Wandu smiled and shook his head, and continued shopping. The entire trade area was very wide, and the soldiers of the Kallan Empire laid out a long trade corridor. Brotherly, why do you think our empire does not allow the existence of slavery? Obviously our empire now has a sparse population and a vast territory, which requires a lot of labor. If the slavery system is allowed to exist, and there are a large number of slaves, the development of our empire will be it can be very fast. Ding Xuqiang was still struggling with the slavery system at this time, and his mind was full of thinking about this issue. Empires naturally have imperial considerations. In our human history, because of the existence of slavery, many powerful empires fell to the ground, such as the very famous ancient Roman Empire. Slavery has long hindered the glory of the ancient Roman Empire, but it is also because of slaves. Destroy the ancient Roman Empire completely. The large-scale use of slaves will make the imperial nation itself more lazy. This is very detrimental to the long-term development of our empire. It can easily quickly erase the excellent diligent qualities that our Chinese nation has developed over thousands of years. In addition, the existence of slaves is a very unstable factor in itself. Although today's technological methods are becoming more and more sophisticated and their control power is stronger, slaves are not ignorant animals after all, and the potential risks are very high. I think this is an important reason why our empire does not allow slavery to exist. The leaders of the empire must take a long-term view when considering problems. Li Wandu explained to Ding Xiaoqiang with a smile as he walked. I see. After hearing this, Ding Xiaoqiang nodded as if he suddenly understood. These interstellar slave trades are still very prosperous. Look at this stall. There are more or less slaves. If you look carefully at their eyes, can you see the fierce anger? Especially those slaves who have already launched a civilization. Although it is well hidden, it can burst out at any time. Li Wandu was walking around casually, looking at the slaves in cages at each stall. Well, I can clearly feel the burning anger in their hearts. If I were sold as a slave in the interstellar universe, I would be the same. That's it. They are very calm now. That's because no matter what they do now, it won't help. So they either die in silence or explode in silence. The slavery system itself has huge risks. Not to mention humans, but also animals. There will also be times of resistance. It has to be said that it is a kind of tragedy. A free man in the civilized world has suddenly become an interstellar slave and is casually sold as a beast in the universe. We should be thankful that we live in an empire and a powerful country. We have enough power to protect our people. Being weak is not a sin. But no one in the universe will sympathize with the weak. It will only become more wanton. A bullying. Li Wandu let out a long sigh. You look at the soldiers of the Karen Empire. They are all smiling at us now. That's because we defeated them. So they are like this. Then look at the things they sell. Several of these things are from them. The things I bought with my own money were basically snatched from the indigenous planets. Not only will we rob you of your wealth, but we will also sell you like a slave. This is the treatment of a weak civilization. It has no right to speak, 
and can only be slaughtered at will. Li Wanda pointed to a stall and said to Ding Xiaoqiang, Well, because we defeated them. They respected us and bowed to us. However, the civilization where these slaves lived lost to them. So they not only lost their wealth, but also became interstellar slaves themselves. Fruity Forest Law. Ding Xiuqiang nodded, seeming to have figured something out in his mind. So, you feel the responsibility and burden on your shoulders. If our predecessors hadn't worked hard to develop technology and strengthen themselves, maybe today we would be like these slaves, being sold as commodities in the universe. In other words, if we don't work hard to develop technology and improve the strength of our empire today, then one day in the future, we will encounter a more powerful civilization. And it is very likely that our descendants will encounter today's everything about these slaves. Look at the history of our descendants of the Yin and Huang dynasties. Only when we continue to become stronger can we intimidate the rest of the world. Whenever we are weak, it is the suffering of our descendants of the Yin and Huang dynasties. So, when I see what happened to these slaves and think about the past and the future, I feel as if there is a big mountain pressing on my shoulders. In the interstellar universe, only the strong have the right to speak. Chapter 341 Little Orion Spiral Arm Imperial Base Camp Centauri Galaxy in the Imperial Palace of Chang'an City on Xing'an Yellow Star The Capital of the Empire Li Fu Fang Zheng Shen Bin Yu Liang and other high-ranking officials of the Empire gathered together. In each hand was a copy of the latest news from the Boil Galaxy The information and intelligence data of major civilizations on the entire Orion Spiral Arm was transmitted back. This intelligence information was obtained by Luo Xiaoyao in exchange for a large space battleship. The Karen Empire still has a conscience. Of course, it may be more because they are afraid of the Empire's powerful strength. So this information is also very detailed. From the history, territory, human geography, etc. of the major civilizations in the entire Orion Spiral Arm, it introduces in detail the powerful civilizations with names in the entire Orion Spiral Arm. There are tens of thousands of powerful civilizations, large and small, in the entire Orion Spiral Arm. Each civilization is at least similar to the Empire, with dozens of galaxies and dozens of living planets. Of course, as powerful as the Kalav Empire across the stars, one civilization occupies millions of galaxies and tens of millions of life planets. As for those civilizations that occupy hundreds of galaxies, thousands, or tens of thousands of galaxies, there are even more. As a main spiral arm of the Milky Way, the Orion spiral arm is about 26,000 light years away from the center of the Milky Way. Current star maps mapped by many civilizations on the Orion spiral arm show that the Orion spiral arm is 50,000 light years long and more than 5,000 light years wide. Years, with an average thickness of 3,000 light years, making it the most important spiral arm of the Milky Way. As the most important spiral arm of the Milky Way, there are many spiral arms around the Orion spiral arm. However, a large number of galaxies around the Empire such as the Solar System and the Centauri Galaxy are actually on a sub-spiral arm above the Orion Spiral Arm and cannot it is the true Orion Spiral Arm. Moreover, the location of the Solar System and the Centauri Galaxy is still inside this sub-spiral arm close to the inner circle of the Milky Way. The Milky Way seen in the night sky is actually the Persis Arm, another main spiral arm of the Milky Way. It is neither above the main spiral arm nor above the secondary spiral arm and the secondary spiral arm is located closer to the inside. This is also the reason why people on Earth have been able to develop well in the solar system in the past. Because this location is really relatively remote. Few alien civilizations will come here. If it were on the spiral arm of Orion, where there are many civilizations and very frequent exchanges, then maybe the people on Earth are now a member of the army of slaves in the universe, being sold at will, and there will be no chance for you to develop. No wonder we have rarely had contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. It turns out that it's not because there are too few aliens, but because our location is too far away. Toward the center of the Milky Way is the vast abyss of darkness. It is said that spacecrafts can't move into it. There's only in and no out. The location is also the sub-spiral arm of the Orion spiral arm. It is no wonder that we have been able to develop steadily. The remote location has the advantage of being remote. Yu Liang sighed. Through this information, the first thing he realized was the location of the empire. We should feel lucky that our location is relatively remote. Look at the main spiral arms of Orion. Each of these civilizations has a long history of millions, tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions of years. And compared to them, our history is really just a blink of an eye. Li Fu nodded. 
looking at this information. He was secretly glad in his heart. There are rich resources and numerous galaxies on the main spiral arm. But the competition is too fierce. New civilizations are born every moment. And the same goes for some old civilizations are destroyed. Some civilizations rise. And some civilizations decline. But there is a common characteristic. Primitive civilizations are basically dominated by civilizations that have already developed long ago. And it is basically impossible to escape the fate of interstellar slaves. Yes, the competition in the Orion Minor Spiral Arm, where our empire is located is already quite fierce. Not to mention the Orion Main Spiral Arm. It's hard to imagine how prosperous the center of the Milky Way is. There are hundreds of powerful civilizations, large and small, in the South Spiral Arm where the empire is located. And there are countless weak civilizations. The strength of the Kalan Empire is probably at the upper middle level, with more than 200 galaxies and nearly 300 a living planet. If you look at it this way, our empire's current strength should be relatively strong at least in the sub-spiral arm. Fong Jing also let out a long sigh. Although this information was expensive, it was expensive and valuable. At least, he had a clearer understanding of the Orion spiral arm. Technologically speaking, we should be considered relatively powerful. But our territory is still too small, and our population is too small. In terms of overall strength, we can only be considered about the same as the Karen Empire. Chinbin also nodded. When analyzing the strength of a civilization, we not only look at its technological strength, but also its territory and population. These two aspects are also very important. When the level of science and technology is not much different, the wider the territory and the larger the population, the stronger the strength will naturally be because it means greater war potential and stronger people to bear the war. The future expansion direction of our empire should be towards the main spiral arm of the Orion spiral arm. If we expand a few hundred light years further inward, we will reach the dark abyss. Galaxies are very rare in this dark abyss. And it is so vast and boundless. And without the connection of time and space ocean currents, there is no way forward and no return. However, if we expand towards the main spiral arm of Orion, we will definitely have to conflict with these old and powerful civilizations. The Karen Empire is not too powerful. So it is constantly expanding towards the direction of the Dark Abyss. So it has entered into conflict with our empire. There was a fight in the boil system. Chao Haida frowned at this time. The empire has just owned more than 30 galaxies. And its territory is still very small. Not to mention the powerful civilizations on the main spiral arm. Even in the secondary spiral arm. The territory of the empire also belongs to that. Planting the smallest one is not an option. Expansion must be expanded. These interstellar civilizations often fight with each other. If they lose, they must see territory and pay compensation. As long as our empire is strong enough, we can encroach step by step. First, give all the sub-spiral seize it, and then pull out the main spiral arm. If we can take down the entire secondary spiral arm, based on the secondary spiral arm, we will have a strong foundation when expanding towards the main spiral arm. Li Fu had a smile on his face, and didn't seem to care too much about these old problems. He opened his mouth wide, and wanted to swallow the entire sub-spiral arm. These civilizations on the sub-spiral arm are nothing, and their strength is not too strong. With the development speed of our empire, science, and technology, I believe we will soon surpass these civilizations, and then we can slowly encroach on them while consolidate the territory and develop the population. But on the main spiral arm, these civilizations are very powerful. The competition is already very fierce. These civilizations that can last for a long time are very powerful. Each one occupies a very large territory, has a long history and profound foundation, especially the Kalav Empire on the other side of the starlight. It occupies the most prosperous starlight side on the entire Orion spiral arm. It has millions of galaxies and tens of millions of life planets. Its population is calculated in Beijing. It also has a monopoly on the Orion spiral arm, arm leading to the center of the Milky Way, depriving all civilizations on the entire Orion spiral arm. Imagine how powerful and wealthy this civilization is. All the civilizations in the Orion arm combined cannot defeat the Kalaf Empire. However, what I want to tell you today is that as our empire moves towards the starry sky, the first real opponent is the Kalaf Empire. As for the Augustine Empire, the Greg Federation, the Kalan Empire and the like, we do not they need to be taken into account. Our first step towards the interstellar universe is to occupy the entire Orion spiral arm, drive the Kalaf Empire out of the starlight, and make room for us descendants of Yen and Huang. 
Li Fu's words made everyone present widen their eyes. Oh my god! The Empire has just entered the interstellar universe. And Li Fu has already set such a goal. The more you know, the more humble you will be. Right. Not to mention the Kalaf Empire. The Kalan Empire alone is already huge. Li Fu now bluntly stated that he wants to occupy the entire Orion spiral arm. Drive the Kalaf Empire out of the starlight. And replace it. And this is just the Empire's first step into the interstellar universe. This ambition is a bit too ambitious. If you don't know the specific situation, you can say that you are ignorant and fearless. But now you know a little about the situation of the major civilizations on the Orion spiral arm. And you still say such things. Brother Fu, this is our goal too big? Can we set a slightly smaller goal first? For example, eat the sub spiral arm first? Even Yu Liang, who had always liked to grin and brag, was confused by Li Fu's goal and suggested cautiously, Go, go. A small sub spiral arm is not even a small puddle. How can it be considered a target? It is modest to not claim to monopolize the Milky Way first. If we don't even have this confidence, how can we talk about dominating the universe, rising in the universe, and standing among the powerful families in the universe? Compared with the vast and vast universe, this Milky Way is a very, very small one. There are puddles, not to mention this little Orion spiral arm. Li Fu glared at Yu Liang fiercely, then pointed at the huge virtual star map of the Milky Way and said, his whole person was so heroic and arrogant that he looked down upon the world. When everyone heard this, they all frowned and thought. And for a long time, each of their faces showed a look of determination. The small spiral arm of Orion is just the beginning of the Empire's journey. Chapter 342 The Hidden Dangers of Too Large a Territory The Empire's Base Camp Centauri Galaxy in Wang Star A private spaceship quickly flew into space from Yin Wang Star and soon arrived at a space port in space. Soon, there was another medium-sized anti-gravity spacecraft. The spacecraft flew rapidly from the space port towards the outskirts of the Centaur Galaxy. Both the private spacecraft and the medium-sized anti-gravity spacecraft have an ancient symbol painted on them. Anyone familiar with the Empire knows that it is now popular within the Empire to design some symbols for one's own family. And some use traditional Chinese characters as their own family symbols. Some use some geometric patterns. Some use some animal patterns etc. In short, in the empire, from the imperial royal family to the common people, basically every family has its own unique family pattern. The family pattern represents the entire family, as well as the honor and reputation of the entire family. Its rise is accompanied by the importance that citizens within the empire attach to their own honor and the honor of their family. At first, it was just some individuals, families, companies, etc. who were engaged in commercial acquisitions who designed some of their own patterns. Gradually, because everyone cherished their own feathers, once the family crest was stamped, it meant absolute reliability. So gradually the entire empire, they all started to learn. From the royal family of the empire to the families of ordinary people. Basically every family has its own unique family emblem. Some families with credibility and high recognition are slowly spreading within the empire. Often, just one report of their own family's emblem name. Others will be in awe. The ancient symbol on the spaceship comes from the Tai Chi diagram of Chinese Taoism. But in the middle of the Tai Chi diagram, there is the word Li. Obviously, this is the family emblem of the family surname Li. The surname Li is a large-scale family. I don't know how many families there are. However, within the empire, all the families surname Li have a very tacit understanding and will never be in their own. The word Li appears on the family emblem because the imperial family surname is Li whether it is out of respect or out of fear of the imperial royal family. Although there are countless families with the surname Li in the empire, everyone knows that when they see the word Li written in the middle of a Tai Chi diagram. Yes, there is no doubt that this must belong to the imperial royal family. Moreover, the members of the imperial royal family have always been very low-key. Only the emperor Li Fu would put the family emblem on the traveling spaceship when he travels. As for the other princes, etc., although they are all very outstanding. They have never neither will use the family crest. In this spaceship, Li Fu seemed very excited at this time. He was reviewing documents in the Imperial Palace earlier. After receiving the news from Chin Bin, Li Fu hurried to space. The anti-gravity spaceship that Li Fu rode was a high-tech spaceship built with the latest technology of the Empire. It was the fastest among the countless spaceships in the entire Empire. In less than an hour, 
the speed of the spacecraft had accelerated to 800 kilometers per hour. The terrifying speed of seconds. However, although the speed is quite fast for the vast universe, even the speed of light appears to be quite slow. This timely foo is going to the space-time ocean current research branch of the Kyushu Star Empire Academy of Sciences. Because Chinbin has a major technology here as a result. Even Li Fu was so excited that he couldn't sit still and hurried over as soon as he heard the good news. A few days later, in a space port outside Jojo Planet, Li Fu's spaceship slowly parked. And then soon a small private spacecraft set off from the space port again, heading straight into space. A huge space city. This space city is very huge. When viewed from space, it looks a bit like a huge space continent. The buildings are divided into two sides. Each side is very prosperous. With various small private universes, the aircraft is constantly rising and falling. This is the Spacetime Ocean Current Research Institute of the Imperial Academy of Sciences, a scientific research institute dedicated to studying spacetime ocean currents. Li Fu's spaceship landed directly in this huge space city through various layers of identification. As soon as the spacecraft stopped, Li Fu hurriedly got off the spacecraft and walked towards the center of the Spacetime Ocean Current Research Institute. Chen Bin, hurry up and tell me what you have developed that can shorten the time for a spacecraft to pass through the ocean currents of space and time by more than 10 times. Before anyone arrived, Li Fu's excited voice came in. Chen Bin, who was wearing a white coat, couldn't help laughing at the scientists who were also wearing white coats around him. Just as he expected, Li Fu heard the news. I will definitely rush here day and night. Soon, as soon as the voice fell, Li Fu's figure appeared in everyone's sight and everyone quickly became respectful, especially the younger generation of scientists, who all looked at Li Fu with admiring eyes, looking very of excitement. Of course I have researched something good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have dared to call you over. Chen Bin smiled and gave it away. He knew very well how Li Fu was feeling now. It was probably like being scratched by a cat's claws. And he felt very itchy. Hurry up and tell me. I came here in a hurry from Yin Wang Star just to know what it is as soon as possible. You are trying to hide it from me. If I don't make you poor, you will never go back. Li Fu threatened helplessly. Obviously, this threat had no practical effect. But it made the younger generation of scientists next to him couldn't help but laugh. Some even covered their mouths. They had heard about Li Fu for a long time. There is no pretense. And you will know it is true only after you meet him. Then I can't say anything more. Anyway, we haven't gotten together for a long time. We have several bottles of good wine hidden in our house. We can't leave without drinking them all. Chen Bin also had a playful smile, completely without the seriousness of the former director of the Imperial Academy of Sciences. Put the drinking aside for now and talk quickly. I couldn't sleep after hearing your good news, so I rushed here in a hurry. Li Fu looked very anxious. When he heard Chen Bin say that he had developed a technology that could shorten the time for a spacecraft to pass through the ocean currents of space and time by more than 10 times. He became uneasy. Over the years, the Empire has continued to expand externally, spreading in all directions from the Centaur Galaxy at the center of the Empire. The farthest galaxies are the Temple System and the worst system recently acquired from the Kalan Empire. These two systems are more than 50 kilometers away from the Empire. Light years, even through the ocean currents of space and time, passing through galaxies one by one. From the Centaur Galaxy, first go to the Aquila Galaxy, then from the Aquila Galaxy to the Era Galaxy then to the Era Galaxy, then to the Boyle Galaxy, and finally through the Boyle Galaxy to reach the Temple Galaxy and the Worst Galaxy. There are three transit points in between, the Aquila Galaxy, the Temple of Heaven Galaxy, and the Boyle Galaxy, even through the ocean currents of space and time. It would take nearly ten years to reach the Empire's remote galaxies. Such a long time is not conducive to the exchanges between various galaxies within the Empire and it is also not conducive to the Empire's control of outlying galaxies. As the saying goes, the mountains are high and the Emperor is far away. Some things, once the traffic remains unchanged, are too far away. And time over time, problems will gradually arise. Therefore, even though Li Fu ambitiously proposed to dominate the entire Orion spiral arm, he seems to be somewhat helpless with the current situation of the Empire because the distance is too far. Just more than 30 galaxies have already made the imperial government think twice. How to develop and consolidate the empire's rule over these remote galaxies. With more than 30 galaxies and nearly 40 living planets. Such a territory can only be regarded as the bottom among the numerous civilizations in the Orion Spiral Arm. However, 
for the empire, or for humans. This is an unprecedentedly vast territory in human history. Territory. There is no experience in governance at all before. In addition, the distance is too far, and the exchanges are very stable. Therefore, Li Fu, Fang Zheng and other upper-level empire officials have been worrying about how to strengthen management and rule, and how to consolidate the territory of the empire. Only 30 galaxies are enough. This is already the case. In the future, how to consolidate the territory when it develops to 100, 200, 1000, or even more galaxies. This problem is placed on the table of the empire's top brass. And it is also a problem that has always troubled the empire's top brass. Of course, this problem is not just a problem for the empire, but also for countless civilizations on the entire Orion arm. The larger the territory, the harder it is to effectively control its own territory. And signs of internal splitting forces will emerge. In the history of the Orion spiral arm, many powerful civilizations were destroyed not at the hands of external enemies, but at the hands of external enemies. The internal splinter forces fought against each other, and the civil war continued, and finally slowly began to decline. On the other side of the starlight, the civilization that once ruled the other side of the starlight was not actually the Caliph Empire, but another powerful and powerful civilization. In the end, due to internal divisions in this civilization, the Kalav Empire took the opportunity to rise rapidly, and eventually replaced it, and became the overlord above the spiral arm of Orion. Knowing the history of the many civilizations on the Orion spiral arm, combined with the development history of various countries on the earth, Li Fu, Fang Zheng and others knew how important it was to strengthen exchanges and cooperation among the internal galaxies. However, as the territory continues to expand, it takes longer and longer to communicate between various galaxies, which has seriously hindered the development of the empire. Therefore, when Li Fu heard the news from Chen Bin, he immediately hurriedly come over. It can shorten the time for a spacecraft to pass through the ocean currents of space and time by more than 10 times, which means that it only takes less than a year from the Empire Centaur Galaxy to the most remote Temple Galaxy. This is of great significance to the current Empire. It's significant. Chapter 343 Space-Time Ocean Current Sail Once such technology is mastered, communication and communication between various galaxies in the Empire will become very convenient, and the time spent will be greatly reduced. The Empire's control of each galaxy and the dispatch of power can also be greatly improved. Of course, more importantly, it also means that the Empire can continue to expand its territory in the universe. Brother Fu, please look! Seeing Li Fu's anxious look, Chen Bin stopped playing tricks and turned on the supercomputer in the laboratory nearby. A star map appeared on the monitor. On this star map, lines connected galaxies and formed a star map. Huge network map. Galaxies that are relatively close to each other are connected by space and time. We all know that through the ocean currents of space and time, we can cross great distances at speeds exceeding the speed of light, and we can easily reach another galaxy. However, through the time we have recorded over the years for spacecraft traveling within the Empire to and from the currents of time and space, we have gradually discovered some patterns. No matter how fast the spacecraft enters the space-time ocean current, the time it takes to pass through the space-time ocean current is the same. That is to say, whether it enters at a speed of 100 kilometers per second or 500 kilometers per second. In fact, they are all the same. Of course, this is most likely because the speed is too fast. In the face of speeds that are several times faster than the speed of light, this speed difference is simply insignificant. Chen Bin enlarged the diagram of space-time ocean currents and began to explain it in detail. Another point is that in the space-time ocean current, Entering it at both ends at the same time will not collide in the space-time ocean current. Nor will they meet each other. We speculate that it should be similar to the situation on a highway. Although it is the same space-time ocean current. But they should have different directions from each other. So they will not collide in the space-time ocean current. The speed of a spacecraft in the space-time ocean currents generally depends on the distance between two galaxies. Generally, the farther the distance, the faster the space-time ocean currents. The speed of each space-time sample is different. As Chinbin explained, the space-time ocean current map connecting the two galaxies on the entire star map also started to flow. At the same time, with text beside it, you can directly know the research on space-time patterns by imperial scientists over the years. Of course, until now, we still have many, many things that we don't understand about space-time ocean currents. For example, why are there space-time ocean currents between galaxies? Where do meteorites, asteroids, 
etc. come from in the ocean currents of time and space? Why are there no space-time ocean currents connecting galaxies beyond a certain distance? There are many questions like this, and so far we have not come up with a convincing answer, such as why the universe exists, how it was born and evolved, and the universe we observe now is still too small. It is too small, and it is naturally impossible to understand the universe from its essence if you sit in a well and look at the sky. Chin Bin sighed softly. The more he knew about the universe, the more he was in awe of the universe. There were too many, too many secrets in the vast and boundless universe waiting for him to discover. Li Fu nodded while listening to Chin Bin's explanation quietly. But in his mind, he was making comparisons with the information contained in the civilization seeds of the super-civilized Han Technological Empire. In the universe where the Han Technology Empire is located, there is no space-time ocean current connection between galaxies. Therefore, Ordinary civilizations can only truly gallop in the universe after they have developed warp engines. There is no universe that has mastered warp engine technology. Civilizations can only circle within their own home galaxy. It will not be like the current situation in our empire. There are time-space ocean current alliances between galaxies. Therefore, even civilizations that have just left their home star can travel among the stars and occupy multiple galaxies. Therefore, the entire Orion the spiral arms were all divided up by the civilizations that developed first. Have you developed a warp engine? Thinking of this, Li Fu's eyes suddenly lit up. The warp engine is a truly powerful power technology for interstellar navigation. With a warp engine, there is no need to pass through the ocean currents of time and space. And it can travel very far, across distant galaxies in a short time. Brother Fu, you think too highly of us. The warp engine is still in the theoretical stage. I don't know how long it will take before it is manufactured. However, this time scientific and technological achievements are also related to some results obtained in warp engine research. Chin Bin shook his head. As the president of the Imperial Academy of Sciences, he was very aware of the latest developments in the various disciplines under the Imperial Academy of Sciences. The warp engine is a new power technology that the Empire is currently concentrating its efforts on researching. But it is still only in the theoretical stage. When we were studying space-time ocean currents, some scientists asked whether the space-time ocean currents would be the same as those in the planet's oceans. If we could develop a space-time ocean current sail, could we speed up the space-time ocean currents? Greatly reducing the time it takes to pass through space-time ocean currents. Chen Bin continued to control the computer to simulate the space-time ocean currents. A pattern of space-time ocean currents appeared on the monitor. And the colorful world of streamers within the space-time ocean currents appeared. According to theories related to warp engines, curvature flight, etc. Space can be folded infinitely, as long as two distant spaces can be folded, and then pass through the folding point. It can be folded in a very short time. Reach the other side. In layman's terms, they are two points on a piece of paper. Normal walking means flying in a straight line on the paper. Space folding means folding the two points together and making a hole in the back. You can reach another point in a very short distance. To improve the warp engine technology, Chindon gave a brief explanation of the warp speed on the computer. This seems very simple. But when you really study it, it is not that easy at all. The space is illusory and ethereal. Nowhere to start. Although the Empire has concentrated many outstanding scientists and resources on this, it is still only in the theoretical research stage. I don't know how many various experiments have been done. But there is still no substantial progress. What does this warp engine research have to do with space-time ocean current sails? When Li Fu heard this, he frowned and started thinking. Li Fu himself is a top scientist. Although he is now the emperor of the empire, Li Fu spends at least half of his day in the laboratory. They are very good at all aspects of technology. Of course it is related. Although our warp engine has not achieved any major breakthroughs, it has achieved some small results, such as adding intervention to space. So after some scientists put forward such a conjecture and idea at that time, we carried out experiments and actions. We installed some equipment on the spacecraft that can intervene in space, and then activated this equipment when passing through the space-time ocean currents. Unexpectedly, the speed of ocean currents passing through space and time was suddenly increased by more than 10 times. Chinbin smiled proudly, and then began to simulate the working principle of this space-time ocean current sail on the computer. I saw a spaceship flying in the normal void. There were two wing-like things on both sides of the spacecraft that were constantly inciting. The surrounding space began to ripple like water waves. Even if it is flying in normal void, the speed and flexibility of a spacecraft equipped with a space-time ocean current sail 
have been improved to a certain extent. This space-time ocean current sail can directly apply force to space. Thus, just like a paddle moving through the water, it can generate power accordingly to speed up the spacecraft. Theoretically, if this technology can continue to develop, it should be able to be studied as a power technology alone. However, we have only scratched the surface, and it is not enough to use this technology as a power technology alone. Li Fu stared at the screen tightly, while Chen Bin next to him continued to explain. This kind of space-time ocean current sail is still relatively limited in the acceleration of the spacecraft in normal void. However, when the spacecraft equipped with this kind of space-time ocean current sail enters the space-time ocean current, it can generate more energy. The powerful thrust shortens the time for the spacecraft to pass through the ocean currents of space and time by more than 10 times. The picture suddenly changed following Chen Bin's words, turning into a simulated space-time ocean current picture. In the picture, on both sides of the spaceship, the space-time ocean current sails were constantly swinging, and the space ripples and the space-time ocean current were like turbulent waves. Completely, it is not comparable to the small water waves in the normal void. Although there is no specific method to measure the speed of the spacecraft in the space-time ocean currents, the speed of the spacecraft can only be calculated through time when it passes through the space-time ocean currents and finally reaches the other end. However, as the space-time ocean currents sail in the space-time ocean currents, as he continued to work, the speed of the colorful stream of light in the space-time ocean current suddenly increased several times. Obviously, this speed suddenly accelerated many times. A space-time ocean current sail that directly acts on space? Li Fu read it carefully from beginning to end, thinking carefully about the work of this space-time ocean current sail. This space-time ocean current sail has little effect in the normal void, but in the space-time ocean current, its ability it seems to be magnified countless times at once and it can actually greatly increase the speed of the spacecraft through the ocean currents of time and space. This is generally related to the particularity of the space-time ocean current itself. Ordinary spaceships flying into it can quickly reach distant galaxies. This kind of space-time ocean current sail that can directly exert force on space obviously has the same function. It's amplified. Chapter 344 The Key Points of the Warp Engine Li Fu watched Chen Bin demonstrate in detail the function and principle of the space-time ocean current sail. In fact, the space-time ocean current sail can be regarded as a type of space technology, and it is the embodiment of the achievements of imperial scientists in space technology over the years. It has always wanted to create a warp engine. So the Imperial Academy of Sciences has also invested a lot in research on space. However, this space is too ethereal. If you want to study it clearly, it cannot be completed overnight. Imperial scientists, it is quite remarkable to be able to study a little bit of it in just a few decades. Li Fu knew from the seeds of super civilization that this space technology is definitely a powerful technology leading to the top cosmic civilization in the universe. However, this road is full of countless ups and downs, and there are countless civilizations that cannot even enter. The scientists of the empire can achieve a little bit, all because Li Fu has the seeds of civilization, and can learn some knowledge related to space technology from the seeds of civilization, and then guide the scientists of the empire to conduct research. Otherwise, it would take several decades, not to mention decades, a hundred years, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, or even hundreds of millions of years may not necessarily lead to achievements in the field of space science and technology. Of course, because the universe where the super-civilized Han technology empire is located is different from the universe where the empire is now. This space is also different. Otherwise, the progress can definitely be faster. Li Fu can only refer to it and learn from the super-civilized Han technology empire methods and experiences in research space. I don't know when our empire will also be able to obtain a heart of time and space. Thinking of this, Li Fu couldn't help but let out a long sigh in his mind. In the early stages of civilization, the Han dynasty's technological empire had such bad luck that it obtained a precious treasure for studying space-time technology. The heart of space-time. That's why it was possible. It's been a smooth journey on the road of space-time technology. Therefore, Li Fu is also very eager to obtain the treasure of the heart of time and space mentioned in the seeds of civilization. Under special conditions, this treasure can perfectly interpret the mysteries related to time and space technology, which is very important for research. Space-time technology is like having a plug-in enabled. Although there is no such treasure as the heart of time and space, there are still among the seeds of civilization the experiences and methods of studying time and space technology summarized by scientists 
from the Han technology empire, which are still of great help to Li Fu. Over the past few decades, some superficial achievements in space technology are now of great use. If this powerful technology that can directly affect space can be further developed, it will not be far away from developing a warp engine. Does the spacecraft need to be redesigned for the space-time ocean current sail? From beginning to end, Li Fu felt very satisfied. It was able to speed up more than 10 times, which was quite remarkable, especially for an empire whose territory was getting larger and larger. It was of great significance. However, there is another issue that deserves attention. That is, if the space-time ocean current sail is not redesigned. This is related to whether the empire's current large spaceships and space battleships will be eliminated. If this kind of space-time ocean current sail can be used simply by adding it to a spaceship or space battleship, it will be very convenient. If it needs to be rearranged and designed, this means that the Empire now has many spaceships and space battleships in its hands. If they all have to be eliminated slowly, the loss will be too great. No need. You can just add it as an auxiliary equipment. All spaceships and space battleships in our empire can now complete the operation of adding space-time ocean current sails in a very short period of time. Jinbin smiled and shook his head. It is not easy to build a spaceship and space battleship. Generally speaking, spaceships and space battleships are upgraded as much as possible, rather than eliminated intermittently. And the spacecraft are improved as much as possible. Service life. That's good. Everyone did a good job. Lao Chun, please come up with a list. Li Fu nodded with satisfaction and asked Chen Bin to come up with the nomination list. There is no doubt that this is to reward the scientists who participated in the research. The Empire has always been very generous in this regard. With generous cash rewards, life planets in the Empire's remote galaxies, permanent private land, promotions and salary increases, granting noble titles, etc., will definitely allow the Empire's scientists to receive both substantial benefits and honorary rewards gaining both fame and fortune. Brother Fu, this space-time ocean current sail is just a matter of time and space. Even if it can increase the speed more than 10 times, it is not an epic-making technology after all. Chin Bin nodded, and then said thoughtfully, Keep talking. The starry sky in the universe is really too vast. Even if our current speed through space-time ocean currents is increased by more than 10 times, even if it is increased by hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of times, Compared with the vast void of the entire universe, it is insignificant in words. Even in the Milky Way, it will still appear very slow, especially in this space-time ocean current. Only relatively close galaxies can be connected by space-time ocean current, so we can only keep turning around in each galaxy, which is too slow. And in the future, our empire's external expansion will definitely conflict with other civilizations. As long as these civilizations block the entrances and exits of the space-time ocean currents, if they want to break through, the losses will definitely be very heavy. Our empire has a small population and a weak foundation. We simply cannot afford such a loss. It's acceptable to conquer more than a dozen galaxies. If it were hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands, the losses would be too great, and it would be very detrimental to the future development and expansion of our empire. So I think our empire should focus on developing the warp engine. As long as we can develop the warp engine, the universe will be as big as our empire can conquer. Chin Bin thought for a while, and then slowly suggested something. Old Chen, what you said makes sense. We have been developing in this direction. But the warp engine is not so easy to develop. Li Fu also nodded in deep agreement. Our empire has been researching warp engines over the years. At present, I think there are three main problems. The first is the energy problem. The energy technology we have now is simply not enough to support the huge energy demand of warp engines. We must develop controlled nuclear fusion technology. The second one is materials. Because the warp engine needs to distort and fold space. It has very high requirements for materials when forcibly traveling through space. Theoretically speaking, at least degenerate materials are needed to meet the demand. With what we know now, with the material technology we have mastered, it is already very difficult to develop space battleships to the 100 billion ton level. So the field of material technology is also a key point in the current technological development of our empire. The third problem is the theoretical support. Space folding and space distortion. At present, our understanding of space is too little. Too little. And our research is always in the fog. And we cannot understand the nature of space at all. We can't get straight to its core. So even though we invest a lot 
and spend a lot of energy in this area. We haven't made any big breakthroughs. Chinbin thought for a while and asked the three questions in his mind. As the president of the Imperial Academy of Sciences, he is very aware of the problems and problems currently encountered in the scientific development of the empire. And he has wanted to find them for a long time. Li Fu had a good talk about these issues. After listening to this, Li Fu thought carefully about these three issues in his mind, energy technology, material technology, and theoretical technology research. What Chen Bin was talking about was actually about these three aspects, energy technology, material technology, and theoretical technology are actually the most basic technologies, and they are also the foundation that determines the technological height of a civilization. In terms of energy technology, primitive humans began to master fire, then slowly mastered steam energy, electric energy, and then from nuclear energy to plasma power. Every reform in energy technology is accompanied by rapid advances in human technology, not to mention material technology. In the past, China on Earth often had a gap with Western countries in terms of basic material technology. So there was a big gap in high-end aero engines and high-precision machine tools. Later, Li after re-researching black gold materials and developing plasma engines in one fell swoop, China's technology began to truly surpass Western countries. As for theoretical science and technology research, it is even more important. Without theoretical research on many things, it would be impossible for the subsequent emergence of various technologies. Take Einstein's theory of relativity. Others have been dead for more than 100 years. But his theory still plays a very important role in the development of current science and technology. Without the mass energy formula, it would be impossible for humans to master nuclear energy, let alone know the powerful energy contained in atoms. The empire's technological development has basically brought the original energy technology, material technology, theoretical technology, etc. to the peak of research and application. Especially material technology. Black gold material technology has become increasingly unable to meet the needs of the empire's technological development. Although this black gold material technology has been continuously developing over the years. However, this kind of development is not an epic-making technological change but a continuous expansion and refinement of the original technology. The Empire's anti-gravity technology has developed slowly over the years. A very important reason is that it cannot find the right technology. Materials to support more advanced anti-gravity power technology. The more powerful the power, the higher the requirements for materials. This is why Chinbin said that if you want to develop a warp engine, you must develop degenerate materials. Without powerful materials, it is impossible to support a powerful engine. If you move it casually, the engine will play. Finally, if you want to have a strong heart, the material used to make the heart must be strong enough. The heart muscle is definitely the most powerful of all muscles. Chapter 345 Centennial Science and Technology Plan Li Fu pondered carefully in his mind. This warp engine is not just a problem of an engine. Just like an aero engine is not just a problem of an engine. It is also designed to be able to handle energy, materials, electronics, high-end processing, and many other things. Every aspect is in it. As the saying goes, an engine represents the strength of a country's technological development. This is also true for the warp engine. Not only the warp engine itself, but also the materials used to build a warp engine in the first place cannot be satisfied by all current materials. In theory, at least degenerate materials are needed. Secondly, a powerful warp engine requires a huge amount of energy. Current energy technology is simply not enough to provide enough energy to drive such a powerful engine. The greater the power, the better and more food you will eat. Old Chen, do you have any suggestions or ideas? Li Fu thought for a while and asked. Since Chen Bin raised these questions, it means that he should be able to come up with some solutions more or less. What can I do about this? Chen Bin shook his head helplessly. The warp engine involves the overall technological level of our empire. It requires us to accumulate a lot of knowledge and make great achievements in all aspects before we can research it. Now even if we develop in certain technologies, we still cannot create one. Warp drive. The only way we can do it is to accumulate hard work, lay a solid foundation for our empire, and promote the comprehensive development of various disciplines, so that we can finally achieve it. There is no need to rush. Chin Bin thought for a while and said slowly. Something like this that involves the overall scientific and technological level of a country and civilization is really not something that can be developed in a short time. Well, you said a lot, 
We are a little too anxious now. We are eager to enter the interstellar universe and expand. But we have not thought about what is behind us. Nor have we consolidated everything we have. After listening to Chin Bin's words, Li Fu nodded slowly as he thought about everything. Although it has taken decades for the Empire to develop to the present, it has developed from a centaur galaxy to more than 30 galaxies and nearly 40 living planets. It has grown from just over 10 million people to more than 500 million people. A huge empire of people. The speed of the Empire's development can be said to be very fast. In just a few decades, it has laid down such a large territory. However, relatively speaking, the foundation of the Empire still seems unstable. Not to mention anything else. The population alone. Even with the unremitting efforts to attract immigrants from the Earth Federation. Coupled with its own forced birth policy. The population is now only over 500 million. You must know that the population of the Earth Federation now exceeds tens of billions. If a new living planet is obtained, the Earth Federation can organize hundreds of millions of immigrants to move there in a short period of time. And the new planet can be moved there soon. Territory consolidated. As for the Empire, even if various policies are continuously formulated, the population growth in the Empire's new galaxies is still very slow. Basically, the population of the Empire is concentrated in the Centauri Galaxy and the populations in other galaxies are all relatively rare. In addition to population, another aspect is that in terms of scientific research and development, the Empire attaches too much importance to space technology, cosmic astronomy technology, and other technologies that can quickly expand its own strength. On the contrary, it does not pay enough attention to the development of some basic technologies. So the Empire slowly the development of science and technology will also be restricted by shortcomings. My opinion is that our empire has just emerged in the sub-spiral arm of the Orion spiral arm. And only the Kallan Empire knows of our existence. So it is better for us to keep a low profile as much as possible. We might as well develop quietly on our own territory for a few more decades. First thoroughly consolidate our existing territory. And at the same time develop the shortcomings in all aspects of our empire and make some accumulation. When our empire has accumulated a lot of strength. After we have developed the warp engine. It will not be too late to expand into the interstellar universe. Anyway, even if we expand to a larger territory now, we do not have enough population to consolidate and consolidate for development. It would be better to turn the existing land into a piece of metal. Chin Bin then spoke slowly and put forward his own opinions. His opinion is quietly contrary to the plan formulated by the upper echelons of the Empire. Now the Empire is constantly eager to expand externally because the Empire has now tasted the benefits of external expansion, with each galaxy and life planet being continuously included in the Empire. Embracing it, the Empire has derived endless benefits from top to bottom. The same was true for Li Fu. So when he heard about the technology that could speed up the ocean currents through time and space, he hurried over because Li Fu was also longing for continuous external expansion in his heart, and the hearts of everyone in the Empire were restless. Now Chin Bin's words were like a bucket of cold water poured on Li Fu's head. They instantly extinguished Li Fu's restless heart. He kept thinking carefully about the meaning of Chin Bin's words and the future of the Empire. The burden on his shoulders is no longer a family or a company, but the entire Empire and the future of the entire Yan Wang nation. Therefore, when Li Fu thinks about problems, he always tries to take a long-term view and think more. Chin Bin was not opposed to external expansion. Continuous external expansion was an unchanging strategy that the Empire had formulated since the founding of the country. The meaning behind his words was actually simple. Sharpening the sword will keep chopping wood. The Empire is not in a hurry to expand externally. Anyway, the current territory is enough. So it is better to practice your internal skills at home. Wait until the internal skills are completed. And then go out to explore. And naturally you will get twice the result with half the effort. Without the warp drive, when we encounter more powerful civilizations, we would have to fight them one by one. That would be too costly. But with the warp drive, it's different. We can choose any point in a galaxy to enter. And it's easy. You can capture it. It's still too impatient. I should reflect on it carefully. After thinking about everything, Li Fu let out a long sigh and admired Chen Bin even more. I can wake up alone when everyone is drunk and look at everything now with a calm eye. I can often see things and things that others can't see. Question. Thank you, Lao Chen. I was too impatient, and I almost made the Empire's future situation more embarrassing. Brother Fu, let's not say thank you to each other. We have been brothers for many years. Besides, 
This is also my humble opinion. As for the specifics, it is actually best to let the Imperial Think Tank conduct a detailed argument. Chunbin smiled modestly. He is the kind of person who doesn't talk much. But every sentence is to the point. He is also very humble. Just the opposite of you, Liang. No. Your suggestion will save the lives of countless Imperial soldiers. If we blindly expand externally and take on enemies with powerful civilizations, but also have a crushing advantage, our empire will continue to bleed in the future. And there is no peace all the time. And there is no way to calm down and develop in peace. Under a vicious cycle, our empire may be able to dominate the entire Orion arm and the entire Milky Way in the future. But we don't know how long it will take. How can we look forward to the broader starry sky in the future? Li Fu shook his head solemnly. Thinking of this, he felt that Chen Bin's words were really timely. Now the empire is only in contact with the Kalan Empire. And it has also beaten the Kalan Empire sorely. So at least it can be done in a few decades. Peaceful. If you continue to expand and encounter other civilizations, the empire may not be able to develop quietly by then. Someone may invade you today. And you may invade other civilizations tomorrow. In short, it should basically be there is a lot of development in the back and forth. And the speed is obviously not going to be any faster. Our empire needs a century-old plan for science and technology. We will use a hundred years to consolidate the empire's existing territory and everything, and strive to improve all aspects of science and technology. Finally, we will accumulate accumulated experience, develop a warp engine, and lay the foundation for dominating the entire galaxy in the future. In Li Fu's mind, a huge and grand plan was still gradually taking shape. A hundred years? Well, considering the rate of development of our empire, it's almost enough. After hearing this, Chenbin pondered for a while, and then nodded. The Empire's technological development is very fast. 100 years of quietly developing technology is enough to bring about earth-shaking changes. Soon, Li Fu returned to Yin Wang Star and held the highest level meeting in the name of the Emperor. At the meeting, Li Fu proposed that the Empire should stop its expansion first, consolidate everything existing, and most importantly, propose the Century of Empire. Science and Technology Plan the Centennial Science and Technology Plan clearly states that in the next 100 years, the Empire will be at ease and calm down, working hard to develop science and technology in an all-round way, making great progress in all aspects of science and technology, and laying the foundation for the creation of an epic-making warp engine. At the same time, in terms of external strategy, they pursue a low profile and try not to attract the attention of other civilizations in the Orion Spiral Arm and Sub-Spiral Arm especially not to attract the attention of powerful civilizations and downplay the attention of the Kalan Empire to the Empire, in layman's terms. In short, it means developing in a low-key manner, without equipment, without drawing hatred, and it is best to let all civilizations forget the existence of the Empire. Li Fu's pointless opinions must have set off a huge wave. He had obviously formulated a strategy for external expansion. Not long ago, he said that a small Orion spiral arm would be replaced by the Kalaf Empire. In the blink of an eye. Then he immediately said that he would stop expansion and turn around and keep a low profile in the jungle. This change is really too huge. So at the beginning, there was a lot of opposition among the senior officials of the Empire. However, after Li Fu and Chinbin explained the powerful relationship between them, the senior officials of the Empire slowly began to agree and finally passed the century-old technology proposed by Li Fu plan. Chapter 346. 22nd century. On December 30th of the lunar calendar in 2099. This time is calculated according to the time of China on this side of the earth. Yin Wang Square in the middle of Chang'an City, the capital of the empire, Xing'an Wangxing, was already crowded with millions of people. The most sacred and solemn place to welcome the arrival of the new century together. Li Fu and Wang Yin were among them. Like countless young lovers, Wang Yin was nestled in Li Fu's arms looking towards the center of the square, listening to the countless people around him shouting the countdown. Five, three, one. As the countdown ended, the fireworks that had been prepared began to bloom in the dark night sky. The new century had arrived, and countless people cheered and shouted. In the blink of an eye, we are already over 100 years old. Old man, Wang Yun gave Li Fu a gentle kiss. Li Fu had always been very busy and rarely had time to be alone with him. However, this time, no one knew what kind of medicine Li Fu had taken. And he actually pulled Wang Yin together. Individuals ran out alone and came to Yin Wang Square 
to celebrate the arrival of the new century with millions of people. You must know that the two of them are now full of children and grandchildren. They gave birth to eight children at the beginning. In the past 100 years, they have blossomed and spread. Now Lao Li's family is also prosperous. During this new year, he must be with his family. Where is the chance to live a world of two people? Although they say they are old men, Li Fu and Wang Yin look no different from when they were at Hua Xiaoyan Wang University. They are still very young, just like countless young lovers around them, so that no one around them noticed that the empire the emperor was actually with him. Let's go back. Old woman, the children are probably waiting impatiently. Li Fu also said with a smile on his face that the empire opened up Yuanli cultivation. Even if there is no achievement in cultivation, it can still prolong life. Once the cultivation is successful, eternal youth is not a myth. Therefore, in the empire, a person who looks very young, it is very likely that he is also an old monster who has lived for hundreds of years. Returning to the imperial palace, the entire palace was bustling with activity. Members of the imperial royal family, who were usually stationed in various star systems and planets in the empire, had all returned to the imperial palace at this time. They must go home during the new year. This is what Li Fu has always emphasized. According to the rules, except for special circumstances, such as Li Wandu, who has a national mission and is fighting abroad, he must go home to get together during the new year. Li Fu's father and mother had white hair at this time and even lost all their teeth. Although they had always practiced Yuan power, they were already very old when they practiced it, and the effect was weak. They could only pray for longevity and longevity. Coupled with reasonable conditioning, I have survived until now. But it is almost the time when the oil is exhausted. At this time, the two old people, supported by their grandsons Li Wanzo and Li Wansheng, were smiling and looking at the lively and playful children. Being able to live to see everything now can be said to have no regrets in this life. Dad! Mom! Li Fu's younger brother Li Xing's family has also come over. They are also a very large family. A group of little kids immediately got into a fight. The whole palace was filled with the sound of their play and slapstick, completely lacking the majesty of the past. Li Fu tacitly agreed on this point. In the past, it was an imperial palace. But on New Year's Eve, this place is home. Since it is home, it should be played by the children. It's almost time for the reunion dinner. Where did your brother and sister-in-law go? Li Fu's father looked at the time and asked Li Xing. Grandpa, my parents went to Yin Wang Square to welcome the new year. Li Wanzhou said helplessly with a smile. Although the time is that time, it is just the right time to have dinner on the Yin Wang Star. The New Year's Eve is different every year. Some New Year's Eve is during the day. Sometimes it is in winter. And sometimes it is during the day. It was in the summer. And the revolution and autobiography of the Yin Wang Star were different from those of the Earth. So this situation would also occur. This year, it was better. It was at night. Call them back. It's true. The whole family is waiting for the two of them. Do you still want to show off as an emperor when you go home? Li Fu's father said angrily. I'm back. At this moment, Li Fu took Wang Yun's hand and walked in. Immediately, more than a dozen little kids rushed up. Each of them opened their little eyes and stretched out their hands. Hug! Hug! Li Fu and Wang Yun couldn't hold them in their arms. They could only touch them this way and kiss them that way. They were all dear to their hearts. Soon, as Li Fu and Wang Yun came back, the reunion dinner officially began to be put on the table. There were too many people in the family, and dozens of tables were set up. According to the rules, the reunion dinner was cooked by my own family. In the past, it was Wang Yun, then Li Wanzo, Li Wansheng. The wives of the third generation will be the wives of the grandchildren in the future. And this is passed down from generation to generation. The New Year's Eve in the palace is destined to be spent in joy and laughter like countless families in the empire. Early the next morning, Li Fu woke up from his bed early, looking at the beautiful woman beside him. Li Fu also moved lighter when he got up, for fear of disturbing Wang Yun's sweet dream. Coming to his office, Li Fu gently opened the empire's territory and looked at it carefully. It has been nearly 20 years since the decision was made to stop the expansion of the empire and first consolidate the existing territory. In the past 20 years, the territory of the empire has not changed at all. Without external expansion, even a galaxy is still the same. The original 30 plus galaxies. However, with the large scale promotion of space time ocean current sails, the time required for communication between various star systems in the empire is getting shorter and shorter. 
Now it only takes about five months to travel from the important Yin Wang star in the empire to the temple star system at the edge of the empire. Time is enough. The empire has not expanded externally. But the interstellar colonization bill has become increasingly difficult to implement. Li Fu looked at the territory of the empire and thought about everything in the empire now. The core of the Interstellar Colonization Act is that as long as you immigrate to the new territory of the Empire, you can obtain 100 square kilometers of permanent private land. In the past, the Empire had a small population, many galaxies, and the extremely rapid expansion obviously had no problems. But once the Empire stopped expanding for 20 years, problems began to emerge. The Empire now has no new planets to support the implementation of the Interstellar Colonization Act, and the population in each galaxy has begun to flourish. The long-standing compulsory birth policy, coupled with the imperial government's tireless efforts to instill in the imperial people the idea of having more children and more blessings, the promotion of Yuanli practice, etc., the physical quality of the imperial citizens has been greatly improved, and the fertility rate has been it was very high, and the mortality rate was very low. So the empire's population also experienced a big explosion within 20 years, from a population of only about 500 million at the beginning. In just 20 years, it has exceeded 2 billion in the 22nd century, a direct increase of four times. Of course, the population of 2 billion is still very small compared with the vast territory of the empire. Even it can be said that one living planet is enough. The most direct problem caused by the population explosion is that the empire's interstellar colonization bill is difficult to maintain because more and more people choose to immigrate. But the number of living planets owned by the empire has not increased. So naturally there is too much food for the people. People who chose to immigrate decades ago are now making a lot of money. So the public sentiment in the empire is very high now about immigration. Who doesn't want to immigrate to a new galaxy and exchange for a permanent private land for their descendants? The Kallan Empire has been very smart over the years. It has been doing business with the empire silently and has not leaked any information about the empire. It has made them a lot of money. But it has also integrated my wishes. On the other hand... The Earth Federation has never stopped its external expansion and has now occupied several galaxies. However, it seems that the conflicts within the Earth Federation are getting deeper and deeper. As I expected, there is no common cultural basis. Even if they are barely put together, they will eventually drift apart. Li Fu looked at the galaxies around the Empire. The territories of the Earth Federation and the Karen Empire were also marked. There was nothing to worry about on the Karen Empire side. The battle in the Boiled Galaxy was completely scary. The Karen Empire. If the Empire doesn't trouble them now, everything will be fine for them. On the Earth Federation side, China has always been in a dominant position. But this position is now difficult to maintain. The Empire continues to draw blood from China, causing China to lose countless talents. So its strength is getting weaker and weaker in comparison. Weak. The other is the population. Even though the Chinese have a forced birth policy, the population growth is still very slow. On the one hand, the pressure of life is high, and on the other hand, the empire continues to draw blood. In addition, other people in the Earth Federation are particularly fertile. The entire in the Earth Federation. The proportion of China's population has been continuously declining. Therefore, the Earth Federation is increasingly dissatisfied with China's control over the position of President of the Earth Federation. In the New Galaxy, the separatist forces are becoming stronger and stronger. And several of them have already shown their signs. One is the forces led by powerful Western countries, such as the United States, Britain, France, and Germany. They are extremely powerful and ambitious. They dared to succumb to China in the first place. On the one hand, they were not as powerful as others. And also because they wanted to be in the interstellar world. China is expanding and is now the most important separatist force. Another powerful separatist force is Japan. The Japanese are ambitious and very powerful. They have always been very eager for the vast land. They have started secretly planning to monopolize a galaxy a long time ago. There are also people like the Black Alliance, the Green Alliance, the Indian Elephant, etc. These people are restless and do not have much say. They also want to separate. It can be said that although the current Earth Federation is still unified on the surface, it is internally it has already been torn apart. Chapter 347 Earth Federation Splits Just as the Empire is celebrating the arrival of the new century, the Earth Federation is still experiencing undercurrents. The Beichuan Galaxy is more than 20 light years away from the solar system. It is not connected to the solar system by space-time ocean currents. 
It needs to transit through the Canis Minor Galaxy to resist Beach One. Galaxy. Speaking of the Kitagawa Galaxy, we have to talk about the person who occupied the Kitagawa Galaxy. Kitagawa Jiro. Just by listening to the name, you will know that this is a Japanese name. As the Commander-in-Chief of the Earth Federation's army, Kitagawa Jiro led the army to defeat easily. He defeated the natives of the Beich One Galaxy and successfully added another galaxy to the Earth Federation. So the name of the entire galaxy was changed to the Beich One Galaxy. Over the years, the Earth Federation has been working tirelessly to expand externally, and it has also continued to immigrate. In the Beich One Galaxy, the number of immigrants from the Earth Federation has reached more than 300 million people. The largest number of them is from Japan, which is more than half of the population. The population is Japanese. Phenomenons like this are not uncommon in other galaxies in the Earth Federation. Such manifestations will appear in many galaxies. For example, the Beich Wan Galaxy has the most immigrants from Japan, while the Victoria and Columbus galaxies are dominated by immigrants from Western countries. The Aberdeen Galaxy is dominated by immigrants from the Middle East and Africa. On the other hand, on the Chinese side, because the empire has been drawing blood from China and has an immigration policy. If people on the Chinese side choose to immigrate, they will generally choose to immigrate to the empire. In the new galaxy of the Earth Federation, the number of Chinese people and the proportion has always been very small. There is no doubt that the current situation is formed, which has laid the foundation for the division of various forces. The upper levels of the Earth Federation are also very aware of this. But this is also the inference and development of many countries within the Earth Federation. Their reason is very simple. They must respect human rights. It is the people's right to choose where to immigrate. The Federation cannot interfere in this. There is no doubt that the current situation has slowly formed. In a certain galaxy, people from the original Earth people from a certain country make up the majority. On the Kitagawa star in the Kitagawa galaxy, in a sea of beautiful mountains and clear waters, with cherry blossoms in full bloom, several middle-aged and elderly men in kimonos were drinking tea and discussing something in secret. People around them were on high alert. Kitagawa Kuen. You are very critical to whether we can succeed this time. We must firmly control the Kitagawa fleet by then. Otherwise, our entire Yamato nation will be in danger. Junichiro Yagyu, who has gray hair but a ruddy complexion and twinkling eyes, seemed very excited at the thought of the upcoming event. Although he was already very old, the emotions in his heart were still revealed. Don't worry. Most of the soldiers in the Beichuan fleet are our Yamato warriors. They have firmly controlled various key positions. As soon as the time comes, the entire Beich Wan fleet can immediately become the fleet of our empire. Kitagawa Jiro, Earth Federation Admiral, Supreme Commander of the Kitagawa fleet. His eyes are like lightning. His sword eyebrows are calm and powerful. And he remains upright even when he is kneeling. That's good. In addition, on Beich Wan Star, once we declare independence, we will definitely encounter opposition from people other than our own race. So this aspect should be prepared in advance. I'll leave this matter to Tamir Kuen. Junichiro Yagyu turned his head and said to another person. This person's black hair was neatly combed, and there was a faint smile on his face. Shotaro Higashimura, governor of Kitagawa, in the Earth Federation that respects public opinion. A star the governor of the planet is elected by the people on the planet. The majority of Beichuan planet is Japanese. So naturally it has always been controlled by the Japanese. Don't worry. Our secretly trained troops can suppress all riots as soon as possible. Shotaro Higashimura also nodded solemnly and said, Well, how long will it take for His Majesty the Emperor to arrive at our Beichuan planet? Junichiro Yagyu nodded with satisfaction and then asked, According to the time, we should be able to reach the Beichuan galaxy in about one month. This time we are taking the most advanced spaceship from the Yen Wang Empire. There is no need to worry about safety and the speed is very fast. Shotaro Higashimura is also responsible for handling the Emperor. This time the Emperor also came to the Kitagawa galaxy secretly. Although the Emperor has no real power, he is the spiritual symbol of Japan. Since he plans to become independent in the Kitagawa galaxy in the future, he will naturally transfer here secretly. Everything is ready, and all we need is the east wind. As soon as the western camp declares independence, our side will immediately declare independence. We finally have a planet and galaxy that directly belongs to our Yamato nation. Junichiro Yagyu had a smile on his face. Everything was ready. And now he was waiting for the opportunity. Yagyu-kun, there is something I don't know how to do. Could you please give me some instructions? 
Kitagawa Jiro seemed hesitant to speak. But after a look of determination flashed across his face, he slowly spoke. Please say. Seeing the serious look on Kitagawa Jiro's face, Judichiro Yagyu quickly motioned for him to continue. Do we need to consider entering the Yen Wang Empire? The Yen Wang Empire is very powerful. It can easily defeat us by sending out a fleet. If China asks for help from the Earth Federation by then, our situation will be dire. Kitagawa Jiro expressed his worries. You can rest assured about this. Li Fu went out alone because he was discussing China's joining the Earth Federation. It is absolutely impossible for him to send troops to help the Earth Federation. In addition, the Yen Wang Empire has been implementing a policy of recuperation and recuperation over the years. They will not go to war for the Earth Federation easily, not to mention that they are unknown. Judichiro Yagyu thought carefully in his mind, and then shook his head affirmatively. The Yen Wang Empire was his key target, and he had been trying hard to send spies into it, but he had never succeeded. So when he mentioned the Yen Wang Empire, he also became nervous and his face became serious. But you also reminded me that in the Beichuan Galaxy, it is best for all Chinese people not to move. Those who can avoid killing should not be killed. If too many are killed, it will trigger revenge from the Yen Wang Empire. Judichiro Yagyu thought for a moment and then added that if he raises his troops to go out independently, there will definitely be bloodshed. After all, although the Japanese make up a small number in the Kitagawa Galaxy, there are still hundreds of millions of people from other countries. Once a riot breaks out, there will definitely be bloodshed by then. Um, Everyone else nodded when they heard this. They were very aware of the powerful strength of the Yen Wang Empire. Li Fu was also famous for protecting his shortcomings. Once he got into trouble, he would be in trouble. At this time, he naturally wanted to cause as little trouble as possible. Wonderful. Time is passing quietly. And undercurrents are surging in various galaxies in the regional federation. Not only in the Beichuan Galaxy, but also in the Victoria Galaxy and the Columbus Galaxy. Forces led by Western countries are also secretly planning for independence. Once someone takes the lead, the entire Earth Federation will fall apart in the blink of an eye. In the Imperial Capital of China on Earth in the Solar System, where the headquarters of the Earth Federation is located, the new president of the Earth Federation, Wang Yuan, has white hair and is reviewing documents all the time. The president of the Earth Federation seems to have a prestigious position, but only after he actually sat down did he understand what was going on. The ups and downs. Well, with a sigh, Wang Yuan threw away the pen in his hand, stood up, opened the curtains, and looked outside. He was really bored in his heart, and there were too many different things. Why are workers in a certain industry on this planet going on strike? Demanding increased wages, lower working hours, more rest time, etc. Such trivial matters require a personal guarantee from him, the president, before they can resume work. For the planet, the governor paid no attention to anything. Also, on a certain planet, people from two religions fought with each other again, resulting in heavy casualties. They also said that the federal president had to go over to mediate. As a result, all walks of life on the planet were completely paralyzed. There are too many trivial things like this, but they are not things that really bother him. The separatist forces in the Earth Federation are what worries him the most. Since the Zhao Dongya era, they have been working hard to eliminate the barriers within the Earth Federation, hoping to truly form a whole. But all measures have failed. We are obviously in the same city, but this city has to be divided into many districts, such as the Black District, the Chinese District, the Western European District, etc. They don't dare to enter each other's area. If you are not careful, you may end up talking. Bloody conflicts have been triggered by racial and religious discrimination. It's not good. The Victoria Galaxy and Columbus Galaxy announced their separation from the Federation and officially became independent. Just when Wang Yuan was extremely troubled, a rushing sound came over, accompanied by the sound of running. This was the voice of Secretary Wang Yuan, who seemed very anxious. What? The Victoria and Columbus Galaxies have declared independence? Wang Yuan was stunned for a moment. He didn't expect it to happen so quickly. Although there were many conflicts within the Earth Federation, and signs of division had already appeared. He felt that it could still be saved. But, just now, the Victoria Galaxy and the Columbus Galaxy officially declared their independence. And the fleets of these two systems are also controlled by independent forces. What should we do? Wang Yuan's secretary was panting and out of breath, with a very anxious look on his face. Beichuan Galaxy declares independence. 
Phage 1 Galaxy declares independence. The Canis Minor Galaxy declares its independence. However, before Wang Yuan could take any countermeasures, new news came. The Earth Federation is finished. Wang Yuan felt dizzy for a while. Chapter 348. Too late to regret. Brother Fu. Something big happened here in the Earth Federation. Li Fu's secretary Ding Xian looked anxious as she held the latest news sent back from the Empire's embassy in the Earth Federation. What happened? When Li Fu heard this, he immediately frowned and asked. The Earth Federation's Victoria Galaxy, Columbus Galaxy, Beach One Galaxy, Aberdeen Galaxy, and Canis Minor Galaxy have all declared independence from the Earth Federation. Ding Xian handed the document to Li Fu and quickly stated the main things. There will really be a day of division. History will not deceive people. When Li Fu heard this, he raised his eyebrows, took the document, and began to read it quickly. At the speed of Li Fu, he had read it all in a few seconds. When the Earth Federation was established, I saw that they would be where they are today. Old Tang. Old Tang. Seeing the current situation, I wonder if your coffin boards will be unable to hold it down. Li Fu smiled slightly. A few decades ago, Li Fu saw the crisis and rifts within the Earth Federation. Without a common cultural basis, reluctant unification would only lead to endless conflicts within the Earth Federation. The quarrels and serious imbalances in development between the various internal countries are doomed to split in the future. Tang Yunshan's wishful thinking that the internal differences and contradictions were temporary, and he sacrificed China's interests to promote the unification of the Earth Federation. Now it seems really ridiculous. He was smart all his life and confused for a while. Convene the cabinet government to discuss the response policies. Such a major change has occurred in the Earth Federation. Our compatriots may need our help by then. Li Fu pondered for a while and finally decided that he should help. Various galaxies in the Earth Federation have declared independence. There will definitely be conflicts among students studying abroad. At that time, the descendants of Yen and Huang in the Earth Federation may suffer. Li Fu naturally. One cannot sit idly by. Soon, Imperial Cabinet Prime Minister Zhong Yun and many cabinet ministers were all present in the conference room in the Imperial Palace. Some who could not come in person also participated in the meeting through the virtual world. Zhong Yun was the second prime minister of the cabinet. Fang Zheng had retired more than 10 years ago because of his old age and increasingly poor health. Zhong Yun, who originally served as the finance minister of the imperial cabinet, took over the position of prime minister. However, although Zhong Yun practiced Yuanli, he was already very old when he practiced. Almost the same as Fang Zheng. And he probably wouldn't be able to work for long. I think everyone should already understand the situation on the Earth Federation side. What needs to be discussed next is what should our empire do? What should we do? Of course we are just standing by and watching. Whether the Earth Federation is dead or alive has nothing to do with our empire. Yu Lian always had a smile on his face. He was obviously very happy to see the current situation of the Earth Federation. He said in a matter-of-fact tone, Whether the Earth Federation is dead or alive has nothing to do with our empire. And we don't need to pay too much attention to it. However, if the Earth Federation splits... There will definitely be bloody conflicts. I think we still need to help. Bring our compatriots in the Earth Federation. Chen Bin understands Li Fu best. Knowing that Li Fu doesn't care much about the life and death of the Earth Federation. But he attaches great importance to the compatriots of the Yin and Huang descendants in the Earth Federation. There are still more than a billion descendants of the Yin and Huang descendants in the Earth Federation. I think what Chen Bin said makes sense. We don't care about the life and death of other people in the Earth Federation. But the compatriots of the Yen Wang descendants cannot ignore death. I guess Wang Yuan has lost control of the army now. In the Earth Federation, the proportion of China's population has been getting smaller and smaller. And now the armies in various galaxies have rebelled. And the armies in the solar system don't know whether they can control it. So we must send troops. The white-haired Zhong Yun has a ruddy complexion and a good complexion. He was able to rise from a small financial officer to the prime minister of the empire. His life is considered to be full of legend. His voice is still loud and clear. And he also expresses his support. I also support sending troops. No matter what. We are all descendants of the Yellow Emperor. And we cannot watch our compatriots being killed. I have no opinion. Others also nodded. For the Empire. The reason for sending troops to the Earth Federation is to protect its compatriots. As for the sovereignty of the Earth Federation. It is naturally not a matter for the Empire to consider. Order Luo Xiaoyao to lead the Imperial Royal Corps to depart from the Centaur Galaxy to the Solar System. 
and order Lu Shuling's Imperial Guard Corps to depart from the Aquila Galaxy to the Solar System. If they have not done anything extreme to us descendants of Yen and Huang, we do not need to interfere with them. But if someone takes the opportunity to massacre us descendants of Yen and Huang, tell Luo Xiaoyao and Lu Shuling to beat me. Beat them hard. And kill the chickens to show the monkeys. Anyone who offends my strong men will be punished no matter how far away they are. Seeing that everyone was unanimous, Li Fu began to issue orders. The mobilization of the Imperial Army was always relatively strict, and it required the consent of both Li Fu and the Imperial Cabinet before it could be mobilized. Brother Fu, Zhao Dongye requests to speak to you. Li Fu's order had just been issued when Ding Xian hurried over and said, Take it over. Li Fu nodded. Among the four people who were in his dormitory when he was in college, only Li Fu and Zhao Dongye are alive now. Qian Jin and Wang Wanli left more than ten years ago. Soon, the figure of Zhao Dongye appeared in the virtual call in the conference room. Zhao Dongye, who has no Yuanli practice, is able to live until now because he was once the president of the Earth Federation and had a dedicated person in charge of taking care of him. In addition, Zhao Dongye himself is also people who exercise actively are always in good health. However, no matter how well maintained he is, he is over 100 years old. His hair has fallen out. His face is wrinkled and he is lying on the bed. He is no longer the handsome figure he once was. You are still exactly the same as before. Without any change. Seeing each other again through quantum communication across the distant void. Zhao Dongye couldn't help but let out a long sigh. Dongye, are you feeling well? Li Fu didn't know what to say for a moment. He had fewer and fewer old friends in the Earth Federation. And the only one he could talk to was Zhao Dongye. It's not bad. I can still live for a few years. Zhao Dongye smiled optimistically showing his toothless mouth. I believe you should know why I came to you. Something big happened in the Federation. We have lost control of the situation. I hope you can help us. Zhao Dongye didn't talk nonsense. He was struggling to speak now. Originally, it had nothing to do with him. He was about to be buried. However, Wang Yuan found Zhao Dongye and hoped that Zhao Dongye could personally tell Li Fu asked for help. But there was no other way. Zhao Dongye had no choice but to find Li Fu shamelessly. If I had known today, why bother in the beginning? The Earth Federation is destined to split sooner or later. Even if our empire sends troops to intervene now, the final outcome will be the same. Li Fu smiled and shook his head. I know. In fact, when I was in that position, I knew very well that every federal meeting could not discuss anything at all. It was always noisy and splitting was expected. Even when I used iron-blooded methods have suppressed many separatist forces but they are just a way to stop the boiling water. To Li Fu's surprise, Zhao Dongye let out a long sigh and expressed the deep thoughts hidden in his heart. Even he, a former federal president, felt this way. It is conceivable that how deep are the rifts within the Earth Federation. This time I just hope that you can look out for the sake of our more than one billion compatriots and come over to help. I am not asking you to help quell the chaos, but to help protect the Chinese scattered in various galaxies and planets. We sacrifice too much. Well, Zhao Dongye sighed again, expressing the helplessness in his heart. We helped with this. Li Fu solemnly nodded and agreed. In fact, Zhao Dongye didn't need to say that Li Fu himself had decided to send troops to protect the descendants of the Yin and Huang people. As for how the Earth Federation will go in the future, this is really not what Li Fu cares about. Thanks. Thanks. After receiving Li Fu's affirmative answer, Zhao Dongye started to move excitedly and someone nearby quickly helped to help him up. You're welcome. This is what I should do. Blood is thicker than water. After all, we are all descendants of Yen and Huang. Li Fu smiled and shook his head, looking at Zhao Dongye. He also felt a sense of emotion in his heart. Time is ruthless. If it weren't for his Yuanli cultivation, he would be almost the same as Zhao Dongye now. Or like Qian Jin, he would have already turned into a human being. Piles of lust. Smoke and clouds dissipate. Alas, Li Fu, you are right. You must strengthen the weak branches at all times. Tang Yun Shan was too wishful thinking at the beginning. The situation between the various countries on the earth and the earth was too complicated. They were reluctantly unified together. In the end, it was too it will still be divided. If we had not chosen to unify the earth and establish the earth federation, maybe everything would be different now. Maybe the entire starry sky belongs to us. The descendants of the Yen Wang people. Why is this so? Zhao Dongye became a bit nagging. 
Many things he had never said to anyone before were said in front of Li Fu. When he said it, he now regretted it very much. He regretted the establishment of the Earth Federation. China can be said to have chosen he lost his sesame seeds and watermelons and gave up his great future for the so-called Earth Federation. Fortunately, Li Fu, you have already separated out early, created a starry sky outside, and opened up a new world for us descendants of Yen and Huang. Otherwise, you will die a hundred times and your sin will be unforgivable. The current policy of the empire is very good. We must stick to it. We must not let immigrants go because of the Virgin Mary plot. Otherwise, there will be endless hidden dangers. Chapter 349 Massacre in the Canis Minor Galaxy The Canis Minor Galaxy is a special existence among the many galaxies in the Earth Federation. Because most of the galaxies in the Earth Federation need to transit through the Canis Minor Galaxy. It is also the first galaxy occupied by the Earth Federation. Lambert Star in the inner circle of the Canis Minor Galaxy is a very beautiful and rich life planet which has attracted countless immigrants to migrate to the Canis Minor Galaxy. The largest number of them are immigrants from the Southeast Asian countries of the original Earth. There are also immigrants from the Earth. Africa. Earth. Among the Earth Federation. There are three regions with the largest population and the most fertile areas. One is people from Africa. One is people from Arabia. And the other is people from Southeast Asia. The proportion of the population from these three regions on the Earth to the population of the Earth Federation has been rising rapidly. So these people are also quite active in immigrating. Because the resources on the Earth are limited and the competition is high. It is important to immigrate to outer galaxies. On the contrary, I live more comfortably. The largest number of people who choose to immigrate here in the Canis Minor Galaxy are people from Southeast Asia and Africa. The proportion of both is as high as 40% and the rest are people from other regions. As a galaxy where immigrants from Southeast Asia and African descent make up the majority, there is no doubt that everything in the Canis Minor Galaxy is basically controlled by people from these two ethnic groups. The governor of Planet Lambert is controlled by these two ethnic groups in turn. The same is true for the commanders of the fleets of the Canis Minor Galaxy, held by people of descendants. As various galaxies in the Earth Federation have declared independence one after another, the Canis Minor Galaxy has also followed the trend and declared its independence from the Earth Federation. However, because on this planet, the people of African and Southeast Asian descent are basically the same. Each other also wants to compete for the dominance of this planet. The entire planet Lambert has fallen into chaos, with battles between two ethnic groups everywhere. In every city, people from the two ethnic groups are constantly fighting with weapons, trying to eliminate each other and monopolize the entire city. Lambert Star even in the space of the Canis Minor Galaxy. The fleet of the Canis Minor Galaxy is divided. The two ethnic groups control half of the force. They are fighting to the death in space. No one wants to give up this opportunity and give up the monopoly on lawn opportunities for Planet Bert. On Planet Lambert, in the cities, billowing black smoke continued to rise. There were explosions, machine gun fire, countless shouts, and countless painful groans everywhere. Kill! Kill! Kill all these niggas! Kill these Southeast Asian monkeys and take over Planet Lambert! In every city, the two ethnic groups, African Americans and Southeast Asian Americans, have their own huge gathering areas. At this time, in every street and corner of the city, people from the two ethnic groups are fighting with each other, and their eyes are already red. There are corpses everywhere and rivers of blood. Planet Lambert, like countless overseas planets in the Earth Federation, Citizens can legally hold guns. So there are a lot of guns. And there are also powerful weapons such as grenades, rocket launchers, explosive packs, etc. In addition, Planet Lambert has already completely out of control. The police all joined their respective ethnic camps and started killing crazily. Da-da! Da-da! Automated weapons are constantly ringing in every corner. As long as people of African descent see a store belonging to Southeast Asians, they will inevitably smash smash, and loot, and in the end, they will set a fire. The same is true for people of Southeast Asian descent. He doesn't hesitate to shoot anyone with dark skin. There was actually no enmity between the two parties when they were on Earth. But after immigrating to the Lambert Galaxy, the enmity between them slowly accumulated. The reason is very simple. They compete for resources and living space. In short, because the two ethnic groups have almost the same number of people, the competition between them is doomed from the beginning. Over the past few decades, 
the accumulated wealth between them, as the hatred completely broke out. And now they were fighting for the dominance of Planet Lambert. And they started ruthless killings. An area where African Americans gather. The entire area has been surrounded by people of Southeast Asian descent. There are gunshots everywhere. With bursts of shouts and earth-shattering explosions. The gap in this area is opened. In the hands of Southeast Asians with guns, like that rushed into it. Duh duh. The ruthless massacre began. And the unarmed women and children in the African American gathering area were not spared. There was no one to protect them. At this time, their eyes were red with blood. And they didn't care whether they were women or children. After a long time, the original African American gathering area with more than 200,000 people turned into a dead zone. Thick smoke rose everywhere. And raging fires began to burn everywhere. The victorious Southeast Asians began to rush excitedly to the next African American gathering area. Countless people were holding gold, silver, jewelry, and other valuable things that they had snatched from the homes of African Americans. The same scene also happened in another city. But this time it was the other way around. People of African descent were burning, killing and looting wantonly in the area where Southeast Asians gathered. After the intensive gunfire, there were sporadic bursts of gunfire. There were gunshots and the painful screams of women and children. After a long time, the streets in the entire area were filled with a thick smell of blood and the stench of burned corpses. In every city on Lambert's planet, the war between the two ethnic groups has been going on. And everything has been paralyzed. There are ruins everywhere. Countless buildings damaged by gunfire. And deaths from influenza on the streets. Bloody and uncollected corpses. Billowing smoke. Both sides have completely become red-eyed. As long as they see people who are not of their own ethnic group, they will start to slaughter them crazily. At this time, there is no such thing as justice, kindness, evil, etc. There are only Africans and Southeast Asians. The difference between them is that only by joining your own ethnic group can you better ensure that you can survive. And if you want to survive, you can only kill the other party. Yushan City, the largest city on planet Lambert, was named after Tang Yushan the first president of the Earth Federation. At this time, like other cities on the planet, there were continuous wars and thick smoke. In the center of the city, the Earth in the square, the more than 100-meter tall Tang Yunshan statue fell to the ground with an explosion. Countless African Americans cheered for another victory. In the wealthy area of Yunshan City, most of the people living in the wealthy area are people from advanced and developed regions such as China, Europe, America, and Japan in the original Earth Federation. This is because the people in these areas are highly educated and have good financial backgrounds. The Foundation is naturally the richest group of people in the Earth Federation. At this time, everyone in the wealthy area was terrified, fearing that people of African descent and Southeast Asian descent would attack the area. They were terrified and uneasy under such a big riot and massacre, especially without the control of the police and the army. Underneath, anything is possible. Duh duh. Mom, I'm so scared. Song Lan, who was only five years old, buried her head deeply in her mother's arms. When she heard the bursts of gunshots and cannons coming from outside, the mother and daughter couldn't help but hug each other. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Dad and many uncles are protecting us. Bad guys can't get in. Song Lan's mother, Lin Xiaoqing, was comforting her daughter while looking outside nervously from time to time. Her man, like other men in the wealthy area, had already taken up arms and built layers of protective circles outside to be on guard at all times. The crowd with red eyes attacked the rich area. Ta-ta! Tap-ta! The gunshots were getting closer and closer, and they were becoming more and more rapid, which made Lin Xiaoqing and her daughter feel extremely scared, as if a beast was approaching step by step. At this time, outside the wealthy area, dark crowds were pouring in. These groups of African Americans, African American people are lazy because they eat well. And most people don't like to read. So basically African Americans all are poor. The poor and the rich have been antagonistic since ancient times. In the decades of history of Lambert Star, there have been many times when the poor gathered in the rich areas to cause trouble. In the traditional concept of African Americans, if you have money, you should spend it together. So I have always been very hostile to the stingy behavior of these rich people in the rich areas. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Seeing the African Americans with red eyes getting closer and closer, the people in the wealthy area became extremely nervous. They built a defense line based on the original buildings. At this time, no matter they were from China, Europe or the United States, 
or where. All the rich have to choose to take up arms. Because everyone knows that once these people enter the rich area, everything will be robbed, including their own lives. This is not a gathering area for Southeast Asians. If you continue to move forward, we will not be polite. Following bursts of gunfire, people in the rich area gave the other side a warning first. They all knew that the number of African Americans was very large. The number of people in the rich area was not even a fraction of the other side. It would be best if they could scare the other side away. Of. Kill. Kill. Kill all these stingy people who are greedy for wealth. Some of them are gold. Silver. Jewelry. And some are beautiful women. As long as you kill them. They all belong to us. Obviously. Warnings have no effect. These people who have already been killed have been jealous of the rich area for a long time. Is there anything that can restrain them now? Warnings cannot be dismissed at all. As someone shouted somewhere. These African Americans suddenly forgot everything. At this time. Their minds were filled with the wealth and restless beauties in the rich areas. And they began to rush towards the rich areas crazily. Human Area. Chapter 350. Battle in the Rich Area. Duh duh. Duh duh. In the wealthy area of Yunshan City. Gunfire rang out from all directions. The fighting lasted from day to night. One side was already red-eyed and coveted the rich African Americans in the wealthy area. And the other side was trying to protect their own lives. Property. Wives and children who fight against the odds. Although the number of rich people is much smaller. These rich people are not simple. Because they are rich. They have countless weapons. Ammunition. Etc. in their homes. And even many rich people themselves he is in the arms business. And his villa is a huge arsenal. There are all kinds of weapons. Even heavy weapons. The rich are smart and know how to help each other and rely on favorable terrain. Many people have even received strict training in the army. Most of the rich are even for members of a shooting club. These conditions are far beyond those of poor African Americans. Although the number is much smaller, the rich people still hold on very tenaciously. They understand that once they are breached, everything will be over. So they fight to the death. Call out! Accompanied by bursts of sound similar to this. Rocket launchers continued to attack the areas densely populated by African Americans from the wealthy areas, causing a bloody storm. Duong! The unique sound of Bartley's anti-material sniper rifle also keeps ringing in the wealthy area. In every corner of the wealthy area, many descendants of European and American countries wear earmuffs and have sharp eyes, constantly harvesting enemies similar to bosses. Buzz! Overhead. Helicopters took off one after another, accompanied by rounds of rockets and fierce Thor artillery. The attacking African-American crowd instantly burst into rivers of blood. It can be said that the rich have moved out all their collections of weapons, ammunition, etc. Following the United States policy of legalizing the sale and ownership of guns. Guns are abundant in every colonial galaxy in the Earth Federation Sea. As a rich person, for the sake of their own worth and life, every household has prepared a huge arsenal. On the streets leading to the wealthy areas, corpses were strewn everywhere. Blood flowed into rivers, and bullet holes from guns and ammunition were everywhere. The carefully green vegetation on both sides of the road was also damaged, and many trees were damaged. The powerful vitality is interrupted. The vitality in the wealthy areas is too strong. If this continues, there is no solution. We must bring in heavier weapons. The people on the African side are not fools. They fought for a whole day. Not only did they fail to invade the rich area, they even suffered heavy casualties. Although they were extremely jealous, they also knew that they could not force themselves. Otherwise, no matter how many people they had, it would not be enough. It's so eye-catching. Who knows how many arms and ammunition there are in the villas of these rich people. The fighting continued on the second day, but they suffered the losses of the first day. On the second day, the people on the African side changed to a group attack intending to rely on elite soldiers to open the gap. But the rich area itself was very well protected. There are many kinds of high-tech equipment, such as cameras, thermal imaging detectors, 3D radars, etc. In addition, the rich are also prepared, and they are simply going to die. It was not until the third day that the African Americans finally began to show off their power. They obtained the heavy weapons of the army, and even the tanks came over, and began to attack the wealthy areas crazily. Call out! The fighting between the two sides was very fierce. The high standard thick roads were riddled with potholes by artillery SH. LS. Countless bullet holes. Bullet casings. Bullets. Corpses. Blood. 
etc. all told the world that life was very fragile. First, to the east of the wealthy district, with a loud noise, the defense line on the east side finally collapsed. Under the attack of powerful heavy weapons, there was no difference between reinforced concrete and tofu. Hold it! Otherwise we will be doomed! The blonde David held a battery sniper rifle in his hand. His handsome face became distorted. And he roared loudly as he looked at the excited crowd rushing over. Kill the first few tanks! Song Renhao was holding a machine gun in his hand. He saw the Bartley sniper rifle in David's hand and said loudly to him that the armor of the tank was too powerful. There were not many weapons that could pose a threat to the tank. And Bartley was one of them. One. Don't worry. Leave it to me. David nodded, crawled to the ground, and his breathing became calmer. With a huge back impact, the tank that was advancing at the front fell down in an instant. The power of the battery sniper rifle was so powerful that it could kill him with one shot. Killed one of the opponent's tanks. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Song Renhao also took advantage of the bunker and kept shooting outside. The barrel of the gun was red. He didn't feel any distress at all. He immediately changed his gun and continued to attack the people rushing towards him for free. Sooner or later it will end if this continues. And I don't know when the federal government can restore order. The fierce fighting lasted for another whole day. With a piece of bread and a bottle of water, Song Renhao lay down tiredly. The turmoil had been going on for a long time. The rich area had also been surrounded for several days. Now food was beginning to be in short supply. The most important thing is that we don't know how long we can persist, and where is our hope for the future? The next day, the battle started just after dawn, and the dew had not yet evaporated by the sun. The African Americans were increasingly losing patience. The battle between African Americans and Southeast Asian Americans continued, with both sides having about the same strength. No one can say that the other party will be solved in a short time. In cities and streets, everyone is eager to kill. Of course, there are also many people who are eager to rob. As long as they see something they like, they will just rob it, burn, kill, and loot everything in the world. The evils are constantly being performed. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! The gunshots in the wealthy area have become much less frequent. It is obvious that after several days of continuous fighting, the wealthy people have begun to save bullets and make long-term plans. Because no one knows how long the fighting will last. Boom! Boom! The attacks on the African side are becoming more and more fierce. Because more and more heavy weapons are mobilized. And the situation becomes very delicate every moment. Because from time to time, gaps are opened and then blocked again. In the void of the Canis Minor Galaxy, a huge fleet is advancing rapidly in the void. The front is a large space battleship. And the four Chinese characters, on with the great, seem to have infinite magic power. The void around the battleship, Tens of thousands of space fighter planes formed a powerful formation in the void. I don't know if we are too late. The situation here in the Canis Minor Galaxy is the most severe. African Americans and Southeast Asian Americans are about the same strength. They have been killing each other for a long time. I don't know how many compatriots there are survivors. There is nothing to worry about in other galaxies. The dominant ethnic group will quickly control the situation. When the time comes, as long as they open their mouths, Everything will be safe. Luo Xiaoyao, the commander of the Imperial Royal Legion, looked at the Lambert Star in the void in the distance. But he seemed very anxious in his heart. He arrived in the solar system from the Centaur Galaxy and successfully helped China put an end to the rebellion in the solar system. And then, he hurried to the Canis Minor Galaxy to rescue his compatriots. Report. A large-scale fierce battle was discovered in the void ahead. Requesting instructions. Kill them all. Luo Xiaoyao gave the order unceremoniously. The battle in space between Africans and Southeast Asians has never stopped. Both sides need to monopolize the entire Canis Minor Galaxy. So they must eliminate each other. Moreover, this space army is extremely important. An important force. Once the victory is decided between the armies in space, the battle can basically be declared over. With a powerful space force, even heavy losses on the ground can easily distort the situation. As Luo Xiaoyu's order was issued, the Empire space battleships and space fighter planes began to show off their power. Along with bursts of huge light rain pierced the void. The two sides who were originally fighting in a lively manner suffered heavy casualties in an instant. It was only at this time that the Empire's force was discovered. The huge fleet is flying towards me at high speed. Those who offend China will be punished no matter how far away they are. In the void, radio waves spreadly foos words over 
and over again. Only then did the two parties who were fooled realize that the truly terrifying opponent was coming, and they quickly fled for their lives in the void, not daring to fight against the Empire at all. The army fought against each other. It's just that Luo Xiaoyao deliberately wanted to kill the chicken to show the monkeys. So naturally, he would not let them go easily. On each space battleship, the powerful shipborne laser cannons flashed continuously, sending out fatal attacks one after another, knocking each space battleship apart. The space battleship exploded. There are even huge groups of space fighters whizzing through the void, weaving huge nets, constantly sweeping through the void, sweeping away all the space fighters of African and Southeast Asian descent. In the outer space of Planet Lambert, the Imperial Army took over everything. After destroying a large group of spacecraft, the spacecraft, whether of African or Southeast Asian origin, began to behave honestly and began to comply with the requirements of the Imperial Army, parked in the huge spaceports. At the same time, countless space fighters continued to take off from the huge space battleships, and then began to fly into Lambert's planet in groups, heading straight towards the cities on Lambert's planet where Chinese people gathered. Fly to the Chinese and wealthy areas. Duh duh. It's over. I can't stand it anymore. Their heavy weapons are too powerful. In the wealthy district of Yunshan City, Song Renhao began to despair. The wealthy district was almost in danger. There were ruins everywhere. The formerly prosperous wealthy district was now in a state of disgrace due to the war. The rich people began to feel desperate when they saw the crowd rushing up again. Chapter 351 Banana Man Can't Save from all directions in the wealthy areas of Yunshan City. Like sharks smelling the smell of blood, African Americans hold guns in their hands and rush towards the wealthy areas crazily. There are endless wealth inside. And there are extremely restless people. Beautiful women of all colors. After these days of attacks, the wealthy area is now almost at the end of its rope. The obstacles are almost clear. And the shots fired by the wealthy people to fight back have become much less frequent. Come on! Kill all these misers! Kill! Kill them all! The beauties inside are all ours! Countless people shouted and rushed towards the wealthy area. Whoever still has bullets, give me a magazine! Song Renhao said loudly to the people around him. All the bullets were fired. I'm out of bullets too! I only have one magazine left! Similar to Song Renhao. Although the rich had hidden a lot of arms and weapons in their villas, despite the continuous consumption these days, there was not much ammunition left at this time. These bastards! Even if they don't have bullets! I won't let them have an easy time! That's right! Fight them to the end! If we lose, we have nothing! The rich people still have a strong will to fight. They know very well that surrendering to these African Americans, who have already coveted everyone's wealth, will be more uncomfortable than dying. They would rather die in battle than surrender. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! The gunfire became more and more sparse. And the enemies had already rushed to a distance of 50 meters. Under the cover of the newly mobilized tanks and armored vehicles, they continued to attack the wealthy areas, and despair began to spread. Ha ha! If you want to get my wealth, there is no way! My dear! I'm sorry! I don't want to see you tainted by these dirty things! You take the first step, and I will come to accompany you right away! Bump! In the wealthy areas, there are desperate rich people who personally kill the daughter they love, burn down their mansions, and then shoot themselves to end their lives. These people cannot accept that everything they have worked hard for has come cheap to those African Americans. Daddy! Daddy! Song Renhao returned to his home with a gun. And his daughter immediately pounced on him. His eyes were filled with tears in an instant. Because he also planned to kill his wife and children. And then leave as a family. But looking at his lovely daughter. He couldn't let go. And the gun in his hand fell to the ground. He started to feel pain while holding his daughter. As the saying goes. A man won't shed tears easily. But at this moment, he felt deeply helpless. First, a loud noise came from outside, accompanied by strong vibrations on the ground, as if the house was about to be overturned by a powerful wave of air. Buzz! Buzz! Countless sounds came from the sky. This sound was different from the sound of guns. And Song Renhao suddenly woke up. Such a powerful bomb is definitely something that only the military can possess. How could there be sound coming from the sky? You guys stay safe at home, and I'll go out and take a look. Song Renhao picked up his gun and rushed out again. As soon as he went out, his eyes widened because in the sky, he saw spaceships and space fighter planes coming rapidly from the sky. At the same time, waves of light rain continued to fall, 
and bombs continued to fall from the sky, setting off waves of powerful air waves. Ha ha! The Federal Army has arrived! No! It's not the Federal Army! It's the Army of the Yin Wang Empire! Song Renhao began to laugh happily. He originally thought it was the Earth Federation's army. But after taking a closer look at the logos of these spaceships and space fighter planes, he realized that they were the flag of the Yin Huang Empire. Ha ha! I'm saved! I'm saved! Long live the Yin Huang Empire! Long live the Yin Huang Empire! Some people began to cheer continuously. After persisting for a long time, they finally saw hope. At this time, outside the wealthy area, the people of African descent were stunned. The attack from the sky was too powerful let alone these stragglers. Even the regular army of the Earth Federation was definitely no match for the Imperial Army. Powerful bombs were thrown into the crowd for free. And at the same time bursts of light rain fell from the sky. There was nothing that could resist it. Seeing the spaceships and space fighter planes that kept falling in the sky. Africa was lucky enough to survive. The descendants also started to run away with their heads in their hands. Not daring to attack the wealthy areas. We are the Royal Legion of the Yin Wang Empire. All Chinese are prepared. We will transport and protect you back to Earth. Spaceships and space fighter planes descended on the classes in the wealthy area. And the loudspeaker began to play over and over again. The language used was naturally Chinese. At the same time, on the square and lawn in the center of the wealthy area, spaceships began to park one after another. And groups of heavily armed imperial soldiers walked out in neat steps. Ha ha. Wife. We are saved. The Yin Wang Empire is here to save us. Song Renhao ran back to his villa excitedly and called out his wife and children. Real? Song Renhao's wife still didn't believe it and asked in disbelief. Of course. If you see the patterns on these spaceships, these are the flags of the Yin Wang Empire. The Yin Wang Empire has always been the most protective of its shortcomings. We are safe now. Hurry up and pack your things. Let's leave quickly. Song Renhao said loudly as he began to rummage through the boxes and boxes packing up some important things and taking them away. At this moment, this place that was once so warm and cozy became like A.H. L. that he wished he could leave as soon as possible. Soon, Song Renhao was holding a box in his hand, which contained some important things. Without any nostalgia, Song Renhao and his family began to walk towards the place where the spaceship was parked. At this time, in the areas where spaceships are parked, there are already huge crowds of people, not only Chinese, but other people are also running over with large and small bags. Everyone is vying to get on the Yan Wang Empire spaceship. It seems like the spring festival travel season in China in the past. Everyone was afraid of missing the train home. Now all the rich are afraid of missing the Yan Wang Empire spaceship. In their eyes, nowhere is safe now. And only the Yan Wang Empire spaceship is the safest. We only bring Chinese people. All non-Chinese people please stay back. A tall, handsome-looking imperial soldier with sharp eyebrows and starry eyes was holding a loudspeaker and shouting in English. At the same time, the imperial soldiers were also on high alert. Shit! Why don't you let us get on the spaceship? We also have the right to survive! Someone was dissatisfied and cursed. Song Renhao recognized the whole person at a glance. Copperfield was a very powerful man and had been a member of the Earth Federation before. However, at this time, he completely ignored his image and cursed very rudely. Because you are not Chinese. Our Yen Wang Empire is only responsible for Chinese people. The leading imperial soldier's eyes were as bright as lightning. And he glared over instantly. For a moment, those who saw his eyes felt as if they had fallen into a bottomless abyss. And their whole bodies trembled. I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. Song Renhao said loudly, while pushing through the crowded crowd, and kept walking towards the direction of the spaceship. What's your name? Where are you from? After finally reaching the front, the leading imperial soldier looked at Song Renhao and asked. A light flashed in his eyes and instantly disappeared into Song Renhao's eyes. Before he knew it, Song Renhao was fascinated. My name is Song Renhao, and my ancestral home is Hua Xia Mansion. Confirm your identity, and you can board the ship. Song Renhao felt confused for a while, and then before he could figure out anything, he was already allowed to board the ship. Without thinking too much, he hurriedly walked to the spaceship with his wife and daughter, looking at the flag of the Yin Wang Empire on the spaceship. He suddenly felt an incomparable sense of security. When he returned and looked at the envious eyes around him, a sense of pride arose in his heart. He had never felt that as a Chinese he had any rights. Nothing special. But I feel deeply proud at this moment. 
I am also of Chinese descent. I am also of Chinese descent. Seeing Song Renhao successfully boarded the spaceship, the people around him began to stir up. Chinese Americans were dragging their families onto the spaceship one after another. The faces of the Chinese Americans were filled with smiles, while the people of other ethnic groups around them were stunned one by one. Jealous. I am also of Chinese descent. I am also of Chinese descent. A man who looked exactly like a Chinese man said loudly in English, Why can't you speak Chinese? The leading imperial soldier asked sternly, My family has immigrated overseas for many years, and we no longer speak Chinese. But I am indeed of Chinese descent. So there is no mistake. The man was so anxious that he was sweating profusely. This kind of people are actually the so-called banana people. They have completely forgotten everything about the Chinese. Apart from having Chinese genes, they are actually no different from foreigners. Just wearing a Chinese skin. If you forget Chinese, you can't be considered Chinese. So get out of here. The leading imperial soldier kicked his eyes and immediately told him ought to get lost. There were many people who forgot their ancestors and the empire would not spend any energy on them. Shit. Hack. The man couldn't help but start cursing instantly. He became extremely angry and started to make a fuss. Get out. Otherwise I'll kill you. The leading imperial soldier pointed the laser gun in his hand. And the other party immediately stopped. Looking at the imperial soldier's eyes. He knew very well that if the trouble continued. The other party would definitely kill him without hesitation. Ah. Why? Why? I didn't learn Chinese in the first place. His whole body was filled with regret. When he was a child. His grandfather asked him to learn Chinese. Saying that this was a soul that the descendants of the Yin and Huang people could never throw away. But at that time, his father, mother, and he himself were dismissive of it. He didn't learn Chinese. By his father's generation, Chinese was completely lost. Chapter 352 Earth Federation splits up. Spaceships took off from various cities on Lambert's planet. In each spaceship, frightened Chinese people looked back at the cities on the ground. Smoke billowed and gunfire sounded. The battle between African Americans and Southeast Asian Americans is still not over. The strength of the two sides is almost the same. And there is no way a winner can be determined in a short time. It can be foreseen that in the long years to come, the two groups will continue to slaughter each other endlessly on this planet. There are more than 10 million Chinese on planet Lambert. And less than half of them have been rescued so far. But now it is difficult to find new Chinese. Luo Xiao looked at this beautiful planet in the void in front of him. Looking at it in space. Everything was very beautiful. He couldn't see all the evil behaviors that happened on the planet. But Luo Xiaoya knew that in this turmoil, I don't even know how many people died on this Lambert planet. The Chinese and wealthy areas in many cities were breached. And the most tragic scenes in the world were constantly being staged. Many places were not rescued by the Imperial Army. And the survival of millions of Chinese was minimal. Of course, the number of Chinese on the major colonial planets of the Earth Federation is very small. The deaths of other ethnic groups are really terrible. Some Africans or Southeast Asians have gained access to cities in the province. Except for their own ethnic groups. People of other ethnic groups were all slaughtered. In this time of turmoil and fighting, the number of people who died on the entire planet Lambert must be calculated in hundreds of millions. The two major ethnic groups are killing each other. Killing each other. And having no power to organize. There is no telling when the mass killing will stop. Perhaps the butcher's knife will be put down only when one party has completely slaughtered the other party. People of ethnic groups such as Chinese, European and American, etc. have undoubtedly become the targets of the attack. Whether they are African or Southeast Asian people, they will not worry about anything when their eyes are red. Continue search and rescue. And raise the cities where the Chinese areas have been breached to the ground. Snort. Thinking of the tragic conditions in the breached Chinese districts in each city, the anger in Luo Xuya's heart burned brightly. These people who killed red-eyed people did not even spare children. Vulnerable groups such as women and children became the greatest harm was caused by the videos sent back by the imperial soldiers, which clearly recorded the tragedy in this world. As Luo Xiaoyu's order was issued, electric snakes swirled on the battleship in space. Soon, red rays attacked the planet Lambert. This is a rail gun that relies on brutal and powerful impact. Arms. Maybe it doesn't have much effect in the space war. But it shouldn't be too easy and simple to deal with targets on the planet. Use the power of the main rail gun on the Hanmu Emperor to attack a few more waves and destroy it. A planet is possible. Now used to destroy cities. It feels like killing a chicken with a sledgehammer. 
the power has been reduced by many levels. It can destroy a city. But it will not cause a fatal blow to the living planet. In the city of Erica on Lambert's planet, the number of people of Southeast Asian descent is dominant in the city. So they succeeded in wiping out all the people of other ethnic groups in the city. And they are cheering for themselves at this time. Victory. Suddenly, someone looked at the sky. And a stream of red arrows fell rapidly from space. Before he could figure out what these things were, the whole city suddenly felt as if a magnitude 12 earthquake had occurred. Earth dragon turning over. In an instant, all the powerful energy from the railgun was released. The powerful energy formed a huge and terrifying shock wave, and the houses were instantly overturned. The entire city seemed to be turned over completely by an invisible force, and everything became extremely silent. Scenes like this happened in cities on Lambert's planet. The Imperial Army broke out. As long as the Chinese district in the city was breached, the city would be buried with it. More than ten days later, the entire planet Lambert became dead and silent. The once prosperous cities all turned into ruins. All the killings also stopped. Those who were lucky enough to survive now watched as the cities turned into ruins. The city in the dead area suddenly seemed to understand something. As the Empire's two huge armies joined in the intervention, all forces in the Earth Federation soon began to calm down. And all forces soon sat together. In the virtual world, representatives of all the forces of the original Earth Federation appeared one by one. Earth Federation President Wang Yuan. Yin Wang Empire Royal Legion Commander Luo Xiaoyao and Yin Wang Empire Guards Legion Commander Lu Xuling were also present. Obviously for Wang, Yuan's side is supportive. Seeing Luo Xiaoyao and Lu Xuling, Junichiro Yagyu's face became uncertain. But he was very anxious in his heart. It was obvious that the Empire was supporting Wang Yuan. Once the Empire was determined to help Wang Yuan, all of them combined are no match for the two armies of the Empire. I've called everyone here today. I think everyone knows why. Since the split of our Earth Federation is inevitable, it's better for us to get together and disperse. As expected by everyone, Wang Yuan opened his mouth to discuss the separation of families, rather than asking everyone why they wanted to leave the Federation. This made everyone present secretly breathe a sigh of relief. Since they were discussing the separation of families, this meant that Wang Yuan we have already acquiesced to our current situation, which is exactly what we want. As for how to divide the families, it depends on how everyone bargains. The two families in the Yin Wang Empire come to take charge. There is no doubt that they are trying to get more family property for the Chinese side. Wang Yuan was also helpless. Things had reached the current situation. Even with the help of the Yin Wang Empire, they could still manage to get it together. However, this stubborn melon was not sweet and was destined to fall apart in the future. So it was better to take advantage of the situation. Now, let's just separate. Mr. President Gao Yi, I don't know how to divide the family. Junichiro Yagyu, like the others, had a smile on his face. Anyway, they had each occupied a galaxy and mastered a fleet. Naturally, it was impossible to spit out what they had eaten. It's very simple. The Earth and the solar system belong to us. China, as for other galaxies and planets, you can fight for them yourself. Wang Yuan waved his hand and directly declared that the Earth belonged to China. Other planets and galaxies did not matter. Anyway, the largest number of Chinese people was here on Earth. And the number in other galaxies was very small. No. Disagree. The Earth belongs to all of us. Unexpectedly. As soon as Wang Yuan's words came out. He was immediately unanimously opposed by others. The status of the solar system and the Earth is too special. This is the origin of mankind. No force wants to give up because they have their roots here. You. China. Have the smallest population and don't need a planet at all. What's more, this earth is the commonwealth of our mankind. It is absolutely impossible to give it to you. China, there is no room for negotiation on this point. Smith, the representative from the Victoria Galaxy, was pushed out by the European and American forces. The European and American forces were the most powerful in the Earth Federation. Not only did they occupy the Victoria Galaxy, but the Columbus Galaxy was also under their control. So when it comes to talking, he is very confident. Humph. If you want to divide it according to the population, it seems that you can't dominate two galaxies. At least one galaxy must be given up to Africans, Southeast Asians, South Asians, and Arabs. Wang Yuan is not polite. Although he has very little power in his hands now, he has the support of the two armies of the Yin Wang Empire. There is nothing to fear at this time. In any case, without negotiation between the Earth and the Solar System, 
We will definitely not give one of you to China. Smith still insists on his opinion. He holds most of the Earth Federation's army in his hands and is powerful. If that's the case, then I think it's better for us not to separate. The Federal Army will come to crush your rebellion. A cold light flashed in Wang Yuan's eyes. He couldn't be cowardly at this time. If he was cowardly at this time, it would be difficult to fight for benefits later. When Smith heard this, he narrowed his eyes, looked at Luo Xiaoyao and Lu Xiuling who had been silent, and then very wisely chose to keep silent. If the Empire's army really came to kill them, the Earth Federation would really be destroyed again. Unite. I think the solar system and the Earth will be left to China. We will divide them according to the galaxies and planets that we actually control. Let's get together and disperse. And don't let the quarrel lead to a big fight. Judichiro Yagyu came out to be the peacemaker with a smile on his face. Japan occupied the Kitagawa galaxy this time, which can be said to be a great victory. As for the little land on the earth, they don't care at all now. If they lose it, they will lose it. The plan that has been planned for many years has been realized. I have my own planet and galaxy. What is there to be dissatisfied about? Now I want to keep my fruits. Snort! Hearing Junichiro Yagi's words, Smith snorted very dissatisfied. But he did not dare to say anything more. Anyway, Smith has gained a lot here. Two galaxies and three living planets. As long as they can be saved. Also acceptable. Soon, under the mediation of the Empire, the member states of the Earth Federation officially declared their independence. And the Earth Federation was officially dissolved. The solar system and the Earth belonged to China. The Kitagawa galaxy belonged to Japan. The Victoria galaxy and the Columbus galaxy belonged to European and American countries. And the Canis Minor galaxy and Lambert Special Stars belonged to other countries. As for the people of other ethnic groups in each galaxy, they are responsible for taking them to their respective galaxies. The era of the Earth Federation has officially come to an end. Chapter 353 Spaceport in the Interstellar Era the Centauri Galaxy leads to the Kuiper Belt area in the direction of the solar system. Because of the connection of the space-time ocean currents, all spacecraft coming and going must pass here. In addition, for the safety of its capital galaxy, the Empire built a space-time ocean flow entrance here. A huge group of spaceports. This huge spaceport group is distributed around the entrance to the space-time ocean outflow. There are countless space fortresses surrounding the space-time ocean outflow entrance. Each space fortress is a powerful war weapon. As long as a foreign enemy invades here, it can attack the space-time ocean in a short time. Launch a powerful attack here at the ocean outflow entrance to completely block the space-time ocean outflow entrance, thereby ensuring the safety of the Empire's capital galaxy. In addition, in the surrounding spaceport groups, the Empire's most powerful army, the Imperial Royal Legion, is stationed. Space battleships patrol the surrounding void at all times guarding the security of the Empire's capital galaxy. Regarding the security of the capital galaxy, the Empire's attitude has always been to spare no expense. Not only the entrances and exits to the solar system, but also other entrances and exits to the Hercules galaxy. Eridanus galaxy and Aquila galaxy are all here. It's heavily guarded, so we don't dare to be careless in the slightest. The entrance to the space-time ocean flow here should have been a dark, dark and cold world. Because of this huge spaceport group and fortress group, it has become brightly lit and the spaceships coming and going seem very lively. In addition to guarding the capital galaxy, these huge spaceports actually serve more of a service role, providing services to spacecraft traveling to and from the solar system and spacecraft coming to the Kuiper Belt region to mine asteroids. So slowly here it has also become a very important commercial and trade area. Because interstellar trade is basically bulk commodity trade. Small commodity trade does not even cost enough for interstellar transportation. So if you trade here, you can save a lot of trouble. You only need to transport the goods here and then exchange them for with a white imperial currency. You can purchase the specialties of the Centauri galaxy from here. And you can quickly return to the solar system, saving a lot of trouble and time. Of course, another important reason is to ensure the safety of the Empire's capital star. All cargo and spaceships must be parked here and undergo inspection by the Empire's Security Department. Not everything can be directly sent to the living planet in the Centauri Galaxy. Shift over. The combination of various factors slowly form the prosperity here. Interstellar businessmen, interstellar adventurers, interstellar travelers, and other people who depended on the interstellar universe gathered here. People from various galaxies in the Empire. People from China in the Solar System and Earth. And people from all the former member states of the Earth Federation. 
Here, a spaceship slowly flies out from the entrance of the time-space ocean outflow. The two Chinese characters, Kyushu, on the spaceship appear to be a bit mottled. The traces on the spacecraft are telling the long history and old age of the spacecraft. Age. The Jojo spacecraft has a history even longer than that of the Yin Wang Empire. Decades have passed. And it is still constantly traveling between the Centaur Galaxy and the Solar System. People who often travel between the two galaxies basically everyone has been on this old spaceship. Unlike the Empire's new spaceships that specialize in traveling to and from other galaxies. This old spaceship is already very backward in terms of speed, comfort, etc. However, this spaceship is still guaranteed in terms of safety and other aspects. So it has always been reluctant to eliminate it. After all, the cost of building a spaceship is also very high. As long as it is safe, it will naturally continue to be used. Finally arrived at the Centauri Galaxy. Inside the Kyushu spaceship, Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Yagyu looked at the extremely busy void outside and breathed a long sigh of relief. The journey from the Kitagawa Galaxy to the Empire Centaur Galaxy was quite far and very time-consuming. Hour. First, we have to go from the Beichuan Galaxy to the Canis Minor Galaxy. Then from the Canis Minor Galaxy to the Solar System. And finally from the Solar System to the Centauri Galaxy. The spaceships have to be transferred several times in between. And the spaceships on these lines cannot naturally be from the Yin Wang Empire. The speed of the latest spacecraft equipped with space-time ocean current sails can be imagined. It took Junichiro Yagyu more than eight years to arrive from the Kitagawa Galaxy to the Centauri Galaxy. So as soon as he arrived here, he breathed a long sigh of relief. Interstellar travel is really not an easy task. Eight years, six months and twenty-three days later, we finally arrived at the Centauri Galaxy. Mamahara Tsukasa, Junichiro Yagyu's assistant, looked at the time and called it out gently. I heard that the Yin Wang Empire has a brand new spacecraft that can pass through the ocean currents of time and space in a very short time. It is estimated that it will only take a few months to reach the Beichuan Galaxy from the Centaur Galaxy. When Junichiro Yagyu heard this, his eyes suddenly lit up. Only after traveling in the universe can you understand the preciousness of this kind of spaceship. However, this kind of spaceship is only used by the Empire between its own internal galaxies and on the routes between external galaxies. Old spacecraft like the Kyushu are used. As expected of the Yen Wang Empire. Tut tut. The spaceships parked in this space port alone are more numerous and larger than our spaceships in the entire Japan. The spaceship slowly docked at a designated spaceport. As it got closer and closer to the spaceport, in this huge spaceport, spaceships appeared in everyone's field of vision. And so did Mama Haraji. Couldn't help but sigh. It has been more than 10 years since the separation of the Earth Federation. This time, the reason why Yagyu Jinichiro and his team traveled thousands of miles and went through great hardships to come to the Empire was naturally not to travel, but to seek peace with the Empire, establish diplomatic relations, carry out economic and trade exchanges, scientific and technological exchanges, send overseas students to each other, etc. After the Earth Federation's galaxies became independent, the Yin Wang Empire no longer established diplomatic relations with other countries and only established diplomatic relations with China on Earth. Therefore, the spaceships that originally led to the Earth Federation's galaxies were also withdrawn, so that there were fewer galaxies in the Earth Federation. The Imperial spaceship helped with transportation, and communication between them suddenly seemed very difficult. As for the development of science and technology, economy and trade, etc., they have also been greatly affected. This spaceship, especially the spaceship that can travel between the stars, only the spaceship of the Yin Huang Empire is the safest and most reliable. Even this spaceship, even the old spaceships from decades ago, are safer than the spaceships built by everyone. Although it has been independent for more than 10 years, the development in all aspects is very unsatisfactory. Especially in the most important aspect of science and technology. Therefore, Yagyu Junichiro came up with the idea of establishing diplomatic relations with the Yin Huang Empire, hoping to continue to gain access to the Empire. Of course, it is not just the Japanese who hold this idea. The same is true for the new National Pan-European Alliance composed of the original European and American countries that occupied the Victoria Galaxy and the Columbus Galaxy. They also want to seek to establish diplomatic relations with the Empire and implement economic and trade exchanges, scientific and technological exchanges, etc. That's their military port over there. TSK TSK. This space battleship is really too big. 
The Hanwu Emperor Space Battleship is the most powerful space battleship in the hands of the Yen Wang Empire. When will our Empire of Japan also have such a powerful space battleship? Mamahara looked at the nearest spaceport. All the space battleships parked in this spaceport were huge space battleships parked neatly. The largest space battleship among them was like a sleeping ship. It's like a ferocious beast. And just by looking at it, people can't help but be surprised by its size. Mamahara kun As long as we keep working hard, we will soon be able to have such a large space battleship. Junichiro Yagyu patted Mamahara on the shoulder and looked more confident. He looked at the huge spaceports in the void. Are there spaceships rising and falling in these spaceports? As well as countless small universes? The spaceship is constantly traveling to and from various spaceports in the void, making it very lively and busy. The Kyushu spacecraft slowly parked in the spaceport. The hatch was wide open, and the robotic arm began to unload the cargo from the spacecraft. At the same time, it began to add energy, water, compressed air, and other materials to the spacecraft for the next time. Prepare to travel to the solar system. Junichiro Yagyu and others also followed many passengers and began to walk to the spaceport. If they wanted to go to the imperial capital Xing'an Huangxing, they would need to transfer to a spaceship. An interstellar spaceship, like the Kyushu, would not allow to enter the inner circle of the Centauri galaxy. The spaceport was bustling with activity. People from the Empire were holding signs in their hands to welcome their relatives and friends from the Earth. After all, the Yin Wang Empire came from China. They were separated by a strip of water and were connected by flesh and blood. Many families were part of the Empire. Some of them are in China on Earth. And they often communicate with each other, visit relatives, etc. Those who did not receive relatives and friends naturally seemed anxious after all. While those who did receive relatives and friends naturally talked and laughed happily and soon headed to Jiozhou Star or Yin Wang Star with their salutes and so on. In addition to those who pick up people, there are also some space merchants who are very smart and look at each person who comes out, carefully looking for interstellar space merchants like themselves, who want to sell or buy the goods in their hands, some goods from other planets, etc. Of course, this phenomenon only occurs here. If the various galaxies within the Empire have already negotiated business with each other even across the distant void, it would be okay to directly deliver the goods. In this port, there are often some cosmic merchants from the Pan-European Alliance, the Canis Minor Galaxy, the Beichuan Galaxy, and the Solar System. They do not have quantum communicators from the Empire, nor do they have the ID cards of the Empire. Naturally, they have no way to communicate in the virtual world. Negotiating business online can only rely on this backward method. Of course, it is often the most profitable to do business with these cosmic merchants who are visiting the Empire for the first time. The prices of goods among various galaxies within the Empire have long been very transparent. Although the profits are considered huge, they are far from being compared to this. In comparison, many space businessmen are looking for business opportunities here. Chapter 354 This is the Yin Wang Empire. Mama Harakun, where is the person responsible for taking care of us? Looking at the vast crowd, Junichiro Yagyu asked his assistant Mama Hara Tsukasa. They came to the empire this time, but did not say H, low to the empire in advance. So they had to plan their itinerary, and other arrangements by themselves. This time in the middle of the, the person responsible for handling them in the Sagittarius galaxy is Mitsui Kohei, a Japanese interstellar businessman. Mitsui Kuen should be here already. But, Assistant Mamahara Tsukasa was looking around. But he couldn't find anything familiar. The signs were all written in Chinese. There were no Japanese signs at all. And there were so many people around. Yagyu Kuen, Mamahara Kuen, I kept you waiting for so long. At this time, a man with a smile on his face came over and said in an apologetic tone. This man was wearing a suit, had a big belly, and a shrewd look on his face. He looked like a businessman at a glance. It's okay. We just came out just now. Junichiro Yagyu waved his hand. Without any airs. He came here very low-key this time. This is the territory of the Yin Wang Empire. What's more, this Mitsui Yasuhei is not simple. He is an important figure in the Mitsui Foundation one of the three major consortiums in Japan. But this is not the time to lose your temper. Everyone, please follow me. Originally, I was going to write a sign. But here is the Yin Wang Empire, not China. There are many things that need to be paid attention to. If they know our identities, they might expel us immediately. I will do the same. I used a fake identity from China to be able to come here to do business. 
while leading the way. Mitsui Kohei said somewhat helplessly, because the Yen Huang Empire did not establish diplomatic relations with Japan. So once any Japanese are found in the empire, they will be deported without politeness. Baga! How can you treat us like this? When Mama Haraji heard this, he immediately started scolding him. Mama Harakun, please keep your voice down. If anyone hears us, we will be doomed. This is the Yen Wang Empire. Mitsui Kohei quickly looked around and then said nervously, It's best not to let anyone know our identity in the Yen Wang Empire. Otherwise, things will be difficult to handle later. Because of historical events, the people in the Yen Wang Empire hate us quite a lot. Mitsui Kohei seemed helpless while leading everyone towards the direction of the Yen Wang Star Transit spacecraft. He began to explain some things. Because we did not contact the Yen Wang Empire government in advance. There was no Yen Wang Empire government to receive us this time. My plan is to use the false identity from the Chinese side of Earth to arrive at Yen Wang planet and then go directly to the Yen Wang Empire ostensible status on the part of the cabinet government. Only in this way can we successfully talk to the Yen Wang Empire government. If our identities are revealed now, I estimate that we will be expelled immediately. We can't reveal our identity information until we have a superficial identity. Otherwise, it will be in vain if we spend several years to come here. Judichiro Yagyu frowned deeply after hearing this. Japan contacted the Yen Wang Empire through China not once or twice and expressed its intention to establish diplomatic relations with the Yen Wang Empire. But it was rejected every time. So this time, Judichiro Yagyu came in person hoping that by virtue of his status as Prime Minister of Japan, he could be received by the Yen Wang Empire cabinet government to discuss the establishment of diplomatic relations. When I was in the Earth Federation, I didn't think about what would happen without the Yen Wang Empire. Now they are divided. The Yen Wang Empire has only established diplomatic relations with Earth China. And all offices, spaceships, etc. in other galaxies have also been removed. Everyone instantly I felt that life was difficult. Just interstellar trade has suddenly become very dangerous. Without the Yen Wang Empire spaceships, the spaceships built by everyone would be too risky in the currents of time and space. Spaceships often have accidents in the currents of time and space. Of course, these are not the most important. The most important thing is the advanced technology of the Yen Wang Empire. This is what everyone wants most. Establishing your own territory in the interstellar universe is a good thing. But it is also a bad thing. It's a bad thing because maybe I'll meet a stronger Qin Ming that day. At that time, based on his own technological level, he will become the target of elimination. This is also something that makes Junichiro Yagyu and other Japanese high-level officials very worried. If you can establish diplomatic relations with the Yen Wang Empire, not to mention obtaining technology, you can at least have normal economic and trade exchanges. As long as you have money, you can buy the Yen Wang Empire's advanced space battleships. If you can increase your strength, you will have one more person in the interstellar universe. The ability to protect oneself. Is there any way to directly meet the emperor of the Yen Wang Empire? Li Fu? Junichiro Yagyu frowned and asked with a stern face. No. It's quite rude for us to come without telling you. If we go directly to Emperor Li Fu of the Yen Wang Empire now, it will be even more detrimental to achieving our goal. Maybe Li Fu will receive us here. But definitely not he will agree to establish diplomatic relations with us. Mitsui Kohei shook his head and did not approve of this method. Mitsui Kohei and others successfully passed the Empire's security check using their fake identities from China, and then transferred to a small spaceship to head to Yen Wang Star. The Yen Wang Empire is really prosperous, and there are so many spacecrafts. Inside the transfer small spaceship, Judichiro Yagyu looked at the endless flow of spaceships outside the window. All spaceships must fly according to the prescribed route, speed, and direction, and these spaceships are also divided into small medium, and large spaceships. Each has its own route direction. There are also some specially developed for the use of very fast spacecraft. The speed of the spacecraft on these routes must reach a certain level before it can fly on these routes. The originally empty void has become so busy due to the endless flow of spaceships that inexperienced people would not dare to fly into the flow of these spaceships. You must know that the speed of spaceships is very fast. Once they collide, something big will happen. This is the capital galaxy of the Yen Wang Empire. Of course, it is very prosperous. Another thing is that the spaceships of the Yen Wang Empire are very popular. Now basically every household has its own small private spaceship. Many people are in space. Working. Living on the planet. And traveling back and forth all depend on spaceships. Of course, 
The Yanwang Empire also has public spaceships that travel to and from important areas in the galaxy. Similar to buses on the ground, traveling is very convenient even if you don't have your own private spaceship. Spaceships flying in space must fly in accordance with the requirements and instructions of the Yen Huang Empire Space-Time Administration. All these spacecrafts have their flight direction, speed, time, etc. calculated by supercomputers. Mitsui Kohei became a tour guide and began to introduce some situations in the Empire in detail. He often traveled to and from the Empire to do business. He also knew many things about the Empire. I see. I didn't expect that their spaceships have become so popular that every household already has a private spaceship. Yagyu Junichiro's eyes flashed with light. The Yin Wang Empire in front of him was the real interstellar civilization and cosmic empire. Compared with the Yin Wang Empire, the Beichuan Galaxy was not on the same level at all and was far from comparable. Of course, this also strengthened his determination to establish diplomatic relations with the empire. Only by establishing diplomatic relations with the empire and being able to have economic and trade exchanges with the empire's policies, etc., Japan can also develop very quickly. The journey was very smooth. Under the leadership of Mitsui Kohei, Junichiro Yagyu and others successfully arrived at Chang'an City, Xingyan Huanqing, the capital of the empire, and stayed at the Imperial Fuyun Hotel, where the Imperial Central Government Cabinet Minister's office is located. The new Imperial Cabinet Minister Tu Xueliang is reviewing documents. Tu Xueliang is of the same generation as Li Wano and others. He is one of those people who was born on Earth but grew up in the empire after immigrating to the empire. A big generation. As a new generation, Tu Zulia has been practicing Yuan Li since he was a child. So even though he is over 100 years old now, he still looks very young, energetic, clear-minded, and constantly reviewing documents one after another. Old Tu. There is a man outside who claims to be the Prime Minister of Japan from the Beichuan Galaxy and wants to see you. Tu Zulia's secretary Wei Chi came in and reminded him gently. Prime Minister of Japan? How could they come to us? What do the people in the Imperial Security Department do? A group of Japanese actually came to our center. We only found out after they reported their identities. When Tuzilier heard this, he immediately frowned. The first thing that came to his mind was this question. You must know that this is a major matter related to the security of the Empire. He thought that the security inspection of the Empire should be foolproof but he actually let people come directly to the cabinet office. Place. I just checked and the identities they used are fake identities from the Chinese side of Earth. Wei Chi handed over the information and investigation report. As a secretary, he knew exactly what his leader needed. Using China's false identity? Well, it seems that we have been too lenient with China over the years, and it has allowed people to take advantage of it. You asked the Ministry of National Defense to come up with a detailed and complete response method. I don't want this to happen in the future. Thing happens again. Tu Zuilia frowned and pondered. Because of the split of the Earth Federation, the Empire was much more relaxed about China than before. After all, people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries were very frequent. And the people of the Empire also complained about the cumbersome procedures. So I had to relax a bit. Since they are all here, they always need to meet. Let's arrange a time to meet. Chapter 355 You are not qualified enough. In the diligent living room of the Prime Minister's Office of the Imperial Central Government, Junichiro Yagyu and others were brought here after various inspections. The Imperial Cabinet Chief Tu Shueli and several Cabinet Ministers met them here. Premier Tu, thank you very much for being able to meet with you. Facing the Prime Minister of the Yin Huang Empire, Junichiro Yagyu showed no temper at all. He led the crowd to bow deeply to Tu Zuilia and others. And the words used in his words were also quite respectful. The Japanese are like this. When facing people who are stronger than themselves, their attitude is extremely respectful. They kneel on the ground and want to hold the opponent's thigh and shout. 666. For example, in the Tang Dynasty, the Japanese were impressed by the power of the prosperous Tang Dynasty. So the Tang Dynasty moved everything towards it. The city where the Emperor's Palace is located was built and designed according to the Chang'an city of the Tang Dynasty at that time. It was almost a miniature version of Chang'an city. Even the official language was in Chinese at the time. There was no so-called Japanese at all. Japanese swords were also based on the Tang Dao was designed in the Tang Dynasty. Everyone is proud to be able to speak fluent Tang Dynasty dialect. And to be able to write beautiful Chinese characters is even more admired. If you can also write a few good poems, your tale will be raised to the sky. Go. It can be said that at that time, 
everything in Japan was learned from the Tang Dynasty and copied without any changes. Even now, Chinese culture is still the mainstream of Japanese culture. Of course, when facing people who are weaker than themselves, the Japanese will completely reveal their true ferocious face. In modern history, when China was weak, the Japanese naturally pointed their butcher knives at China and killed them wantonly. They all learned from the West and are fully westernized. All of this well illustrates the national characteristics of Japan, which is like a wolf, worshipping the strong and bullying the weak. In recent years, as the Yin Wang Empire has continued to grow stronger and rise, there has been a trend in Japan to learn from the Yin Wang Empire. Especially in recent years, the Japanese have occupied the Beichuan Galaxy and have their own galaxy. But the speed of development is not the same. As expected, he was even more eager to learn from the Yin Wang Empire. Otherwise, Junichiro Yagyu, the Prime Minister, would not have gone through all the trouble to travel from the Beichuan Galaxy to the capital star of the Empire. You're welcome. Please take a seat. Tuzuilia smiled slightly and motioned for everyone to sit down. After all, the other party was the prime minister of a country. Even if the empire was very cold towards the Japanese, at least it would not be too lax in terms of etiquette. Since ancient times, the two countries have not cut off the envoys when they are at war. Let alone now, the two parties sat down separately, with smiles on each other's faces. Your Excellency, Prime Minister, this is a small gift we brought here as a small token of appreciation for your empire. Junichiro Yagyu took a rectangular box handed over by his assistant Mama Haraji and presented it very respectfully. This time, Junichiro Yagyu came well prepared and brought many gifts, including those for Emperor Li Fu and others. Every gift used to give each other between countries is very precious. And the most precious one is the gift now given in the name of the country. Oh, Your Excellency, Prime Minister, you are very polite. Tuzulia took it gently and then opened the box. Inside was a scroll of calligraphy and painting. A staff member came over with gloves and slowly unfolded it. A pair was covered with seals, and it was filled with Chinese characters written in cursive. When Tuzulia saw the line on the far right, he couldn't help but scream. Is this the preface to Orchid Pavilion by Wang Shiji? No wonder Tu Xuelian called him out. Almost everyone knows the name of Wang Shiji's Lanting Preface. This Lanting Preface known as the first running script in ancient and modern times, has been praised by countless calligraphers for thousands of years. The most admired masterpiece, and Wang Shiji's authentic, lanting preface, is said to have entered jowling with Emperor Tai's only Shimon during the Tang Dynasty. The lanting preface, that everyone sees now was made by calligraphers in the Tang Dynasty based on Wang Shiji's original work. It is not Wang Shiji's authentic work. The most precious version of the rubbings is called Jilong Ben Lanting Preface which is said to be written by it was copied by Feng Qingsu, a calligrapher during the reign of Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty. Even if these copied versions of Lanting Preface are not authentic, they are still very precious cultural relics. Tu Zulia's eyes carefully read the Lanting Preface. He was also a calligraphy expert and was well versed in calligraphy. He had read other versions of Lanting Preface before. The more he read, the more his eyes his eyes widened even more, looking in disbelief. Is this an authentic work by Wang Shiji? Tu Zuilia was a little unbelievable. You must know that even the copied version of Lanting Preface is already a very precious thing. This Wang Shiji's original work can no longer be described as a national treasure. This is indeed Wang Shiji's authentic work. Junichiro Yagyu smiled and nodded. During the era of China's decline, many national treasures were lost overseas, and a large part of them fell into the hands of the Japanese. I didn't expect. I didn't expect. That Wang Shiji's original Orchid Pavilion preface would actually see the light of day. This calligraphy is so incredible that it surpasses the creation of heaven and earth, and is as mysterious as the sun and the moon. Tu Zuilia read it carefully from beginning to end, and couldn't help but let out a long sigh. He had seen the copying version, but compared with Wang Shiji's original work, it was still far behind. He was worthy of being regarded as the best running script in the world. This gift is so precious. When the Japanese took it out, they were really willing to let their children try to trap the wolf. I don't know how many ancestors' treasures fell into their hands. Even Wang Shiji's lanting preface was in their hands. Here, in his mind, Tu Shueli regained his composure and thought carefully. Your Excellency, Prime Minister, this gift is so precious, Tu Zulia said with a smile on his face. We Japan and the Yin Wang Empire have always had friendly exchanges. 
and we also have a profound friendship with each other. This time, I came uninvited to further promote the friendship between our two countries and hope to realize the mutual friendship between our two countries. To normalize diplomatic relations between the two countries, we feel that only Wang Shiji's original Lanting preface can express our sincerity in establishing diplomatic relations with the Empire. Judichiro Yagyu is also thick-skinned. There is no contact between the two countries at all. But he insisted that they have a good relationship with each other. He also slowly stated the purpose of coming to the Empire this time. To establish diplomatic relations with the Empire. He knew that the Empire had never been very welcoming to Japan. Or to other countries that had broken out of China. More than 10 years had passed. And the Earth Federation had dispersed into several countries. And everyone had done so more than once or twice. He expressed his intention to establish diplomatic relations with the Yin Huang Empire. Except for China on Earth. All other countries were unceremoniously rejected. From one point of view, it can be seen that the Yin Huang Empire is very xenophobic. So Junichiro Yagyu also spent a lot of money to achieve his goals. Wang Shiji's original, Lanting Preface, was brought out. Of course, for the Japanese, there are many Chinese national treasures such as Wang Shiji's Orchid Pavilion Preface, authentic works. They were all plundered from China back then. Now they are just returned to their original owners. In fact, there is no loss. After listening to Junichiro Yagyu's words, Tu Shuoyang thought carefully in his mind. In fact, since Junichiro Yagyu came here, he had already guessed their intentions. He just wanted to establish diplomatic relations with the Empire and obtain the universe from the Empire. Spaceships, space battleships, advanced science and technology, etc. However, the policy of not establishing diplomatic relations with these countries has been formulated since Li Fu and Fang Zheng. Even though he is now the Prime Minister of the Empire, he cannot violate it. He just needs to find a good idea on how to send them away. The reason is, after all, you should not look at the face of the Buddha, but also the face of the gift. So you can't make people too embarrassed. Your Excellency, Prime Minister, you must also know that our empire has only established diplomatic relations with China on this side of the earth. This is because our two countries have the same origin and are connected by blood. Like the Pan-European Union, Aberdeen, we have not established diplomatic relations with any of the Federation, the Lambert Federation, and Japan. After sorting out the words in his mind, Tuzulia said slowly, meaning that your request makes it difficult for me to do it. Maybe the Prime Minister is also curious about why our empire does this. Please give me some advice. Prime Minister, when Junichiro Yagyu heard this, he quickly pretended to be open-minded and willing to be taught. Actually, the reason is very simple. Because our empire is already considered a relatively powerful civilization. And it is also considered a relatively powerful civilization on the Orion Spiral Arm. Therefore, if we want to establish diplomatic relations with our empire, we must also have our own strength and be able to establish diplomatic relations with our empire. Almost, for example, the Kalen Civilization a civilization that our empire has now officially established diplomatic relations with. You may not even know about this Kalen civilization. It has more than 200 galaxies and nearly 300 living planets. Only such a powerful civilization will our empire be happy. Establish diplomatic relations with the other party. Tu Zulia smiled and slowly spoke about Kalen civilization. What he meant was that you are not qualified enough to establish diplomatic relations with our empire. More than 200 galaxies? Nearly 300 living planets? When Yagyu Jinichiro heard this, his eyes widened and his breathing became rapid. He kept imagining in his mind what a huge civilized country this was and how it could have such a huge territory. At the same time, the whole person couldn't help but frown because he heard the meaning of Tu Shueli's words. The Japanese now occupy a Beichuan galaxy and their strength is still very weak. Your Excellency Prime Minister, this is also a rule that we only learned after we established diplomatic relations with the Kalen Empire. The establishment of diplomatic relations in the universe also depends on each other's strength. When our empire and the Kalen Empire were in the Meishi Galaxy, after the Boiled Galaxy was renamed, fought and defeated the Kalen Empire. And only then were we able to establish diplomatic relations with the Kalen Empire. Later, through the Kalen Empire, we learned about the rules of communication between civilizations in the entire galaxy and the Orion Spiral Arm. Therefore, it is not easy for our empire to break these rules, and we can only not establish diplomatic relations with various countries in our human civilization. Of course, the situation is not static. As long as you can occupy a few more galaxies and show your strength, 
Our empire is also very happy to establish formal diplomatic relations with you. With an apologetic smile on his face, Tu Shuili explained to Judichiro Yagyu that he had not forgotten to dig a huge hole for the Japanese. Or not just for the Japanese, but for several other human countries. A huge hole. This interstellar universe does not expand at will. I have not seen that the empire has been dormant over the years. Constantly climbing the technology tree. If it continues to expand, it will definitely encounter a powerful civilization. And then it will inevitably be fought to the death. Drag down the development of the empire. Now Tuzuilia is using the help of aliens to severely repair the Japanese. As long as they continue to expand outwards, they will definitely encounter powerful alien civilization soon. If they are not beaten to death, they will be beaten. A bundle of hits. Chapter 356. Degenerate Materials. In the back garden of the Star Palace in the capital of the Empire, Li Fu was leisurely drinking tea, reading a book, and thinking about the core and most difficult material of the warp engine. Material science, as the most basic subject, has always been an important thing that determines the scientific and technological level of the entire country and civilization. It is also one of the basic subjects that the Empire has been vigorously developing over the years. However, it is not an easy task to create materials that can meet the needs of the warp engine. Because of the powerful performance of the warp engine, theoretically only degenerate level materials can satisfy the warp engine. But degeneracy state materials can be different from ordinary materials. Degenerate materials are materials created from the perspective of atoms. In theory, there are also materials created from the perspective of neutrons and quark-level materials. Maybe when it comes to atoms, everyone may not be able to understand how powerful this material is. If we talk about neutron stars, black holes, everyone may know the power of this material. With the development of microscopic science and technology, it is possible to artificially synthesize materials at the atomic scale, such as atomic clusters, cluster materials, linear chains, multilayer heterostructures, ultra-thin films, etc. These materials are characterized by low dimensions. The symmetry is reduced and the geometric features are significant. But it is only possible. When it comes to actual operation, it is difficult to truly create the materials you need from an atomic perspective. The unit of an atom is too small. At most, current science and technology can only it can be done at the nanometer level and atoms are much smaller than nanometers. First of all, we need to understand their size. Nano is a unit of length. One nanometer is one billionth of one meter. Recorded as nm, one nanometer is equal to the length of ten hydrogen atoms arranged next to each other in a row, because the diameter of each atom is different. One nanometer may be equal to the length of the arrangement of dozens of atoms of other elements. Twenty nanometers is almost equivalent to one three thousandth of a human hair. What we usually call nanotechnology refers to the technology of studying the special phenomena and functions of substances within the nanoscale, 100 nanometers to 0.1 nanometers, and creating new materials by directly manipulating and arranging atoms and molecules. The emergence of nanotechnology first benefited from the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope, STM, which can magnify tens of millions of times. The invention of the scanning tunneling microscope allows scientists to observe the microscopic world from a nanometer perspective. Since the early 1990s, nanotechnology has developed rapidly. New disciplines such as nanoelectronics, nanomaterials, nanomechanics, nanobiology, etc. are constantly emerging. Nanotechnology is the future of scientists' language and will change mankind. One of the nine major sciences of history. In fact, today's scientists can observe atomic level information through STM technology and have a certain impact on the atomic arrangement and structure. For example, in April 1990, two scientists from IBM in the United States were using STM to observe xenon atoms on the surface of metallic nickel, inspired by the movement of the probe and xenon atoms. They tried to use the STM tip to move the xenon atoms adsorbed on the metallic nickel, arranged 35 xenon atoms on the surface of nickel to form an IBM structure with a height of 5 atoms. Scientists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences also used nanotechnology to draw the world's smallest map of China by moving carbon atoms on the surface of graphite, which is less than 10 nanometers in size. Since then, scientists have been interested in moving various atoms into various patterns, including silicon atoms, sulfur atoms, iron atoms, carbon monoxide molecules, and iron-based molecules. From here we can know that what scientists can currently achieve is to move some atoms slightly and put various patterns on the surface of objects. This cannot truly create 
and construct the atomic structure three-dimensionally. And there is no way. Create new materials from an atomic perspective on a large scale and quickly. But even so, they can only move some atoms very simply and arrange some atoms on the surface. Scientists have also created various complex nanomaterials today, artificially modifying the structure of copper atoms on the surface of copper. Arrangement can also increase the strength of copper by five times. We all know that diamond is diamond, graphite, and coke. The atoms they are composed of are actually the same. That is, carbon atoms. However, the properties of these materials are very different. In terms of hardness alone, diamond is the hardest material in nature, while the hardness of graphite and coke is very low. The reason for this difference is the structure of carbon atoms. In the atomic structure of diamond, each carbon atom forms a covalent bond with four other carbon atoms in an sp3 hybrid orbit, forming a regular tetrahedron, because the cc bond in diamond is very strong. Diamond has high hardness and extremely high melting point, and because all valence electrons are restricted in the covalent bond area and there are no free electrons, diamond does not conduct electricity. In the graphite structure, carbon atoms in the same layer are sp2 hybridized to form covalent bonds, and each carbon atom is connected to three other atoms by three covalent bonds. Six carbon atoms form a regular six connected ring on the same plane, extending into a sheath structure. The bond lengths of the CC bonds here are all 142 pm, which falls exactly within the bond length range of atomic crystals. So for the same layer, it is an atomic crystal. The carbon atoms in the same plane each have one p orbital left, and they overlap each other. Electrons are relatively free, equivalent to free electrons in metals. So graphite can conduct heat and electricity, which is the characteristic of metal crystals. To put it simply and easily understood, the carbon atom structure of diamond is three dimensional. All carbon atoms directly form regular tetrahedrons with each other, which is a three-dimensional structure. The structure of graphite is that carbon atoms form a regular hexagonal ring on the same plane, forming a sheath structure, that is, layers of carbon atoms. But there are no connections between the carbon atoms between layers. It is a flat structure, a three-dimensional regular tetrahedron structure, and a planar regular hexagonal structure cause the material properties of diamond and graphite to be very different. And their values are also different. The selling price of diamond is calculated by carat, and the price of graphite is calculated in tons. The value difference is more than hundreds of millions of times. The empire wants to develop materials for use in warp engines, which means building materials from an atomic three-dimensional perspective and turning decay into magic. For example, turning the atomic perspective of iron into a regular tetrahedral three-dimensional structure like diamond. So what kind of material will come out? It's difficult. Lifu couldn't help but frown when he thought of this. Degenerate materials are not ordinary materials. They have to be created from a very small microscopic perspective. Traditional material synthesis and forging technologies can't do anything but high temperature, high pressure, low temperature, beating, synthesis and other methods. But the empire scientists have already studied these methods to the extreme. And it is simply impossible to create degenerate materials. Does it have to be the method in the seeds of civilization? Li Fu who obtained the civilization seeds of the Han Technological Empire, naturally knew from the civilization seeds many ways to obtain degenerate materials. For super-civilizations like the Han Technological Empire, their methods of obtaining degenerate materials and quark materials are very simple. Mining neutron stars and black holes. With the empire's current technology, just thinking about it seems a bit fanciful. The mass of neutron stars and the power of black holes are simply not something that current technology can conquer. Of course, even super civilizations develop slowly step by step. In the early days of the Han science and technology empire, the method of obtaining degenerate materials was to use strong magnetic field binding capabilities to create degenerate materials. It seems that this method can only be used. It is also the only method that the empire's technology can currently use. Methods such as space compression, space folding, space collapse, etc. are simply impossible for the empire now. Li Fu thought for a long time. It was already the 22nd century, and the empire's centennial science and technology plan had been implemented for more than 20 years. However, the empire had not made any substantial progress in researching warp engines. Naturally, nothing can be seen in the accumulation stage. Only after the results are achieved will you know that all the hard work over the years will not be in vain. Just like success, Others will only see your success. But not how much hard work and sweat you have put behind it, just like pregnancy. Others will only see your belly getting bigger. 
but they will not see how much hard work and sweat you have put behind the success. I don't know how many bullets I took to get pregnant. Li Fu was deep in thought, but did not notice the arrival of Chen Bin, Yu Liang, Chao Haidao, Tu Zuilia and others. All of them had smiles on their faces, and they were obviously in a good mood. Brother Fu, what are you thinking about? Yu Lian grinned, looked at Li Fu's thoughtful look, and asked with a smile. I'm thinking about degenerate materials. Existing methods are difficult to shape materials from an atomic perspective. It seems that we need to innovate. Li Fu smiled and motioned for everyone to sit down as they pleased without being too polite. Xueli, the Japanese have left? Seeing Tu Zulia coming, Li Fu asked with a smile. Well, they have all left. They originally wanted to see you, but I stopped them. They came here this time to establish diplomatic relations with our empire. And they also brought over the authentic copy of Wang Shiji's landing preface. But they were blocked by me. I refused and dug a hole for them. Let them continue to expand externally. Judging from the current position of the Bei Chuan galaxy, it is estimated that in a short time, they will soon reach a powerful alien civilization. And then, there will be a good show. Tu Zulia said respectfully. Everyone present was a veteran of the empire, and an elder. Even if he was the prime minister of the empire, he had to be respectful. Especially when facing Li Fu. However, when he talked about digging holes for the Japanese, he also had a proud smile on his face. As if he saw the miserable end of the Japanese in the future. Chapter 357 Give me some hints. Ha ha. This is a well-hidden academic trap. Ha. The Japanese didn't know how many national treasures they plundered from our Chinese hands. Now they want to establish diplomatic relations with our empire with a few national treasures. There is no way. These things belong to us in the first place. Things belonging to the descendants of Yen and Huang. Yu Liang has always been straight-tempered. Hearing Tu Zuilia's words, he laughed happily and gave Tu Zuilia a thumbs up. The empire obtained the star map on the spiral arm and sub-spiral arm of Orion from the Kalen Empire and knew that Bei Chuan as galaxies develop around them. They will encounter a civilization on the sub-spiral arm that is more powerful than the Kalan Empire. Then there will be something good to see. Thinking of this, not only Yu Liang, but also everyone else had smiles on their faces. The Empire does not dare to expand externally now. With the urine of the Japanese, it is estimated that they will definitely go crazy in the universe by then. Enclosure. Maybe within a few years, we will encounter a powerful civilization on the sub-spiral arm. Actually, there is nothing noteworthy about the Japanese. What bothers me right now is that our research on warp engines has not made much progress. I estimate that it won't be long before we are in contact with other civilizations again. By then, if we are not strong enough, we may not be strong in our words. After laughing, Li Fu also had a look of worry on his face. The subspiral arm was very small, and the powerful civilizations on the subspiral arm had been constantly expanding externally. This was the case with the Kalin Empire which had never given up on external expansion. Expansion. Although the location of the empire is close to the abyss of darkness and is very remote, it is unlikely that a powerful civilization will expand here for a while. However, as time goes by, it will naturally come into contact with more powerful civilizations. By then, they will definitely be inseparable from each other. A fight is inevitable. Judging from the current technological level of the empire, it is not that we are afraid of that civilization. But even if we can win, there will be certain casualties. And without the warp engine, if we want to expand, the casualties will be even more severe. The empire is not like the Kalan Empire, which has a population of hundreds of billions or trillions. It has enough confidence and is not afraid of consumption. Oh, it's difficult. I'm in charge of researching controllable nuclear fusion, and I'm also in a difficult situation. The temperature generated by nuclear fusion reaches hundreds of millions. Now we have no other way to control such a powerful temperature. Speaking of this civilization, Chin Bin also sighed, this warp engine not only requires powerful materials, but also powerful power. Controlled nuclear fusion is the only technology that can provide sufficient power now. But controllable nuclear fusion can, it cannot be studied in one sentence. You must know about nuclear fusion reactions, which are reactions that occur all the time on stars. Nuclear fusion reactions produce high temperatures of hundreds of millions of degrees. Any material will be directly ionized at such a high temperature, unless it is the legendary neutron star. Only a special celestial body, like a black hole, can withstand such terrifying high temperatures. 
Controlled nuclear fusion technology is also the technology that the Empire is currently focusing on. Scientists in the Empire have tried various methods. But there is still no way to control the hundreds of millions of degrees of high temperature generated during nuclear fusion. We have made some progress in theoretical research. Through the study of massive stars, we have found that when the mass is strong enough, or the energy is strong enough, the surrounding space will bend, fold, twist, etc. Of course, the mass must be large enough, or the energy must be large enough. Yang Yipping, who is in charge of space research, gave everyone good news. Space can be folded and twisted, which means that the warp engine is possible by using powerful energy to exert influence on space. Space can be folded, thus realizing warp flight. Powerful energy? If we don't master controllable nuclear fusion, how can we create enough energy to cause space folding? Having said this, Yu Lian said dejectedly, this problem goes around and around. But in the end it still revolves around the two aspects of energy and materials. If these two aspects can be solved, it will not be far away from creating a warp engine. There are always more methods than difficulties. As long as we keep working hard, we can always solve the problems we are encountering now. It just so happens that everyone is free now. Why don't we go to the Imperial Academy of Sciences for a walk and take a look? Li Fu was smiling all over his face. In fact, the Empire's technology has developed so far that it is almost possible to create a warp engine. As long as Li Fu explains the method of creating degenerate materials. At that time, a strong magnetic field will be used to create degenerate materials. And then controllable nuclear fusion technology can be developed using degenerate materials and magnetic field binding technology. With controllable nuclear fusion technology, huge energy can be produced to drive warp speed. The engines are used to fold space, allowing for warp flight. In the space of the Centauri galaxy, somewhere in the void only two astronomical units away from Yin Wang star, a huge space city lies across the void, brightly lit. But it is different from the busy scenes in other places. It seems very quiet here, and there are very few spaceships coming and going. But these spaceships basically have the logo of the Imperial Academy of Sciences on them. This space city is one of the many research institutions under the Imperial Academy of Sciences. It is a material science research institute dedicated to researching materials technology. At this time, in this huge space city, upon learning that Li Fu, Yu Liang, Chen Bin and other veterans of the Imperial Scientific Community had arrived, Yao Tiani and Li Qinyu, deans of the Imperial Institute of Material Science, also hurried over. Old Yao, have you been working too hard lately? Why do you have dark circles under your eyes? Yu Liang saw Yao Tiani's tired face and joked with a smile. It's not just the dark circles under my eyes. I don't know how much white hair is grown. I can't even sleep well now. Yao Tiani shook his head helplessly, obviously not in the mood to joke with Yu Liang. Old Yao, sisterly, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Some things can't be rushed. How about you take a good rest for a few months before talking about it? Li Fu saw the gray hair on Yao Tiani's head and a tired look on his face. Then he looked at Li Qianyu, a famous beauty among the older generation of the Empire scientific community. She was also very tired now. After thinking about it, he knew that they were now facing huge pressure. The core of the warp engine is the material. Such huge pressure is on the shoulders of the two of them. You can imagine the pressure on the two of them now. Originally, both of them practiced Yuan Li. So they should be energetic and in good spirits. It's really stressful to be like this now. Hey, what's the use of rest? If I can study degenerate materials with white hair, it's worth it if I have all white hair. Yao Tiani smiled and shook his head. And Li Qinyu on the side also smiled helplessly. Tell me about your current progress and methods. Li Fu smiled and began to visit the entire Institute of Material Science accompanied by them, preparing to give them some advice. As a subject that the Empire has vigorously developed over the years, the Imperial Institute of Material Science has received very sufficient funding. It has countless advanced equipment and instruments. And there are also many advanced laboratories, such as high-temperature laboratories, high-voltage laboratory, superconducting laboratory, etc. We have tried using tens of thousands of standard high pressures to forge materials and have also experimented with countless alloy materials and have also used ultra-high temperature shaping materials. In short, we have tried all existing material forging methods, but none of them work. Li Qinyu took the words with a pleasant voice. Although she was over 100 years old, she looked like a young woman in her 30s. She had a graceful and curvy figure. Even a wide white coat could not hide her graceful figure. 
Her figure looked a little tired at the time. And so did her appearance, which made people want to hold her in their arms and love her. Have you ever thought of some new ideas, such as trying some new material forging methods? Li Fu nodded after listening. The more technology develops, the higher the demand for materials. Countless new materials are emerging one after another, but the methods for forging materials have always been the same. The method of forging materials at high temperatures can be said to be the oldest method in human history. But now the temperature can be controlled more accurately and higher temperatures can be produced. New ideas? New methods? When Li Qianyu and Yao Tiani heard this, they immediately raised their heads. There was something secretive in their eyes. As the top scientists in the field of material science in the empire, they were very proficient in all aspects of material technology. What methods were used to manufacture those materials? Wait, they know it all too well. Yes, for example, using light to create materials, using magnetic fields to create materials, using space to create materials, using radiation, rays, etc. When we do research, we should not be limited by what we see in front of us. We can think more broadly. Li Fu smiled and nodded. In fact, he could have told them that using magnetic fields to forge materials was now feasible. But Li Fu had no intention of doing so. Scientific research requires continuous exploration and discovery slowly and step by step. If you tell the answer directly to everything, it will be completely meaningless. It's like learning to do a math problem. If you tell the answer directly, you may be able to solve the problem. But if you encounter such a problem again, you will have to solve it next time. It's better to give some hints and let him solve it slowly. Find the answer and finally find it. Only in this way can we better promote the growth of scientists and cultivate more outstanding scientists, which can be truly useful for the future development of science and technology in the empire. This is why although Li Fu has plugins, he rarely uses them. Because the road still has to be walked step by step by oneself. Chapter 358 Constraint and Concentration Somewhere in the void of the Centauri Galaxy, inside the Imperial Institute of Material Science, Li Qianyu and Yao Qianyi were leading their teams to conduct scientific explorations. Light, magnetic field, space, radiation, rays? Li Qianyi frowned, still thinking about what Li Fu said that day. As the Emperor of the Empire and the most outstanding scientist, Li Fu also had profound attainments in the field of material science. Black gold materials were what Li Qianyu said. Fu was the first to research it. From the time when Li Qianyu and Li Fu worked together to research plasma engine materials when they were still in China. She knew that Li Fu was definitely not just talking nonsense. The meaning of Li Fu's words is very clear. Traditional materials research methods cannot study degenerate materials. If you want to study degenerate materials, you must innovate the methods of making materials and develop new methods of making materials. Find a way. In his mind, Li Qianyu kept thinking. Yang Bo, you are responsible for leading the first group to study light to create new materials. Su Xingxi, you are responsible for studying magnetic fields. Chun Rong, you are responsible for studying radiation and rays. Li Qianyu began to give instructions to several project leaders under him. Yang Bo, Su Xingxi, and Chun Rong all belonged to the new generation who were born in and grew up in the empire. They were all students of Li Qianyu and each of them was the well-known material scientists among the younger generation of the empire each had their own teams and laboratories. In Su Xingxi's laboratory, Su Xingxi led his team to study magnetic fields while thinking about how to use magnetic fields to create materials. Usually we have no idea about magnetic fields and think they should have no power. However, the fact is that if the magnetic field reaches a certain level, it will have a strong impact on living things and other substances. Our ancestors have already discovered the impact of magnetic fields on living things. In ancient times, people often said that feng shui was not good. But in fact, it was said that magnetic fields were not good and had side effects on the human body. And good houses can produce magnetic fields that make the human body comfortable, promote people's physical and mental health. In modern times, scientists have conducted more in-depth research on magnetic fields and have made many important discoveries. Darwin's theory of evolution states that living things develop according to external conditions and organisms on the earth occur develop, and evolve according to the conditions on the Earth. The Earth's magnetic field is a physical environment for all living things and humans to survive on the Earth. During the long-term evolution process, living things have adapted to this magnetic field on the Earth. And the magnetic field also has an invisible impact on all living things. Take the male-to-female ratio of babies born as an example. 
in areas with strong geomagnetism at high latitudes. There are more female babies than male babies. In low latitude areas with weak magnetic fields, there are more male babies. Some studies have shown that the offspring of researchers who have worked in strong magnetic field environments for a long time have a higher proportion of female babies than male babies. For example, those who are engaged in some special industries, such as those who work in power stations. Many of their offspring are girls. The Y chromosome is relatively fragile, and the electromagnetic field is more lethal to the Y chromosome than the X chromosome. Creatures on the Earth have adapted to the geomagnetic field for hundreds of millions of years. Now that humans use electricity and change the surrounding electromagnetic environment, they are definitely not adaptable. All this is caused by magnetic fields. These are the effects of magnetic fields on living things. And the effects of magnetic fields on ordinary materials are also very obvious. Scientists have shown that the formation of the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is inseparable from Jupiter's strong magnetic field. Yes, Jupiter's magnetic field is powerful enough to tear apart stars. With a magnetic field strength of 1,000 Tesla, there is no change in the atoms. Su Xingxi listened quietly to the data reported by his assistant, and at the same time kept thinking in his mind why the intensity of the magnetic field had reached 100 T. But there was still no change in the atoms. You must know that 1 T equals 1000 MT. 1 MT equals 10 OE. 1 OE equals 80 A slash M. 1 T, Tesla, equals 10,000 GS, Gauss, equals 1 WB slash M2. 1 GS, Gauss, equals 1 OE Ersted. With the Empire's current technological level, it can only create a powerful artificial magnetic field of 1000 Tesla at most. 100 Tesla is equivalent to about 2 million times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. And 1000 Tesla is equivalent to 2000 times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. 10,000 times more. Under the influence of such a powerful magnetic field, the atoms did not change at all. Which made Su Xingxi very crazy. The electromagnetic strength of 1000 Tesla is the most powerful magnetic field that can be created. And it cannot make the atoms change. So how strong are the magnetic fields used to create diamonds? Can we create a stronger magnetic field? Su Xing thought for a while and asked. We can create a magnetic field with a strength of 10,000 Tesla. But it will cost a huge amount of money. The funds of our Materials Research Institute are completely insufficient. The assistant told him clearly that there is no problem with the technology. But the money is short. I will take care of the cost issue. Let's sort out our ideas and continue experimental observations. I don't believe it. Su Xingxi gritted his teeth. Unwilling to fail. For several months, Su Xingxi's research fell into a bottleneck. Even after spending huge sums of money to create a magnetic field capable of producing a strength of 10,000 Tesla, it was still unable to affect atoms. Is this method an idea wrong in itself? But this is the method proposed by His Majesty the Emperor Li Fu himself. It must be something I haven't figured out yet. The powerful magnetic field of the solar system's mother star can tear apart the stars. This shows the power of the magnetic field. It must be very powerful, and it is absolutely possible to affect atoms. Su Xingxi constantly summarizes his research and thinks about the research methods and processes. Beside a lake with green mountains and green water somewhere on Yin Wang Star, Su Xingxi and several university classmates were fishing and chatting. Su Xingxi himself is an outstanding scientist, and several of his classmates are also scientists from the Imperial Academy of Sciences. The research directions are just different. Xingxi! Look at you looking so sad! It's a rare opportunity to have some fun and forget about research for now. Sanji looked at Su Xingxi's appearance, patted him on the shoulder and said, I think about it too, but there are some things I haven't figured out yet. My mind is full of this matter, and I don't have the energy to think about anything else. Su Xingxi smiled and shook his head. There was a fish on the fishing rod, but he was not in the mood to pull it up. Let's talk about it. Although we are not in charge of researching materials, we might be able to brainstorm ideas. Yang Kuming on the side also said with a smile. In terms of research, several people often exchange ideas with each other because their research fields are different. Su Xingxi studies the field of material science. Sun Ji studies cosmology and astronomy. And Yang Kuming studies is the field of light energy because their respective fields of research are different. Each of them can come up with innovative ideas when looking at each other's problems. Some of them are like looking at problems from the outside. The three of them are constantly making progress because of this. They are young. Less than 40 years old. He has already made a name for himself in the imperial scientific community for many years. I have recently been researching how to use magnetic fields to create materials. However, 
Even though our team has been able to create a magnetic field with a strength of 10,000 Tesla, it still cannot have an impact at the atomic level. However, this method was given by His Majesty the Emperor. Hint, I'm bored right now. Su Xingxi slowly explained the difficulties he encountered. Using magnetic fields to create degenerate materials? When Sun Ji heard this, he immediately frowned and began to think deeply. He was often with Su Xingxi. Of course he knew that Su Xingxi was currently studying degenerate materials. Not to mention that the other party said that he was creating new materials from an atomic perspective. Which was even more certain. This method is quite original. Large celestial bodies in the universe. Such as the parent star of the solar system. When you in our Centauri galaxy. And other large gas planets. Themselves have very strong magnetic fields. Once the magnetic field reaches a certain level. The power is truly terrifying. Sun Ji. Who studies cosmic astronomy. Nodded. He knew very well the terrifying magnetic field of Jupiter. I think it may be that you haven't concentrated the energy of the magnetic field in one direction or point. Just like the sunlight. We don't feel how powerful it is when it is scattered together. But when there are thousands, ten thousand, or millions of them, when the beam is concentrated on a point, it can form a terrifying energy weapon or laser weapon. This magnetic field is also a type of energy. I think it should be the same as this light. If it can be concentrated to one point or one direction, I think it should be possible. Yang Kuming, who studies the field of light energy, thought about it and said that he actually looked at the magnetic field from the perspective of studying light energy. In his opinion, the magnetic field and light energy should both be a type of energy. And both can be concentrate and restrain. And concentrate in fixed directions and points according to your own needs. Thus forming a terrifying and terrifying destructive power. Concentrate! Constrain? Orient? Snapped. Why didn't I think of that? Hearing Yang Kuming's words, Su Xingxi suddenly became stunned, then slapped himself hard, and then shouted excitedly, I'm just saying it casually. You don't need to slap yourself like this. Yang Kuming was stunned, looked at the red mark on Su Xingxi's face, and said with a smile, No more fishing. Let's go. Let's go to the laboratory together. I finally know what to do. Ha ha. I finally know, Su Xingxi said excitedly while holding Yang Kuming's hand. What's the rush? This thing needs to be sorted out. Yang Kuming shook his head helplessly. When every researcher figures out some problem that has been bothering him for a long time, he will become very excited. Dancing, running wildly, and even streaking are very common. Let Sunji take care of it. Let's leave quickly. I need your help. You study light energy. You should definitely know how to constrain and concentrate magnetic fields. Su Xingxi pulled Yang coming directly to his private spaceship. Making Sun Ji beside him couldn't help but smile helplessly. Chapter 359 Terrifying Magnetic Energy Weapon 100,000 Tesla The atomic level begins to be pulled. When the assistant excitedly announced the news loudly, the team led by Su Xingxi cheered instantly. After spending countless efforts, they developed a magnetic constraint device that can concentrate the magnetic field to a certain area. And if the required magnetic field strength is only a few hundred Teslas. Originally, it was difficult for Su Xingxi, who studies material science, to make a magnetic constraint device. However, with the help of Yang Kuming, who studies light energy, and scientists transferred from light energy research institutions, everyone successfully developed a magnetic constraint device. The restraint device successfully concentrates and restrains the magnetic field to a certain area. Ha ha. This shows that there is no problem with the idea. Next, if we can concentrate the magnetic field on a point like a laser, then we can create degenerate materials one atom at a time. Su Xingxi couldn't help but laugh. Finally seeing the hope of researching degenerate materials. Strike while the iron is hot. Let's quickly carry out the next step of research. I am very excited now. I just said it casually at first. But I didn't expect that this magnetic energy can really be concentrated and restrained like light. Yang Kuming was also extremely excited at this time. As if he had discovered a new continent. He enthusiastically led the team to continue public relations. Preparing to research a more powerful magnetic restraint device. It would be best to be able to confine all magnetic energy to a single point like light. With the research in reverse and hope again. The entire team began to research tirelessly. The Empire's technology in the field of energy weapons was already quite advanced. So the progress was very rapid. Compared with other teams formed with other ideas. Su Xingxi's team has at least seen hope. Other teams have not seen any hope so far. Traditional methods are no longer. Okay, 
to build materials from an atomic three-dimensional perspective. We must innovate and use new thinking. Any new thinking or new method actually requires slow exploration. After going through countless hardships, if you are in the right direction, you can always succeed if you slowly explore. Experiment 9359. Each team is in place. Su Xing's eyes were red and his hair was messy. As time went by, the magnetic restraint device he was studying became more and more powerful. He seemed to see the hope of victory. So he seemed very excited. He had been without sleep for half a year. Get a good rest and sleep no more than four hours a day. If you didn't have strong yuan power, you wouldn't be able to support it long ago. After more than two years of struggle and hard work, the team led by Su Xingxi and Yang Kuming conducted nearly 10,000 experiments and were able to successfully constrain the magnetic field like light to a very small area. This time the experiment was due to a new idea proposed by a scientist, which could potentially constrain a magnetic field to a point like light. So everyone became nervous at this time. Start experimenting! Everything is automatically controlled by the system. All you need to do is give a command. The huge magnetic field concentration device starts to work. And everyone is staring closely at the place similar to the laser exit. A wave visible to the naked eye shot to the special steel not far from the exit. In an instant, the one square meter of steel turned into dust. Then, the laboratory behind the steel was also affected. A hole with a diameter of several meters penetrated the entire space experimental city. Countless amounts of dust were suspended in the entrance of the cave. And countless piercing alarms sounded instantly. The entire space test city's piercing sirens kept ringing. And emergency facilities were constantly operating. All scientists looked at what they saw in amazement. Such sirens only appeared when the space city was attacked by foreign enemies. How dare anyone dare to attack the Empire Scientific Experiment Space City? Everyone in the team of Su Xingxi and Yang Kuming was stunned at this time. No matter how they expected it, concentrating the magnetic field to one point would produce such unparalleled power that it could penetrate the entire space city. A large hole with a diameter of several meters came out. This power is simply incredible. No! 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 Now we are in big trouble! Su Xingxi, who was the first to react, immediately knew that this was going to be a big trouble. He quickly reported the situation to his teacher Li Qin Yu through his virtual machine, and also reported the situation to Chen Bin, the president of the Imperial Academy of Sciences. Soon, the news spread not only among the Imperial Academy of Sciences, but also the Emperor Li Fu and the Prime Minister Tu Zuilia were alerted and hurried over. What happened? Yao Tiani, who was the first to come over, looked at the huge hole in the laboratory and was a little dazed. The steel used in this laboratory was the most advanced alloy material. Even a railgun attack could not make a big hole. But at this time, dust was floating in the big hole, and the scene in the void of the universe outside was revealed. All the steel turned into powder and floated quietly in the void. The people who came over and didn't understand what happened all stared at the huge hole with wide eyes. Did they succeed? This is the effect of magnetic energy weapons. Li Fu, who hurried over in a hurry, saw everything in front of him, and a smile appeared on his face. The traces produced by each weapon attack were different. A laser weapon attack would definitely leave burning marks, and a railgun attack would definitely tear it apart. There are traces of cracks, and all this is exactly the same as the traces caused by magnetic energy weapon attacks seen in the seeds of civilization. We didn't expect this. We were just trying to concentrate the magnetic field on one point. We didn't expect that when the magnetic field was concentrated on one point. The power would be so amazing. Su Xingxi slowly came to his senses and stuttered in his answer. As if he was a child who had done something wrong. The magnetic field is constrained to a single point. Yao Tiani suddenly widened his eyes. You were so careless. I don't know how many precious equipment and instruments were destroyed this time. Fortunately, there were no casualties this time as their mentor and person in charge. Li Qian Yu said with some fear at this time that mistakes often occur when conducting scientific experimental research. Some mistakes can even cause very terrible consequences, such as Nobel's failure to conduct bomb research. I don't know how many times my laboratory has been blown up, and several of my relatives have died. As for the disaster of a virus leak in a biological virus laboratory, it would be even more terrible. The number of deaths is unknown. So the biological virus laboratory has always been the most strictly managed laboratory among all laboratories. Ha ha. I think they did a good job this time. Not only was it right, but it should be greatly rewarded. However, this experiment is indeed too dangerous and cannot be placed in a space city. It should be placed in a void universe. 
Li Fu was smiling all over his face. The power of this magnetic restraint device is already so terrifying. If the magnetic energy were ten times, a hundred times, or a thousand times stronger, then its power would be so terrifying. Just think about it. They all feel terrible. This will definitely become a big killer weapon in the hands of the Empire. A trump card. Now it is just a few hundred Tesla of magnetic energy constrained to a point. But a big hole has been drilled into the Empire's most advanced material science research institute. If thousands or tens of thousands of Tesla of magnetic energy is used to constrain a point, it is estimated that it can easily annihilate a spaceship. Soon, based on the information and guidance of Su Xingxi, Yang Kuming and others, the Empire scientists built a more powerful magnetic field concentration device. But this time it was placed on a spacecraft. And the location of the experiment was also placed. The Kuiper Belt is too powerful to be placed in the inner circle of the Centauri Galaxy. There are too many aircraft here. A large number of huge spaceships flew from the cold Kuiper Belt. All with the logo of the Imperial Academy of Sciences on them. These spaceships came to a huge asteroid. This asteroid was hundreds of kilometers in diameter. Asteroids containing large amounts of iron. Spaceships continued to fly to the asteroid one after another and installed various monitoring equipment. After the installation was completed, all aircraft and spaceships moved away from this area. At the same time, the spaceships equipped with magnetic field concentration devices also drove far away. Yes, it stopped after tens of thousands of kilometers. The experiment begins! The magnetic field generating device installed on the spacecraft was jointly researched by many imperial scientists. It can generate a strength of up to 100,000 Tesla without being restrained and concentrated. Once restrained and concentrated, the power is unknown. Today is to test. A wave visible to the naked eye shoots towards the asteroid in the distance. The magnetic field is originally invisible. But after being concentrated and constrained, the magnetic field can actually produce fluctuations visible to the naked eye. This wave is a wave that has never been seen before. It feels like fluctuations in space, which is very strange. The constrained and concentrated magnetic field traveled tens of thousands of kilometers at the speed of light in a short period of time, and was observed by all monitoring equipment in an instant. After the entire asteroid was hit, countless dust flew out in an instant. All the iron elements, nickel elements and other magnetic elements in the entire asteroid were released, covering the entire planet. A thick layer of soil composed of iron and nickel elements. Horrible! Everyone who saw this scene was extremely shocked. In just one shot, all the iron and nickel elements in the entire asteroid were released. If this shot hit the spacecraft, the entire spacecraft would be scrapped in an instant. And if this cannon hits a creature, all the iron elements in the creature will be instantly extracted. Don't think that there is no iron element in living things. As the saying goes, Supplement iron. Supplement iron. What you supplement is iron element. All living things have iron element. If you are attacked by this kind of weapon, the consequences can be imagined. The distance is 10,000 kilometers. And the speed is the speed of light. Continue testing to see what its attack limit is. The test is not over yet. When using a weapon to deal with the enemy, you must first have a sufficient understanding of the weapon. The attack speed of magnetic field weapons is the speed of light. There are very few weapons that can reach the speed of light. One is the laser cannon. But its attack range is very limited. The farther the distance, the farther it spreads, and the lower its power. Therefore, the attack range of the laser cannon is very limited, and there are many will be affected by the environment. The attack speed of magnetic field weapons is also the speed of light, so its attack distance is also very important. If it is similar to that of laser cannons, then the importance of magnetic field weapons is greatly reduced. But if the attack range of magnetic field weapons can be very far, then this weapon can truly become the ace weapon in the hands of the Empire. With distance and speed, these are two of the most important things in the space age. Especially when it comes to war. Magnetic field weapons do not lack power. There is no problem in destroying a spacecraft with one shot. They are countless times more powerful than laser cannons. They also do not lack speed. The speed of light has reached the speed limit. These two things alone already illustrate its value. But this is not enough to become the Empire's ace weapon. The so-called ace weapon. The real ace weapon also depends on its attack distance. If the magnetic field weapon can be very far away, then it is a real ace weapon, a terrifying ace weapon. As the test proceeds, the horror of magnetic field weapons is slowly revealed to everyone. 100,000 kilometers. No problems. A million kilometers away. There's no problem. 10 million kilometers. 
it's still very powerful. Oh my god! This is the farthest distance we can observe. Any further away we can't see clearly. But now the distance has reached one astronomical unit. And the power of this magnetic field weapon has begun to slowly decrease. What is the concept of one astronomical unit? It is almost equivalent to the comparative distance from the Earth's orbit to the Sun. Such a long distance means that a shot from the Sun can directly kill enemies far away in the Earth's orbit. Trump card. A real killer. Magnetic field weapons are fast. Powerful. Have a long attack range. An attack without warning. They fully meet the definition of ace weapons in the space age. You must know that in the space age, spacecraft are very fast. During a war. The enemy and we may have already launched attacks on each other without even meeting each other. Deciding the winner, the harder your attack methods are to be discovered. The faster the attack speed, and the farther the attack distance, the more obvious your advantage will be in the cosmic war. You can defeat the enemy thousands of miles away. To be precise, the enemy should have been defeated thousands of miles away. This is a war in the universe. Just like wars on the Earth's oceans. In the early days, our weapons were not advanced. They could not fight far and their power was low. Therefore, when we fought wars on the oceans, there would often be follow-up battles. That is, two sides. The ships collided, and everyone went straight to each other's ship. However, with the development of artillery technology, this method of warfare has gradually been eliminated. At such a long distance, others have already opened fire. You are finished as soon as you are hit. There is no chance for you to engage in contact combat at such a long distance. The winner has already been decided. The same is true for the stars and the sea in the universe. The war is decided at a long distance between the two sides. So the attack distance is really important. Your cannon cannot hit the enemy. But the enemy has already come over. The outcome of this war can be imagined. The Empire currently does not have any good weapons that can carry out ultra-long distance attacks. And magnetic field weapons just make up for the Empire's shortcomings. It means that the Empire instantly has ultra-long range attack methods. And it is the kind of cannon that can shoot very far. This is the ace. The real ace weapon. The Empire's magnetic cannon. Of course, using it as a weapon is just one of its applications. More importantly, it can also be used to create degenerate materials. Chapter 360. Expensive Degenerate Materials. The space city where the Imperial Institute of Material Science is located is bustling with activity. Because of the emergence of magnetic energy technology, Imperial scientists have opened a new door. Atomic material science has officially entered the vision of imperial scientists. Countless scientists studying material science began to research in the field of atomic material science as if they had found a treasure. Countless new materials began to emerge continuously. Material science, which had previously reached a bottleneck, began to shine with infinite brilliance. The hardness and durability of materials data on various aspects such as high temperature began to be refreshed continuously. Hardness 1000. Hardness 2000. 3000. Various new materials made of atomic materials constantly refresh the original material hardness data with unprecedented data. High temperature resistance 10,000 degrees. 200 million degrees. 30,000 degrees. High temperature resistant materials field there are also countless powerful materials emerging that will refresh the record over and over again. Just like a flood bursting a bank. Or being enlightened by someone's enlightenment. The development of the field of material science in the empire has been at an unprecedented speed and has continuously achieved surprising results one after another. Su Xingxi Laboratory With his outstanding contributions in the field of material science. Su Xingxi has now become a giant in the field of material science in the empire, and a pioneer in the field of atomic material science. At this time, Su Xingxi's eyes were fixed on a monitor, and he looked towards the middle of the laboratory from time to time. A strange machine was constantly working. On the monitor, things with the same atomic structure were being continuously combined to form one by one. Three-dimensional structure. Atomic material science uses powerful magnetic field constraint devices. Of course, this power must be carefully calculated by scientists. The situation will not happen again. The power of the magnetic energy cannon has amazed countless people. It is used to create atomic materials. It only requires a small amount of power. The machine is constantly running. If it is not through the display, it is impossible to know the changes in the materials in the laboratory at this time. Because to the naked eye, there is nothing in the middle of the laboratory except the machine that is constantly running. It seems to be empty. However, Su Xingxi knew that not long ago, there were several tons of steel inside. But now all this steel has disappeared. Of course, 
This kind of disappearance is not really disappearing. But it is no longer visible with the naked eye. Because it is rearranged from a very small atomic perspective. The unit density has increased by an unknown number of times. Just like a huge mass. The cotton seems to be a lot. But if squeezed together, it will become a very small ball. Or it's like air. The volume of compressed air is less than one ten thousandth or one hundred thousandth of the original volume of air. If it is compressed and arranged from an atomic perspective, the volume will be even smaller by an unknown number of times. A few tons of steel disappeared like this. It's not that they really disappeared, but that these steels were rearranged and built from an atomic perspective by atomic material machines. So now they are invisible to the naked eye. Only an electron microscope can see that they have become very small. A very small piece of new material. Didi, we don't have enough raw materials. The siren interrupted Su Xingxi's contemplation. Several tons of steel were sent in. He watched the steel slowly disappear. But up to now, not even a shadow was seen. Send another ten tons of steel in. Su Xingxi gave the order very decisively. As if he had become accustomed to all this. Degenerate materials are very powerful. But the same degenerate materials are also very difficult to create. Several tons of steel are reshaped by atoms. And the new material created is invisible to the naked eye. You can imagine how much steel is consumed if you want to get a usable piece of material. Soon, the machine once again sent the material in. And the atomic material machine began to work again. On the display, under the guidance of a powerful magnetic field beam, countless iron atoms were superimposed very obediently according to the set positions. These atoms are constantly combined into a three-dimensional geometric pattern. If you look carefully, you will find that these atoms form a regular hexagonal three-dimensional geometric pattern. Imperial scientists have studied graphite, coke, and diamond and know that their atoms are essentially the same, and they are all composed of carbon atoms. However, the continuous arrangement and distribution of carbon atoms creates the difference in quality between graphite, coke, and diamond. The performance of these three things, coke and diamond, is tens of millions of times different, and their own values cannot be compared at all. Therefore, once the science of atomic materials was born, scientists in the empire were very keen to change the distribution of different atomic materials, thus obtaining countless new materials that had never been obtained before. The same is true for Su Xingxi at this time. He is trying to use iron atoms to form a three-dimensional collection structure similar to diamond, hoping to obtain an atomic material powerful enough to support the warp engine. The content on the monitor remains unchanged. But the ten tons of steel sent into the laboratory continue to disappear at a speed visible to the naked eye. As if they were missing for no reason. As long as the atomic material machine passes by these steels. The steel will it will lose some quickly. Ten tons of steel. One hundred tons of steel. One thousand tons of steel. As more and more steel is sent into the laboratory. In the middle of the laboratory. Materials that were previously invisible to the naked eye can finally be seen with the naked eye. Thousands of tons of steel after being made of atomic materials, become a piece of steel, just a piece of material the size of a fingernail. This material is a rectangular piece, very thin, completely black, and faintly emitting light. Although it is small, this piece of material is made of thousands of tons of steel, and its weight is also thousands of tons, so that here in the laboratory they had to shut down the gravity production device. Otherwise, such a small volume and such a heavy weight would be enough to deform the steel in the laboratory. Ha ha! I finally succeeded. I only got such a small piece of more than 6,000 tons of steel. Wow! This degenerate material is really expensive. Su Xingxi was very happy in his heart. But at the same time he sighed. With more than 6,000 tons of steel. Even though interstellar mining is very popular in the empire now. And a lot of asteroids are mined. There are still many places where steel is needed in the interstellar era. The steel consumed by each spaceship and space battleship is calculated in tens of thousands of tons or billions of tons. Therefore, the price of this steel has always remained high in the empire. And the interstellar mining industry has also made huge profits because of this. It is really the market demand is so hot that there are many places where steel is needed. A meal of steel costs almost 1,000 yuan in the empire. These 6,000 tons of steel add up to more than 6 million yuan. It doesn't seem very expensive. But you must know that this is the empire's currency. A constant value energy currency. And the most important thing is the material made from more than 6 million worth of steel is only the size of a fingernail. Such a small size is of no use at all. You must know that if such materials are used to build a spaceship or a space battleship. Even if the empire is now rich and wealthy. 
it will still go bankrupt. The cost is astronomical. Even if the empire is wealthy. To be unbearable. Even if it is only used to build the engine of a space battleship. That is, to make a warp engine. Given the size of the spacecraft, the degenerate materials consumed will be very terrifying. Because the warp speed of the spacecraft and space battleship the speed engine is also very large. The degenerate material has been created. But to create a warp engine, the cost is 12345 Su Xingxi looked at the computer. The computer was constantly calculating how much money it would cost to build a warp engine with degenerate materials, counting them down one by one. The series of numbers were astronomical. 100 trillion! At the end of the count, Su Xingxi couldn't help but widen his eyes. Based on the size of the anti-gravity engines on the existing Imperial space battleships, it would take a lot of time to use degenerate materials to create a warp engine of the same size. We'll reach an astonishing 100 trillion yuan. 100 trillion yuan? What is this concept? The empire has developed to the present and has more than 30 galaxies and nearly 40 living planets. However, the empire's annual fiscal revenue is only less than 1,000 trillion yuan. In other words, the empire's annual fiscal revenue is just barely enough to build 10 warp engines. From here, we can know how expensive these degenerate materials are. If the national power is weak, even if the technology for manufacturing degenerate materials can be developed, the lack of strong national power is fundamental to truly apply degenerate materials. It can't be done. Of course, this is only based on the current situation of the empire. The technology of mining asteroids has been continuously developing. The price of steel within the empire has also been slowly declining. And the empire's economic development speed is also very rapid. In a few decades, the empire will be able to do so with ease. But now, for the empire, faced with such an astronomical price, even if the empire has the strength to create a warp engine, the imperial cabinet prime minister Tu Shueshi can't help but shakes his hands when signing the signature. The imperial cabinet finance minister the whole person's face will turn black. Because in order to build a warp engine, the empire's already abundant finances will suddenly become stretched thin. As the minister of finance, his life will be very difficult in the future. There are holes to fill everywhere. It is not easy to save money. Just a few possessions will be consumed in no time. But the money that should be spent still has to be spent. Especially when it comes to scientific research funding, which is also related to the empire's national security and the improvement of its military strength. The empire's consistent principle is to do whatever it takes. And this money will definitely not be spent in vain. 